Welcome to the audiobook Full Moon Rises, written by Annette Aplad, narrated by Petra Scarlet. I was running as fast as I possibly could. My eyes were wet and I didn't know if it was because of my tears or the freezing night air. My shoulder-length black hair blew in the wind. Some of it got into my mouth and my eyes. I cursed myself. Why didn't I leave the house without tying it like I usually did? I kept on running. I was running to where? I didn't know. I was running from what? I didn't know. I didn't take time to get a proper look to know what it actually was. All I knew was that the creature behind me was chasing me fast. It was fucking huge, with fur covering its body and claws that could tear my throat out in one move. There was no real reason why I was out in the woods in the first place. I just fancied a jog and didn't exactly realize when the sun went down. It sounds like something too obvious not to notice, but I was so lost in my own head. I heard a snapping of a twig or branch behind me and quickly spun around. Couldn't see anything and decided my best course of action was to quicken my pace back towards my house. Everything went well for a few more minutes until I heard the same sound again, louder this time. I froze my entire body going stiff in fear. I'd never been afraid of the dark, but I was terrified out of my fucking mind right then and there. I held my breath, trying to be as motionless as possible, and sidestepped around a tree, listening. Somewhere very close to me, there was a low growl. <sighs> and one dreadful moment, I realized I was being hunted. The sound was getting closer this time. Somewhere on my left, a piece of wood snapped. I spun towards the sound and caught a glimpse of enormous, glowing, yellow eyes glaring at me. It didn't take me long to get with the plan before I hurled my body in the opposite direction, running as fast as my legs would carry me, but my energy was running out after a full jogging. I was weak, and my breath came out in quick, sharp gasps that only seemed to please the creature even more. It was happily chasing its prey. That's what I was. I was the prey? Shit! I swore I was feeling the burn through my legs as I worked them harder than ever before, thanking God for my impressive agility as I effortlessly bound over fallen branches and other obstacles that could possibly trip me. The creature's footsteps were getting closer, seemingly bored of letting his prey get the better of him. I worked my arms harder, desperately trying to push myself further out of danger. It was useless. Before I could even identify the sounds of the creature getting closer to me, it was on top of me, dragging me to the floor. I winced as my head hit something hard. Probably a rock? I then yelled out in pain once the adrenaline faded, and I could feel my head throbbing as blood seeped into the ground below. The creature stared at me, and I could see his sharp fangs. I closed my eyes and hoped it would let me die quick and painless. That proved to be useless when I felt the beast's teeth clamp around my abdomen. I screamed! I screamed with the bit of energy left in me. It wasn't a pretty sound, and it sure as hell wasn't one I'd ever thought I'd make. This was it. I was going to die. I was going to die, and I really thought I'd care more than this. In a few short moments, my life would end, and I couldn't bring myself to be afraid of that. I was afraid of the creature, and nothing more. Maybe I didn't value my life after all. It wasn't like I had much of a life back home anyway. I wondered if anyone would even notice I was missing. Would anyone ever find my body? I could disappear from the face of the earth and nobody would give a damn. That's why I didn't fight against the creature's death grip. I just lay there, feeling my blood soak through my clothes now and finally opening my eyes. I wanted to see the beast that would kill me. When I opened my eyes, it was a confusing sight. A wolf was biting down on me, though this wolf was something I had never seen before. It was easily twice the size of a bear, and its eyes were deep, yellow orbs and almost seemed as if they were glowing. There was something almost human in those eyes when they locked with my hazel ones. I gasped at the humanity I saw in those eyes before crying out as another wave of pain coursed through my body. I really thought my death would be much quicker than this. Wasn't there any mercy left for me? Wasn't my life already enough of a living hell? And now I had to die in pain too? 
I could feel the beginning of the tears at the corner of my eyes. I will them away, but as if a dam had been broken, a sob racked my body, and the tears flowed freely. It could have been hours, or it could have been mere seconds. But all of a sudden, the wolf let go of me. He was taking a few steps back before surveying his prize, almost as if he was laughing at me. Couldn't I just die already? The wolf moved in closer before its ears perked up and his head snapped upwards, and it ran in the direction it came. I strained my ears, trying to hear anything, but all I could hear was my racing heartbeat. That was until voices started to break the silence. I turned my head, slightly wincing at the dizziness that overcame me from the minor movement and saw two young men entering the clearing. They caught sight of me bleeding and broken on the ground and quickly rushed to my side. One of them was barking orders at the other one, but I couldn't really make it out. My eyes blurred as I tried to focus on the one holding my face. I smiled drowsily, not even the slightest bit embarrassed at the ugly tears track and the bloody mess. I noticed the man had dimples. That was the last thing I saw before my world faded to darkness before Gia Evander thought she died. Daniel was at home when he first heard the ear-piercing scream, though at first he thought nothing of it. Tonight was a full moon, and Steele had notified him of some unknown wolves in the area. He knew it wasn't one of his wolves because he knew their sounds off by heart, so he didn't worry. Shifting when you don't want to is immensely painful, so he guessed one of the outsiders was having a difficult time. It will pass soon, he thought. However, the screaming only seemed to intensify, and this time Daniel lifted his head to stretch out his hearing further. A werewolf would have entirely shifted by now, and that scream was a hundred percent human. Shit, he cursed, reaching for his leather jacket that was hanging over the chair in his bedroom. Alex, he yelled, waiting for the smaller man to arrive. Yeah, what's up? He asked, confusion in his eyes. We need to go search the woods, Daniel stated, knowing how ridiculous he sounded. Are you crazy? Alex stared at him in disbelief. It's a full moon, and there are wolves out there that aren't our pack, Daniel. We already shifted tonight, and there's no way in hell I'm going out there unprotected. You're not unprotected, Alex. You have me. Daniel didn't give Alex time to respond before dragging him out of the house behind him and ignoring all the questions fired at him by the rest of his pack. I swear to God, Daniel, if you get me killed, I will haunt your ass, Alex grumbled, following behind him like a petulant child. Daniel knew Alex couldn't refuse anything he asked, even if he wanted. His instinct told him otherwise. Being the head alpha had its own advantages. If I get you killed, you have full permission to haunt my ass, Daniel responded stepping out of the open and into the woods. You know that's not helping my nerves, Alex muttered, surveying the area as best he could. The scream came again and Alex froze. That was human, he stated. Yep, that was why I was so adamant on going out, Daniel responded, and that's where we're going. Oh, fuck that, Alex replied, turning to head back towards the house, but grabbed by Daniel before he could really move anywhere. I happen to enjoy my life, Daniel, and if some human has got themselves attacked by a fucking wolf on a full moon, then the last thing I want to do is get in its way. Alex wasn't a fearful man, but no wolf wanted to run into a strange or, God forbid, a rogue werewolf during the full moon. Not even Daniel, but something was telling him to keep moving. The human needs me, Daniel stated factually. Off you go alone, then, Alex shooed him in the direction of the screams but Daniel just dragged him along after him. We're wasting time. Daniel let his senses lead him, breaking out into a run when he heard the screams get louder and more painful. He stretched his hearing to hear whatever was attacking the human had left. Daniel smiled in relief that a fight wouldn't break out before slowing into a walk, just as they made it to the clearing as not to scare the human. Alex panted beside him as he caught his breath, helping Daniel scan the area for the human. The scent of blood was thick and heavy in the air, and because of his heightened sense of smell, Daniel wanted to gag. Before he could think of anything, he caught sight of a limp body on the ground. 
He could tell it was a girl from this distance, with her medium-length hair and her petite figure. Fuck, he cursed, running and dropping down at the human side. Hey, look at me. Look at me. He cupped the girl's head in his hands and detected a faint pulse. Alex, we need to get her out of here. He turned his focus to the human in his arms. Can you hear me? The human blinked and opened bright, hazel-green, terrified eyes at him. Goodness, she was beautiful. Daniel smiled down at her, and his heart warmed when the human gave him a sluggish smile back, right before slipping into unconsciousness. We have to move her now, Daniel ordered, quickly checking her body for any broken bones he might disturb while lifting her. Daniel, have you lost your goddamn mind? She's been fucking bitten! Alex yelled in a harsh whisper, gesturing towards a human's blood-soaked shirt. It might not have been a turning bite, Daniel said defensively, though really, he knew better. It's a full moon. There are no other types of bites tonight. Alex kept turning his head, checking for danger and scenting the air. Well, I don't care. She needs my help. Daniel, let her go. If another wolf has bitten her, then they are going to be pissed when she isn't where they left her. Alex reasoned, trying desperately to get Daniel to change his mind. Look at her, Alex. He held the bleeding human in his arms. Already her skin was hot to touch as the fever spread through her veins. I don't think this was her choice, and I am not letting her be taken to some pack who would disrespect her enough to leave her after they'd bitten her and left her to die. So what, you're going to take her life away instead? No, Daniel growled at his friend, his inner wolf smiling when Alice backed down. I'm saving it. Daniel, please don't do this. The pack doesn't need this shit right now. He wasn't fighting anymore, simply pleading. The head alpha, it's my last word, Alex. Now I'm going to carry her back to the house. The bite needs tending to. You need to have my back and get everyone outside to watch our territory until sunrise. That's an order. Daniel didn't like using his authority like that but he needed to because every instinct in his body was telling him to protect the precious woman in his arms. Alex was clearly pissed he'd used his authority like that too. Yes, Alpha, he grumbled. He took a deep breath and effortlessly shifted into his other form. Huge sandy wolf stood next to Daniel and motioned for him to start moving. Daniel nodded his thanks to the wolf and got only a snort in return. All charm, Alex he mumbled before lifting the human in his arms, careful of the bite currently setting her insides on fire. I got you, he assured the sleeping bundle. I got you. Both werewolves quickly made their way out of the woods and back to the safety of the Greenwood pack house. The members inside the house instantly sensed a shift as well as the foreign smell in the air and emerged from the place to find their alpha carrying an injured human in his arms. Lane, one of the pack's healers raced to Daniel's side and led him into her healing room. Daniel gently laid the human on one of the empty beds, while Lane busied herself getting everything she would need and shooing out the rest of the pack, while Alex gave them Daniel's orders. Daniel smiled adoringly at the human. She was even more gorgeous in the light. Where she wasn't covered in blood, Daniel could see a scattering of light freckles and her eyes were laced with long, luscious lashes. Everything inside him was in awe of the sight before him. Uh-oh, Lane noted in his gaze and smirked knowingly. Someone's got puppy love, she grinned. I have not, Daniel defended, glaring at her. Sure, she laughed. Then could you please remove her shirt without molesting her? I need to check out the bite. Daniel wondered if he actually could remove the human shirt without molesting her, and quickly pulled himself together. She was hurt, and his inappropriate thoughts needed to stop. He decided he'd try removing her shirt slowly, forcing his woof at bay. It took one swift movement for the shirt to tear open and for Daniel to remove it with little effort. I said remove it, not destroy it. <laughs> Lane giggled slightly, shaking her head, before placing a cloth in warm water and cleaning the blood from the area around the bite that was already starting to heal. It's off, isn't it? He winced in sympathetic pain for the young human. The bite was a nasty one, though it was also clean. The human didn't seem to have struggled, which might hurt her worst. 
and Daniel furrowed his brow at that. Why didn't she try and save herself? Do you know her name? she asked, turning deep amber eyes towards him. He shook his head sadly. Passed out before she could say anything. Well, for now, I'm going to call her Freckles, she grinned, little dimples framing her slender face. I'm sure she'll love you for that when she wakes up, Daniel replied with an eye roll. If she wakes up, Lane corrected, clearing blood from the human's face before placing a bandage over the bite. If? Daniel asked, finding it hard even to consider this beautiful human might not wake up. Yeah, Lane replied sadly. If her body doesn't reject the bite and she turns, then she'll wake up. Otherwise, she didn't finish her sentence, but Daniel stiffened all the same. How long before we know? He asked anxiously, taking the human's hand in his. Why did he feel so attached to her already? This was absurd. The bite takes about an hour or two to complete the change, so if she hasn't woken up by sunrise, then my guess is she's not waking up at all. She softly brushed her fingers along the girl's face. She really is beautiful. Yeah, Daniel agreed. Mind if I stay with her? Daniel refused to even think about leaving this human side. Of course not. Just don't do anything stupid, Lane answered. I'm glad she won't have to wake up alone. She smiled before turning to leave. Oh, I almost forgot. She picked up a needle and syringe took the human's arm and slid the needle into her vein. What is that? Daniel was curious about this human, about everything that happened to her. The need to protect her at all costs was overwhelming. It's a mix of aconitum and silver. Lane retracted the needle and gently massaged the surrounding area. What the hell is aconitum? More commonly known as wolfsbane. You just injected wolfsbane and silver into a fucking werewolf? Daniel was fuming. He knew from experience what those things did to you, and he couldn't believe a member of his own pack would inject that into another. Calm down, Daniel. She put a hand on his chest to keep him in his seat next to the bed. It won't hurt her. If she wakes up before sunrise, then she'd be waking up in a full moon, confused with a huge desire to shift and then terrified of what's happening to her. And then to top it all off, she'll be at full strength and her bloodlust would be crazy. I know it should be your call, but I'm not going to risk anyone in this pack at the hands of a chaotic newborn. Daniel sighed heavily. <sighs> You're right. You sure it won't hurt her? She smiled reassuringly. She hasn't shifted yet, so it won't hurt her as it would hurt us. Just keeps her strength down for a few hours. Thanks, Lane. Daniel breathed a sigh of relief that it wouldn't hurt her while effectively dismissing Lane and thanking her for her help. Now he would wait. My head was hurting. Fuck. Everything was hurting. My body felt like it had been shoved in a furnace while my head felt like somebody stomped on it repeatedly and then let a herd of elephants does the same. I groaned and tried to get up, but couldn't really move very far. My limbs ached and refused any movement. Reluctantly, I blinked my eyes open, trying to adjust to the harsh light surrounding me. Where the hell was I? What happened? Shit, it was so bright that it hurt my eyes. Hey. A soothing voice caught my attention. I felt safe in an instant upon hearing that voice and turned to find myself face to face with the most attractive man I'd ever seen in my whole 23 years of a living. Ugh, hi. I croaked out, wincing at the pain in my voice. The man smiled, untamed yet floppy hair, and his dimples made it irresistible not to smile back. Everything about this man caught my attention, but it was the eyes that stood out the most. They were golden amber, almost yellow. But there was something so warm about them. So human, yet so not. I didn't know what was happening to me to be so weak, but I had the weirdest urge to bare my throat for the man. Which, okay, weird. But a part of me was screaming at myself about how right it was, how I had to submit myself to the man. And that was just stupid. So unbelievably stupid. Yet it didn't stop me from doing it, though. 
It was as if my own body acted without my permission as I tilted my head back and bared the expanse of my throat. The other man simply smiled and nudged my bared throat with the tip of his nose in approval, and something inside of me sang with delight at pleasing the other man. Meanwhile, the rational side of my brain was screaming at me to pull myself together and run. The rest of my brain stomped out that thought pretty quickly. Did she just submit to you? A disbelieving voice broke the silence, and I tilted my head slightly to see a man standing across from us. He had short, spiky blonde hair, and his eyes were a similar color, golden amber, almost honey-like. I would have passed them off as brothers, but they looked nothing alike. Yes, she did. Is there a problem, Alex? The man next to me spoke as the other man huffed out an unclear response before leaving the room. What happened? I finally spoke, and the man's gaze drifted back towards me, filling my body with unexplainable warmth. What do you remember? His rich voice responded. I was... I was out in the woods and it got dark, so I was heading home, and then there were twigs breaking. I don't remember much after that. I felt my head hurting again, so I paused, looking at the man. It's okay. Take your time. Do you want something to drink? He looked worried. I didn't understand why he was being so nice to me, but I found it comforting in the midst of this whole bizarre situation. No. It's okay. The last thing I remember was running from this thing with yellow eyes and it attacked me. I thought I died. How did you stop it? I was confused and scared and my head was killing me. The wolf was on my territory. It sensed my pack and me. It ran away. Lucky wolf or else I would have killed it. The man stared at me with open curiosity. What's your name? J Gia. Well, J Gia, I'm Daniel, he grinned at me, and I couldn't help smiling back at him. At least I tried to. I didn't know whether it was a grin or a grimace. Probably both. Why can't I move? Daniel's brows furrowed. You should be able to soon. Lane injected you with something to keep you weak until sunrise, but the sun's nearly up, so it shouldn't be keeping you down still. You injected me? I tried to struggle to get away once I sensed how utterly bizarre the situation I had found myself in, but my body wouldn't let me. Lane! Daniel yelled, ignoring my outburst as a female brunette entered the room. Her eyes were slightly darker than Daniel's, but they were the same tone. I wondered what the hell was going on here. Yes, she replied, her eyes switching to me. Oh, Freckles, you made it. She beamed, and I cringed at the nickname. Lane quickly rushed over to my side, got out a stethoscope, and checked my heart before flashing a pen light into my eyes and taking my temperature. You're doing excellent. She turned towards the window. The sun's nearly up, so I can inject you with an antidote now to speed up how quickly the wolfsbane and silver get out of your system. My eyes widened at the thought of injection, but Daniel seemed to sense this and took my hand reassuringly. The brunette girl returned with a needle and syringe, gently feeling her way over my arm, before pushing in with surprising pressure. I hissed at the sharp sting, wondering why the hell she had to push so hard. Sorry, sweetie, she apologized. Your new skin is a little tougher than your human one. Human one? I asked. Because, yeah, what the hell? Daniel will explain once this is worn off. It's going to be like coming out of an anesthetic. You're going to be like a baby deer on ice rink and feel all drunk and dopey to top it off. She laughed sweetly. <laughs> it will only last around half an hour, so you don't have to feel too awful for too long. Thanks, Lane. Daniel smiled before turning his attention back to me as the brunette, Lane, left the room. It took a grand total of 15 minutes for me to go stupid.
My head was lolling to the side, and I was talking animatedly to the empty chair that Daniel was no longer sitting at. Daniel smiled down at me before he'd gone to check the computer on the other side of the room for any records of Gia Evander. Me. A wolf just wouldn't turn me randomly. There had to be something. Or so Daniel had said. But who would care about a nobody like me? Care enough to hurt me? I didn't voice my thought to Daniel. It took a further five minutes for me to realize that Daniel wasn't on the chair, my eyes scanning the room until I found him. Hey, I grinned, trying to sit up and actually succeeding. What you doing all the way over there? Daniel laughed out loud at my happy tone. The sound of it was contagious. I'm checking the computer. What are you doing over there? He retaliated. He seemed like he was enjoying my playful nature. Hmm, sitting? I smiled stupidly swinging my foot back and forth before stumbling to my feet and falling flat on my ass. Fuck, I groaned. Daniel reached my side in a millisecond, but it wasn't fast enough to stop me from landing on my ass. I noticed Daniel staring at my bum before he helped me to my feet. I narrowed my eyes at him. Is he secretly a pervert? I had to keep an eye on this guy. Thanks, I grinned dopely. You're strong, I noted. Before I could stop myself, my hand came to grab Daniel's arm to steady myself, groping his bicep in the process. And firm. Great, Gia. Who is the pervert now? Daniel blushed deeply. The desire to lean forward and kiss the guy senseless was overwhelming me suddenly, and this guy really had to put me down before I actually did that. Why am I shirtless? I stared, confused at my body, only having a brawn. And what? the hell is that? I noticed the bite. I'll explain soon, Daniel promised, helping me back onto the bed. For now, you need to rest. Okay. Yes, I saluted him. Daniel shook his head fondly and went to continue his work on the computer, but I grabbed his wrist. Stay, I whispered before falling asleep once more. Daniel knew he could move if he wanted to, now that Gia was asleep, but he didn't. Gia had asked him to stay, and so that's exactly what he would do. For ten hours, Daniel... St Next time I wakened, it was to the sound of murmured voices outside the room I had been sleeping in. I strained my ears slightly to see if I could make out any of the mumbles, and was stunned when they came across crystal clear. You can't just keep her here, Daniel. Some wolf turned her, and they're not going to stop until they get her back. I recognized the voice as Alex, the blonde guy, who'd been there when I had first woken up. They're not getting her. That was Daniel's voice. I was confident. I won't let her go to a pack that would turn her without any regard to what she actually wants. I furrowed my brows in confusion. What the hell were they talking about? Were they talking about me? Daniel, you can't just keep her. She's not a pet. Judging by the way she was turned last night, she already belongs to someone. Alex's voice was getting louder, and I flinched at the anger radiating from him. She belongs to me, Daniel stated firmly. Yeah, she submitted to you, Daniel, once. After she'd just woken up, she won't do it again, and then will you finally let her go? Alex was pleading with Daniel, but I didn't understand the point of their argument. I didn't belong to anyone. Fine. If she doesn't submit to me and actually wants to go find who turned her, then I'll let her go. Daniel sighed in resignation. I tensed. I didn't want to go to whoever bit me. Everything inside of me was telling me to stay with Daniel, to trust this stranger with my life. It was all a little confusing, and I really just wanted some answers. Slowly, I climbed out of bed and padded across the tiled floor to the oak doorway where the voices were coming from. I took a deep breath and prized open the door, coming face to face with Daniel and Alex. My heart fluttered at Daniel's dimpled smile, but a low rumble deep in my throat escaped when I glanced at Alex. You can stop growling at me, sunshine, Alex grit out, cutting me a glare. I wasn't even aware the sound was coming from my own mouth. I silenced immediately and looked desperately at Daniel. Daniel gave me a sympathetic look and held his arm out. I didn't need to be offered twice and instantly curled my body against the man's warm one. I was smiling smugly at the disbelieving look Alex gave me. 
This doesn't mean anything, Alex continued. So you got yourself a clingy little bitch. Big deal. Now send her on her way. Excuse me? What did you just call me? I stepped forward, a wave of uncontrollable anger racing through my veins. Alex took a step back, startled, and Daniel reached out for my shoulder, but I just shook him off. A growl filled the room, and I wasn't sure who it came from, but it spurred me on, and I promptly had Alex pinned against the wall. For a few moments, Alex looked terrified before snarling at me, displaying huge canines that definitely weren't there a second ago. My confusion was enough distraction for Alex to reverse our positions. However, that didn't work for long as I pushed forward and slammed Alex hard into the opposite wall. It was as if my body didn't belong to me. That's not possible. Alex's eyes widened, fighting uselessly. I didn't care what Alex was talking about. I pulled him back and slammed him again into the wall like it was nothing. It was then that Daniel finally chose to intervene, throwing me back to the opposite wall and pinning me there with his body. I ignored him entirely and tried to push him off, but it didn't work. Daniel was as good as a brick wall, unbelievable strength holding me firmly in place. I shot a pissed off glare at Daniel, finding myself snarling at the man only for Daniel to growl fiercely at me, flashing his own pair of huge canines. I finally took a moment to calm. I was scared, wanted to know what the hell these guys were. Then at the same time, my body was telling me to give myself over, to surrender, to do whatever the Alpha wanted. Alpha? I asked my subconscious mind, no idea what even my own brain was thinking. Unconsciously, I shifted my head to the side, showing Daniel the expanse of my throat and calming dramatically in the process. I didn't know what I was waiting for, but was rewarded when Daniel clamped those canines around the delicate skin at my pulse point. Not hard enough to break the skin, but hard enough to stake his claim. I didn't know what was going on, but again, I didn't care. Something inside of me burst with the excitement of being claimed by this man. Daniel hummed in approval as his teeth clamped around Gia's throat, the newborn werewolf submitting so easily for him. It took everything inside of him not to bite down, break the skin, and claim her as his mate right now. But he fought against it. He'd already made his claim on Gia. Nobody else would touch her without Daniel's permission. Using his teeth wasn't something he should have done, but he couldn't help himself. Instinct was riding over his better judgment right now. Reluctantly, he let go, loving the whimper Gia let out from the loss and smiled warmly into those bright hazel green eyes that were quickly changing color like his own. Tiny flecks of gold were visibly taking over and would probably have turned her entire iris in a couple of days. I'm sorry, Gia whispered. And Daniel nodded his acceptance. Suddenly, the door from the living room was slammed open to reveal an angry-looking Noel, who froze and noticeably calmed at the sight of them. Whoa, there is far too much testosterone in here. She glanced between the two men and smiled warmly at Gia as Daniel backed away from her. Hi there, I'm Noel. She held out her hand for her to take and shook it firmly. I'm like the funniest person to be around. Don't let Daniel tell you otherwise. She winked at her before turning to Daniel, her face suddenly serious. Steele thinks Theo was on your property last night. We can't be sure because there's no trail and only a faint scent, but it's all we have to go on. Daniel growled low in his throat. What the hell was Theo doing in his territory? Thank you, Noel. Tell Steele I'll speak to him later and to give the border a quick sweep with Hirano before he goes to bed tonight. Sure thing, boss, she grinned as Daniel's eyes rolled. He really hated being called boss, alpha, sir, just about anything that puts him above anyone else. Daniel, if you just claim Theo's new wolf, then you better start writing your will. Alex glared at Gia once more before making his exit with Noel. So, Gia started, he doesn't like me. Alex is a douche, Daniel shrugged. He doesn't like anyone, but he's actually great when you get to know him. I'm sorry I've caused you problems. Gia hung her head low. Daniel could clearly see her emotions were all over the place. Daniel placed a finger under her chin and lifted it until their eyes met. Never, he whispered earnestly. Never is a long time. Gia laughed softly, eyes still sad. I know. Daniel smiled gently at her. 
I think it's time I told you what was going on. I trailed after Daniel into a spacious living room. A group of young adults all silenced their conversation and turned towards me. Nine sets of yellow eyes bore into me. I suddenly felt cornered. Without knowing it, I backed myself into the nearest wall and felt a low growl building up in my throat. And seriously, when the fuck did I start growling at people? The tension in the room escalated at my response, and before I knew it, Daniel was standing in front of me, cupping my face in his huge hands and forcing me into eye contact. Something in me just melted at the touch, calming me without words. I'd like to introduce you to my pack, Daniel said, never taking his eyes off of me. Yours too, if that's what you decide. Pack? I was confused. What the hell does pack mean? Let me introduce them, and they'll leave, and then I'll tell you everything you want to know. Okay, I mumbled, not really sure if I wanted to know. Daniel smiled warmly and stepped back. You've already met Alex, Lane, and Noel. He gestured to them, and they smiled back. Well, Alex's was more of a grimace, but the effort was there. This is my sister, Sarah. A small brunette stepped forward. She really looked like Daniel, with dimples and everything. Steele and his mate, Hirano. Two guys stepped forward. Correction, two cowboys stepped forward. I wanted to laugh at the rather hilarious situation. A European and Asian cowboys? But I knew that that was inappropriate, and they could both kick my ass into next week, so I stayed quiet. Daniel leaned into my ear, whispering, Trust me, I laughed too. I couldn't help snort a laugh at Daniel's words before cowering from Steele's glare. Steele instantly broke into a smirk. I like her, Daniel. That is a great honor, Daniel told me earnestly. I'm not that hard to be around, Steele defended. Yes, yes you are, Hirano finished, causing the room to break out into laughter. These two lovely ladies here are Nina and Estella. Careful around Nina, she's got a sharp lip that'll cut you in half, Daniel laughed as the redhead cut him the most terrifying glare I'd ever seen. Worse than Steele's. The black-haired girl, however, smiled sweetly and gave me a little wave. And finally, there's Sean. Another man stepped forward. Love how you left me until last, Daniel, he grumbled. Best till the last, baby, Daniel winked comically at him. And even though I knew he was joking, I couldn't help the intense jealousy and possession that pulsed through me. Bite me, Sean narrowed his eyes at Daniel, but gave a dazzling smile to me. Well done, Dan. She's hot. I blushed furiously at the words and felt a tinge of excitement at Daniel's warrant and growl. Dan, that was freaky, but who's so attractive? All right, all right, Sean held his hands up in defense. I heard you loud and clear. We'll leave you two to it then. With that, the room was suddenly empty, leaving only Daniel and me behind. That's a lot of names to remember at once, I spoke shyly. Okay, I was a shy girl. The way I felt around Daniel was just ridiculous. I've known the guy for the grand total of an hour, for God's sake. You'll get used to them, he promised. Now, on to you. What's wrong with me? I knew there was something, because, well, I had freaking growled twice in the past ten minutes. Everything in the past twenty-four hours was just not adding up. And your eyes, all of your eyes, why are they yellow? And Alex's teeth, hell, your teeth. I know you had teeth just like him, and then you, you bit me. I didn't bite you, Daniel defended. Well, it was close enough. I was fuming. I was suddenly on edge and terrified, and I just wanted to know what was going on. What's happening to me? I whispered desperately. Last night you were bitten by someone like me. Like my family, Daniel told me. I almost wanted to purr at the way his hands were caressing my arms to calm me down. His touch sent hot shivers right through my body. And what are you? I asked, not even sure if I wanted to know. A werewolf, Daniel stated simply. Well, really, I'm just a guy who turns into a wolf. I don't hurt people, nor do I go off looking for fights. I was born this way, and you were unfortunate enough to get in the way of one of the wolves that were trespassing on my territory last night. I stiffened. That wasn't what I was expecting. Clearly, Daniel was crazy. 
But then that would explain a lot of things, like their eye color, very wolf-like and similar to the wolf that bit me last night. Then there was the way Daniel scared the wolf off without actually doing anything. It would explain how I could hear a whispered conversation through a wall, the overly strange sensation to roll over and do anything Daniel wanted, though that could just be my hormones overriding my brain. Then, of course, that explains the fangs Alex and Daniel both produced perfectly. Hell, maybe I was the crazy one. And am I? I trailed off, not even sure what I was going to say because this was all insane. Yes, Daniel replied simply. The bite turned you. It's why your skin is harder, why you keep growling, why you're so confused and agitated. It's because your body is working overtime. Your hearing, vision, and sense of smell are also enhanced. In a few days, your eyes will be like ours, too. Then once the moon is full in a month's time, your body will shift, and everything will fall into place. The transformation will be complete, and your head won't be all over the place anymore. I took the time to let Daniel's words sink in. When I came to think about it, Daniel's words made a lot of sense. However, that was a lot to take in. I didn't even notice that Daniel had wrapped me up in his arms until my senses were attacked by everything Daniel. His scent was earthy and spicy and delicious. His heartbeat and gentle breathing were making me want to curl up and sleep. It was so soothing. His body was so warm, radiating heat straight into mine. I didn't know how it happened, but I suddenly found myself nuzzling at Daniel's throat, taking in his scent and letting my instinct lead. A low, encouraging sound escaped Daniel, and I grinned against his skin, placing gentle nips against his pulse point. Once my brain caught up with whatever the fuck I was doing, I jumped back like I had been electrocuted. God, I I'm so sorry, I apologized, scared that Daniel would hate me. Daniel, on the other hand, was looking quite flustered. His breathing had increased, and his eyes were almost glowing. That's fine, he breathed. Don't worry about it. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath before finally facing me once more. It's okay, he assured. Why did I do that? I asked, my voice pleading. Why do I keep reacting to you like this? Daniel didn't answer me for a long moment. Then when he did, I almost wish he hadn't answered at all. I wish I knew. But you're not the only one reacting. Daniel didn't know what the hell was going on with him. Some poor human gets turned against her will, and all Daniel could think about was throwing her against the wall and claiming her as his mate, which was ridiculous because Daniel didn't need a mate. He was doing just fine on his own. His wolf, however, had other ideas and kept hijacking his logical thoughts. Especially after what just happened, he needed to get away from Gia very soon. If he didn't, then he's going to do something Gia will regret. It's been a long day. Daniel broke the silence, trying really hard not to concentrate on the fact that Gia was still shirtless. How about I lend you some clothes from one of the girls for tomorrow and show you to your room? I have a room? Gia asked. Of course, Daniel replied. You're packed now, Gia. This is your home, too. It was probably too much for Gia to take in at once, but Daniel needed to get her to bed or just somewhere Daniel wasn't tempted to jump her. However, thinking of Gia sprawled out under the bedsheets with sleep ruffled hair was almost too much to ignore. His inner wolf was yelling at him, Bite. Mate. Mine. Gia didn't reply. Instead, she was following silently behind Daniel to Sarah's bedroom. Her bedroom, although located on the far side of the hallway, was the closest. Daniel knocked. She opened the door in no time. What do you want? But as soon as Sarah saw Gia standing behind him, she smiled, closed the door, and yelled. Wait outside. I'll grab something for you, Gia. Daniel gave an awkward smile to Gia, and she nodded, looking down. She was a timid person, he thought. Sarah returned and picked out some shirts and jeans, then handed them to Gia, who took them gratefully. Thanks, she smiled, hands thumbing over the material as she surveyed Sarah's choice of clothing. You're welcome, Sarah replied and moved her gaze to Daniel. Don't bother me for the rest of the night. Then she closed the door in front of their faces. He sighed at the behavior of his sister. Your room's next to mine. How many rooms are there here? Gia asked as she followed him to the next room. About twenty, I think. 
It used to be a boarding house. The rest of the pack have their rooms on the other side of the house, so don't worry about them. They won't be coming up here, he assured her. Daniel liked his privacy and therefore had claimed the bedroom farthest away from everyone else in his own private quarters. He had his own study, living area, and bedroom with a huge ensuite leading into another adjoining bedroom. Maybe he shouldn't have put Gia so close, but he couldn't bear for her to be far away. Oh, okay, she replied as she stepped into the bedroom. Wow, she breathed, taking it all in. The room wasn't much. There was a giant double bed in the center of the far wall, facing a massive window with red silk curtains to match the bed sheets. Huge oak closets and a cream couch were taking up the rest of the room. Daniel didn't think the room was very special. Chia was looking at everything in awe. This is mine? she asked disbelievingly. If you want it, Daniel replied honestly. There's an ensuite bathroom that's shared with my room, so I'll apologize in advance because I do tend to sing in the shower. He laughed nervously as Chia smiled warmly at him. It's perfect she replied, heading to stare out of the window. Her face was glowing beautifully in the subtle moonlight, eyes in emerald green that Daniel will never forget, her skin decorated with blemishes that didn't lessen her beauty, and she had the most kissable lips Daniel had ever seen. I'm going to go for a run, he announced. Let you get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. He smiled and turned to leave. Night, Gia. Good night, Dan, she replied nickname rolling off her tongue effortlessly. Daniel needed to get out, to shift, and let his wolf run wild for a bit. If he didn't, then he was afraid he'd end up molesting Gia in her sleep. And that couldn't happen. He had no idea why he felt so strongly for this girl. His whole world had been tilted on its axis, and he just sat back and let it happen. He needed to talk to Sarah. She was the only person who was willing to tell Daniel what to do with Gia, honestly. Following her scent, he found her by her favorite rose bush now, in her wolf form, gazing at the stars. He turned his head towards the house and saw Gia in her bedroom, knowing if he started talking to Sarah here, Gia would hear every word. Making a quick decision, he peeled out of his shirt, dropped his jeans and underwear before quickly shifting. His body changed shape effortlessly after all these years, bones reforming and fur covering every inch of his skin. Daniel had never really seen his wolf. He knew he was a deep chocolate color and had white paws. But other than that, he didn't really have a clue. He didn't exactly care either. Daniel was a tall guy, and that was shown in his wolf, making him significantly bigger than other werewolves. His alpha status increasing his size even more. It didn't really help him be stealthy, but it gave him immense power. Sarah turned her head towards him, ears perking up at his presence before she chuffed gently in greeting, rubbing her head against Daniel's neck in affection, catching Gia's eye where she stood in the window before turning her attention back to Daniel. So Gia, huh? she asked. Werewolves can communicate through telepathic messages. It helps them work out strategies while hunting and just gives them general privacy if they want to talk alone. Daniel has never been more thankful for it than he was now. Daniel sighed. Lying his huge body down next to his sister and resting his head on his paws. Am I that obvious? Just a tad, Sarah's wolf was almost grinning at him. She's your mate, isn't she? Typical Sarah always knew everything on Daniel's mind. I think so, he replied sadly. Daniel, you found your mate, why aren't you happy? She tilted her head in question. Her wolf was a similar color to Daniel though smaller and much more agile than Daniel would ever be. Power was on his side, but he was also a bit of a klutz sometimes. Because she doesn't know anything about us. Sarah, she doesn't even know what a maid is. That was Daniel's main problem. Gia didn't have a clue what she was feeling towards Daniel. Daniel knew he was feeling drawn to his mate, but to Gia, she was controlled by feelings that she didn't understand. Do you want her as your mate? Daniel snorted. Stupid question, really. <sighs> of course I do. Then teach her everything. Let her know what she's feeling and then let her make her mind up. You know, if you ignore your feelings for too long, then they'll become uncontrollable. Think how confusing it will be for Gia if she has no idea what's going on. Sarah gently butted her head against his. Something she had done since she was a pup to show her affection to Daniel. He sighed once more. <sighs> You're right. I should talk to her. 
Tell her everything. I'm always right, she replied smugly before shifting into her human form. Now I mean it. Don't bother me for the rest of the night. She grabbed a robe on the bench next to the rose bush, effectively ending the conversation. Daniel swiftly rose to his feet and bounded off into the woods. A run would clear his head, make him tired enough just to sleep when he got back. A run would fix everything. It always did. Almost always. If I didn't believe it before, then I definitely believed it now. I'd been staring at a wolf in the garden. It was much larger than any wolf I'd ever seen in my life. Movement below then caught my eyes and I saw Daniel walking off towards that wolf, shucking off his clothes before his body twisted and turned and just changed. I didn't think I could ever describe what I saw, but if there was ever any doubt in my mind, then it was all gone now. A werewolf. I was a werewolf. Fuck. The wolves sat together for a few minutes and I tried to guess who the other wolf was. I thought it was Lane, but was corrected when Sarah's body suddenly unfurled. I turned my eyes out of respect while she grabbed her robe and headed back to the house. My attention was then focused on Daniel. His wolf was beautiful, strong, and powerful. I felt astonished by the mere sight of him. Daniel sat for a few more moments before rising to his feet and running off into the woods. I felt disappointed that I could no longer see him, and a tiny part of my heart ached at the loss, but I ignored it. These feelings were crazy. I turned towards the bed, unfastening my jeans and slipping them off before climbing under the silky sheets and burying deep under them, careful not to lean against the bandage covering the bite on my abdomen. I heard various howls in the distance, some closer than others, and wondered just who was making them. I tossed and turned for hours, unable to sleep. My brain was on overdrive and my body was thrumming with an energy I just couldn't burn off. I groaned in frustration when I turned over for the millionth time tonight. And a soft noise by the door caught my attention. There, standing in the doorway, was a wolf. Not just any wolf. Daniel. I smiled at the wolf and could have sworn he smiled back, trotting into my room and placing his head on the bed, looking up at me and whining softly. I should be afraid of a massive wolf in my room. But I wasn't. This was Daniel, and I felt surprisingly protected in his presence. You can't sleep either, huh? I asked, not even sure if the wolf could understand me. Daniel made a noncommittal noise and yawned, showing off huge teeth that I really didn't fancy being on the receiving end of. Then again, part of me wanted those teeth to bite me. Talk about an inconvenient time to learn about a biting kink I apparently have. I decided I wouldn't get any sleep tonight and patted the bed for Daniel to join me. The wolf's gaze lingered on me for a few moments before he jumped up onto the bed and dropped down next to me, elbowing my ribs in the process. Ow! I groaned. Elbows! The wolf was almost laughing at my discomfort, and I glared at him before turning towards him, sliding closer as the bed dipped with Daniel's weight. I sighed in content and brushed my fingers through Daniel's fur, finding it a lot softer than I had imagined. Daniel shifted slightly and rested his head on my chest, allowing me to continue running my fingers through his fur. Down his neck, over his head, and even across his huge pointy ears that were even softer than the rest of him. I smiled softly when I realized Daniel was snoring quietly, head still lying across my chest. It was comforting in ways it probably shouldn't be, but I didn't have time to dwell on it as my eyes slipped closed, and I finally fell into a peaceful sleep. I knew I should probably be bothered by the fact that I woke up with a naked man sprawled across my body, but I really couldn't think much past the point of, dear God, he's hot. Daniel had obviously shifted when I was asleep. His head was still pillowed on my chest, and he was curled protectively around my body. It should be disturbing. I should really be freaked out. But I'm not. Daniel was gorgeous. Smooth, tan skin that stretched for miles, covering a powerful expanse of muscle that's not bulky, but just enough to look strong and protective. His floppy brown hair hung over his face, yet didn't disturb his features. In his sleep, he looked so delicate, and all I wanted to do was sweep him up in my arms. But I wouldn't because that was weird and invasive. Though could anything really be considered weird anymore? Nearly half an hour later, when Daniel finally stirred awake, his breathing slowly became lighter before a yawn escaped him, 
and he stretched out his limbs. He was yet to open his eyes and froze when his arm brushes over mine. Crap, Daniel mumbled, still not opening his eyes. I'm naked on your bed, aren't I? He scrunched up his eyes a little more as if it would protect him from the answer. I chuckled. Yeah? He groaned and turned his head to buried under the sheet, his cheeks turning a bright shade of red as he hid from me. You know, you're a little too big to be hiding under the sheets, Daniel. I poked Daniel on the shoulder, almost to prove my point. I can still see you. I tilted my eyes slightly downwards across the small of his back and curve of one perfect ass, raising my eyebrows in approval. Like all of you, I continued as the Alpha finally opened his eyes, glaring golden yellow orbs at me. Remind me why I thought it would be good to comfort you again. Daniel twisted his body in the most awkward way possible and managed to cover himself with the sheet, dragging most of it off me. Hey, I complained as half of the sheet was ripped off my body. You totally took advantage of my weak state, Daniel teased. Your weak state? I almost yelled in disbelief. You were the gigantic wolf just casually strolling into my bedroom. If anybody was weak, then it was me. I couldn't help laughing along with Daniel. So it's your bedroom, Daniel asked in a teasing tone that was almost hopeful. I, uh, maybe Daniel didn't want me here. He said he did, but perhaps he was just being nice, and I was imposing. If you want it to be, I finally said, suddenly shy. Daniel flashed me those heartbreaking dimples. I'd love it to be your room. I tried to contain myself. I really did. But when Daniel smiled, the whole world smiled back. Then you better get your ass in the shower if you want to take one this morning, because I'm thinking I need a long one. Yes, ma'am, Daniel mock saluted and turned to leave before realizing his state of undress. Um, think I could borrow this sheet? I laughed. Daniel had stripped off so casually last night, and it only just covered himself. Yet he was worried about being exposed? Daniel narrowed his eyes at me, causing me to laugh more before he pulled the sheets extra hard, dragging them off me and hurrying into the bathroom. True to his word, Daniel sang in the shower. Badly. I wasn't even sure some of them were songs, because I sure as hell hadn't heard them before. Then again, Daniel's singing did sound nothing like the original songs. However, his rendition of a Mariah Carey song sounded much better, though he only knew the chorus. I grinned when I heard a soft thud followed by an I'm okay. Around 15 minutes, and way too many awful songs later, Daniel declared the bathroom free, and I rolled out of bed and slowly forced my body to move. The bathroom was all steamed up. Judging by Daniel's body temperature, he could stand the water a little hotter than most, just like Daniel was a little hotter than most. I shook my head as if to snap myself out of such thoughts before wiping the condensation off the mirror and taking in my appearance. My hair was sleep-rumpled, and there were pillow lines on my cheek. My eyes were the usual hazel green color, but with sparks of gold in them. Quite a spectacular sight. And I almost wish I could keep them like this, instead of having them change to gold. I looked to the bandage covering my abdomen and gently prized it off, stunned when the bite had fully healed, leaving only a thin white scar in its place. Well, there's something I could live with, I thought to myself, noticing any other cuts I had on my skin were also healed. I turned on the shower and was surprised when the boiling hot water didn't hurt at all. Instead, it soothed my aching muscles and let the past few days just wash down the drain. For a few blissful moments, I almost forgot about where I was and what I was turning. Daniel quickly changed before shaking his hair like a dog, laughing at himself for doing so and heading into his own private living room to wait for Gia to emerge from the shower. He couldn't believe he had actually woken up naked in the other's bed this morning. That had been awkward as hell. But it had also been the best night's sleep he had gotten in years. But that was beside the point. He had no idea what his wolf was thinking last night, but Gia had invited him in, so maybe it wasn't entirely his fault. Everything was just getting so damn hard. He only known Gia for a day, and his world was being picked up and thrown around, everything falling out of place. The only thing that felt right was Gia, and he didn't have a clue what was happening to him. The shower clicked off, and Daniel busied himself trying to think of anything but Gia in the shower. It was pretty hard to do.
A few minutes later, Gia emerged from her bedroom, looking freshly showered and a lot healthier than she did yesterday. Daniel's insides were screaming at him to run to Gia to take her and claim her, but he stayed seated and instead offered only a warm smile. Morning, Daniel said, hoping that this morning didn't create some unwanted tension. Morning, Gia replied, with a genuine soft smile gracing her features. You sleep okay? Gia rubbed at the back of her neck, almost bashful. Yeah, it was good, actually. I'm glad. He really, really was. So, will you be staying here with us? With me? Left unspoken. Gia paused for a moment, though it seemed like a lifetime to Daniel. Yeah, she finally answered. I'd like that. Daniel let out the breath he didn't know he was holding. Great! And it was, oh God, it, it was. Would you like me to take you to where you live so you can get your things? Maybe tell family and friends you're moving? Gia seemed to freeze up for a moment. Yeah, I, I don't have much stuff, but it would be nice to get it, and I don't exactly have any friends or family. She shrugged like it was nothing. Still, Daniel couldn't even bear to think of life without his family. He didn't even think before he wrapped Gia in his arms. I'm sorry, he whispered. It's fine, was all Gia could reply. How about we go down and get some breakfast, and then I'll drive you to get your things. The sooner Gia was safe here with him and people who could love her, the better. Yeah, she replied, a little bewildered. That'd be great. Thanks, Dan. That my new nickname, huh? Daniel teased as he led Gia down to the kitchen. Oh, um, uh, don't you like it? She blushed, and Daniel wanted to march her back up to his bedroom right now, but contained himself. I like it when you call me that, he grinned, making Gia blush even more. Then I guess I'll keep calling you Dan. Gia seemed to pick up on Daniel's intention and gave him a pointed look. Awesome, he smiled innocently. You know, you're taking everything really well, he noted. Gia didn't seem to be freaking out at all. When Lane first turned, she had single-handedly trashed the house and screamed at anyone who'd have the nerve to go near her. Then again, Daniel suspects he'd have that reaction too if he found out Alex was his mate. Trust me, Daniel, I'm freaking out on the inside, she assured him. It's just going to take some time to settle in. If you'd like some time alone, then all you have to do is ask. Daniel didn't really want to leave Gia alone, but if she needed time, then Daniel would be more than happy to give it to her. No, Gia replied all too quickly. Daniel's inner wolf shook its pom-poms and did a cheer dance at Gia's reluctance to be alone. But Daniel tried to keep his cool. After all, he was an alpha, not a fucking diva. All right, then. He gripped Gia's hand reassuringly, and warmth almost radiated out of him at Gia's tiny smile. The kitchen was full of bodies, busily trying to prepare a large wooden table that could probably sit twenty people comfortably. I tried to help, but was quickly placed in the chair next to Daniel by Lane, who assured me everything was taken care of. You're packed beta, Freckles. You just sit and relax. She flashed me a winning smile before she went back to helping the others. I turned to Daniel, who was currently burying his head in his hands. What's Pac Beta? I whispered to him, hoping not to sound like too much of an idiot. It's, um... Uh... Daniel tried to find the right words, but it looked like he was struggling. It means you're Daniel's mate, the fiery redhead that Gia remembered as Nina answered for him. Though that really wasn't an answer, because I had no idea what a mate was. However, Daniel had said it yesterday when he referred to Steel and Hirano. At the risk of sounding like an idiot, what's a mate? I asked. I think Daniel should tell you, Nina spoke again, placing a plate of pancakes in front of Daniel and then me. He's better with explanations. No, I'm not. Daniel was clearly trying to avoid this conversation. I know, she winked at him. But think how much fun Gia will have watching you try and stutter it out. I really wonder sometimes why I let you join this pack. Daniel glared at her before turning back to me. I'll explain it to you later because I think Nina would enjoy it way too much if I explained it now. Where are you going later? Nina pried, eager for some fun, judging by the way she was bouncing on the balls of her feet. 
taking Gia to get her things, Daniel responded quickly, tucking into his pancakes as he did so. Oh, good. Can I come? She asked hopefully. No, Daniel replied easily, not once taking his eyes off his plate. You're no fun. You know that, Greenwood? She pouted at him before retrieving her own pancakes and sitting at the table, closely followed by the rest of the pack. So you're staying then? Noelle asked hopefully from where she was seated next to me. Yeah, if you'll have me, I replied, feeling a little intimidated by all the new faces I was surrounded by. Don't be ridiculous. We'd love to have you here, she replied earnestly. Even Alex, the miserable bastard. She blew an air kiss at Alex, and he responded by giving her the finger. See how much he loves us all? I couldn't help the small laugh that escaped me. <laughs> Maybe it's just way too early in the morning for smiles. Yes, finally, somebody with sense. Alex actually agreed with me, flashing me a smile that didn't look menacing. Strange. Oh, God, you're going to be another Alex, aren't you, Freckles? Lane groaned. The world does not need one more Alex. I love you too, sweetheart. Alex deadpanned, rolling his eyes and reaching for the syrup. You know you do. Elaine planted a kiss on Alex's cheek and sparked conversation with the tiny brunette I remember as Estella next to her. Daniel leaned in to whisper in my ear. Alex and Lane are mates, along with Steele and Hirano and Nina and Noel. Sarah, Estella, and Sean are unmated. I kind of guessed what it meant, but I didn't know for sure what a mate even was, so I decided to just nod in understanding. And you? I asked, praying that some guy or girl wasn't just about to walk in and throw themselves on Daniel's lap. Even though Nina called me Daniel's mate, she may not have been serious. I think I've found my mate, he whispered honestly, like he was almost afraid of what I might say. What else could I say? Yeah, I smiled softly. Me too. Daniel could only think of one word to describe Gia's apartment. Small. There was only one bedroom and a small bathroom, kitchen, and living area. Daniel personally could never live in a place like this because he simply needs the space. Gia, however, seems perfectly comfortable milling around the tiny apartment and shoving things inside the boxes. You're really okay with moving? Daniel asked, a little unsure about why Gia would be so eager to fly here. Just pack up and move on like it's nothing. I'm fine, Gia assured him. Trust me, Dan. There's nothing left for me here. No friends, no family, and no real job. Just a shitty apartment I honestly can't wait to be rid of. No job? Daniel found it hard to believe that Gia was unable to find a job. She was charismatic, fun, smart, and looked to be a good worker. I paint, but that's not really considered work, seeing as I actually have to sell paintings. Gia handed Daniel an easel, and he went to load it into the truck. You must be good, though, if you're able to live off it, Daniel added once he returned to the apartment. I sell my paintings, but they don't really give me a lot of money. My parents left me a lot of money when they died. She took a moment to take a deep breath before filling a box with clothes at impressive speed. Daniel didn't respond to that. After all, what could he say? You need some help? was what Daniel said instead. Gia laughed lightly, passing him another box labeled Clothes and Shit. You are helping, she grinned, and she shooed Daniel in the direction of his truck. Six long hours later, I was finally packed and ready to leave my apartment. I didn't really have much in the way of belongings, but it took a little while to terminate my contract with the landlord. Climbing back into Daniel's truck, we started the half-hour drive back to the pack house. So, I started. Will you ever going to explain this whole mate thing or just avoid it for as long as physically possible? Uh, the latter? Daniel decided and flashed me a grin that sent shivers through all the right places. Nope, sorry big guy, but you got 30 minutes alone without other ears, so spill. Daniel tried the puppy dog eyes on me, but it didn't work. He huffed in annoyance before considering how to start. Mates are... When you find your mate... Um, uh, a mate is... Care to take a guess what a mate is? Wow, Daniel was really awful at this, I thought. Like a partner, I eventually asked. Yeah, sort of. Daniel agreed, smiling gratefully at me for getting through the hard part. A mated couple is similar to a human married couple, only better. 
He smiled as if lost in thought, and I couldn't help smiling back at him. Better how? I asked, genuinely curious. Well, uh, how about you get it all out? I won't say a word until you're finished. I offered, laughing softly at the relief that crossed Daniel's face. I offered, laughing softly at the relief that crossed Daniel's face. Okay, well, when two werewolves meet and they're destined to be mates, then they can sort of feel this pull towards each other. Every day gets stronger, like our inner wolf is just screaming at us to make the first move and tie with this person, to make them ours. It's stronger on the alpha than on the beta, but they both feel the intense pull. Then, when werewolves meet, it's for life. You don't break up and you don't get the chance to be with anyone else. Hell, you can't even look at anyone else. I know I said I wouldn't interrupt. I apologized. But I was just wondering. Can you choose your mate? No. Daniel smiled softly. Your body will tell you when you find them, and then you just go from there. If you don't mate after so long in each other's company, then it can get dangerous for the beta. Dangerous how? I asked inwardly, slapping myself for interrupting again. The feelings become more intense day by day. The longer you take to mate, the more built up on hormones the alpha becomes. Then as they're stronger than a beta, they can get a little rough to get what they want. Daniel took a deep breath, choosing his words carefully. If they don't mate within a week or so of meeting, then the alpha could really hurt the beta, because instinct overrules any logical thought process. The urge to meet becomes the one sole focus. So it's not something you can avoid then. The thought of not even choosing who you got to spend the rest of your life with was something I didn't really like the sound of. Nope, Daniel replied simply. What if you don't like your mate? I asked, terrified that I may go through that. Don't worry, Gia. You will always like your mate. Then once you've been together for a while, you'll love your mate. It's not like human feelings. Not really. So, I don't get a choice? I couldn't stand the thought of loving someone simply because my body said so. Gia, if you weren't meant to be with them, then you wouldn't mate with them. Daniel assured, meaning every word he said. Anyway, where was I? So a mating bond is something unbreakable. Nothing compares to the intensity. You can feel everything your mate feels. Emotions, desires, and fears all get shared between the two of you. I imagine it's remarkable being that close to someone you can almost see the world through their eyes. Daniel seemed lost in thought, excited at the prospect of finding a mate to share all that with. If I was being honest, it did sound a little exciting being close enough with someone to literally share everything. What if one of them dies? I asked, wondering what could possibly happen if werewolves couldn't mate again. Then the other dies from the loss a few days later, Daniel replied sadly. It's what happened to my mother when my father died. I'm sorry, I said, because I truly was sorry that Daniel ever had to go through that. How old were you? My heart broke at the thought of a young Daniel losing both his parents, one after the other. Not sure. It was like 50 years ago, so I guess I'd have been around 30. I waited for the punchline, but it never came. Daniel, how old are you now? Eighty years, give or take, he replied earnestly. Werewolves stop aging once they reach sexual maturity. Disease gets cured from our healing abilities, and we can't die of old age because we stopped aging. The only thing that causes a werewolf to die is if they're killed. That broke my heart a little more. Not only did Daniel lose both his parents suddenly, but his father was killed. It made me angry. How dare anyone hurt Daniel like this? I reined in my anger and tried a joke to lighten the situation. So I'm moving in with a bunch of oldies? Daniel laughed, humoring me at the very least. Yep, how does it feel to know you woke up next to a naked old man? He winked as I flushed, the memory of Daniel in my bed overwhelming. I think it's the least of my problems, I replied truthfully. Anyway... You were supposed to be talking about mates. How do you mate with someone anyway? Um, Daniel blushed. I bit my lip to hold back the grin. It felt so good to make Daniel blush. Well, uh, to start the mating bond, you have to, um, have, uh. 
He waved his hand in the air in a circular motion, which really didn't explain anything. You know, they have to, um, have sex? I really couldn't watch Daniel stumble his way through it anymore, no matter how entertaining it was to let him suffer. Daniel focused very intently on the road. Um, yeah, that. But, Alphas, we, we don't have normal, you know, he gestured toward his pants. Oh, God, you're a woman. I tried to clear the tension, but only got a half-hearted glare in return. No, um, have you ever seen a dog's, you know, he gestured again towards his pants, but ended up cringing at his own comparison. Shit, that sounded awful. Yes, Daniel, that was awful, I replied, and no, can't say I have ever perved on a dog. No, I meant biology-wise. Daniel was getting frustrated, and I really wanted to help him out. Unfortunately, I wasn't an expert on the biology of a dog's reproductive system, and therefore was of no use at all. Just spit it out, Daniel. I didn't care what I had to say as long as Daniel shut up and said it. Daniel was a little stunned, but quickly composed himself. Well, aesthetically, I'm all human. I'm wholly human, he tried. But like a dog... I have a knot, and in order to mate with someone, my knot has to be, uh, inside them. I tried to process that. I have heard of a dog's knot before, God knows how, and that maybe makes sense given that Daniel was part canine. And how big is your knot? Daniel flushed an adorable deep shade of pink. Ah, uh, that's kind of private, he stuttered over his words. Humor me. I raised an eyebrow towards Daniel and grinned in victory as he gave in. I'm not sure. Maybe the size of a baseball? I winced. And that goes inside someone? I unconsciously closed my legs at the thought because, damn, that must hurt. The beta wouldn't hurt if that's what you're thinking, Daniel answered easily. Your mate is built to take your body. My mate wouldn't have a problem with my size. Oh, thank goodness for that. So you're like big for a werewolf? I couldn't have ever guessed how easily our conversation shifted from educational to sexual. Very, Daniel waggled his eyebrows, trying to lighten the mood. It worked, and I laughed, feeling very embarrassed at the same time. So, you have to put your knot inside them. Then what? I pushed, wanting to know exactly what happened. You know, you're awfully forward, Gia, Daniel noted before continuing. While you're tied to them, um, the knot gets wedged inside your mate for around an hour or so. Not exactly a quickie. Daniel laughed at the statement, and I almost gulped at the thought of being connected to someone for an hour. By something the size of a baseball? It just wasn't happening. But you can't exactly argue with an hour-long orgasm. Anyway, as soon as you're tied, the alpha will seek out your throat, extend their canines, and bite down to claim you as theirs. It will draw blood, and it will leave a permanent scar. You may have noticed them on the mated members of the pack. The beta can bite the alpha, too, if the alpha lets them. The first time is the only time a bite will scar. So if the alpha wants to be marked by their beta, then they would tell the beta before they tied. Daniel paused for a moment. Now, to explain how two betas, such as Nina and Noel, can mate, they each have scars from their bite, but obviously none of them have a knot. You don't have to have an alpha in a mated couple. It's really the bite that does it for beta couples. But if an alpha wants to mate, then it has to involve a knot, too. Am I confusing you? Only a, a lot. I mumbled, trying to take it all in. Beta matings are a little more confusing. A beta's body seeks out a knot, and beta couples just don't have that. I personally don't know how their bodies can adapt to life with another beta, but apparently they can. Sadly, though, only alphas are fertile, while all female betas can carry pups. Beta couples tend to never have biological children. He smiled sadly. A shame, but it's the way of life. That's a lot to take in. My head hurt a little from all that information, but I tried to absorb as much as I could. Mates are really important to each other, aren't they? Nothing comes first, Daniel replied honestly, meeting my eyes for a second before turning back to the road. Anything else you'd like to know about mates? I already knew the only thing about mates that concerned me, but I had to voice it anyway. I had to know. I'm your mate, aren't I, Daniel? Daniel stayed silent for a long moment, eyes fixed firmly on the road. Yes, 
he replied a little sadly, and my heart squeezed painfully inside my ribs, seeing his expression. You don't want me? I felt my insides shatter at the thought of not being wanted by my mate. By Daniel. Of course I want you. Daniel replied instantly, eyes flicking between me and the road. I just wish you didn't have to learn all this and have a mate to deal with at the same time, he sighed. Daniel wanted me, and that meant more to me than it probably should. But after everything Daniel explained today, I guessed it makes perfect sense. If this is how I felt, then I dreaded to think how much worse Daniel must have felt. So, we have, what, five days before you become a danger to me? I tried to act cool, but I was maybe more than a little scared of what Daniel could do to hurt me. Yes, Daniel whispered softly, clearly sad it was all happening so fast. Fuck. It was all Gia could think of. Fuck. It had been exactly three days since Daniel had the awkward conversation with Gia about mating. Everything was going well since then. Gia was spending her days with Daniel and the rest of the pack listening to stories, learning everything she needed to know, and simply bonding. Daniel couldn't believe how well Gia was coping. She just believed everything she was told and embraced it, like she was born for it. Over the past few days, Daniel and Gia had gotten incredibly close, hardly leaving each other's side, and Daniel was finding it impossible not to touch which is how he found himself in his wolf form every night curled up at Gia's side. It should feel strange waking up naked next to Gia, but Daniel's pretty sure this is how he'd like to wake up every morning for the rest of his life. What made Daniel even happier was the fact the pack had bonded so well with Gia. The pack loved her and her personality. Even Alex was coming around, though he was extremely wary, convinced that Gia was different and not the average werewolf. I'm telling you, Daniel, she's not normal. Alex tried to make Daniel understand, but it really wasn't working. He wouldn't stand for a bad word being said about Gia. What do you mean she's not normal? Daniel scoffed. She fucking threw me across the room and pinned me to a wall, Daniel. She's a beta, and I'm an alpha. That just doesn't happen. Alex threw his arms in the air in exasperation. Maybe she could do it because she's my beta, Daniel suggested. I'm stronger than all of you, so it would only make sense that my beta is too. Maybe, Alex considered. Or maybe she's something else entirely. Like what exactly? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. So you're accusing Gia of being something else you just have no idea what? Daniel raised an eyebrow in disbelief. Are you kidding me right now? Think about it, Daniel. She pinned me to a wall, her eyes don't turn fully gold, and she's taking everything so easily. Lane nearly blinded me with pepper spray when she found out we were mates. Don't blame her, Daniel mumbled. All right. Say you are right and something about Gia is different. Would you still accept her as Pac Beta? Of course I would. You're a brilliant alpha, and your beta has already kicked my ass. I know she can handle herself. What I'm wondering is if you can handle her. With that, Alex turned and left. Daniel glared at his retreating form, refusing to believe anything could be different about Gia. He considered Alex's words as he gazed into Gia's eyes. They were gold, but if he looked closer, then he could see the flecks of emerald green in them. They had simply stopped changing. Something that Daniel had never seen before, but that didn't mean it was impossible. There were lots of things he had never seen before. What are you thinking about? Gia asked as she curled into Daniel's warmth. They'd been getting closer. Though Daniel was determined to let Gia make the first move whenever she was ready. He would even fight his wolf for as long as possible to make Gia happy. You, Daniel replied honestly, smiling as Gia pillowed her head on his chest breathing deep and taking in her scent. It had Daniel hot all over. Come to think of it, Daniel was very hot. Like, feverish? Are you okay? Gia asked, voice filled with concern. Dan, you don't look so good. She pressed her hand to Daniel's forehead and flinched back. Shit, you're boiling. I'm always this warm, Daniel shrugged like it was nothing. 
Yeah, well, I want a second opinion. Daniel secretly loved it when Gia got all bossy. We're going downstairs to see Lane, she declared, rising to her feet from the couch and dragging Daniel with her. I'd much rather stay curled up with you, Daniel groaned as Gia pulled him towards Lane's healing room. Me too, but I'd also rather you didn't burst into flames from a fever. Gia didn't even turn around as she dragged Daniel into the private room and called for Lane. Gia, I'm fine, really, Daniel assured, though not believing it himself. Daniel, you're not fine. You're burning up and you look all flustered and you smell different, Gia noted and quickly changed her words before Daniel could take offense. Not like bad different, just not how you normally smell. She blushed a little and looked down towards her feet. It's a little intoxicating, she continued. Now Daniel was the one to blush as Lane scurried into the room. What's the problem? Oh, shit. She covered her nose. Who the hell opened a jar of alpha pheromones in here? Daniel groaned, trying desperately to gain control of his body, but it was a futile attempt. Gia furrowed her brows in confusion as Lane rushed to the windows and yanked them open. Jesus, Gia, can't you smell that? She looked stunned at her. Well, yeah, Gia looked more confused than ever. That's just how Daniel smells, only now it's more, well, better. Sweetie, that right there is the smell of pure sex, she raised a pointed brow at her, but Gia quickly managed to avoid eye contact. Now, Daniel, would you like me to check you over with Gia in the room or without her? Daniel looked to Gia. He didn't really want to hear this, but it was her decision. It's up to Gia. She's just as responsible for my health as I am. How sweet. Gia, would you like to stay or allow Daniel some privacy? Her smile was a little forced, clearly having a hard time trying to block out Daniel's scent as she waited for Gia to reply. Judging by the subject, I'll give him some privacy, Gia decided and turned to Daniel. I'll be right outside. Yeah, Daniel agreed. Make sure the door is shut properly so the soundproofing works, Lane added as Gia left the room. Lane gave Daniel a harsh look. You know exactly what's going on. Why haven't you acted on it? Because she needs time, Daniel practically yelled. It's all going so fucking fast. Hey, calm your ass down, she glared at him. Nobody with half a brain messed with Lane. Daniel, you're in a fucking mating fever. Your body is calling out for your mate. And that mate of mine had no idea, Daniel responded. Gia has no fucking idea. Well, I'm sorry, but biology overrules what you want every single time. She's going to have to deal with it. I can hold it off. Daniel tried to sound confident, but he really couldn't even convince himself. No, you can't, Lane amended. Your body needs her now. It's not going to wait around for you to explain the birds and the bees. The longer you wait, the more at risk you are of hurting her, Daniel. If you don't hurry the fuck up, then you could be at risk of raping and injuring your own mate through no fault of your own. Lane paused, her expression turning thoughtful and caring. I know you, Daniel, and I know you don't want to do that. Daniel's shoulders sagged at the reality of her words. You're right. I don't. Isn't there anything you can give me? Like a suppressant, scent blocker, or something? She shook her head sadly. Sorry, Daniel. Suppressants are for females in heat, not hormonal alphas in a mating fever. They really wouldn't do anything because you have no estrogen in your body. No matter how much your girly hair sticks out, scent blocker won't delay your mating instinct. Lane tasseled his hair playfully. She winked before turning serious once more. You either do this now or you won't get the chance to do it right. Make the right choice, Daniel. Okay, I'll make the right choice, Daniel responded, quickly shifting to his wolf form and leaping through the large open window. That's not what I meant, Lane screamed behind him, but it fell upon deaf ears. Daniel's subconscious had left the building. The wolf was in control now. I expected Daniel to open the door to the healing room, but was met only with an extremely pissed-off Lane. What's wrong? Where's Daniel? I asked, concerned that anything could have possibly happened, dreading any answer other than, he's fine. He's in a mating fever. If he doesn't mate soon, then he'll hurt you and himself, she stated simply. 
He's too busy agonizing around it that I'm telling it to you straight. If he doesn't get to mate with you, then his wolf will take over and simply claim you, with or without your consent. Lane made sure to emphasize the last sentence, and I shudder thinking about it. Fears and anxiety slowly crept into me. I... I don't know what to say. Lane visibly softened at my answer and sighed. He shifted into his wolf form to avoid the topic altogether. She rolled her eyes in annoyance. That boy will do more harm than good if he keeps on this way. Thank you for telling me. I tried to wrap my head around everything. Whether I liked it or not, I was going to be mated to Daniel. Soon. The scary thing? I liked that idea. I liked it a lot. You're welcome, she smiled her killer smile. I suggest you go get comfy. Daniel probably won't be back soon. True to Lane's word, Daniel didn't return for several hours. I had eaten with the pack, showered, and was actually ready for bed when Daniel finally arrived. He was dressed simply in faded, ripped jeans. His hair was all tangled and his skin was damp from showering. What caught my attention was the way Daniel's nostrils were flaring, how his eyes were almost glowing and the low rumble that caught in his throat. My body was jumping for joy, but my logical mind still knew to fear the possibility of what was to come. Daniel? I asked cautiously, trying not to make sudden movements. I tried, Gia, Daniel choked out. I really fucking tried. His tone was desperate. Dan, it's okay, I tried to reassure him. No, he shook his head. No, Gia, I can't. I can't hold back anymore. The wolf part of me, it's too strong. He was panting heavily as if he was at war within his own body. After what I was told about mating, I guess that was exactly what was going on. Daniel, I tried once more. Gia, Daniel grit out, his body tense as his lip curled slightly. Run away from me. No, I stood firm and refused to do more. No, and you can't make me. Gia, Daniel almost choked on my name. If you have any common sense, run. Guess I have no common sense, then. I shrugged and stepped closer to Daniel. I'm not afraid of you, Dan. I know you won't hurt me. You should be. He almost snarled, clearly forcing himself to hold back. But I'm not, I whispered earnestly. Clearly, I was going to have to make the first move. So I cupped Daniel's face around my hands and leaned in closer. I could never be afraid of you. I spoke the words firmly while looking into his eyes to make sure he understood. I want this. The scents coming from Daniel were enough to send me into a daze. I just needed to get closer. I needed to feel Daniel all over my body. I needed him to touch me, taste me, and give myself over to him. I needed it all. You don't. Daniel shook his head in denial. I'm no good. I can't even stop myself from trying to claim you. How could you want that? Daniel's head was still clasped in my palms, and there really was no reasoning with him. I did the only thing I could think of. I leaned forward and captured Daniel's lips in a deep kiss, saying everything that words couldn't. Daniel was a little stunned by the kiss, but quickly caught up, bringing his hands up around my waist and pulling my body closer as he opened his mouth to fight me for dominance of the kiss. I gave it up easily. I let Daniel lead. The kiss became deeper, more frantic as we explored each other hungrily, but with care. After all, we were entering unknown territory. Things could easily go wrong. I lost myself in the kiss, drinking in the taste of everything that was Daniel. My body was screaming for this, for Daniel for my mate. We eventually broke apart, gasping into each other's mouths as Daniel slowly gained some control over himself. Are you sure? He panted and I could see the fear behind those beautiful eyes. Yes, I'm sure, I replied easily. I wrapped my arms around Daniel's neck and pressed my body fully against his, showing Daniel just how sure I was. I whispered, lips closing in towards Daniel's once more. I'm yours. As soon as Gia whispered those words, Daniel didn't have to hold back anymore. He threw everything he had into kissing Gia, bringing their bodies closer together and gaining some well-needed friction to ease Daniel's aching dick. 
His knot was almost painful from the lust pulsing through his veins. He quickly took control of the kiss and spun their bodies around, slamming the door and pinning Gia up against it, taking everything in deep, bruising kisses that were built up of years alone and the countless thought that he'd never be alone again. Things suddenly needed to move a lot faster or Daniel would explode. He ran his hands over Gia's body, taking notice of the places that brought a groan out of those sinful lips. His hands slid around and under Gia's ass, lifting her up and smiling into the kiss as she instinctively wrapped her legs around his waist. You make it so fucking hard to resist you, Daniel muttered through kisses as he carried Gia to the bed. Good, she replied, kissing him back feverishly. Don't want you to ever be able to resist me. Fuck, Daniel was certain he wouldn't last long. He gently laid Gia out on the bed, lifting her shirt over her head before undoing and slipping out of his own pants and boxers. He almost blushed at the gasp that left his mate's mouth, but that gasp was of pure pleasure and surprise, and not one of repulse. Gia wanted this. This was all it took for Daniel to straddle her hips, trailing dirty, open-mouthed kisses down her torso and mouthing at the denim-covered arousal. Gia groaned, raising her hips up to Daniel's touch. God, Dan, please. Daniel smiled at the submissive nature Gia was showing. It pleased his inner wolf deeply how easily Gia gave up control to him. Their first time was never going to be slow and romantic. Daniel knew that, so he didn't bother leading up to it. Instead, he swiftly unbuttoned Gia's jeans and slid them down her thighs and off her legs altogether before slowly sliding the underwear off Gia, too. Chuckling slightly at her impatient groan that was rapidly replaced with a moan of sheer bliss as Daniel's lips fixed around Gia's beautiful wetness. It was musky and salty and just so... Gia. Daniel was addicted. Fuck. Daniel. She had gasped, her hands fisting into the bedsheets. Hmm? Daniel responded, a little disappointed that Gia was still able to construct words. He sensed Gia's orgasm drawing closer and backed off, smirking when Gia whined at the loss. Need you to last, he whispered, crawling back up her body and sucking marks into the skin wherever he could so that everyone could see what was his. These marks were one of the few things that blood didn't heal, and so Daniel relished in the fact that they'd be visible for days. Finally, he reached Gia's lips, capturing them and sharing Gia's taste with her. God, it was just so good. Everything was perfect. He pulled back slightly. Want you to mark me. Daniel had thought long and hard about this, but quickly realized that there was never a choice. I want to wear your mark, just like you'll wear mine. He nuzzled Gia's throat, scraping his teeth over her pulse point as a promise of what was to come. Gia nodded, but wasn't really able to form words. He kissed her once more, trailing his hands over her body and felt heat burn through him as Gia did the same to him, leaving a trail of fire wherever she touched. Why was he trying not to do this again? His thoughts were cut off when Gia's hand circled around his dick, pumping a few times before fingering over the knot at the base. Is that? Gia didn't really need to finish her question. Daniel already knew what she meant. Yeah, he whispered, nodding gently in case Gia was as zoned out as he was feeling right now. Gia's eyes turned darker and her smirk turned dirty. I want that inside, she breathed, voice laced with pure sex. Daniel almost came from the words alone. Instead, he shifted position, settling between Gia's thighs and kissing them before trailing his kisses higher and higher until he reached his goal. He needed to taste Gia. He needed to know the taste of his My body almost leaped off the bed without my consent at the first touch of that hot, delicious tongue on my most private place. It was heaven to feel it circling around the entrance, forcing me to relax without much effort and simply give myself over to the pleasure. I didn't care how much of a slut I felt right now, spread open with another man's tongue circling my wetness. God, it was so wrong, but oh, so fucking right. I couldn't believe I had never tried this before. There was suddenly pressure, and before I knew it, Daniel's tongue was actually inside me. 
I really wasn't afraid to admit that I moaned like a fucking whore, spreading my legs further to give Daniel better access as he worked me open with his tongue. Daniel's tongue was soon joined by a finger, then two, working in and out of my body, scissoring me open to prepare myself for the impressive girth of Daniel's knot. I knew without even thinking that there was no way in hell I'd ever be prepared for that, but I wanted it anyway. Daniel started kissing his way up my body again, working in a third finger and opening me up even more. Please, Daniel, I wasn't afraid to beg. I needed Daniel now. You're nearly there, darling, I swear, Daniel promised, nibbling at my earlobe. I truly never knew how damn sensitive my earlobe could be. I clutched at Daniel's side and raised my body into Daniel's, simply needing all the contact I could get. I think you're ready, Daniel smiled proudly at his work of getting me writhing underneath him. God, just look at you. He stared in awe at my body, and I would probably blush if I wasn't so turned on. Daniel kissed me deeply. This is normally done from behind but I need to see you, Gia. He tried to explain, but I just wanted Daniel any way he was willing. Daniel seemed to get with the plan pretty quickly, raising my knees and tucking one over his arm while I wrapped the other one around his waist. I wasn't an expert in sex, but I knew for a fact that something that big, plus the size of a fucking baseball, wasn't getting inside me without any help. Daniel, don't you need any loop or anything? Nah, sweet. He shook his head confidently. You're a female werewolf now. Natural lube is part of the package. Much like when you were human. But... Better. He grinned and gently pushed his way into my body. Shockingly, it didn't hurt. There was a dull burn and a lot of pressure and discomfort, but no pain. I just felt full. So damn full that I knew I would crave this much more than was healthy. Daniel adjusted his position slightly, quickly pushing in all the way, causing both of us to groan and me to wrap my arms around Daniel's shoulders. It won't hurt. Daniel panted as he slowly circled his hips. My confusion must have shown as Daniel continued. When I tie to you, I'll bite you, claim you. It won't hurt, I promise. Once I've marked you, you're free to mark me too. He pulled back slightly and thrust in hard, causing me to gasp and arch my back as Daniel's pride hit my sweet spot dead on, feeling the undeniable pleasure spark through me from that special spot. It didn't take long for things to speed up. Sheer need outweighed the need to be sentimental. Daniel's thrusts increased, pounding into me fast and hard, nailing my spot harder each and every time. My brain had gone to mush and the only words I could pronounce were my alpha's name and fuck and harder. They were the only words I had ever needed again. If this was what sex with Daniel felt like, I could feel my orgasm creeping up on me and something very big pressing against my entrance. I knew it was Daniel's knot and just the thought of it made me groan and dig my nails into Daniel's back, clawing at him through the ultimate bliss that spread through me. I tensed slightly as the knot suddenly wedged itself into my body, swelling even bigger, if that was possible, as Daniel came, pulsing his seed inside of me. I panicked for a brief second because, because we didn't wear any protection, but before I could voice that out loud, Daniel's teeth clamped around my throat and bit down, hard. I could feel my own warm blood escaping Daniel's mouth and seeping down my neck and into the sheets below. The bite didn't hurt. In fact, it just increased the pleasure, made everything more intense. The intensity of the bite and the fullness of Daniel's knot as it tied us firmly together was enough to send me over the edge. My orgasm hit me harder than I ever thought possible. I was lightheaded from blood loss and simply from being mounted to within an inch of my life when Daniel shifted slightly, rocking his hips ever so gently and causing earth-shaking aftershocks to erupt through my body as he rubbed up against my inner wall. A moment of pure calmness washed over me as Daniel released his hold, licking over the wound as it healed and capturing my lips in a deep kiss. Tasting the metallic tang of my own blood on Daniel's tongue was much better than it had any right to be. 
It suddenly hit me then, the calmness, that was Daniel. We're mated, and everything I could feel right now were the feelings of Daniel, of my mate. I felt possessiveness course through me, and I released my lips from Daniel's, trailed down his neck, and kissed the pulse point. Daniel had told me that I could claim him, and so that's exactly what I would do. I didn't know how it happened, but suddenly my mouth was too small as huge canines extended and brushed over the exposed skin. Daniel was exposing himself to me. My alpha was submitting himself to me so that I could claim him. That thought brought me close to the edge again as my teeth pierced Daniel's skin, blood instantly rushing into my mouth and Daniel's moan of satisfaction filling my ears. It was too much. The taste of Daniel marking him as my own and the fact that I was still being pumped full of Daniel's seed was just too much for me to hold back from as I came again, biting down harder as my body shook through it. I released Daniel pretty soon and almost mourned the loss of being so connected, lapping away at the blood flow that was already clotting together and healing. An atom bomb could go off outside and I wouldn't even notice. Everything right now was Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Our eyes met and for one split second I saw the vulnerability and almost love in my mate's eyes. Pure affection was written across Daniel's features as he leaned down and captured my lips, turning our bodies so that we could lie comfortably while we were still tied. Mine, Daniel announced proudly, running his fingers over my face as if seeing me for the first time. Yeah, I agreed. Yours. We spent close to a week without leaving our bedroom, slowly progressing from my room to Daniel's master suite. A normal mating could last anything from two to four days, but we had been going for a solid seven, finally feeling normality after the mating fever left our systems. At that time, we didn't even leave the room for food. Lane would always appear with a huge meal at the most inconvenient of times but I feared the wrath of the woman if she didn't get her way, so I always hid my body under Daniel's. Daniel, on the other hand, didn't seem phased by it. Then again, he did spend a lot of time stripping off to shift, so maybe it wasn't that embarrassing for him. Ah, shifting. Something I would have to deal with in two weeks' time. I was more than a little terrified. Daniel had assured me that it wouldn't hurt and I would have Daniel there the whole time but it didn't change the fact that my body was going to physically change into an animal. There was no way in hell I could process that, instead of leaving myself to silently worry about it. I was sure everything would be fine. Maybe I was just nervous, which is why I was wide awake at dawn's first light. I was too busy worrying instead of sleeping next to my gorgeous mate. We had only known each other for two weeks, but I couldn't believe how damn lucky I was. During all the time we spent tied together, we actually talked. Getting to know each other and everything about Daniel made my heart glow. I tried to rein in my thoughts as I curled my body in closer to Daniel's heat, nuzzling him softly and placing a gentle kiss along the silver scar I'd left across his shoulder at the base of his throat. I grinned like an idiot at the thought that I had claimed my mate, marked his body for life. Daniel was mine. Daniel shifted slightly, his arms pulling my body in tighter before he relaxed again. Even in his sleep, Daniel had to be near me, and the thought made my insides shine with happiness. My life had been ripped from underneath my feet. I had been tossed into the middle of nowhere with people I didn't know, and yet I felt like I was home, where I belong. Without even seeing the rest of the pack all week, I still felt closer to them, as if my bond with Daniel was causing me to care more for them. Or maybe it was just a wolf thing? I couldn't be certain, but I knew I didn't care. Daniel was my home, and I would gladly take everything that came with him. You're thinking too loud, Daniel mumbled, kissing my forehead and sighing deeply. Sorry, I whispered as I stroked my hand over Daniel's muscled chest. You okay? Daniel asked tentatively. He slowly blinked open his eyes to check if I really was fine. The concern made me warm in all the right places. I'm fine, I assured, kissing Daniel's shoulder. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. Mm, 
Daniel stretched his body out, limbs drawing me even closer as he kissed me good morning. Well, seeing as I'm awake, he grinned, and you're awake, his hands trailed down my body, igniting everywhere he touched. And Daniel Jr. is awake, he waggled his eyebrows suggestively, and I couldn't help the small chuckle of laughter that escaped me. Oh my God, shut up, Daniel, please don't name your dick. I groaned, quickly turning into a groan of pleasure when Daniel's hands traveled lower. You spend your whole life hard or something? I panted suddenly out of breath from being so damn turned on. I, I thought the mating fever thing was over. It is over. Daniel's smile widened further if possible. But I want to make love to my mate without my hormones controlling me. He pressed his body further into me, firm muscles and scorching body heat overriding my own self-control. My matching smile hurt my cheeks as my hands ran down the curve of Daniel's back, digging my nails to cause just the right amount of pleasure and pain for Daniel. I think I can get on board with that. Daniel awoke the second time that day to knocking on his bedroom door. It wasn't Lane because she'd taken to just wandering in, regardless of their state of dress, and usually when they were, tied. He should have maybe told her to only come with food at certain times, but the blush that covered Gia's features was worth it every time. Gia shifted in her sleep, unconsciously bearing herself into Daniel's body. Daniel's claiming bite was on perfect display at the base of Gia's throat, and seeing it made Daniel want to claim her all over again. The knocking continued, and Daniel gently uncurled from around his mate and padded towards the door, pulling on some underwear for the first time in a week and running a hand through his hair in a futile attempt to tame it. Alex and Steele were standing on the other side of the door. They were the only other alphas in their pack, and their stance was fully authoritative. Shit. This couldn't be good. He gently shut the door behind him and motioned for them both to follow him into his private living room. What is it? Daniel asked, already knowing something was wrong. Steele and Alex both looked at each other before Alex spoke. We were monitoring the property last night, and we picked up the scent of at least three unknown werewolves on the outskirts of your, our territory. They could be rogue and passing through, or they could be circling and warning us, but we aren't sure yet. Daniel rubbed a hand to his temple. This was not what he needed right now. We can't do anything unless we know they're a threat. I'm not a bad guy, and I won't send out a hunt for a couple of werewolves who mean us no harm. But if you pick up their sense again, then I'll have to do something about it. We'll have to do something about it, Daniel, Alex corrected. If you got a problem, then so do we. Daniel smiled gratefully. Although he'd been packed alpha since he'd reached maturity, it was still a little humbling to have the other alphas be so loyal to him. I can't have any threats around right now. I want everyone on high alert until Gia's made it through her first shift and can defend herself. She's part of our pack now, and she's my mate. We protect our pack. He hated using his alpha status to demand things, but the pack depended on him, and his mate's life was his responsibility now. He would die before he let any harm come to Gia or his pack. Yes, Alpha, they both responded. Nobody leaves this property without my consent. I need to know where all the members of my pack are at all times. If something happens, then we all need to be here because I won't risk any harm coming to my mate. Daniel inherited his pack alpha status. He could easily beat any werewolf he wanted for the position, but he didn't need to because the pack already respected his decisions and agreed with the way he led them. Daniel was a great leader and could make tough decisions. He just wished he could sit back and relax sometimes. Of course, Steele nodded. I'll inform the rest of the pack. Thank you, Steele. Daniel allowed Steele to leave, and Alex's body instantly relaxed. He makes me feel all mature, Alex shuddered at the thought. Daniel laughed. Never thought I'd see the day you felt mature. Hey, Alex pouted. I'm plenty mature. Alex was in fact one of Daniel's strongest pack members, and was excellent at keeping the pack in check whenever Daniel wasn't around. Something he must have been doing for the past week while Daniel was too busy thinking with his dick to deal with his family. After Gia, he could safely say that Alex was third in the pack hierarchy, and he would gladly trust him with anything. Steele was older than Alex. He had been brought up to be an obedient and firm alpha who took everything seriously. 
While he had been in Daniel's pack, they all tried their hardest to get Steel to loosen up, and the result was actually pretty good, especially when Hirano came along. But when it came to pack duty, Steel was all seriousness. It was actually quite funny how afraid of him Alex was, even though he was stronger than the other werewolf. Oh, by the way, congratulations on the mating, Daniel. Alex flashed him a big thumbs up before grinning devilishly. Been very quiet without your loud-ass mouth around. Not nearly as quiet as it was when you mated with Lane, Daniel countered. He agreed that he was loud and playful and a free spirit, but Alex was definitely worse. Way worse. Alex laughed and shrugged, not even bothering to deny it. What can I say? I love life. Right there with you, man. So are you allergic to clothes now? Alex finally addressed Daniel's state of dress. It should have made Daniel uncomfortable, but it only made him smile at the memory of Gia. I'll get dressed again someday, he joked. Alex laughed and leaned in a little closer. Holy shit. Daniel, you let her mark you? Yes, Daniel answered easily. Not many pack alphas allowed their betas to mark them. While it was common in lower pack standings, it was pretty rare for an alpha like Daniel. I take it you're more than proud to have her as yours then, Alex noted. I'm sorry about the way I acted towards her. I may be freaked out a little at the thought of all the trouble this would cause. I didn't mean to offend you or your mate. A little? Daniel raised an eyebrow. Alex's shoulders sank. Okay, a lot. Daniel chuckled. Just a tad. It's fine, really. You should apologize to Gia, too, but I understand where you're coming from. I'm very aware that I've probably pissed off the wolf who turned her. Is I wishful thinking that this was all just an accident? This is us, Alex. When do we ever catch a break? Daniel sighed heavily. <sighs> we'll take whatever comes our way, and we won't let it bother us. We're all born werewolves, and Gia is my beta, who is, for the reasons unknown, even stronger than you. So we're already stronger than most packs around these days, because most of them are full of pack members who used to be human. Hell, some are even led by alphas that used to be human. Their strength couldn't compare to a pack like ours. You're right. We are one of the few remaining packs that are made up mostly of pure blood. You do remember that Lane was human, right? Alex added, a smirk crossing his lips. Shit, I forgot about that. Daniel laughed. That girl was born to be a wolf. I swear I haven't even seen a full-blooded wolf with healing abilities like hers. I've also never seen anyone kick your ass as much as she does. I totally let her, Alex replied easily. Kinky, Daniel winked, causing both men to laugh heartily. Well, I'd better get back to my mate and hopefully actually join you guys for dinner. If I don't get carried away, he waggled his eyebrows as Alex rolled his eyes and shooed him towards the bedroom. Yeah, yeah, lover boy. Try and keep it in your pants for a few minutes, huh? Where's the fun in that? Daniel pouted, causing them both to laugh once more as he headed back to his bedroom. His and Gia's bedroom. He grinned at the mere thought. When I woke up, I was alone. I reached my arm out to Daniel's side of the bed, and I could just feel the warmth of his presence. I was about to get up and go looking for him when he walked through the door, grinning like a giant dork but looking absolutely adorable and so damn hot at the same time. My woof whistled, startling Daniel as he flashed me his perfect dimples. Morning, I said, eyes trailing hungrily over Daniel's body. Afternoon, actually, Daniel corrected, matching my hungry gaze. I think I've lost all sense of time. I admitted. Daniel laughed warmly, bounding over to the bed and jumping on top of me. Both of us ended up tossing with each other fondly, laughing as we wrestled, sharing kisses and smiles as we fought for the upper hand. It was Daniel who won, of course, stealing his winning kiss and beaming at me. Everything about this man was giving me feelings I wasn't even sure existed. He was just so perfect for me. It was like we were truly made to make each other happy. I stood in front of the bathroom mirror after my first lone shower in a week. It was decided that we would never make it down to dinner if we didn't shower separately. So Daniel had showered first and was already downstairs with the pack. There were definite changes since I had been bitten. My eyes were the main change. They were gold. Not gold like the rest of the pack, though. My eyes still had some green in them, 
and had stopped changing, which was apparently unheard of. I really hoped that my body wasn't rejecting the change. No matter how much Daniel assured me that he would be able to scent it if that was happening, it didn't stop me from worrying. Other changes were my senses. Ever since I was a teenager, I had relied on contact lenses and glasses to help me see clearly, but I no longer needed them and could see clearer than ever before. I could also smell everything, from what was cooking for dinner right up to scenting pheromones. My hearing wasn't as sharp as Daniel's yet, it wouldn't be until after my first shift, but I could still listen to a conversation in the next room if I wanted to. The final change, the best one, was the bond to Daniel. My fingers trailed over the scarred tissue of the claiming bite, reminding me that I was Daniel's and Daniel was mine. My whole body shivered as my hands touched the bite, feeling the pleasure all over again and feeling closer to Daniel and sensing his feelings. Daniel was happy. He was laughing with the pack while they cooked dinner. Underneath that, though, I could scent his worry. There was definitely something worrying my mate. The thought worried me, too. I quickly pulled some clothes on and headed downstairs, where I was instantly wrapped up in Daniel's arms, smiling to myself as Daniel kissed my temple. I missed you, Daniel confessed. I was in the bathroom for ten minutes. I had missed Daniel too, but we should at least be able to go to the bathroom without causing distress to each other. Ten minutes too long, Daniel replied easily. I smell bad, I argued. A low growl built up in Daniel's throat, and I almost shuddered at the heat that shot through me. You smelt like me, Daniel corrected, nostrils flaring as he breathed in deeply. You still do. You'll always smell of me now. Carry my scent. It's a good job you smell good then, I joked, feeling Daniel smiling against my forehead. Not nearly as good as you, Daniel added. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little. Alex's voice breaks our moment and Daniel bursts out laughing while I felt tense, trying not to convey my feelings through the bond. We both turned towards Alex and he was wearing his usual smirk. Grabs up! Daniel got overly excited at the prospect of food and quickly dragged me over to the dining table. Just as the girls came out carrying plates of food and the guys carrying drinks, I hadn't realized how hungry I was until my meal was placed in front of me. It took a lot of restraint to not just bury my face in the food. Hungry, babe, Daniel grinned knowingly, virtually inhaling his own food while the rest of the pack ate at a steady pace. Very, was all I could reply with. Congratulations on your mating, by the way, Lane grinned at us both. I have to say, Freckles, you've got yourself a keeper. She winked before turning back to her food. The rest of the pack also offered their congratulations, and I blushed madly when Nina asked me if Daniel was any good in bed. During the meal, I was shocked to find myself in deep conversation with Alex, of all people, who was sitting opposite me. Turned out we have a lot more in common than we realized. It was also fun to get Alex to dish the dirt on Daniel. Daniel groaned and almost banged his head on the table when Alex started retelling their childhood and all the trouble they got into. I can't believe you and Alex are going for a morning run tomorrow. Daniel shook his head in disbelief. He tightened his hold on Gia as they lay entangled on the sheets of their bed, placing a kiss on her nose. Who'd have known? He's actually kind of awesome, you know, in that douchey kind of way. Gia laughed softly, nuzzling Daniel and gently nipping him. Daniel sighed in contentment. Hmm. He had waited a whole lifetime for Gia just to get this feeling with him. It was better than he could have ever imagined. Maybe I should join you on this run, just in case you decide you want to kill him in the middle of nowhere. Daniel chuckled, biting down on Gia's earlobe as he spoke. Yeah, you should. I'd like to go running with you. Gia confessed, her breathing speeding up as she pressed her body closer to Daniel, her whole body melting against her alpha. Hmm, Daniel agreed. He tilted Gia's chin towards him and claimed her lips, kissing her deep and hard. Everything was perfect until Gia froze in his arms, her body tensing and pulling away from Daniel. Daniel furrowed his brows, rejection pulling strongly at him. He would have demanded to know the cause, but he caught Gia's nostrils flaring. His mate was scenting the air, and he did not like what she could smell. Daniel mimicked her motions, but was unable to smell anything out of the ordinary. Without warning, Gia climbed out from the bed and headed over to the window, pulling it open and sticking her head out. Something was wrong. 
very wrong. Daniel swiftly pulled the sheets off himself and stood at his mate's side, once more trying to scent for any danger, but felt confused when he couldn't. Maybe Gia was special. Maybe Alex was right. What is it, darling? Daniel couldn't detect a damn thing. What can you smell? I don't know, Gia confessed. Smells familiar. I've smelled it before, but also danger. It's dangerous. Daniel didn't wait for Gia to say another word. He yelled for Alex and Steele, knowing they would have heard him and would be there within minutes. Seemed they were closer than he thought as they both came rushing into the room. What's wrong? Alex gasped, clearly having ran a little farther than Steele had. Come here. Can you smell something strange? Daniel asked, gently pulling Gia away from the window and allowing the two men to survey the area. Can't smell a thing, Alex confessed. Me neither, Steele agreed. What was it you said you smelled? I didn't smell anything. It was Gia. He turned to face his mate, but Gia wasn't there. His mate had vanished. Daniel quickly followed the scent, rushing down the stairs and straight out the front door. It had only been thirty seconds at most. How the hell had Gia managed to silently get so far away? He couldn't see her anywhere. Couldn't even catch her scent anymore. Which was impossible because he had just been here. Something was definitely wrong with Gia. He couldn't keep denying it anymore. His mate wasn't human, but something was telling Daniel she wasn't a werewolf either. Dan, Alex broke through Daniel's thoughts and he spun to face him. What happened to her scent? Alex and Steele were both evidently terrified at the reality of the situation. Gia had disappeared without a trace. I don't know, Daniel confessed. Right now, I don't care either. So what do we do? Steele actually looked scared. Find her. Daniel grit out, running forward and bursting into his wolf form without even considering shedding his clothes, feeling them tear and fall from him as his body took a different shape. Daniel didn't take time to think. He let instinct drive him forward, pushing his connection with the mating bond and trying desperately to get a hold of Gia, find her location, and get a hold of her feelings, but his mate was totally shut off from him. Daniel was running blind. They stood facing each other underneath the blanket of trees and shrubbery, deep in the heart of the woods. You look different, pup. The man grinned, and I felt my insides recoil. The change suits you. Who the hell are you? I snarled. Time will reveal all. He laughed as he circled me. <laughs> you really don't understand just how special you are, do you? He rubbed absent-mindedly at his beard. Special? I raised an eyebrow. Different, maybe. Special? No. Oh, yes. He clasped his hands together excitedly. I do believe you're the only one of your kind. My, my kind? I stuttered over the words. Yes, Gia, your kind. How did he know my name? I have never met this man before. How do you know my name? I knew I should fear this man and run in the other direction to seek help or call the other pack members, but something was forcing me to stay, to claim answers. I know a lot of things about you, Gia Vander. <laughs> he laughed as my body tensed. You have no family, no friends, and no real job or life of any kind. Correct? It wasn't the best of life. Yeah, but it was my life. I tried to defend. A life you weren't born for, Gia. You see, you were born for this. He held his arms out and two other people stepped forward. A young woman with dark brown hair and glowing amber eyes and a slightly older man with black hair and the same piercing eyes. I was absolutely outnumbered. I was standing against three werewolves who could quite easily kill me. I had never shifted before, knew I couldn't shift until the full moon, and so I knew how poorly matched this would be. I have no chance against these people. Born for what? For some random shitty wolf to bite me and then for me to get dragged into some fucking lifestyle that I didn't want? I should be getting away while I could. I really, really should, but my adrenaline was running high and the anger I felt within was clouding my mind. The female hissed at my words. Shitty woof, she snarled. 
You were lucky to get bitten by me. You bitch. My body didn't wait for my mind to catch up. I launched myself at her, grabbing her around the throat and slamming her into the nearest tree, extending my canines in warning. See, Gia, this is what makes you special. The man grinned. She is your sire, and yet, yet you overpower her so easily. You haven't even shifted yet. Don't you wonder about these things? You're different, Gia. You're strong and powerful. All the qualities of an alpha. But I'm not an alpha, I snapped back, still holding the wriggling female against the tree. No, he agreed. You're not. Now release Roseanne before I put you in your place. Reluctantly, I let go. Good girl, the man praised. Now, come with us and maybe we won't exterminate that stupid little pack you found. There's no way in hell I'm going with you, I countered, spinning on the other man and heading towards him. Before I could get any closer, both of my arms were seized by the other two werewolves. One of them I could fight off, but with two it became impossible as they wrenched my arms back and forced me to my knees. You're strong, girl, the man noted, but you aren't built to fight. You're made to be on your knees in front of an alpha at all times. He lifted my chin up. You're nothing more than a hole to breed to carry pups. You're nothing more than a whore, he chuckled darkly. I flinched as the man leaned in, breathing deeply and taking in his scent. My body shook violently as I tried to hold another burst of anger inside me. No, the pathetic man suddenly ground out, wrenching my t-shirt to the side and exposing Daniel's claiming bite. No, 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 he stepped back, pacing and muttering things to himself that I couldn't bring myself to listen to. You really are a fucking whore, aren't you? He moved in closer and fisted his hand in my shirt. You're not even a werewolf for two weeks, and you've gone for the first cock you could find. I thought you could at least wait two fucking weeks. I flinched at the words, holding myself from tearing this man's throat out, holding my tears from escaping. And to think, Gia Vander, the only one of her kind in existence, has mated with the one and only Daniel fucking Greenwood. You know what? This is actually kind of perfect. My eyes snapped at the mention of Daniel's name. A low warning growl built in my throat, but the man quickly backhanded me across the face. Don't you fucking growl at me, girl, he warned. He's going to kill you for that, I promised. He won't find me, the man replied, grinning smugly. I couldn't even smell you until I leaned in close. I don't know how you're doing it, Gia, but you're masking your scent. It's not possible, but it makes this all work out for the best. Daniel won't be able to find you. Or er, sank. Daniel would find me. He had to. He could smell you easily because you fucking stink. My words were laced with venom and I was treated to another backhand. That's the fun thing, Gia, he grinned menacingly. I can control my scent. So can Eric and Roseanne. You smelt me because I wanted you to. Daniel won't ever know. I thought you said you didn't know how I was masking my scent. I don't, the man admitted. It took us years of practice to even come close to what you can do naturally. Like I said, Gia, you're special. Why? I demanded. What the hell makes me so special? He chuckled, clearly enjoying torturing me through his words. Once you've shifted, you'll notice some changes, he winked. You'll be spending a lot more time on your knees. <laughs> he laughed at my obvious fear. Yes, Gia, get used to how you are now, because it's how you're going to be for the rest of your very long life. I was going to kill Daniel, but now I don't need to. You fucked this up for him all by yourself. What the fuck are you talking about? Time will tell, pup. He leaned in closer. Now, what shall I do with Daniel Greenwood's mate? 
He bit his lip and eyed me up and down. Such a fine mate, too. His hands trailed down my throat as he crouched in front of me, skimming his palms all over my body, making me sick to my stomach. You were meant for me, pup, but this actually works out better. Maybe I should use you up, mark your body, and fill you with my own seed. Daniel wouldn't even look at you again. Never mind. Touch you. My stomach nodded at the threat. I couldn't even bear the thought of those horrible things happening to me, or anyone for that matter. I was going to be sick if he continued. Please, don't. I whispered. You look so pretty when you beg. His eyes lit up as tears welled in my eyes. I actually had you turn for myself so that I could get over my hate for Daniel. But thanks to you being such a nut slut, I have the power to actually hurt him. I can take away everything he has, destroy his whole life, all thanks to you. A tear slid down my cheek. I couldn't stop it even if I tried. Daniel's life was ruined, and it was all my fault. You know he'd die for you, the man noted. That could be interesting. You kill him, then I die too. I swore my voice broken. Here's the best part about your kind. He leaned in even closer. If you die, Daniel dies. But if Daniel dies... His grin spread even wider if possible. You'll live. I couldn't even imagine the thought of living in a world without Daniel. My body may be biologically programmed to live without him, but I sure as hell would do no such thing. Then you'll be ready for the taking. The t taking? I had you made for me, pup. Genetically engineered to be what you are, and it's all thanks to me. I intend on reclaiming what is mine. Daniel kept running. His muscles were burning, but he didn't care. He could feel his mate again, her distress spilling heavily over the bond. If anything happened to her, then Daniel would kill whoever was responsible. His pace slowed suddenly feeling Gia very close. He raised his ears and took in the sense around him. He couldn't smell anything, but he could hear voices in the distance. He could hear Gia crying. He didn't care about alerting the others. Nobody would get away with making his mate upset. Quickly, he charged through the shrubbery and into a small clearing where he finally found Gia. It took everything for him not to be sick at the sight. Gia was forced to his knees by two werewolves in front of Theo Morgan. His mate was bloodied and beaten. Her clothes were torn to pieces with tears streaming down her beautiful face as Theo leaned over her, laughing maniacally. Daniel didn't care about humanity. He wanted Theo Morgan dead. Theo sensed his presence and turned to face him. Ah, Daniel, he beamed towards Daniel. You're just in time. Daniel didn't even bother shifting to his human form to respond. He pounced, but quickly found himself on his back in his human form, writhing in pain. Daniel! He heard Gia scream, but he could barely open his eyes. He knew without being told that Theo had shot him with a dose of wolfsbane. His body began healing instantly, trying to force the toxin out of his system and soothing his pain. Theo pulled at Daniel's chin, forcing him to look at him. You ever wonder what silver nitrate does to the blood? Daniel's eyes widened. Silver in the right quantity could get into the bloodstream and kill. But silver nitrate could easily flow through his system. Almost certain death. Ah, uh -huh. so you do know, Theo seemed pleased. Because... I'd always enjoyed the idea of watching you scream for hours as you die. He produced a needle and syringe, and Daniel's heart sped the sight of the silver nitrate. I'd like to claim what is mine, and because you couldn't keep your knot in your pants, I have to get rid of you to do so. 
Daniel panicked. He didn't know what else to do. If he died, then Gia would follow. He would condemn Gia to death before he even had the chance to live. Please, he panted, his body working overtime. If you kill me, then you'll kill Gia. You can't claim her if she's dead. If he could just hold off for a few minutes, he could get the poison out of his system. She's not like you, Daniel. You die without her. But she can easily go on to mate again without you. That's, that's not possible, Daniel argued weakly. I've spent my life trying to create somebody like Gia. I know exactly what's possible for her. I didn't know much about silver nitrate, but I knew about silver. I had silver to keep me down when I was turning, and so I knew just how painful it would be. There was no way in hell I was letting Theo put that in Daniel. It would kill him for sure. I struggled against the hands holding me down, but it was futile. My human form wasn't strong enough. I needed my woof. I didn't take the time to dwell on those thoughts. I closed my eyes and focused on my inner woof, bringing it to the surface. I opened my eyes just as the man pressed the needle into Daniel's skin. No! I screamed, pushing my body forward. The hands holding me were released as my bones cracked and reshaped themselves twisting to whole new positions as I suddenly fell forward on all fours. The urge to protect my mate overrode all else as I shifted. Daniel's eyes nearly bulged out of his skull at the sight before him. Theo Morgan dropped the needle in surprise and quickly backed away from Daniel as a huge gray wolf stepped forward, snarling and bearing impressive canines. There was no denying Gia was different. She just shifted at will without ever going through a full moon. No human turned werewolf had ever done that. It wasn't possible. Gia as a wolf is just as beautiful as she is human. She had a gray coat with a white belly and muzzle. Some fine black hairs littered her coat almost in speckles as a clear resemblance towards Gia's freckles. Her wolf was huge, almost the size of Daniel's and probably bigger than Alex. His mate just kept taking the lore and turning it upside down. The thing that Daniel was most concerned about was Gia's eyes. They weren't the amber of any wolf, nor were they the same hazel green color as her human form. Gia's eyes were a bright emerald green, and they shone fiercely as she locked Theo Morgan in a death glare. For one brief moment, Daniel was afraid of his mate. My body felt alive at the transformation. I wanted to run and express my freedom, but I couldn't. My mate was in trouble and he needed protecting. I snarled at the man, growling deep in my throat as he backed off. This allowed me to move closer, stepping over Daniel's body until I stood over him, putting myself between Daniel and the threat. You can shift back now, pup. I got the demonstration I needed. The man grinned, and I tilted my head in confusion. Soft fingers on my stomach startled me, and I jumped back, only to realize it was Daniel touching me. I whined and moved closer, laying down and resting my head on Daniel's chest, daring anyone else to come close. I'm okay, darling, Daniel whispered. He trailed his hands through my fur. It felt so good to have Daniel's hands on me like this. If we weren't in such danger, then I would be tempted to drift off to sleep. After a few minutes, Daniel's body shifted under mine, and so I lifted my head, allowing my mate to sit up. It's out of my system, Daniel assured me. Can you shift back? I didn't think that far ahead. I had no idea how to shift back. The only thing I could think of doing was focusing on my human form and willing the change to happen. Daniel's arms around my naked body confirmed that I had managed to return to my human form. I was so relieved I managed it that I think I could cry. Instead, I wrapped my arms round Daniel and held him close. Cute, the man snarked, throwing two pairs of sweatpants at us from a duffel bag I hadn't noticed he was carrying. Cover yourselves up. We both quickly stepped into the sweatpants and I made sure to stand close to Daniel, feeling broken and horrified when Daniel stepped away from me. 
Dan, I asked desperately. No, was all Daniel replied before he turned to the man who'd started all this. What the hell is she, Theo? Think about it, the man, Theo replied. She can mask her scent. Her human eyes stick with her woof. She has undeniable strength, the ability to go on without you. And she also isn't controlled by the lunar cycle. Can you guess what she is yet? I had no idea what was going on. Judging by the way Daniel kept looking at me, he didn't either. I'll throw something else in there to help you out, Theo grinned. If you want to, Greenwood, you can breed her. Easily. What? Daniel and I asked in unison. Cute, he sighed in exasperation at them both. Gia here is more than capable of carrying your pups, Daniel. She can conceive them and give birth to them. She is no alpha and she is no beta. What else does that leave? No, Daniel shook his head in denial. That's not possible. Oh, but it is, Theo grinned. Omegas went extinct centuries ago. Daniel's voice was low and disbelieving. Yes, they did, Theo agreed. Then I created Gia to bring them back. Why? Daniel gritted out. I had no idea what was going on or what the fuck an Omega was, and I really couldn't get my head around the whole carrying pups easily thing. I'm not an animal. Isn't it obvious? Theo asked. I wanted an Omega to carry on my heritage. Keep me entertained. You know, they're so damn slutty I'd never tire. I fought back bile at the thought of having anything to do with this pathetic man. It was hard to do, though, to find the right human. Her mother descended from an Omega bloodline, and their werewolf had eventually been bred out of her system. So I may have tweaked Gia's DNA from birth. She grew up alone. Nobody cared about her. She was a human Omega, similar to that of real wolves. But our Omegas are nothing like Omegas with wolves. You're right, Daniel, but she was a human Omega, with tampered DNA that was bitten by a wolf. Only made sense she was a wolf Omega, too. Perfect for me to claim until you ruined it, like you ruin everything. Why didn't you claim her right then and there then? Daniel wasn't even aware of my presence right now. Because you interrupted Roseanne turning her, he growled. Then you went and fucking made it her yourself. If it pissed you off so badly, then why didn't you kill me and take her? I wasn't even sure I recognized Daniel anymore. Because, Daniel, Theo moved closer, ignoring my warning growl. I've always wanted your pack and could never win it from you in a fight. Pack law states that an alpha cannot rule a pack if his mate is an omega. I really have fucked this right up for you. You son of a bitch. Daniel's voice was dripping with venom as he spoke. I'll let you carry on your bloodline. Then when I get bored of your existence and feel like stepping down from Pack Alpha, I'll have you killed and take Gia as my own. I will take your children and mark them with my own scent. They will despise your very memory. Stop! Daniel's eyes were filled with tears and my heart bled for my mate, but I didn't dare move. What's the problem, Greenwood? Did I touch a nerve? I'll never let you take Gia or my pack from me. Daniel's voice was low, threatening. And if you ever threaten any children I may have, then I will tear your heart from your chest quicker than you can blink. I like your threat, Theo smiled. But it's useless. You won't try and kill me now because you're outnumbered and weak from the wolfsbane. You have to let me go and try to make sense of all this. On your own. Whether you like it or not, Daniel, 
You've already lost your pack status. No alpha is fit to rule with an omega at his side. He turned to leave, pausing to turn to Daniel once more. Your bitch will be in heat very soon, Daniel. You won't be able to hide her status from the pack for long. Daniel had no words as he and Gia walked through the woods towards the house. Gia was silent, too, probably trying to process what had happened and wondering what the hell she was. It was all too much. This gorgeous, funny, smart, wonderful human entered his life and became his mate, but because of that, everything Daniel has was torn away from him. It's devastating. He knew that none of this was Gia's fault. She didn't ask for this. But Daniel doesn't know if he could look past the fact he was made it to an Omega. You can't tell anyone what you are. Daniel turned to face Gia, stopping their walking and holding eye contact. The pack won't take the news well, and I need to get my own head around it, too. I won't tell anybody, but Daniel, you have to explain to me what I am, because not even I know what I am. Gia was scared. Daniel could see that, but he forced himself to keep his distance. You're an Omega. It's not the same as with real wolf pack. With a werewolf, it is so much more complicated. Promise you'll explain? Gia begged. He said I could carry pups easily, Daniel. I deserve to know what that means. I just don't think I can look at you right now without seeing everything I've lost. You're going to have to be patient with me. Daniel turned and continued walking towards the house, his heart clenching as he heard a sob escape Gia. It had been five days since I had seen Daniel. I had locked myself in my room and refused to leave, refused to eat. Somehow, I wasn't hungry. Lane was the only one coming to look after me. Perhaps Daniel ordered her to make sure if I was still alive. But I truly didn't give a single flying fuck. Lane had forced a flea, fed some soup into my stomach several times, but I always ended up throwing it back up. It was as if my whole body was beginning to shut down without my alpha, without Daniel. I couldn't even reach him through the bond because it seemed like Daniel had totally cut himself off from me. I never felt more alone, even though I've basically spent my whole entire life alone. Because for the past few weeks, I've gotten a taste of what home and love actually were. And now that I have tasted it, I wasn't sure if I could live without it. Part of me had hoped Daniel would return, at least explain what was going on, but the rest of me knew it was just wishful thinking. Daniel hated me now. He wouldn't even sleep in his own bedroom because it's near me. Hell, I wasn't even sure Daniel was sleeping in the same house as me anymore. I ached. My whole body longed for Daniel, for his voice, his touch, and his affection. I knew I would never have it again but it didn't stop the longing that settled in the pit of my stomach. I needed Daniel. My entire being felt as if it was on fire. My skin was damp from sweat, and I just wanted my alpha back where he belonged. Wanted to be claimed all over again, to be told that everything was all right. A soft knock came at the door, and I rolled over my sheets to face it as Noelle's head poked through. Hey, Freckles. Her British accent usually made me smile, but I couldn't find it in me. Lane sent me because she's worried about you, but she had somewhere else to be. And well, since I'm the oldest one here, she's also hoping I can diagnose you. Noelle stepped forward into the room and shut the door behind her. I'll save you the trouble, I mumbled. My heart hurts without Daniel. It's killing me. What's going on between you and Daniel anyway? She asked as she perched onto the bed. I wish I knew. I replied. He's your mate, Gia, and I can assure you that he feels just as bad as you. He's locked himself in the room farthest from here and won't speak to anybody. He's not ill like you are, but he's definitely hurting. She rubbed a hand through my hair. I didn't have the energy to turn away. I had to admit that hearing Daniel was hurting, too, made me feel a little better. I wasn't suffering alone. Noelle's hand moved over my forehead and her brows furrowed. Fuck, you're boiling. She winced and headed into the bathroom. She returned with a cool cloth and damped it over my face and neck. The relief was instant, but it wasn't enough. Her brows furrowed in concern. Gia, if you know something, then you have to tell me. I can't help you unless you tell me. 
Daniel didn't allow me to, I whispered, ashamed for the fact that I still followed Daniel's order so willingly. Oh, he did? Noel looked pissed now. Alpha or not, I will fucking slap some sense into him, she growled. I don't know what's wrong with you, and us werewolves don't just get fevers, Gia. You could die if you don't tell me. I can't, I pleaded. Please don't make me. The only times werewolves can get a fever are when they're ready to mate or when they're in heat, and as you're neither, she paused even thought. Actually, that makes sense. She tilted her head towards me, and I felt helpless under her gaze. You're not like us, are you? There are too many abnormalities for you to be like us and for Daniel to turn away from you. It all makes sense. She leaned forward, pressing her nose against my throat and scenting me. I flinched, but was unable to move. I had no idea how the whole masking my scent thing worked, and I was relieved nobody can scent me unless they got close. However, my body suddenly froze in fear when Noelle drew her head back. Her eyes widened knowingly. You're an Omega? She whispered disbelievingly. Daniel paced around the space. It was all that he had been doing for the past five days, pacing and thinking. He didn't know what to do. Hell, he didn't know how to even face Gia. His mate was alone and terrified, and Daniel couldn't find the strength to go to her. He needed Gia. The pull was stronger than ever, and it took everything in him not to simply run up the stairs and claim her. He couldn't. His mate was an Omega. Fuck! Daniel cursed, punching the mattress for the millionth time since he had locked himself in the small room. He had fallen for Gia. He mated with Gia, for God's sake. The woman was his mate, and he wanted to be with her, but everything inside of Daniel was telling him to be repulsed by the other, and he couldn't understand why. His parents had drilled it into him from an early age that Omegas were the lowest of the low, and it was a disgrace to be seen with them. But Daniel didn't feel any of that for his mate. If anything, Daniel wanted Gia even more, and it was messing with his mind. This woman was someone he had been raised to look down on. Even though her kind had been extinct for ages, his parents thought it was vital to turn him against them. Yet, through it all, he couldn't look down on Gia. How could he ever look down on his mate? Gia could give him pups, a family of his own. Everything Daniel ever wanted but feared he could never have. Why would his family teach him to hate such a special person? My eyes widened at Noelle's realization. She knew. Fuck, she knew. This was bad. So very bad, but I couldn't bring myself to speak. I just laid there, scared, out of my wits. Why didn't you tell me? She slapped my arms, frustrated. Shit, Jaya, you could die. Wh why? I didn't understand. Because you're in heat, she exclaimed, or about to be, anyway. What's a heat? Do you have the desire to fuck anything that moves? She asked bluntly. Uh, no. The only person I had any desire to fuck was Daniel. You must not be in your full heat yet, she mused. Has Daniel explained what happens during your heat? I don't even know what a heat is, Noel. I don't know anything. Daniel can't even look at me. I don't even know what the hell an Omega is. Just please don't tell anyone. I begged, built up anger and frustration and sheer desperation coming out all at once. Hey, hey, calm down, she soothed, caressing my arms. First thing first, being an Omega is nothing to be ashamed of, okay? She told me earnestly. I snorted. <laughs> Yeah, tell Daniel that. Believe me, I will, she promised. Daniel had a different upbringing to most werewolves. He was raised to hate Omegas. His parents were a part of the reason they no longer exist. Some of my best friends were Omegas, and Daniel's family helped destroy them. It isn't Daniel's fault that he's confused, Gia. Pack laws on Omegas are seriously outdated. To the point, I don't even think they're valid any longer. Omega is a gift, not a curse. I didn't understand. Why was Daniel raised to hate my kind? What was so horrible about me that my own mate couldn't stand me? 
what exactly is an omega the question should probably be asked to daniel but i knew i wouldn't get my answer there noel sighed knowing the question was coming it's a long story i've got a long time i replied her lips quirked at my response okay i'll tell you don't skip out on the details i asked i need to know exactly what i am she took a deep breath then began to tell me the closest thing i could compare our hierarchy to is um so you know how humans have two genders male and female well us werewolves have three alpha beta and omega alphas are always male they are strong and their wolves are much bigger than other werewolves they also have a knot that allows them to mate and breed and they are the only males capable of fertilizing an egg they are also only able to mate with a beta or omega they cannot mate with another alpha i remembered that from when daniel told me about werewolves and i nodded signaling for noel to continue betas can be male or female and can mate with other betas but not omegas the males have no knot and are infertile whereas the females can carry pups and come into heat four times a year in order to conceive are you with me so far i nodded my head dumbly i really wasn't but i needed to listen to noel's explanation as much as i could right now omegas are special they could be male or female and can only mate with an alpha they have natural lubrication that only some betas have and the ability to conceive and give birth to a litter of pups she placed her hand on my lower abdomen your uterus is here she demonstrated as she pressed down this is where your pups will grow and develop you will then carry them for around six to nine months depending on which form you'd like them to be born in if you wish them to be born into their wolf form then you can shift at six months and your body will go into labor easily or you can stay human until the nine months are up and give birth that way though it's a little harder because they'll obviously be bigger does it matter what form they're born into yes they spend their first six months of life in that form as they're unable to shift the decision is to be made by the omega and the alpha parents but if the alpha disagrees then he can overrule the omega's decision so you're saying if i had daniel's pups then i'd be allowed to say what i wanted but would only get it if daniel wanted that too i couldn't believe my rights could be taken away from me like that hell the alphas didn't carry the baby for months didn't they i scoffed at the thought and noel must see my disgusted expression as i said the laws are outdated i'm sure they'll be revised once your status becomes known the world is a lot more open these days she assured me okay i tried to take it all in running the words over in my head what's a heat then well betas go into heat four times a year and it can be at any time omegas on the other hand can go into heat anywhere between four and twelve times a year i've known omegas who went into heat every month an omega heat is always a week long and it will take place the week before the full moon a heat is your body telling you that it has to breed it is the only time you can get pregnant during this week you'll need your alpha both your bodies will be uncontrollable and you'll stay together to not over and over again if you conceive during that time then daniel will know he'll be able to sense the change instantly if you wish to not have a child just yet then i can sort you with some birth control i'll give you some in a minute from lane because i'm not letting you conceive in your first heat if you don't mate during your first heat then you'll die it is vitally important that daniel gets his head out of his ass my head was swimming the fact that i could have a litter of pups was crazy then to top it off i became a sex fiend for a week up to 12 times a year fuck no wonder theo morgan said i was a whore i mumbled that bastard did this to you noel seemed shocked not because it was theo who did it but because i knew that theo had done it it shows how little he knows he was one of the ones who helped daniel's parents she scoffed i felt a little relieved at that 
You're not a whore, Gia. Omegas are fiercely loyal. They will never stray from their alpha and would die from their heat before they let another alpha knot them. People like Daniel's parents and Theo used to think that because Omega is so desperate for a knot during this time, that they were just whores who could never be at the side of a pack alpha because they're an embarrassment. They're wrong. Omega heats are the same as beta ones. The only difference with an omega is that the instinct to breed overrides anything else, whereas betas can withhold their hormones if they want to. Omega heats can also get messy, though. She winced. You want to know the gory details? I nodded. I would rather not know, but I knew I needed to. Well, you'll get all sweaty like you are now, only more so. Then you'll get whiny, needy, and desperate for Daniel. Your body will crave his knot and will want him to breed you. Common sense goes straight out the window. And if the agenda for the day doesn't involve fucking Daniel nonstop, then you won't be interested. The only pleasure or satisfaction you'll be able to get is from your mate. I really didn't like the sound of that, and I must be showing that on my face as Noelle gave a chuckle. <laughs> It's not that bad, she assured. The only thing that's a real inconvenience is discharge. Your natural lubrication will turn into more of a paste. It helps Daniel's sperm stay inside you. But while there is no sperm inside you, it practically flows from your body. I tensed. That did not sound fun. The best thing about that, though, is that you get amazing orgasms. I blushed for Noel's sake. You're so modest. It's adorable, she grinned. There is no feeling of pleasure more intense than nodding with your mate while in heat. Even Daniel will feel it more intensely. That's so much to take in. My brain is scrambled, I admitted honestly. I know, honey, she frowned. But I have to tell you because Daniel doesn't know these things like I do. Why did his parents hate Omega so much? Why did Daniel hate me? I was part of the Omega following. We protected Omegas for as long as we could. Daniel doesn't know this, and I honestly don't think I'd be in this pack if he did know this before you came along. His parents and their following thought Omegas tainted alphas, stealing them from their rightful betas. They thought that Omegas used sex as a weapon and would take it where they could get it, tying their alphas down with children. The reality was that they knew zero fuck about Omegas, Omega is to be cherished. They have so many things that make them special. Before Daniel's parents changed pack law, Omegas were ranked higher than Betas, and they still should be. You know about the things that make me different, I asked, confused. Sweetie, you're nearly in heat, and I couldn't smell that until I came near you. You can naturally mask your scent without even realizing it. This is how Omegas keep their heat from other alphas. You're not controlled by the lunar cycle. That is so that you don't have to shift while pregnant and can give birth to a pup in human form instead of betas who always give birth to a pup in wolf form. Your eyes aren't like ours and actually have some human in them. That is because omegas have their own identity. They don't bow down for any beta or alpha, only their own. You're stronger than Alex, our strongest beta. That is because you are Omega, and Omegas are incredibly special creatures. I could also put money on guessing you have already shifted. That is what's brought on your heat and freaked Daniel out. You didn't tell me you were psychic, I joked. I just know what I'm talking about, she smiled sweetly. I don't want you dying on me because Daniel's so damn uneducated. I'm going to talk to him. You'll then have to address the pack before your first heat. I can promise you that Daniel won't be stripped of his alpha status. You're both stronger than any wolf in this pack. I'm on your side, Gia. Yours and Daniel's. Thank you, Noelle. Seriously. Thank you so much, I whispered, wrapping her in a hug. Things were going to get better. I could sense it. Daniel just needed to come around and then we would face things together. As Alpha and Omega. Daniel Greenwood, you absolute fucking idiot. What the hell were you thinking? Noelle stormed into the room. 
Daniel was currently residing in, effectively breaking the lock while doing so. Hey! Daniel checked the condition of the lock. Yep, it was fucked. I can't believe you would be so fucking stupid! She yelled, slapping him. Did you just slap me? Daniel asked, stunned. He brought his hand up to his cheek and winced at the burning pain Noelle's hand left behind. Yes, you've gotten Omega upstairs, and you're fucking isolating her? Of course I slapped you. She could have died. She slapped him again for good measure. She told you? Daniel demanded, outraged his mate could betray him like that. Then, feeling guilty because Gia was scared, confused, and alone right now, and it was all Daniel's fault that she had nobody to turn to. No, she didn't tell me. I worked and lived with Omegas for over a century, boy, and it's not that hard to recognize their scent, she glared at him daring him to breathe even a single ill breath of Omegas. You were raised with fucked-up beliefs there, plain and simple, but you, out of all people, should know that nobody thinks like that any more. Do you really think that low of Gia? Of your own mate? No, Daniel answered easily. Fuck, I could never think low of her. I just had to figure this out. I've been researching, and I really wanted to go back to Gia, but the longer I stayed, the harder it became. He sighed, knowing he was in the wrong. That girl is about to go into her heat, and if you don't get up there and beg for her forgiveness, then you'll lose her. Forever, she snarled, shoving Daniel in the direction of the stairway. She's about to go into heat? Daniel spun quickly to face Noel. Yes, you idiot. It's the full moon in just over a week, and Omega's heats are always the week before it. You're so stupid sometimes, Daniel. I really want to slap you. You did. Twice, Daniel reminded her. And I will again if you don't fix this. I curled myself into a ball on top of my sheets. My body was caked in a thin sheen of sweat, and it felt like my insides were on fire. I was uncomfortable. Everything was bothering me, even the sound of my own breath, and I was so... So lonely. I just needed Daniel. I whimpered as my stomach cramped up again, causing my whole body to writhe in pain. I had not heard the door open, nor had I heard anyone enter until two huge hands were holding me steady and rubbing soothing circles on my lower back. Easy, Gia, Daniel soothed. He climbed onto the bed and wrapped his body around me, the body heat from my mate instantly soothing the pain. I got you, he promised. And I'm so fucking sorry. I, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I panted, feeling more discomfort. There's nothing to forgive. I could never stay mad at Daniel. We were both scared and I couldn't hold that against him. Especially with what Noel told me earlier about Daniel's family and his upbringing. No, it's not okay, Daniel countered. I will spend the rest of my life making it up to you. I promise. He kissed the nape of my neck to seal his promise. Daniel softly rocked both of our bodies, pressing soothing hands over my stomach and lower back to calm the aches in my body. We laid like that for a long time, relaxing into each other's company after so long apart. I smiled sleepily when I could feel Daniel over our bond again. I felt like I could sleep for a millennia after the past week. My thoughts of sleep were disturbed when Noel entered the room, followed by Lane who was holding up a syringe and needle. Great, I thought. Hey, Freckles, Lane said calmly, keeping her eyes on Daniel. You're in your heat and it's too late for you to take birth control orally, but I can inject it into your system for it to start working straight away. She took a step forward, only to stop dead at her tracks, as Daniel's warning growl, his arms tightening around me. Daniel, don't be an arse, Noel scolded before scenting the air. Gia's further along than I thought, she noted, looking between us with a worried expression. I turned in Daniel's arms to see him baring his teeth at the two women, his eyes glowing possessively as he held on to me. Dan, I whispered. Daniel's attention shifted to me immediately. Let them do it, okay? I asked. Daniel's eyes narrowed. No. Daniel, I pleaded. Please don't make me have children right now. Not with everything. I begged. Daniel shook his head as if to clear it before he seemed normal again suddenly able to focus on anything other than me. Of course, I'm sorry, he agreed, waving Lane over and keeping his eyes on me. I hissed at the sharp sting as the needle pierced my skin. Sorry, Lane murmured, rubbing the area and quickly taking a blood sample. What's that for? Daniel asked. There hasn't been an Omega in over a century, Lane shrugged. 
There's got to be something fun to look at in her blood work. You're a strange woman, Daniel shook his head fondly, turning to nuzzle into my warmth. We'll leave you to it, Noel smiled, grabbing Lane and shutting the door behind them. Now what? I asked, feeling a little more relaxed. I think you need some sleep, Daniel kissed my nose and tucked me under his arms. Then we're going to sort out this heat of yours. Sort out? I wasn't sure what that meant, but I was sure I liked the sound of it. Yep, Daniel grinned, going to knot you till you can't walk. How romantic, I deadpanned, a spark of excitement rushing through me at the thought. Daniel had been woken up a lot of different ways in his life, from a drunk Alex puking on him to Noel dumping cold water on him, and occasionally to steal calling for backup. However, he had never been woken up with a horny, whining Omega practically dry-humping his leg before. That was new. Gia? He asked, rubbing sleepily at his eyes. Fuck, Dan, I, I need you, Gia panted, practically rubbing her body all over Daniel. That was when it hit him. The smell. Gia was releasing pheromones like they were going out of fashion. Daniel was almost choking on them. The scent was so damn intoxicating that he was rock hard in seconds, his knot achingly desperate for his mate. Shit, Gia, you smell so fucking good. Daniel leaned forward and buried his nose in her neck, inhaling deeply and growling possessively at the scent that overpowered him. Want you, Dan, she said between kisses. Need your knot inside me. Another kiss. Fuck, I need you. Want you to take me now. Fuck me. Breed me. Her tone was dirty as her tongue practically invaded Daniel's mouth. Daniel had no idea what to do. He had never been so hard in his life and he was pretty much stunned by Gia's talkative nature. He did all he could do. He kissed Gia back fiercely, rolling them over until Daniel was on top of her and dominating her, giving her exactly what she needed. Fuck, Gia gasped as Daniel quickly shredded their clothes. Soon, Daniel promised. He briefly admired his mate's body before trailing kisses down the skin and swirling his lips around that glistening wetness. Shit, Gia moaned as she arched her back, trying to get as close to Daniel as possible. Daniel moved even lower, opening Gia's thighs wider as he pressed his tongue against the silky heat. God, she tasted good. Daniel groaned as he took in the taste of his mate eagerly lapping up the slick that was practically oozing out of Gia's body. Darling, you taste so fucking good, Daniel panted, struggling to control himself. You're so wet, fucking soaking. Gia moaned at the words, spreading her thighs wider to accommodate Daniel. It's gushing out of you. Mm, ready to just take my cum and breed you up. He kissed his way up Gia's body. Please, Alpha. Gia begged, pushing her body to Daniel. Not this time, Gia. Daniel kind of hated the fact that his mate was given birth control, but at the same time, it wouldn't have been a good idea to get her knocked up before her first full moon. When he reached Gia's plush lips, he drew her into a kiss, gasping as he pulled back and saw that Gia's eyes were bright green. God, you're so gorgeous, he whispered in awe. And horny, Gia added, so get a fucking move on. Bossy, Daniel grinned. He didn't take the time to open Gia up. He didn't need it. Instead, he simply took one strong push and slid home. Finally feeling complete again after a week of feeling torn. Gia's hands grasped at his shoulders, fingernails digging little half moons into the skin as she rocked to meet Daniel's thrust. Harder, she growled. Daniel could only comply. He would do anything for this woman. I could never describe what it felt like to be knotted and tied to my mate. I felt full, whole, and the whole thing was easily the best feeling in the world. It's everything. The fact that my mate was Daniel made it even better. Are you okay? Daniel asked, tentatively brushing his hand through my hair. Better than okay, I sighed contentedly. Better get some sleep then. Daniel noted, because it will take all of an hour for you to be aching for round two, then three, then four, then a hundred, Daniel grinned, kissing me hungrily. Oh, God, I groaned. What are you turning me into? Daniel laughed softly. I'm not turning you into anything, 
you're perfect as you are. Exhausted and sated, Daniel and Gia both curled under the sheets and fought to stay awake. Daniel couldn't wipe the massive grin off his face. If being mated to an Omega meant he would be this lucky and feel this happy all the time, then he really felt sorry for the rest of the werewolf community. There really was nobody as incredible as Gia. She was smart, funny, beautiful, and amazing in bed. Okay, so maybe sex shouldn't be used as an advantage, but it was one hell of a strong point. Gia was everything Daniel wanted his mate to be. In a weird way, they kept each other grounded. There really was no doubt that Gia was his true mate. Gia sighed heavily, turning her head to look Daniel in the eye. Will you still be Alpha now? She asked timidly. I... I don't know, Daniel replied honestly. I'm sorry you have to deal with this. Gia tilted her head down, looking away from Daniel. Hey, Daniel placed a finger under Gia's chin and tilted her head up to meet his eyes once more. If the pack react badly, and that's a very big if, then we'll deal with it together, you and me. If I have to lose my pack status just because I made it to you, then so be it. You're worth more to me than a title. I should have realized that sooner. I'm sorry, I was such a dick. He pressed forward and captured those soft, pouty lips in a gentle kiss. Stop apologizing, Daniel. But are you sure? Gia asked. I, I'm not worth much. You're my mate, Daniel assured. You're worth the world to me. Noel was pissed at Daniel, plain and simple. However, she could not really blame him for what his parents forced on him. Still, Noel still thought that he didn't need to be an arse for five days straight. I can't believe Omegas are in the world again, Lane grinned, eyeing the blood work she took from Gia. Omega, singular, Noel corrected her. Must you ruin my fun? Lane whined. The genetic structure is incredible. This is the most exciting thing ever, she beamed. They still got a long way to go, Lane. Pack law needs to be changed, and for that to happen, Gia's going to have to prove herself. Noelle sighed. Why did life have to be so hard for the young woman? She'll be the best Omega to ever walk the earth, Lane announced confidently. Hmm. How do you think Alex will take the news? Noel asked nervously. Alex's parents had been close with Daniel's, and he had been raised with the same twisted beliefs. Gia kicked his ass not even 24 hours after being turned, Lane shrugged. I don't think he'll have any problems. Problems with what? Alex emerged behind them, causing Noel to shriek. Scaredy woof, he teased. Oh, shush, Noel scowled at him. Seriously, what's going on? Alex asked curiously, leaning over Lane's shoulder to peer at her blood sample. Why are you checking Gia's blood? Found out what's wrong with that pair yet? Gia's no Omega, Lane replied easily. What? Alex's eyes widened dramatically. You're lying. How is that even possible? I think you'll want to thank Gia's genetics degree for that one, Noelle muttered a sour taste in her mouth at the mere thought of Theo Morgan. Motherfucker, Alex cursed. You're not going to create a problem, are you? Noelle asked. No. Why would I? Alex's brows furrowed in confusion. Because you were raised the same way as Daniel. Your parents told you to hate Omegas, Noel prompted. They told me to never be stupid enough to mate a human as they're not worthy or some bullshit. And yet, here Lane stands. Alex motioned to Lane. My parents told me a lot of shit I did the opposite of. Don't mate a human. I made it a human. Hate gays. I have a gay best friend and multiple same-sex couples in the pack I'm part of. Hate Omegas. I actually think Gia is a decent girl. He shrugged and grinned. Just one more thing to add to the list of things my parents disowned me for. I knew there was a reason I tolerated you. Noel beamed. We have to tell the rest of the pack. Why us? Alex asked, confused. Because... Gia's in heat, and unless telling the pack concerns Daniel's not in Gia's vagina, they really couldn't care less. Well, put it bluntly, Alex grumbled. Come on, then. Let's face the masses. Yeah, all six of them. Noelle had to laugh at Alex's glare. Fucking women. Why do I put up with you all? Because you love us, Lane kissed him on the cheek. God only knows why. 
I breathed a deep sigh of relief when my heat finally subsided. Being tied to Daniel pretty much nonstop for seven days a week was possibly the best thing I had ever experienced, but now I needed to sleep and eat and then sleep some more. You good? Daniel asked, softly smoothing his hands over my side. I'm perfect, I breathed, meaning every word. Me too, Daniel grinned. He leaned down to kiss me chastely before rolling out from my embrace and heading for a shower. I couldn't help the big grin that settled on my face, even though everything I'd been through and all the shit I was probably facing, I couldn't help but feel totally safe and confident in the arms of this man. Daniel was quickly becoming my whole world, and I didn't have a problem with that. Three weeks might not be a very long time, but I was pretty sure I was in love. But there was no way in hell I would be voicing that. I'm confident, but not stupid. Daniel reappeared in just a bath towel, and I tried to remind myself that I had just spent the past week being fucked into oblivion, and really should shower and face the pack. But seeing Daniel wearing nothing but a soft white towel and showing off a vast expanse of golden muscles did things to me that really shouldn't be possible. Babe, you're drooling, Daniel laughed, bringing me out of my mesmerized state. Have you seen you? I tried to defend. Daniel blushed slightly before grabbing me and shoving me towards the bathroom. If you don't shower right the fuck now, then we aren't ever leaving this bedroom. You make it sound like a bad thing, I teased, slowly stripping off my shirt. Daniel growled possessively but turned away. I swear to God, if you don't get in that shower, you'll never be able to walk again. What a nice way to become paralyzed, I stepped forward and mouthed at the back of Daniel's neck. You know, that shower is awfully big. I trailed sloppy, dirty kisses down Daniel's spine. I'd be ashamed to go shower by myself. I'd get all lonely, and... I didn't have time to finish. Daniel had scooped me up in a fireman's lift and carried me straight into the bathroom. When Daniel and Gia finally made it downstairs, they were greeted by cheers and woof whistles from the whole pack. Gia blushed and buried her head in Daniel's shoulder while Daniel breathed a sigh of relief. This was going to be okay. Cheer for finally giving your dick a rest, Alex bellowed, giving Daniel a hard poke on his head. Ugh, Daniel flailed in Alex's arms while the rest of the pack burst out laughing. Let me go, you freak. Say uncle, Alex demanded. Uh, let me think about that one. No, Daniel twisted in Alex's grasp and instantly had him in a headlock. Hey, pack alpha status. No fair, Alex whined. So I'm just supposed to let you win? Daniel asked with a raised eyebrow. Uh, yes. Alex looked at him as if he was stupid for thinking there could ever be another answer. Not a chance in hell, Ruiz. Daniel gave Alex an extra hard noogie for good measure and playfully shoved him towards Lane. I'll get you for this, Alex threatened without any heat. Of course you will, Daniel replied, rolling his eyes in the process. So, Nina piped up, got yourself an Omega? She eyed Gia up and down appreciatively. If I knew they were so good looking, then I'd have had a sex change years ago. It doesn't work like that, you know it, Lane laughed. You can't force yourself to become Alpha. Worth a shot, Nina replied easily. You have a mate, Daniel reminded. But I didn't always... Nina countered, earning a jab in the arm from Noel. She's lucky to have you, Daniel laughed. But seriously, Gia's an Omega? She asked with open curiosity. Yes. Daniel didn't see the point of lying. They all knew anyway. You know, it's pack law for you to step down as Alpha if you mate to an Omega, Alex asked, clearly looking like he didn't want to. Yes, I'm aware. Daniel took Gia's hands in his, prepared for anything. Well, that's total bullshit. Alex replied easily. You're both stronger than all of us separate, and so you're clearly strong together. There's no way in hell we'd take another Alpha, just so you know. But it's pack law. Daniel didn't understand how his pack could disrespect the law like that. It's your parents' law, Daniel. You were set to lead after them, and so it's within your right to change the law how you see fit. With the support of the pack, it doesn't matter what pack law states. Nobody in this pack is going to make you step down as Alpha, Alex assured him. It's not this pack I'm worried about, Daniel grumbled. It's Theo Morgan. Shifty fucker's been roaming around here all week. We haven't caught him yet, but we're going to kill him once we find him for what he did to Gia. Alex was furious. That man will pay for what he did. There's a whole pack here who will take your side, Daniel. 
He doesn't stand a chance. Alex was confident, but Daniel was reasonable. Theo didn't have much chance, but he had enough. Maybe we could just catch him, mark him up as Omega Old Wolf style, Alex's eyes shimmered with glee. Omega Old Wolf style? Gia leaned forward to whisper into Daniel's ear, obviously not understanding. Old wolf styles, otherwise known as normal wolves and not werewolves, Daniel explained. An omega wolf is shunned from the pack and usually lives their days alone and doesn't normally survive long, whereas an omega werewolf is strong and valued in pack status. He frowned slightly. Or they were until my parents came along. I see, Gia replied. Daniel felt sorry for his mate. There was clearly so much to take in. So he'd be like an outcast among werewolves? Yes, Daniel shuddered at the thought of being branded Omega like that. There is no worse punishment. I think he deserves death for what he did to me. Gia's voice was almost unrecognizable. The newly born werewolf was clearly hurt and upset with what Theo had done to her. I'll kill him, Daniel promised. We will kill him, Gia corrected. See, this is why we'd love her to stand at your side, Alex interrupted. She's kick-ass. He beamed and wrapped his arm around Gia's shoulders. Daniel had to laugh. <laughs> Gia looked terrified to be in the other man's grasp. He won't bite Gia. The whole pack erupted into laughter once they caught sight of Gia's wide-eyed stare. Well, I will if you want me to, but Gia, I don't think Daniel's into sharing, Alex responded, joining in in the laughter. I'm not into sharing either, Freckles. Lane took Alex's arm and wrapped herself up in it. Like I'd ever need anyone else, Alex leaned in to kiss Lane chastely. Get a room, Steele threw a rolled up paper ball at them. We have one, Alex defended. Why aren't we in there again? Lane considered. Hmm. I don't know. She grabbed his hand and raced for the door. But we will be. The rest of the pack soon left in their own directions. A few stopped by to ask questions. Sarah embraced her brother and then Gia, wishing them both luck. After being bombarded by Nina's curiosity, she was finally dragged off by Noel, leaving Daniel and Gia alone. I think it's going to be okay, Dan, Gia whispered to Daniel, stunned and happy. Yeah, Daniel smiled, kissing Gia softly. I think everything's going to be perfect. Where are you taking me? Gia asked Daniel as she peered through the passenger side window of Daniel's truck. It's a secret, Daniel grinned, refusing to give Gia any hint. No fair, Gia pouted. It really took a lot of effort not to lean over and pinch her cheeks, but Daniel valued his balls. Tonight was the full moon, and Theo's scent had been circling the pack home, so Daniel had decided to take Gia away for it, just to be safe. A wolf on the full moon was twice as strong as a wolf on normal nights, and the last thing Gia needed was Theo throwing his weight around. The pack could handle things while Daniel was away with Gia. Steele and Alex were more than capable of running the pack for a few days. If Daniel wasn't certain of that, then he would have never left without them. We're almost there, Daniel hoped Gia would stop asking. During the past two hours, he had been asked the destination a grand total of 76 times. Where is there? 77. You'll see, babe. Daniel took Gia's hand and kissed her knuckles as the truck wound onto a dirt driveway. Wow. Gia breathed in awe as the lake house came into view. It was a wooden lake house owned by Daniel's family, which was now only Daniel and Sarah. The backdrop was scattered with mountains and conifers and was unpopulated by humans or werewolves alike. It was the perfect place to shift for a full moon. Nobody would be around for miles and Theo wouldn't be able to trail their scents this far. It's mine, Daniel announced proudly. He came to the lake house at least once a year, always alone. Not this time. This time he had Gia by his side to share it with. They could sit out on the dock enjoying the sun, maybe take a boat out before shifting into their wolf forms for the night and flopping into bed for a few hours in the morning. It's beautiful, Gia climbed out of the car and stood facing the lake. The midday sun was catching her in all the right places, highlighting her gorgeous features. Daniel could look at her forever. Hell, he would. Then this place is perfect for you, Daniel replied. 
He came up behind Gia and wrapped his arms around her, placing a delicate kiss at the back of her ear, trailing them to the base of her throat and over the bite. Check out Mr. Smooth, Gia joked, leaning back into Daniel's embrace. There were birds flying overhead and some landing in the water of the lake. The place was an abundance of wildlife. There were otters in hiding, squirrels being little shits that would soon steal Daniel's food, like always, and even the occasional real wolf could be found in the woodlands here. Daniel had spent time with them once, learning how they live. It was a fascinating experience to be wild with no restraints. It's the perfect place for your first full moon, Daniel whispered, nibbling on Gia's earlobe. Gia shivered beneath him at the contact. I thought you said I wasn't controlled by the moon. You're not, another kiss. But you want to shift with me, right? Daniel had never considered that Gia might not actually want to and spend the full moon in her wolf form. It was so easy to forget that she wasn't forced by it. Of course I will, she assured, sealing the deal with a deep kiss. Daniel had promised me a fun-filled weekend, but we had yet to make it out of bed. My mate had said the change would be happening soon, but I didn't feel any change coming on, though. I definitely felt a strange thrum of energy coming from Daniel. It was as if all my senses were hyper alert. Can you not feel anything? Daniel asked, genuinely curious. No, I shook my head. I can feel your energy, but nothing's really happening to me. I replied honestly. That's crazy. Daniel was clearly trying to make sense of it all. Then call me crazy, I laughed, entwining my fingers with Daniel's. It was a little after dusk. The sun had set and the moon was slowly rising. The light was quickly fading and Daniel had decided it was time to lose the clothing. I was nervous. The last time I shifted was to protect Daniel and I hadn't thought about it. Really, it just happened. This time, I had no idea how this was going to happen. It's okay, Daniel reassured me, sensing my nervousness over the bond. I won't shift until you have. I'm here, I promise. I gripped his hand tightly. What do I do? Focus on your wolf. Embrace the wolf. He smiled and kissed my forehead. I'm right here. Focus. Okay, sure. Focus. I could totally focus. I closed my eyes and envisioned my wolf, letting that part of myself take over and feeling the shifting of my bones underneath my warm skin. It wasn't painful. Strange and kind of sore. Yes, but not painful. I felt all fours as my feet could no longer hold me and opened my eyes just in time to see my muzzle expand. Truth be told, I was probably on the best drugs in existence for all the trippy shit I just went through. When I turned to face Daniel, I could see he was already in his wolf form. Big, floppy brown ears and shaggy fur. He looked like an overgrown puppy. Daniel actually looked offended at my thought. I'm not a puppy, you ass. Daniel's words assaulted my mind, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I must have looked startled because the voice entered my head again. Werewolves have telepathic connections when in their wolf form. Cool, right? That wasn't in the handbook. My wolf rolled her eyes and Daniel's wolf snorted in what could have been a laugh. I can't believe I forgot to tell you this. Oh well, let's go. Daniel lowered his front half to the ground with his paws outstretched. A clear invitation to play. He yipped happily and raced off into the bushes, knowing that I would follow him. Where are we going? I wasn't as coordinated or as agile as Daniel, stumbling over branches as I tried my best to keep up. Wherever our feet take us, Daniel really shouldn't deny the puppy claim. Now, seeing as he was the one prancing around like a child, I couldn't help but play along too. Daniel's excitement and playfulness were impossible to ignore. We ran as far and as fast as we could, stopping briefly here and there to wrestle. Daniel always won, which totally wasn't fair. He also acted smug about it, which is why I keeled over laughing when Daniel tripped head first into a stream leading to the lake. A wet, pissed off, and pouty wolf Daniel was by far the funniest thing I had ever seen. Karma was a sweet woman, really. No bitch in sight as far as I was concerned. Daniel stormed off in a tantrum, and I followed quickly behind, struggling to keep up from the laughter that was swimming through my head. Suddenly, I understood with perfect clarity the best part of being a wolf. It was freedom. 
the running and playing and even falling flat on your face, it didn't matter because you were free. We continued like that for a few more hours until the sun began to peek out over the horizon. Both wolves climbed up onto the porch facing the lake, yawning and curling their bodies together. I found my body fit just perfectly next to Daniel's. I nuzzled my head in closer to the other wolf and sighed happily. Right then, nothing mattered. Daniel awoke feeling refreshed sometime in the afternoon. His arms were wrapped securely around Gia's naked form. They had shifted while they were asleep, and the sun was keeping them warm. Luckily, it was Daniel who was facing the sun, as he would have hated to see Gia get sunburnt. Leaning forward, he kissed Gia's nose, nuzzling her in an Eskimo kiss to wake her up. Go away, Gia grumbled. Daniel had recently learned just how grumpy his mate was when it came to early mornings. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey, Daniel sang. If there really is no eggs and bacon, then I'm going to be pissed, Gia muttered, sitting up and stretching her body. Daniel tried not to make his staring obvious, but it was a little hard. Gia's body was beautiful. There was no other word for it. Her whole physique was an art form. Close your mouth, you're catching flies, Gia teased. Daniel abruptly closed his mouth and tried to make it look like he wasn't just caught gawking at his mate. How about we catch a shower and I'll make us some eggs and bacon? I really like the sound of that, Gia beamed, but then remembered she wasn't a morning person. Coffee first? You're too cute, Daniel laughed, holding his hand out for Gia to take and leading them into the kitchen. So what's on the agenda today? Gia asked as she seated herself at the breakfast bar, freshly showered and grinning at Daniel as she watched him cook. Hmm. Daniel thought of all the possibilities. We could go for a hike through the woods, fishing, or have some canoes out back so we could hit the lake if you wanted. Hey, shoo! He yelled, flinging a spatula at a squirrel who was perched bravely on the window ledge. Maybe it was the fact that their scent wasn't exactly human that made the vile little rodents brave, but Daniel didn't care what provoked it. He simply wanted it gone. Gia chuckled at Daniel's attempt to shoo the squirrel, who hadn't budged one little bit. He's kind of ballsy, she noted. Shoo, Daniel yelled again, throwing a dishcloth at the squirrel, but it still refused to move. What? Do you want a fucking formal warning? Shoo! Gia's chuckle turned into full-blown laughter as Daniel began throwing miscellaneous items at the squirrel who had yet to realize Daniel was a threat. I will not be beaten by a fucking squirrel! Daniel virtually screamed, throwing a plate and missing by miles. Daniel, you trashed your own kitchen trying to shoo it away. The squirrel has already won. The squirrel actually seemed smug at this information. Gia couldn't stop laughing as she picked up a bowl of nuts from the table and set them down on the window ledge, smiling softly as the squirrel happily munched on the nuts while resting in the palm of Gia's hand. Unbelievable, Daniel muttered. I bring my mate for a nice weekend away and she turns into the Dr. Fucking Doolittle. He turned and continued cooking their breakfast. Well, a lunch. Gia shook her head fondly and ran the tips of her fingers over the squirrel's tiny head. The squirrel really was a cute little thing when you overlooked the asshole part of its personality. In Daniel's opinion, anyway. I found it ridiculously adorable how worked up the squirrels made my mate. It was like these cute, bushy-tailed creatures had descended on my world and tore it apart. Which was obviously total bullshit, but it was cute. And hilarious, of course. Daniel and I spent our day canoeing on the lake. I won at a splashing war, and Daniel managed to capsize during his demanding for a rematch as it was apparently unfair. Which totally wasn't true. It wasn't my fault that Daniel dropped his oar and couldn't fight back. I would never miss such an opportunity. Our evening was spent playing and chasing each other under the stars before collapsing in a heap once more on the porch of the lake house. It was surprising how comfortable it was to sleep on. But it was a shame that the bed wasn't getting as much use as it could be. Because, damn, that thing was comfortable. Our final day at the lake house was spent hiking through the woods and Daniel had a standoff with a squirrel who was mocking him. I admit I was concerned with my mate's issue with squirrels, but it was highly amusing, so I didn't voice my concern. 
It was dark by the time we finally got on the road heading back to the pack house. I curled up next to Daniel and Daniel's arm instantly wrapped around my shoulder as I drifted off to sleep. Gia, we're home. Daniel shook me gently. I really didn't want to be home. I loved the weekend at the lake house and really wanted to go back there. I yawned and stretched my stiff limbs, smiling sleepily at Daniel. Can we go back there soon? Daniel's dimples shone at me. Yeah, of course we can. Good, because I'd really like to find out how sturdy the dock is. I winked as I saw heat flash in Daniel's eyes. We will definitely be going back soon, he promised. We walked up to the house and I paused, catching a different scent coming from inside. What's wrong? Daniel asked. Strange scent. I think someone I don't know is in there, Gia replied. Daniel tilted his head back and scented the air. Shit, he hissed. Stand behind me and don't do anything unless I say so, okay? I nodded obediently and followed behind Daniel, trying to be brave. An elderly man stood in their living room. I could sense the tension coming from the pack and felt slightly relieved when Daniel linked our hands and threaded our fingers together. Arthur, Daniel nodded in greeting. This is my mate, Gia. The older man acknowledged us with a nod. It's good to see you again, Daniel. Hello, Gia. He nodded towards me and I returned the gesture. My name's Arthur Bennett. I'm here to talk to your mate. Anything you want to say to me can be said in front of my pack, Daniel assured the man, not moving from in front of me. Very well, Arthur nodded, meeting Daniel's eye. It seems you've caught the attention of the Werewolf Council, Mr. Greenwood. There are some concerns about your mate. I think we need to talk. I see, Daniel stiffened, his hand clenched firmly around Gia's. Would you like to come into my office and we can discuss this in private? Arthur considered for a moment before nodding. Lead the way, Mr. Greenwood. Daniel didn't release Gia's hand as he led them to his office. He didn't really do much there, kept hold of the pack's records and took the time to read a lot, but nothing that would make it count as a real office. If Arthur didn't want Gia to be part of the conversation, he didn't voice it. Instead, he followed behind them and took a seat opposite them. Are we going to be called in? Daniel asked. It was rare for a werewolf to be called in front of the council and when it happened, the outcome was never good. It appears that way, Mr. Greenwood. Unless I can sort this out now, then the other elders of the council will wish to see you. Arthur looked genuinely concerned for them. He and Daniel's parents had been close once upon a time. I assume this is about Gia being an Omega? He asked, though he already knew the answer. You assume correctly. Is this true? Arthur turned to look at Gia then. He stood and circled the younger woman, taking in her features and staring for a particularly long time at her eyes. It is true, Daniel confirmed. She shifted before her first full moon and has had her first heat, too, correct? Yes. Arthur frowned, still assessing Gia like she was an animal up for sale. I don't know what to think of this, Daniel, son. I really don't. You can ask Theo what to think, Daniel grit out. He's the one who did this to Gia. Arthur nodded. I suspected as much. Then why are we the ones in the wrong? Gia broke their conversation and Daniel immediately held his hand and Daniel immediately held his hand up to silence his mate. He didn't know Arthur's views on Omegas and the law and he didn't want him thinking badly of Gia. She has courage, your Omega, Arthur smiled warmly. Bet she keeps you on your toes. She does, sir, Daniel replied. But could you please answer her question? Of course. He took his seat opposite them once more. You're the ones the council is concerned about because you're mated to an Omega, which up until a month ago were extinct. I know this isn't your fault, but for the sake of your pack, I think you need to consider respecting the pack law your parents set out. No, Daniel stood, leaning over his desk and looking Arthur in the eye. I will not abide by laws that are a century outdated. Gia is stronger than any member of my pack, and the pack has all accepted her at my side. I will not step down, and if I have to challenge the law, then that's exactly what I will do. Gia is stronger than any beta in this pack and manages to stand up to even me. If anybody deserves to be pack beta, then it's an omega. My omega. Arthur's smile returned again. I was hoping you'd say that, Daniel. Daniel paused. Wait, what? You're loyal, Daniel. 
You're willing to risk everything you have for the sake of your maid so that she can proudly stand by your side. I respect that. He reached into his pocket and handed Daniel a card with two phone numbers on it. Those are the numbers for Zane and Ian. They're mates. James and Kevin are both Omegas. I think you'll benefit from getting in touch with them. They are all currently packless. Think about it, Daniel. You build up your pack and you build up your status. Three Omegas in one pack and the council may very well rule in your favor. Daniel's brows furrowed. I thought you said up until a month ago Omegas were extinct. This card looks a lot older than that. I said the council were concerned because they were aware of Gia's status. However, they are unaware of James and Kevin's existence. Somehow they survived the extinction of their species. They've lived isolated and undetected ever since. I used to be one of the Omega protectors, you know. He chuckled softly at the memory. <laughs> Miss Hardy hasn't changed one bit, has she? You sly dog. Daniel laughed, feeling a huge weight being lifted off his chest. So there are others like Gia out there? Yes, Arthur replied simply. At least two that we know of. I was last in contact with them about three months ago. They were up in Seattle. I think you should call them, at the very least, to talk. There are others like me? There was hope in Gia's eyes as she spoke, forgetting to stay quiet. This time, Arthur answered her. Yes, Gia, you're not alone, and if you try playing this in your favor, I can see the council siding with you. He turned to Daniel. If Omegas have been in existence all this time, then Gia's existence isn't that big of a concern. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, Daniel nodded, a grin splitting his face. I think I do. You know Theo won't go down without a fight. Three Omegas and five Alphas against Theo and his half-blood pack? He doesn't stand a chance. You're calling Zane and Ian then? Arthur asked with a grin. As soon as you get your elderly ass out of my office... Daniel was back to his teasing old self, and Gia couldn't quite believe Daniel had the nerve to talk to this man like that when he was obviously of some importance. Don't make me regret this, boy, Arthur warned with a soft chuckle. Whatever the council decides, I'll hold your favor. You'll just have to rely on Rowan and Valetary's vote. They shouldn't be too hard to win. They've always liked you, Daniel, so don't piss them off and play by the rules. Get in touch with the other Omegas, and I expect you'll soon be called before the council. I'll come and collect you and your pack myself when that happens. Thank you, Arthur. Daniel shook his hand firmly. I think you're quite literally a lifesaver. This is tilted in your favor. Try not to piss off Theo too much while I'm gone. He then offered his hand out to Gia. She took it cautiously. It was good to meet you, Gia. I hope your mate won't stay a stranger and will become better acquainted. It was good to meet you too, sir, Gia replied, sounding genuine. Things were finally looking up. Daniel quickly explained his meeting to the rest of the pack. The tension seemed to fizzle away at the reassurance that Daniel stood a good chance at changing pack law. However, they were stunned to silence, to realize that some Omegas had survived, and Noel squealed in excitement when he mentioned their names, apparently having worked with them while she was in Omega protection. Gia was also relaxed at the news that she wasn't alone. Daniel had become concerned with his mate, and having no actual experience with Omegas, he was pretty much useless. Now he could finally have someone to ask questions. Daniel left them all to discuss tonight's events while he went back into his office to call the numbers Arthur had left him. He tried Zane first, the man picking up on the third ring. Kinsley's burger joint, you kill him, we grill him, a cheerful voice rang on the other end. Uh, Daniel didn't really know what to say to that. Are you Zane Kinsley? The other man faltered. You're not James. Who the hell is this? Daniel laughed softly. My name is Daniel Greenwood. Greenwood? The other man snarled. What the fuck do you want? My mate is an Omega. There, straight to the point. Ha, ah, bet the parents are so proud. I actually couldn't care less. I'm standing up to change pack law, and I need the help of you, Ian, and your mates. Why would we help you? Zane's voice was filled with distaste. I heard you were packless. So? I'm a pack alpha, and Omega is my mate and pack beta. My whole pack accepts that. If you're compatible, then I'm offering all four of you a place in my pack in exchange for your help confronting the council. I know you want werewolf laws to change. 
running your whole life can't be fun. If you don't want to do this, then I'll forget you ever existed. But Arthur gave me your numbers and said you might be interested in helping. Daniel threw it all out there. He was desperate for this to work out. His future depended on it. The other man was silent for a few moments, considering his options. All right, Daniel, you still have the same pack house you grew up in? Yes. Then me and James will be there sometime tomorrow evening. I'll speak to Ian, but I can't guarantee he will accept. I really hope you're not like your parents, Greenwood. I think I'd hate myself if I was, Daniel replied honestly. All right, then, Zane accepted. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Daniel whispered, relief flooding through him. Yeah, yeah, you thank me from the bottom of your heart and worship the ground I walk on and blah, blah, blah. Daniel laughed. He liked Zane. You got balls, Kinsley. Got a knot too, Greenwood. He could almost imagine Zane winking comically over the phone. I pray I never see that. He didn't expect it, but the conversation began to flow freely, both forgetting that they had been about to hang up and instead joking around. Maybe the pack wouldn't be a bad place with Zane and his Omega around. You really think he'll show up? I asked Daniel as we laid in bed that night. Yeah, Daniel replied easily. I really do. Good. I smiled, kissing Daniel's chest and smoothing my hand over the vast expanse of muscle. We need all the help we can get. Times have changed. This should be easy, Daniel assured me. As long as you're by my side, I don't care about the outcome. I didn't reply with words. Instead, I littered Daniel's skin with open mouth kisses, feeling the man shift underneath me and his breath quickening. I grinned and kissed lower. The kisses were getting dirtier as I got closer to the waistband of my mate's boxers. Fuck, Gia, Daniel gasped as my fingers slipped underneath his boxers and tugged them off swiftly. I looked up at Daniel through my lashes. He looked beautiful, writhing underneath me. I smiled before taking Daniel's cock into my mouth, sinking down as deep as I could go and feeling my throat contracting around the girth. Shit. Daniel's hips bucked off the bed, and I had to place my hands over them to stop myself from being choked. I could feel the knot against my swollen lips, running my fingers over its impressive size, and relishing in the moans Daniel was making as I swirled my tongue around the head before sucking him back down, long and hard. In the past, I had never considered blowjobs to be hot on the giving end, but blowing Daniel was almost as good as getting head itself. My hands grasped Daniel's thighs, sticking my nails until it left crescent marks as I tried to take him deeper, but not managing to open my mouth around the girth of the knot. Gia, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Daniel groaned and threw his head back. There wasn't anything that could compare to Daniel losing it for me. It gave me some sense of control, and I fucking loved it. Taking every last drop of release Daniel gave to me and milking the knot for more. It was the dirtiest, hottest thing I'd ever done to someone. Wow, Daniel panted as I dropped down beside him. That good, huh? I teased. Daniel turned to face me. Better than good. I smiled brightly and curled against Daniel's side, not even caring about giving Daniel the chance to reciprocate. Yeah, things right now were definitely better than good. It was nearly dark by the time two cars pulled up in Daniel's driveway. He could see that there were four people in those cars. Daniel breathed a sigh of relief. Ian and his mate had decided to come too. A bald man and an overly tall guy who nearly beat out Daniel's impressive height climbed out of the first vehicle. The bald guy beamed towards Daniel and held his arms out. Daniel, the bald guy turned out to be sane. Hey, Kinsley, he walked forward and wrapped him in a quick hug. Glad you could make it. Ah, uh, you know me. Anything to piss off the werewolf council. Zane laughed warmly and wrapped his arms around the tall guy. I thought you said you never met this guy before. Gia appeared at Daniel's side, eyeing the stranger. I haven't, Daniel shrugged, nodding in a greeting as the other two werewolves came up to them. Daniel man here just has a good taste and enjoys long phone calls, Zane held out his hand. You must be Gia. Gia took it cautiously. Yeah, you're Zane? Sure am, he grinned. This is my mate, James. The tall, blue-eyed man next to him smiled warmly. Your eyes. Gia was clearly mesmerized. James' eyes were blue, but if you looked closer, they were sparked with flecks of gold. James laughed. Yeah, yours will probably be greener after a while. Really? Daniel asked. He really loved the green of Gia's eyes. 
I can't guarantee it, but mine and Kevin's are pretty normal. James gestured towards one of the other werewolves. I'm Kevin, he introduced himself and waved a little self-consciously. His eyes were pretty amber, but it wasn't because of the werewolf gene. They looked as if they were naturally a more honey color. And I'm his mate, Ian. The other man introduced himself, wrapping an arm around his mate. He was easily an alpha. His eyes were just as yellow as Zane's. Well, it's good to meet you all. I hope we'll become good friends. Daniel smiled at them all as his pack emerged from the house. James! Kevin! Noel raced towards them and wrapped both men up in a hug. I thought you were dead. Why didn't you tell me, you assholes? She slapped them both. Daniel was stunned Zane and Ian allowed her to get that close to their mates. However, they seemed to know each other and clearly had some sort of trust in the woman. We thought you were dead, Zane answered for them, stealing his own hug. I'm too clever to die, she countered, quickly hugging Ian, too. I gotta say, Noelle, you are one sly woman, leaving the Omega protection to go into a pack with Greenwood? I'm impressed, Zane laughed. I always knew you were one evil genius. Now, now, Zane, she scolded. I'm not that evil. You totally are, James added. Oh, shut up, she laughed and hugged them all once more before the rest of the pack caught up with her. Introductions were quickly made. It seemed the whole pack was at ease with the four strangers. Daniel hadn't realized how nervous he was about the meeting until he felt the surge of relief wash through him. His pack would accept the newcomers, and he suddenly had two more alphas and two more omegas to back him up. His pack was growing, and he would fight with every part of him he had to make sure he never left them. A few hours after the four guys arrived, I was curled up on the couch in the living room with Kevin while Daniel spoke with Zane and Ian in his office, and James was out running with the rest of the pack. Kevin was a quiet person, so much quieter than James, which was hardly surprising considering he was mated to the loudmouth that was Zane, Kinsley. Kevin and I had a lot in common. We both had a liking for music and reading, while also enjoying the joy that was video games and TV. I felt relaxed around Kevin and saw him as an instant friend opportunity. So, you were turned, and then you had no idea you were an Omega? Kevin asked curiously as he thumbed the strings on a guitar he had bought with him. Pretty much. I sighed. It's been a rough month. I can only imagine, Kevin smiled sympathetically. I can't believe Theo would do that to you. I can't wait to bring him down. I've hated him for centuries. I think I'll happily join you in that task, I replied, kicking my feet up on the coffee table. I hate him for what he's done to me. Would you be human again? Kevin asked, if you could. I took a long moment to consider that. I missed being human, but everything about being a werewolf gave me a home. I was free. I had a family who cared about me and supportive friends. I had Daniel. When I was human, I had nothing. A horrible job with no friends or family. No Daniel. If I could be human again, I started thinking about all the things I was missing. I wouldn't. How come? Because human me don't have a mate. Human me didn't have Daniel. It was easy to make the decision when I thought of it like that. I would give up the world for Daniel. It's amazing, isn't it? Kevin smiled fondly. There's nothing on earth that could ever compare to the bond of a mate. I think if humans could have a bond like that, then there would be no need for divorce. It's incredible. We sat in silence for a few minutes. Kevin began strumming out a soothing rhythm on the guitar, and I closed my eyes to listen, feeling calm at the effect of the music. You're really good, I noted. Yeah, Kevin grinned. I've only had a couple of centuries of practice, he joked. You're a fast learner, then, I teased. That drew a hearty laugh from Kevin. He picked up the pace and began playing a fast song that instantly brought a smile to my face. So, you're saying that Theo Morgan turned your mate knowing she'd be an Omega? Ian asked with a raised eyebrow. That's exactly what I'm saying, Daniel replied for the fifth time. And this is because he wants to take over your pack and he knows he couldn't beat you outright, Zane added. Pretty much, Daniel's anger bubbled just thinking about it. What a Bastard, Zane practically growled. Omegas aren't some second-class citizens who drag down society. 
They're not a fucking toy. They are a valued member of any pack. That's what I need to convince the council of. I can't have the fact that Gia is an Omega stopping her from being Pack Beta. It's unfair. She's stronger than any Pack member here easily. There's no way another could step up to her place. Daniel let his anger out. These men understood his position and could take his rage easily. They had probably been through more than enough anger-fueled moments during the long years. I'd be more than happy to stop living in secret, Ian stepped forward. We'll help you, Daniel. However, you need us, too. I just want my mate to be able to see his children again. You have children? Daniel asked, curiously addressing both of them. James never liked the idea of giving birth, so I don't. Zane shrugged. Not like I have an alpha legacy to continue. Kevin and I have three children. They all went off to live in packs once they reached 18. It wouldn't be fair to keep them, and because we have to hide Kevin's status as an Omega... They haven't been able to see us since they left, Ian said sadly. I'm sorry. Daniel couldn't imagine not ever seeing his children again. It must be awful. It is, Ian sighed. They keep in contact, but it's not really the same as getting to see them. Though I do thank the internet for making video chats possible, he smiled warmly as he thought of his children. I really hope that you get to be in touch with them again, Daniel said earnestly. I will do everything in my power to make it happen. You're a good man, Daniel, Ian noted. I don't think a better man could have been blessed with an Omega. Bless? So even after everything, you still feel blessed to be mated to an Omega? Daniel was genuinely curious. He could never imagine feeling anything other than blessed with Gia, but he really wanted to know if all Alphas felt that way when mated to an Omega. I feel blessed every single day, Ian replied honestly. I feel blessed that James can put up with my annoying ass, Zane laughed, effectively lightening the mood. What about me and Kevin? What about me and Kevin? We put up with your annoying ass, too. Yeah, but you're my friend. You have to put up with me no matter what, Zane replied confidently. I hear the same thing from my friend Alex whenever he breaks something, Daniel laughed at the resemblance Zane had to Alex. The pack would never be short of entertainment again with those two around. Oh, I just tend to blame something else when I break something, Zane shrugged, and they all burst out into laughter. I think we're all going to get along just fine, Daniel grinned. What's it like giving birth as a male Omega? And like, and like, are there any differences to um female Omega? It's fine. You can ask about anything, Gia. Kevin thought for a few moments before continuing. He was still quietly thumbing along the guitar strings. It was almost like a security blanket for him. It's the same. Messy. He managed to sum up in one word. Oh, lovely. I must have paled at the words because Kevin quickly tried to comfort me. It's the most incredible thing, though, he argued. Feeling your child growing inside of you, knowing you made them and they need you. The pride you feel from your mate every time they look at you. The first time your pup shifts. The first time your pup calls you Dada or Mama. Kevin laughed. It's amazing. In my opinion, having children is probably better than a mating bond. He smiled sadly. Nothing beats holding your pup in your arms for the first time. I smiled back. I wanted all of those things. It shocked me that I could even think about male omegas giving birth. Guys didn't do that. Only they did. I could carry a baby. I could give Daniel the family he had always wanted, and it made me feel valuable and special. Maybe I really was special. Do you want pups? Kevin asked. I do, I replied easily. There's nothing I want more than to raise a family with Daniel when this is all over. That may be sooner than you think, Kevin noted. The council is very quick with these decisions. Nothing like your human councils, he smirked. You humans suck at speed. I had to laugh. I'd always complained about how long it took for things to be done when I was back in the human world. It seemed so long ago, even though it was only a month. Wow. Is that all? Then I guess I'll be getting fat pretty soon, I joked. But the fat is so worth it. Kevin tried to be serious, but couldn't help laughing. Play something I'll know, I motioned towards the guitar. Well, that was a swift subject change, Kevin grinned as he said it. Oh, shut up, I waved him off. Seriously, play something I'll know. I sat up on the couch and folded my legs together, facing Kevin and resting my hands on my lap. 
All right, then. Kevin thumbed at the strings for a few moments before picking up a tune. Only if you'll sing with me, he grinned as my eyes went wide. What? You heard me, he continued grinning as he started singing. His voice was smooth and matched the song perfectly. I bit my lip nervously before I, too, joined in the singing. Daniel beamed proudly as he watched Gia sing along with Kevin. Her voice was rich and honey-toned, laced with her usual lazy drawl. It was sweet to his ears. He had entered the room quietly in search of his mate after his talk with Ian and Zane, and had never expected to hear his mate singing. Her voice was beautiful. Right at that moment, Gia was worry-free. She was laughing and singing along with Kevin, who was strumming the guitar and grinning like an idiot. It hit him then. It hit him hard and straight through the heart. He loved this woman. Daniel smiled to himself at the realization. He loved Gia. Tomorrow. Everything would be decided tomorrow. The law and Omegas would be lifted and he would be free to lead his pack with Gia at his side. Or Gia would be dead instead. Daniel's fist collided with the bathroom mirror as he screamed in anger. This wasn't happening. The council had virtually offered his mate up for Theo. He knew it wasn't the result Theo was hoping for, but he seemed to manage a smug grin all the same. Dan, Gia's voice was small as she stepped up behind him. She gently took Daniel's hand in her smaller one and picked out any broken glass in the wound, wrapping a towel around it and allowing it to heal. How could you? Daniel whispered, broken. Tears were blurring his vision, and he didn't give a damn about his reputation anymore. He just wanted Gia. If I don't do this, then it's not just me who suffers. Kevin and Ian have children they may never see, and I could change that. Even Gia knew her chances were close to none. She was defeated, and Daniel could see it in her eyes. Or the more likely option is that they'll never see their kids, and I'll have to go on without you. Daniel couldn't help getting worked up. His mate had offered herself up without even considering how hard it would be for Daniel to go on without her. Daniel couldn't even forbid her to do this because it was the council's decision. Ugh! Oh, he slammed his uninjured fist straight into the wall, oblivious to the snapping and crunching of his bones as his knuckles collided with the stone wall. Fucking council! Wow, that's quite a case you've made, Daniel. I have to admit bringing three Omegas in here was a bit of a surprise. Rowan, one of the council members, sat back in his chair and observed Daniel's pack. His pack was seated at one side of the room while Theo's were sat on the other. In the middle of the big hall were the three council members, Arthur, Rowan, and Valtteri. It wasn't anything fancy, but there were armed werewolves situated all around the room, not something to be messed with. I was a little surprised myself, Daniel admitted. This is preposterous. These Omegas have been living illegally this whole time, and you're not going to punish them? Theo intervened. His pack of half-bloods stood behind him in clear disgust for Daniel's pack, but he didn't care. I can't punish someone for living, Theo. Surely somebody with your educational background isn't that stupid. Rowan rolled his eyes and turned his attention to the papers in front of him. Daniel had always liked Rowan, and now he liked him a little bit more. Theo looked more than insulted, but he refrained from opening his mouth. Instead, he bowed his head and awaited the council's verdict. You say your Omega is strong enough to be Pac Beta? That she managed to restrain your strongest Pac member? Valtteri, the other council member, asked. Yes, Daniel replied. She managed to restrain Alex with no difficulty. Is this true, Mr. Ruiz? Valtteri asked. Alex looked pissed that he had to admit to it. If the whole thing weren't so serious, then Daniel would have probably left. Yeah, it's true. So she should be able to fight for her place? She shouldn't have to. Daniel knew getting defensive wasn't the best option, but he was going to let them use Gia. No, she shouldn't. However, I don't think Mr. Morgan will back down until he is satisfied and Omega is fit to stand at your side. What are you saying, sir? Daniel did not like where this was going. I'm proposing Gia and Theo fight for the position. If she can prove an Omega can beat an Alpha for the sake of the pack, then I'm all in your favor to lift pack law on Omegas. Valtteri sat back in his seat and crossed his arms together. His decision was made. Daniel was speechless. This council member was proposing his mate should fight to the death with an Alpha? Just so Daniel could stay Alpha? 
No, no way in hell. If she dies, then I'll die too. He knew the council valued him. Surely they wouldn't let him die. Actually, you'll be fine without her. The bond takes around a year to secure life forces together. If she dies, then you can go on. Valtteri shrugged it off easily. If she dies, then who says I want to go on? Don't be so dramatic, little Alpha. Daniel was furious. The council knew just how much a mating bond meant, and yet they were willing to let it break by something so devastating? I don't think it's fair to ask Gia to fight for such a position. She's not even two months old, Arthur intervened. God bless Arthur and his logic. Something the rest of the council seemed to be oblivious to. You're not asking her, Daniel yelled. As her alpha, I won't let her agree. The council rules over mating bonds, Daniel. You know that. Arthur's eyes were filled with sympathy. He couldn't stand it. Gia has to win her place. Valtteri sat forward once more. That is my final decision. I disagree with that, and I'm in favor of the pack law being lifted, Arthur announced. It was all down to Rowan. I want pack law to be lifted on Omegas, he started, hope flaring inside Daniel. However, I would like to see them earn that right. Every ounce of hope was destroyed. Only if you agree, Gia. All eyes turned to Gia. She looked pale and was avoiding all eye contact. What would I have to do, she asked in a quiet voice. Gia, no! Daniel pleaded, taking his mate's head in his hands and forcing eye contact. Please, don't do this, he whispered. It would be simple. Fight Theo to the death tomorrow. If you win, then the pack law will be lifted. If you lose, then you lose. Daniel would remain Alpha and Theo can have his victory, Rowan explained. Just the thought of it made him feel sick. What was worse is that he could see Gia considering it. Don't you dare, he warned. Don't you dare agree to this. I agree. Gia's voice was small but firm. She had just signed her own death sentence. Gia, you'll die, Daniel practically screamed, tears rolling down his cheeks at the words. Gia's own eyes were welling up as she met Daniel's eyes. It's the only way, she whispered. Come on, Daniel, let's get you to bed. This wasn't fair. Gia was the one who would be dying tomorrow, and here she was looking after Daniel. He needed Gia in every way, one last time. His knuckles had quickly healed, and he laced his hands with Gia's. Daniel allowed Gia to pull him to the bed, but stopped before she could make him lie down. At Gia's questioning glance, he stepped forward and kissed her deep and hard, putting everything he had into it just in case this was the last time. I want you, Daniel breathed, making quick work of their clothes and allowing them to drop onto the bed, wrapped up in meaningful touches and goodbye kisses. I need you, Daniel would beg if he had to. It was the longest they had ever been together. Daniel slowly rocked in and out of her body, pressing deeper each and every time. Gia held on to him and let him take her through it. She marked his body with bites and sucked bruises onto his skin. He wasn't in a rush to get off. He just needed to feel his mate, just in case this was the last time. He would wear Gia's marks proudly tomorrow and would mourn over them if he lost her. I got you, Gia shuddered, as Daniel came to completion, bringing Daniel down with her as she held him in her arms. I got you, she promised. Don't leave me. <laughs> Please, don't. Daniel sobbed, finally letting the emotions overpower him. They had just made love and it was beautiful and perfect, and he couldn't stand the thought of never having it again. I'm not planning on going anywhere, Gia promised. She cradled Daniel in her arms until exhaustion got the better of him. It took all the willpower inside of me to extract myself from Daniel's body. I quickly showered and made my way downstairs, running on autopilot. I was grabbed by Kevin and James and dragged into Lane's healing room before I could make it to the living room. Hey! I glared at them both. What are you guys doing? We have a way for you to win, Kevin told me. You do? There was no way in hell I would win. Yep, Kevin grinned proudly and held up a little vial along with a needle and syringe. He quickly injected it into James's arm before I had time to intervene. The hell was that? I demanded. Silver nitrate, Kevin grinned. And you just fucking injected that into him? I was prepared to call for Daniel, but I couldn't help but notice just how unaffected James was. Omegas aren't as allergic to silver as we let on, James beamed at me. The amount that was just injected into me is enough to kill a werewolf, no problem. 
Then how are you still vertical? I asked. I knew I could believe James because Theo had threatened Daniel with silver nitrate, and he had looked pretty damn terrified. Have you been affected by silver since you first shifted? Kevin asked. I haven't had any silver to be affected by, I answered. Well, 95% of omegas aren't allergic to silver like other werewolves, a secret we've kept between omegas for thousands of years. Not even our alphas know. What do you mean? Was that even possible? I couldn't even move when there was silver in my system when I turned. That was before you shifted, so it doesn't matter. Kevin held up the vial. Tomorrow we will inject this into you. It won't affect you, but all you have to do is get Theo to bite you. He just needs some blood in his system for the silver to get to work. It will poison him, and it will take you little effort to bring him down. So you suggest I cheat? There are no rules here, Gia. I suggest you win, Kevin corrected. How does the silver nitrate work exactly? Kevin took a deep breath and began to explain. The heat in our bodies that allows us to conceive is constantly running through our veins. It literally burns off the silver and doesn't let it hurt us if it isn't a large quantity. Then when Theo bites you, it will enter his system and take him down easily because there are none of the heat hormones in his body. You just need a bite. Though don't get too badly injured because it does slow down the healing and do not let Daniel bite you until it's out of your system because it will likely kill him too. Something that small a dose could bring down both Theo and Daniel, and you expect me to let you inject that into my body? I was very reluctant, to say the least. If you don't, then it's certain you will die. Without this, you won't be coming home to Daniel tomorrow. He'll be left to go on without you. You can't do that to him. Kevin spoke slowly, making sure I understood every single word. You said only 95% aren't allergic. What if I'm one of the 5% that are? I knew the odds were pretty much in my favor, but 5% wasn't small enough of a risk. Kevin winced at the question. Then the silver will kill you before you get the chance to face Theo. However, if you don't have the silver, then it will be Theo that kills you. Great. No pressure, then. I awoke in Daniel's arms. It was quiet. The only sounds were our shallow breathing and the gentle thumping of our hearts. Morning sunlight drifted in and scattered across Daniel's soft features. He was beautiful. I took a few moments to cherish the sight. If this was the last good memory I had of Daniel, then I was going to embrace it. Daniel sniffed slightly before waking himself up as he sneezed. He looked utterly startled. It caused me to burst out laughing at my mate's adorable behavior. You're such a goof, I managed between laughs. That was so not funny, Daniel tried to defend, still looking a little bewildered. It was the funniest thing I've seen in a long time, I argued, trying to stifle the laughter. You suck, Daniel pouted. Aw, poor baby, I cooed. I leaned forward and captured Daniel's lips in a soft morning kiss. I didn't care about morning breath. This could be the last time I had this. While Daniel was showering, I had decided to look for Kevin or James. I was going to spend some more time with Daniel, but I had heard my mate sobbing softly in the shower, and it made my heart clench. I couldn't do this to him. I had to fight, no matter the cost. Gia! Kevin found me first and quickly ushered me into his and Ian's room. You going to do this? He asked, holding the silver nitrate up. Is it cheating? Told you, Gia. When the Ware Council asks you to fight to the death, then there are no rules. I've no doubt that Theo will be playing dirty. This isn't like the human world. We fight, and we fight hard. This will give you the advantage. He held up the syringe in question. I closed my eyes and nodded, feeling the sharp sting as the needle pierced my skin and the silver entered my bloodstream. I braced myself for the sudden pain or weakness, but it never came. Looks like you're not allergic, Kevin grinned. Now get your ass over to the council and win this thing. Daniel had been silent since Arthur had arrived to collect the pack. Every second that passed was a second closer to Gia facing Theo. He would give anything to take her place. Hell, he would take on the council if it would help. Gia's hand was linked with his and her head was resting lightly on his shoulder as they pulled up at the council building. The pack was on edge, 
thick tension filled the air as they made their way inside. Theo and his pack were already there, of course. It took all the restraint Daniel had not to walk over to him and tear his throat out. He knew that action would only get him killed, too. Rowan greeted them. Good morning, he nodded towards them all. Gia, please step into the ring. The ring was more of an arena, if Daniel was honest. There was a huge area that was used for settling fights, where Gia could possibly die. Daniel wouldn't be allowed to get close. He would have to sit with his pack and watch to find out if his mate would survive. It took a lot for him to not be sick. Gia took a tentative step forward and was about to take another one when Daniel grabbed her, spun her around, and crashed their lips together. One last time. When they broke apart, they were both gasping for air. I'm walking back out of there, Dan. I promise. Gia kissed him softly before bravely turning and walking towards Theo. His heart was racing a mile a minute as Gia shifted. Her wolf was actually pretty big and definitely had more muscle than Theo's scrawny mutt. Come to think of it, Theo looked more like a coyote than a wolf. Daniel couldn't watch as Rowan allowed the battle to begin. He tried to tear his eyes away, but they were desperately glued to Gia, fighting for her life. I stood on all fours, head down and teeth bared at the wolf in front of me. Theo's eyes were glowing with venom as he circled my wolf. I still wasn't very accustomed to my wolf body and really pray the silver did its job. I needed this to work. What's it feel like? Knowing you're going to die. Theo's voice entered my head and I shuddered at the glee behind it. I don't know. How do you feel? A low rumble of laughter filled my ears. How will Daniel feel when he has to drag your torn up dead carcass out of here? He taunted. You son of a bitch. I should have waited and not risen to the bait, but I pounced. My jaws latched onto Theo's stomach as he spun to avoid contact. Theo yelped in pain and I dug my teeth in a little harder. The wind was knocked out of me when Theo threw my body to the ground, momentarily crushing me as the other wolf bit into my shoulder. I howled, whining in agony at the searing pain those strong jaws caused. I breathed a sigh of relief when Theo stumbled back, stunned. His wolf was heaving and making distress sounds that made it clear he was in a lot of pain. What the hell did you do to me? He demanded. I hear you don't like silver nitrate. It was my turn to be smug. I gingerly raised myself to my feet and limped a little closer. I can put you out of your misery if you like. I bared my teeth and stepped closer. Theo lashed out, his claws coming into hard contact with my face. I felt the warm sting of blood trail down my muzzle, but I ignored it. I almost grinned when Theo's legs buckled from underneath him and he fell to the ground. The older wolf knew he had no chance of fighting back. Even still, his next move stunned me. He tilted his head to the side, showing the clear expanse of his throat. He submitted. I was tempted to let Theo die from the silver. Then I remembered all the things he had done to hurt me, to hurt Daniel. He had turned me into something I didn't want to be. He had then threatened me and my mate. He deserved to die, and I didn't want to bless him with any more moments of life. Without thinking, I leaned forward and sunk my teeth into the other wolf's throat. I'd never killed anything before. It didn't feel good. It actually brought tears to my eyes to do this. But it had to be done. Theo couldn't live. I winced when I felt Theo's body going still beneath me, no longer breathing. It was done. I had won. Easily. Too easily. I unclamped my jaws and shifted back into my human form, screaming out in pain when it pulled the injury on my shoulder. Clamping a hand over it to try and stop the blood seeping out of me, I staggered to stand. I was oblivious to my surroundings, running on adrenaline when I was swept up in familiar arms and showered with kisses. Don't you ever do that to me again! Daniel warned, framing my face with his hands. You hear me? I'm sorry, I whispered. I was so damn sorry Daniel had to go through that, but I had to fight for this. Never again, Gia, promise me that you'll never risk your life again. Daniel pleaded, tears streaming down his face. Never, Daniel, I promise. I was crying too now. Shock and relief overwhelmed me. I had done it. I had won, and this is all over. 
Daniel wrapped his arms tightly around my body, avoiding my shoulder that had yet to stop bleeding. Lane came up to us and gently wrapped a towel around me before checking over my wounds. Your shoulder is torn up pretty badly, but it should heal soon and your face is already beginning to heal, so that's good, she smiled and gently wiped at my face. I'd actually forgotten about my cut face. All around me was a commotion. Daniel's pack was cheering their victory while Theo's pack was livid being held back by guards of the council while the council members checked over the Alpha's lifeless body. He was confirmed dead. I was confirmed the winner. This meant that Omega Law would be changed forever. I had brought Omegas back into a society that valued them, and I couldn't describe how proud I was of that. You did it, darling, Daniel whispered, kissing me deeply. Daniel, something's not right, I said to my mate as soon as I noticed something was off. My brows furrowed as I took in the surroundings. Something was definitely wrong. Gia? Daniel asked curiously, his own eyes scanning around them. I, I don't know. Some Something's wrong. Before I could say anything more, the sound of a gunshot pierced the air. I didn't feel anything. I didn't even hear anything clearly. Voices were suddenly screaming and blurred almost as if I was underwater. Daniel was above me. When did I even get to the floor? My Alpha's face hovered over mine, and he was shouting and screaming things that I didn't quite understand. I just knew I had to tell Daniel something. Something important. That was all I remembered, for my world faded to black. As soon as Daniel heard the gunshot, he knew exactly who it had been aimed at. He quickly grabbed Gia and tried to get her out of harm's way, but it was too late. His mate had been shot in the chest. Gia's body staggered backwards into his arms, and she suddenly became way too heavy. Daniel gently lowered her to the ground as his pack burst into action, shifting into their wolf forms and running straight at Theo's pack. There were security of the council firing gunshots at whoever had opened fire while his pack swiftly tore into the opposition. Daniel didn't notice what was going on around him. All he saw was the delicate bundle in his arms. Gia's eyelashes fluttering as she gasped for breath. Gia! He screamed, shaking the Omega but not getting any response. There was so much blood. Daniel's hands were covered with the warm liquid, sticky heat pooling at his mate's chest. She wasn't close so Daniel could see just how bad the wound was. He leaned forward, closed his mouth over the entry wound, and sucked hard. It was the only way to remove a bullet from a werewolf with minimum pain, thanks to their speedy healing. He spat out a mouthful of blood, wincing at the flavor. Her blood tasted heavily of silver. That wasn't right. Ignoring it, he leaned forward again and sucked the bullet to the surface, spitting it out when the silver burnt his lips. Just as he suspected. Silver bullet. Come on, Gia. He shook his mate desperately, but lifeless eyes stared up at him. Don't you dare do this to me. Don't you dare. His words were pleading and broken. You can't leave me. You won, Gia. You fucking won. How can you just win and leave me here alone, huh? No, you can't. I won't allow it. Gia slowly turned her head towards him, blinking sleepily and trying to focus. It was the worst thing Daniel had ever seen. He assessed Gia's wounds. None of them were healing. Daniel didn't feel so hot either, actually. He spat once more to get the silver taste out of his mouth, certain there was something more than silver inside of Gia. Gia, darling, say something, he begged. He knew it was too late. Gia wasn't going to make it. She was shot with a silver bullet in the chest. The silver was too damn close to her heart for Gia to pull herself out of this one. Her blood was tainted with God knows what, and she wasn't healing, and there was nothing Daniel could do. His head was swimming not just from all the emotions inside of him, there was something else going on too. There was suddenly a piercing pain in his head. His veins ached and he wiped his mouth on his sleeve, where Gia's blood was stinging his skin. He recognized the pain. Silver poisoning. Had to be. If you're going, then I'm going with you, Daniel whispered, pressing his lips to Gia's. For a brief moment, Gia kissed him back, Daniel quickly withdrew himself and looked Gia in the eyes. They were bright green and focused on Daniel. She smiled weakly, even with her bloodstained face. She looked beautiful. I, I love you, Gia whispered. 
Daniel didn't even have time to say it back as Gia's eyes rolled back into her skull and her whole body went limp in Daniel's arms. No! No! Daniel shook her nothing. Gia! No response. He gently placed Gia on the ground, feeling lightheaded as he leaned forward and kissed Gia's temple, trailing kisses all over her beautiful, lifeless face. He scrunched his face in distaste as more blood got onto his lips. This didn't taste like Gia at all. There was so much silver tainting that pure, delicious blood that gave his mate life. Daniel probably shouldn't have licked his lips, but he didn't care. If Gia was gone, then there was no reason for him to go on without her. He covered Gia's body in the towel and let his tears flow. There was still heavy commotion going on around them. The pack was fighting hard and the council were trying to exterminate Theo's pack for going against the council. But it was like time stopped for Daniel and Gia. It was just them. Daniel found himself leaning forward, lying beside Gia and resting his head on his mate's chest, wrapping her up close and crying as he waited for the silver to drag him under. It wouldn't be long. Gia was gone. Daniel had to go, too. That's how a mating bond worked. You're not alone, darling. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay, Daniel promised, threading his fingers through Gia's limp one. You'll never be alone. Daniel sang softly to Gia as the weight of the silver dragged him under. Gia had always called him a sucky singer, but ever since he had heard his mate sing that one time, he had managed to get her to sing to him multiple times. To think he would never hear that voice sing him a cheesy love song again was enough to let him give up and surrender to the silver pulling him over to unconsciousness. His body slumped next to Gia's, wrapped around his mate and allowing nature to take its course. Daniel? No! Gia pointed a warning finger at Daniel as he held the hose. Don't you dare! But you said you were hot, Daniel responded innocently. They had been mated for a week now and had finally made it out of the sex-crazed phase. While he was still pretty sex-crazed about Gia, he didn't have the whole sex or die vibe running through him. Instead, he could just relax with his mate, enjoy themselves, and get to know each other. Just like a new mating should be. Daniel, I said I'd help you wash the truck. Last I checked, that didn't involve you threatening me with a hose. She was holding a sponge to defend herself, though it really wasn't doing much good. You are helping me, he grinned devilishly. But you can't get your clothes all wet cleaning my baby if you're already wet. With that, he turned the spray on Gia. The squeal she let out was pretty embarrassing, but it made Daniel's heart flutter as laughter escaped him. You fucker, Gia laughed. She was holding up the sponge to try and stop the spray from getting her, but she was up against a hose and really stood no chance. You said you were hot. I'm just being a good mate and helping you cool off, Daniel feigned innocence. Well, then I guess two can play at that game. Gia grabbed the bucket of soapy water and raced up to Daniel, pouring it straight over his head. Daniel's head was bent forwards and his hair was stuck to his face, dripping water down the floor. He shook his head like a dog and turned his glare up to Gia. Gia had to bite her lip hard to stop herself from laughing. Daniel looked so pissed but so hilarious at the same time. Oh, it's on, Daniel announced. He turned the hose straight on Gia, wrapping his arms around her and holding her under the spray, not caring if it soaked him too. Stop! Gia tried to escape, but Daniel was just too strong. Let me go, you big oaf, it's freezing! They were both laughing as they fought, each getting soaked but not caring. It was easy between them. They fit. Drive faster, Alex, I'm losing them, Lane yelled. I'm trying, Lane. I'm fucking trying. Alex yelled back, his hands a vice grip around the steering wheel. They had taken a van that could drive faster than the bus they had taken to get to the council meeting. Lane needed to get them back home where she had the proper tools to take care of them. Both were suffering heavily from silver poisoning. While Gia had her obvious wounds, Daniel had a broken heart by thinking he had lost his mate. It would take a lot to convince his body to fight. She pressed her hand against Gia's pulse point. It was faint, but it was there, and that was all she needed. She gave Daniel the same treatment. Her brows furrowed, and she moved her hand placement several times but failed to find a pulse. Shit! Alex, he's not breathing! She quickly cleared his airways and began pressing against his chest. Alex! Daniel's not breathing! 
Daniel wasn't sure he had made the right decision when he chose to accept his mate as an Omega. But here, wrapped in Gia's arms while she was tied to him, was the only place on earth Daniel wanted to be. Right then, he was sure. You're thinking too loud, Gia sighed, nuzzling against his chest. Sorry, he breathed. Just thinking about you. He placed a delicate kiss on Gia's forehead and shifted them so that they were side by side. Only good things, I hope, Gia teased. Daniel could sense the hint of serious nervousness coming from his mate, and he reassured her quickly. Only the best. He gently captured Gia's lips while rocking his hips deeper inside his mate. Feeling his cheeks tug him into a smile at Gia's breathy little moan from the movement. His mate was in heat. His mate who could bear him children. It was too perfect. He could have a child with this woman. Start his own family. Something he never thought he could have before. And yet here it was, wrapped in his arms. You ever think about having kids? Daniel asked softly, trying not to scare his mate at the thought. With you? Gia asked. At Daniel's nod, she smiled. Yeah. And? Daniel prompted. I'd really love to raise a family with you one day, Gia whispered, answering honestly. Alex, are we nearly there? Lane yelled from the back of the van. Two minutes, Max! Alex yelled back, swerving the van down the dirt track that led to the pack house. Lane had managed to stabilize Daniel, but neither of them were out of the woods, not even close. Alex wasn't a religious man, but he prayed for his best friend and his mate. He didn't know what he would do if they both didn't make it. Rightfully, the pack would fall into his hands, but there was no way in hell he would have any idea what to do. How the hell could he? This was Daniel's pack. The house came into view, and Alex slammed his foot down to get them there that much faster before hitting the brakes as hard as he could and skidding to a halt outside the front door. He jumped out of the front seat and raced to the back, helping Lane carry the two lifeless bodies into her healing room. He felt sick looking at them. Gia looked like she was beginning to heal, but Daniel looked like he was getting worse. He didn't know what to do. Lane was the healer. She had the supernatural abilities to help healing and give her extra knowledge, but even she was lost for what to do. Alex had never felt so useless as he did right then. He could only stand back and watch his friends die. Do you think I'd look good with a mohawk? Daniel asked. He climbed out of the shower and stood in front of the bathroom mirror while he ran soapy hands through his hair and styled it up. Gia peered her head from behind the shower curtain and couldn't help but laugh at the goofball she was mated to. No, Dan, you would not look good with a mohawk. He considered Gia's answer before shrugging it off. I think I'd look good with a mohawk. All right, rocker boy. Gia rolled her eyes affectionately. Now, are you going to get your ass back in the shower, or do I have to soap up my own pack? She waggled her eyebrows suggestively and had to laugh as Daniel returned to the shower at lightning speed. Daniel soaked Gia up and got distracted as he began singing into a backwasher as a microphone. Cause I don't know how it gets any better than this. You take my hand and drag me head first, fearless. Dan, are you singing Taylor Swift? Gia asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes, he grinned. Join me, and I don't know why, but with you, I dance in a storm, in my best dress, fearless. He pulled a rocker pose, and Gia couldn't help but join him singing. She would ignore the dress quote for now, but Daniel was totally going to suffer for it later. Both of them began singing badly into Daniel's makeshift microphone, neither confessing how they even knew Taylor Swift lyrics in the first place. It's the first kiss. It's flawless. Really something. It's fearless. They sang, grinning like idiots. Gia couldn't help it around Daniel. Everything was contagious. The Omega leaned forward and kissed her mate, feeling the warm water flow down her back and kissing her mate deep until the water ran cold. Right then with Daniel, Gia was fearless. Lane injected a silver antidote into both Daniel and Gia. She wasn't sure how well it would work because she couldn't instantly get to it, but she prayed it helped. How are they? Alex asked from where he was currently pacing. Gia's healing pretty quickly, but Daniel's not improving. She sighed as she hooked Daniel up to a monitor to keep a check on his heartbeat. His pulse is pretty low, she noted. Is he going to be all right? I don't know, she replied sadly. Groaning from the bed next to her had them both running to Gia's side. Her eyes were scrunched up and slowly fluttered open. She took in the room around her, probably confused as hell as to where she was. 
Gia, sweetie, Lane spoke softly. You passed out after you got shot. We brought you back home and it looks like you're going to be just fine. She smiled warmly at the younger Omega. Where's Daniel? Gia whined at the croaking of her voice. Alex, get me water. She held her hand out as her mate handed her a cold bottle of water and offered it to Gia, who gulped it down gratefully. Daniel's not doing so well, Freckles. She offered her a sad smile and motioned towards the other bed where Daniel's still form was fighting for his life. What happened? Gia didn't even consider her own injuries as she climbed out of her bed and raced to Daniel's side. Both Lane and Alex were stunned at how quickly Gia had moved after being shot with silver. She should be plastered to the bed and struggling to even lift her arm. How the hell did you get up so fast? Alex stared at her wide-eyed. Yeah, do tell. Lane was pretty curious, too. Omega immunity. Top secret. Gia spoke quickly, taking Daniel's hand in her. Now what's wrong with him? Lane and Alex both stared slack-jawed at her. The whole time Omegas had been immune and had kept it from werewolves, Omega blood could have helped make other werewolves immune. Lane was suddenly very pissed at past Omegas, and judging by the look on Alex's face, he was too. I don't know what's wrong with him, Lane answered. He has silver poisoning, but I don't know how. He has no injuries, and all I know is he sucked the bullet from your chest before you healed. The bullet was silver, but there's no way just having a silver bullet in your mouth would do this. It's the silver nitrate, Gia whispered. Excuse me? Lane raised her eyebrows in question. Kevin injected silver nitrate into my blood so I could take Theo down. Lane had never heard Gia's voice so small. He said that one bite would be enough. Realization dawned on Lane. And Daniel sucked the bullet from you, so he obviously got some blood in his system. What if he dies and this is all my fault? Gia asked desperately. He won't, Lane promised. You said you're immune, right? And Gia's shaky nod, she continued. Then I think the best option is a blood transfusion. If enough of your blood is in his system, then it might fight off the silver. It might? She didn't look too happy with those odds. We don't have time for plan B, Freckles. Daniel is dying and the antidote isn't working. What if the silver already in my blood kills him? Tears were pooling in Gia's eyes and Lane wanted to reach out for her, but she couldn't. They needed her to be strong. I think it's a risk we need to take. You think you're tough, huh? You're just a stupid little furry thing with a fucking feather boa as a tail. Daniel yelled at the squirrel that was blocking their path. Gia had to try so hard not to laugh. This was the second squirrel who had managed to piss Daniel off on their weekend at the lake. It was just hilarious. They hadn't even done anything other than come into his line of vision and stayed just out of harm's reach. Gia thought they were cute, but Daniel seemed to have other thoughts about the stupid feather boa-tailed creatures. Daniel? What did they do to you? She laughed. They steal my food, Daniel whined like a petulant child. You realize they're all of ten inches tall, right? She asked with a raised eyebrow. Something else I know is ten inches, Daniel grinned and winked dramatically at Gia. Oh, God, Gia groaned. You're insatiable. I know, Daniel laughed. It was Gia's turn to laugh again when a stack of nuts fell from the tree they were standing under and directly onto Daniel's head. Fucking rodent! He screamed, flailing his arms around. I think I've developed a new love for squirrels, Gia decided, laughing as Daniel sent her a death glare. It was then that she really knew she was falling in love with this man. Elaine set Gia up next to Daniel and attached various tubing to both Gia and Daniel, allowing Gia to take some of Daniel's blood while Daniel took some of her. Hopefully the immunity in Gia's blood would circulate through Daniel and in turn the silver from Daniel's blood would be burnt off in Gia's system. That was the plan anyway. Lane wasn't even sure it would work. Wouldn't even try it this way if it wasn't critical. Don't I have to be the same blood type for this kind of thing? Gia asked. Not so much of a problem for werewolves, Lane answered, attaching the final needle into Daniel's vein. Let's hope this works. How does this work anyway? I don't know. I don't know if what I'm doing will work, but I'm hoping your blood will circulate through you both and the natural immunity in your body will fight off the silver in Daniel's. What are the chances this will work? She asked cautiously. Not going to lie, Gia. She frowned. But if he wakes up, then you might want to get a good body in. Daniel was floating. That was the only word he could ever think to describe the feeling. 
He was dizzy, and the lines between reality and dreams were too blurred. Somebody was talking. To him? Maybe? He recognized the voice, and his heart swelled at the voice, but he couldn't think why. This person meant the world to him, but he didn't have a clue who they were. If he could just open his eyes. Come on, Dan. Open your eyes, I pleaded. My hands were gripped tightly around my mates as I willed him to regain consciousness. The transfusion had been a success, or rather, it didn't kill Daniel. He still wasn't showing any signs of waking up anytime soon, and I was running out of hope. It had been three days since the silver had poisoned Daniel's blood. Three whole days of waiting. Three whole days of nothing. Please, I begged. I can't do this without you. He's still not waking up? Lane entered the room. She offered me a bottle of water and handed me a sandwich, ordering me to eat. It wasn't exactly a secret that I had not been eating since I hadn't left Daniel's side. He will. I feigned confidence. Lane checked over Daniel, listening to his heart rate and checking his blood pressure. She did some other stuff too, but I didn't know exactly what she was doing. His heart rate is much stronger now and his blood pressure is back to normal, she grinned. I think he's going to make it. Oh, thank God. I breathed a heavy sigh of relief and bought Daniel's hand up to my face, placing soft kisses on the knuckles. He should wake up any time now. The silver in his blood is completely gone. There is no reason for him to still be unconscious. You hear that, Dan? I whispered to Daniel's sleeping form. You're going to be okay. You just need to wake up for me. I placed a soft kiss on his forehead and settled back into the chair that I had been occupying in for the past three days. It was a few hours later when I felt something twitch in my hand. I gasped and quickly sat upright. Daniel was stirring. His eyelids were fluttering and managed to rapidly blink open, quickly locking with mine. Hey, I felt a tear run down my cheek. Daniel was okay. Um, hey? Daniel looked around the room a tad confused. You've been out for three days, but you're going to be okay. I promised. What happened? Daniel raised the hand that wasn't entwined with mine up to his head. God, my head hurts. I, I got shot and you played hero and ended up with silver poisoning. That was probably the easiest way to explain it. You got shot? Daniel tried to reach for me, but he was clearly still weak from the silver. Are you okay? Fine, I promised. More than fine, now that you're okay. You nearly gave me a heart attack, worrying. I squeezed Daniel's hand and kissed his knuckles once more, cherishing my mate. I'm sorry, Daniel apologized, looking a little sheepish. How's the pack? They're fine. Alex is certain he's going to get a part in the next Fast and Furious movie thanks to his kick-ass driving to get us home. And the rest of the pack got back here with nothing more than cuts and bruises. Seems we had more than enough alphas to keep Theo's pack from doing any more damage. The council opened fire on a few of them, the ones who shot me, I think. Not sure if any of his pack are dead. Don't really care either. You and the pack are all that matters. Daniel tightened his hold on my hand and a gentle smile graced his features. As long as everyone's okay, he sighed. I'm sleepy. You slept for three days, you lazy ass, I teased. Me, on the other hand, haven't slept properly for three days. If anyone's tired, then it's me. Daniel laughed softly. <laughs> you could always join me. The bed's plenty big enough. He used his remaining energy to scoot to one side and opened his arms for me to climb in. I didn't have a problem if I didn't have any room. I was back in Daniel's arms, and that was more than enough. I missed you, I confessed. Never thought I'd miss your lame-ass singing waking me up first thing in the morning, but I did. And your stupid jokes and floppy hair. Hey, what's wrong with my hair? Daniel's eyes were slipping closed, but he was managing to look shocked at my comment. Nothing, babe. I kissed Daniel's cheek softly. It's perfect. Still think you'd look good with a mohawk. I think that silver got to your head. I felt Daniel smile against my temple and couldn't help nuzzling into my mate's warmth. Sleep. I'll be here when you wake up. Okay. Daniel sighed and his eyes slipped closed. He tilted his head slightly, holding me tighter in his arms as he pressed his lips to my forehead. I love you, he whispered. I love you too. Couldn't wipe the stupid grin off my face if I tried. 
The next time Daniel awoke, he didn't quite feel like death with a pulse anymore. In fact, he felt pretty damn good. He smiled when he felt his mate in his arms snuggled up as close as possible. Gia had told Daniel she loved him back. He felt like doing a goofy dance to celebrate, but that would require the energy he didn't quite have just yet. Ah, you're back with the land of the living, I see, was Lane's greeting as she entered the room. Gia shifted next to him, breathed out deeply, and scooted closer. Daniel held his finger up to his lips so that Lane wouldn't wake her up. He didn't want anything to disturb his mate when she looked so peaceful. It's about time she got some sleep, Lane noted. Do you know how impossible it was to even feed this girl? She shook her head fondly and came to place a hand on Daniel's head. Your temperature has gone down, so that's good, and you're conscious. Always a plus. Sometimes I really wonder what makes you qualified to heal me, Daniel chuckled as Lane cut him a glare. Because I'm the best woman for the job, obviously. That, unfortunately, woke Gia up. She groaned, stretching her body out next to Daniel's and slowly blinking her eyes open. Gia looked adorable when she just woke up. Her hair was all sleep ruffled, her features were soft and refreshed, and her eyes were a subtle shade of sleepy green. Daniel couldn't resist leaning forward and capturing those pouty, plump lips in a good morning kiss. You two are sweeter than candy, Lane commented, grinning as Gia blushed. Think I can get my ass out of this bed today? Daniel asked. He really just wanted to go curl up in his own bed with Gia. If you can actually get your ass out of the bed, then be my guest, she smirked as Daniel tried to prise himself from Gia's arms. Too comfy, Gia whined, tightening her arms around him. She was clearly still half asleep, and it was too damn cute. Sleepy, she mumbled, snuggling as close as she could into Daniel's warmth. Maybe I'll just stay here for a little while longer. It was worth staying in the uncomfortable hospital-type bed for a few hours if he got to witness sleepy, uncoordinated Gia. I'll leave you to it, Lane laughed and shot him a knowing look before turning to leave. What am I going to do with you? Daniel sighed. He was answered with a soft snore. The pack was in much better spirits once they found out their alpha was going to be just fine. It had caused things to get back to normal and allowed everyone to wind down and relax. Daniel had finally gained the strength to get up and had slowly trailed behind me to the living room, refusing any help at walking. Most of the pack were in the living room watching a movie. If you're squinty and you know it, clap your hands, Zane sang around a mouthful of popcorn. Hey, Alex, why aren't you clapping? He threw a piece of popcorn at Alex's head, laughing when it bounced off his temple. I swear to God, Zane, I'll kill you if you sing that one more time. Alex picked up a cushion from the couch and smacked Zane in the face with it. If you're a touchy baby and you know we clap your hands, Zane continued singing. Come on, Alex, get clapping. The rest of the pack began laughing at Zane's antics. Alex threw himself onto Zane and began wrestling him. The pack suddenly wasn't interested in the movie and began cheering them on. Sean started taking bets and Nina decided to throw things at them. It was so normal that I couldn't help smiling fondly at the commotion. My bunny's on Zane, Daniel yelled, stunning the pack into silence. They all turned to face him except for Alex and Zane, who continued wrestling. Geez, I'm not that scary, am I? Daniel laughed and motioned for them to continue their antics. Some friend you are, Daniel, betting on the enemy. Alex was currently being held in a headlock by giggling Zane. Nothing to do with friendship, Alex, I just don't like losing money. He grinned at Alex's glare. Oh, I'll put my money on you, Alex. I laughed at Alex's whoop right before Zane pinned him to the floor. The wrestling continued for quite some time before Alex finally quit, leaving Zane the winner. The pack cheered and Alex told them all to go kindly fuck themselves. I was delirious at the happiness I was enveloped in. While Daniel was unconscious, I couldn't reach him through the bond, but now all these feelings flooded into me once more. It was incredible. So, Daniel, how are you feeling? Noel asked once the pack had settled down again. Really good, actually, Daniel smiled. He moved forwards to wrap his arms around me and pressed a kiss behind my ear. I shivered at the touch, but leaned back into Daniel's embrace. That's great, Noel beamed. Yeah, I agreed. It's really great. I received a kiss and thanks for that and found myself grinning against Daniel's lips. Ugh, get a room, Alex yelled from where he was on the couch, nursing a beer. We have one. Daniel flashed them all a cheeky grin and grabbed Gia's hand, using the last of his energy to drag me to our room. 
I'm so glad you're okay, I confided, curling my arms around Daniel. Me too, Gia. Me too. Well, it's official. Today, all pack laws on Omegas were lifted. You did your gender proud, Gia. Arthur smiled warmly as he took my hand in his. It had been two weeks since the fight, and it was only a week until my second full moon. It seemed like so much had happened in that time. During the past few weeks, everything had been intense. I was angsty and on edge and had no idea why. What about the werewolf that shot Gia? Daniel asked. Who was it? The council took care of it, Arthur assured him. They're no longer a threat. Daniel nodded in understanding, and I decided I didn't want to know exactly what the council did to take care of it. And Theo's pack? I was curious about what had become of the bastards following. They were banished from these parts. The closest they can migrate to is about a thousand miles away. I got to warn you guys, though. They're pissed. I also know that once news gets out about the Omega laws being lifted, and Omegas are in the world again, there's going to be a lot of other werewolves that are pissed. I can't say you guys will have it easy, but you'll have the full support of the council. I can assure you that. He shook both of our hands and we offered him thanks. I wasn't really bothered about other packs. I had fought for my right to stand at Daniel's side. Thank you for coming, Arthur. Daniel showed the elder man to the door. When Daniel returned, he wrapped me up in his arms. I melted in my mate's embrace. I felt a need course through my body, but thought nothing of it. This is how I always felt towards Daniel, anyway. I sighed in contentment and allowed myself to be held. It was official. I had done it. I won. I'm so proud of you, Daniel told me. So damn proud. I'm proud of myself, too, I admitted. You should be. So what's the plan? Daniel's brows furrowed at the question. The plan? Yep. Where are we heading now? I grinned up at my mate. I loved where we were, but I desperately wanted to move forward. Had a primal urge to have everything with this man. I wanted a family. Where do you want to head? Daniel asked, turning the question around on me. Kind of hoping I'll go into heat this week, I admitted, feeling the heat pulsing underneath my skin. Might even let you breathe me. I whispered seductively. Daniel groaned and buried his head at the base of my throat. You're going to kill me if you keep talking like that. Daniel inhaled deeply, taking in my scent. I can smell it on you. The heat. Good, I grinned. I pressed my body up against Daniel's, feeling drawn to my mate and needing to be with him. Is that what you want, Daniel? I asked, pressing my lips to my alphas. To breathe me? Fill me with your pups. Watch my stomach swell as I carry your children. Fuck, yes, Daniel breathed, kissing me desperately. Need it, babe. Need you. You have me. Daniel pushed Gia up against the wall, her words affecting him deeply. He pressed their bodies tight together and couldn't help the satisfactory grin as Gia moaned softly, grinding their hips together. They were still in Daniel's office and there was no way he was being tied to his mate without a bed to rest on. Gia wrapped her arms around Daniel's neck and leaned to kiss him deeply. Daniel quickly took control of the kiss, sliding his hand down his mate's back and cupping the swell of her ass. He reached back even further and lifted. Gia's legs instinctively wrapped around his waist as he carried her out of his office and across the hall to their bedroom. There were no words to explain how much it turned Daniel on to carry his mate like this, how it made him feel to know his mate trusted him and allowed Daniel this control. You know how hot it is that you can carry me like this? Gia spoke against his lips, doing her best to fuse their hips together as Daniel dropped them both down onto their bed. I was just thinking the same thing. Daniel grinned and quickly made work of their clothes. The scent of Gia's heat suddenly filled the room. It was intoxicating. Shit. How far into your heat are you? I have no idea, Gia answered honestly. It's like I could hold it back if I wanted to, like I brought it on myself. Daniel leaned back slightly, searching Gia's face and finding nothing but the truth. 
This is something we need to discuss with Lane and the other Omegas when your heat is over, because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to control it. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, Alpha, Gia shrugged off, clearly not caring about anything other than Daniel. I'm serious, Gia, that's not normal. Daniel was worried. What else could Gia do? Okay, so it's not normal, but it's also not the end of the world, so if you could just hurry up and get your knot inside me, then that'd be lovely. Gia arched her body underneath Daniel, urging him on. You really know how to romance me, Daniel deadpanned, grinding his body down into Gia's anyway. Enough talking, Daniel, please. Gia begged, her fingernails digging into Daniel's back deliciously. I need you inside me. Please, Alpha, take me, knot me, breed me. Daniel really couldn't put up a defense for that if he tried. All the blood instantly left his upstairs brain and moved south. His mate needed him, and she was offering Daniel the chance to have a child. How could he refuse? He showered Gia's body with kisses, not bothering to take his time because of the raw need that thrummed through them. He could feel Gia's want through the bond, and it just spurred him on even more. He reached down slowly and slid a finger inside. Fuck, you're soaked. Daniel gasped, burying his head in Gia's neck at the wetness between his mate's legs. Because I need you, Dan, Gia moaned, pushing herself back into the finger. Don't need prep, just need you inside me. Need your knot. Please, baby, please. You look so pretty when you beg, Daniel noted. He ignored Gia's comment about the prep. While he knew it was true, he also knew that adding more fingers would drive his mate insane. He suddenly changed his mind. Maybe he could wait a while and work his mate up even more. He added two more, slipping them inside easily and nipping against Gia's throat as the other werewolf groaned. He quickly scissored them inside his mate, thrusting them hard into Gia's sweet spot, knowing his mate wouldn't come until she was knotted. You're driving me fucking crazy, Gia cried in frustration. Please, Daniel. I'm having too much fun, Daniel smiled at his mate, thoroughly enjoying how worked up she was. Gia was panting heavily, her body was coated in a thin sheen of sweat, and she was making the most beautiful breathy moans Daniel had ever heard. Daniel sat back and simply enjoyed pleasuring his mate. Gia's body was spread out beneath him, her knees bent out to the sides, allowing Daniel to nestle between them, and her head was thrown back in ecstasy as Daniel continued pounding her with his fingers. Gia lifted her head to look Daniel in the eye. Her pupils were blown wide and her sinful lips were slightly parted as she breathed heavily. Please, she begged God. She was gorgeous when she begged, I need you. She threw her head back onto the pillow. Daniel, she gasped, fucking get inside me. I am, Daniel grinned, moving his fingers to prove a point. I swear if you don't knock me right now, then I'm going to get up and just jump in a cold shower. Gia threatened. I'd like to see you try. Daniel leaned forward and forced Gia's arms above her head, pinning them there with one hand easily as he pressed harder into her. Gia tried desperately to get out of Daniel's grasp, but found herself utterly helpless under her alpha strength. I could just hold you down and tease you for hours. He shifted his hips and forced his knees underneath Gia's thighs, effectively holding her wide open for Daniel to have his way with. Daniel, this isn't fair. Gia was so built up, she had actually shed a few tears. I need to come so badly, but I can't. She cried, please, baby, just knot me. Fill me with your pups and make me yours. Hold me down and make me take it, but God, just get inside me. She was babbling uselessly, but it was making Daniel want to ruin her just listening to that mouth spilling obscenities. I think I like you in heat, Daniel grinned. I could keep this up for hours and you wouldn't be able to come. He nipped at Gia's mating bite and kissed away her tears. You need my knot in you to come and I might not even give it to you. Might just hold you here and get myself off. Leave you all needy for me. Daniel, you do that and I swear to God I will knock you out, tie you down and just fuck myself. Gia threatened. There was actually a lot of heat in her voice and Daniel was impressed. Yeah, baby, you'd knock me out, restrain me, ride me. He liked the sound of that. He had to get Gia worked up like this more often if this is what she was reduced to. Yes, right now, if you don't fucking move. Try it, 
Daniel dared, holding Gia's arms tighter and increasing the speed he was thrusting his fingers into her. Come on, Gia, I dare you. Gia tried. She tried so damn hard, but she couldn't get out of Daniel's grasp. Fuck, she groaned, throwing her head back in bliss as Daniel hit her spot every single time. I'd love to have you tied down right now. I'd work you up for hours, making you beg for it. I could never get tired of that. Maybe one day I'll let you tie me up. He grinned at Gia, even though she was pretty much too incoherent to register it. I think the next time you're in heat, I'm just going to have you tied to the bed the whole time. Daniel, if you don't knot me, then there won't be a next time. Gia gave up her fight in exhaustion and let her body relax under Daniel's weight, surrendering all control. That wasn't so hard, was it? Daniel grinned smugly. He quickly withdrew his fingers and pushed his aching cock inside his mate, groaning at the intense heat and pressure surrounding him. Fuck, yes! Gia's body arched up to Daniel's as she finally got what she wanted. That what you need, baby? Daniel drew out and rocked back in hard, drowning in Gia's encouraging moans and coherent babble as he picked up the pace, pounding into her as hard as he could. Oh, God! Gia gasped heavily, her whole body helpless and unable to move underneath Daniel's. You can call me Daniel. That caused his mate to laugh between her cries of pleasure. Ass! I could pull out, you know, Daniel threatened. Go back to having my way with you. No! Gia's ankles locked around Daniel's hips and forced him further inside, shoving his knot past Gia's hole. Oh, God, yes, that was all it took for Gia to finally come. Daniel felt his own orgasm approaching as he ground his knot further into his mate, latching on to the mating bite and breaking the skin. The taste of his mate's blood on his tongue was enough to drag him over the edge, too, pulsing deep inside his mate and filling her with his seed. Whoa. Gia breathed, panting heavily and waiting for her heart rate to return to normal. Yeah, Daniel agreed, turning their bodies so they could lie comfortably while tied. Wow. Daniel awoke a few hours later when Gia shifted in his arms in her sleep, managing to dislodge them where they were tied. He blinked open bleary eyes and smiled wildly when he saw Gia's sleepy eyes look up at him. Hey, Gia whispered. Hey, he replied leaning forward to kiss his mate on the nose. I kind of woke myself up, Gia confessed. You woke me up too, silly. Daniel laughed softly, pulling Gia closer and kissing her deeply. Sorry about that, Gia apologized once they broke apart. It's okay, Daniel replied, distracted. He trailed his kisses down Gia's throat, taking in her scent and trying to decipher what was wrong. His mate smelt different. There was no heat, no pheromones other than what Gia usually had. There was another smell on top of that. It smelt new. He had smelled that scent before. What is it? Gia asked curiously. Daniel couldn't stop the wide grin splitting his face as he locked eyes with his mate. You're pregnant! No, Daniel, for the millionth time, I will not give Gia an ultrasound. Lane heaved an annoyed sigh as Daniel flashed her the puppy dog eyes. She's not even a week pregnant, you moron. There is literally nothing but a womb to see. Daniel knew that realistically Lane was right and there was no way in hell he would be able to see his child or children if Lane performed an ultrasound now. But that wasn't the point. He was just so damn excited that he couldn't wait until Gia was ten weeks to know how many pups she was bearing. Is there any way to know sooner? He batted his eyelashes at Lane, but it didn't work. She was immune. No, Daniel, you'll have to wait nine more weeks like everybody else. She smiled fondly at him and poked his lip as he pouted. Have you decided how they'll be born yet? Don't change the subject, Daniel glared at her with little heat. I'm curious. I need to know how soon I have to prepare for these babies. Will they be furry-born pups in six months or naked and baby-like in nine months? Lane had delivered many pups since she had been turned, and Daniel was more than happy for her to care for his pregnant mate, even though Gia would be the first Omega she had treated. She wants to go the nine months because the thought of furry babies freak her out, but I don't know if I can wait that long, Daniel whined, knowing he sounded childish. He respected Gia's decision and could understand how much she probably was freaked out, but that would mean he would have to wait an extra three months to meet his pup, or pups. Patience was just something Daniel struggled with. 
All right, then, she smiled sweetly, knowing Daniel wasn't pleased with the choice. Just have her come and see me if she wants to talk things through. She's talking to Kevin right now. I'm worried about her, Daniel confessed. Lane studied him for a long moment. You're not just worried about the pregnancy, are you? No, Daniel was worried about much more than that. In the past week, he had discovered that his mate was immune to silver, and while he was grateful for that because she was alive, he was very concerned. Then there was the fact that she practically turned her heat on. Daniel knew enough about Omegas to know that that wasn't possible. He even thought about stooping so low as to ask Theo what the hell was going on, but he couldn't do that because Theo was dead. Want to talk to your Aunt Lane? Her voice had turned soothing. She was staring at Daniel with soft sympathy. Nah, he shrugged it off. This was something he could do without his pack knowing. Gia was just starting to fit in here, and Daniel wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize that. He sighed and turned to find his mate, checking through all the rooms he came across and greeting various members of the pack until he found her in the kitchen with Kevin and Sean. Gia was dressed in light blue jeans, a white t-shirt, and was barefoot. It sent a spark through him at how gorgeous his mate was, how relaxed she was here, and an exciting thrill at how those jeans wouldn't fit for much longer. Gia noticed his arrival first, turning from her conversation and flashing her mate a dazzling smile. Her hands were curled around a coffee mug, and she was munching on one of Sean's famous cookies. That better not be coffee, Daniel scolded. It's hot chocolate, Gia assured him. She patted towards Daniel and captured his lips in a gentle kiss. He could taste the sugary chocolate on his mate's tongue and lapped away at the flavor until all that was left was Gia. She pulled away reluctantly at the cat calls behind them, looking a little dazed as she looked up at Daniel. That was some good morning kiss. Yeah, he agreed, chuckling softly at Sean making gagging noises behind Gia. Some kiss. He leaned forward once more and placed a chaste kiss on her lips before asking what was for breakfast. Well, I'm eating Sean's cookies and everyone else is having pancakes, but I don't like the sound of that, so I'll just sit here eating cookies and getting fat because this child already has your appetite. Gia scowled at Daniel, but was grinning too, so Daniel didn't take her words to heart. If you call being pregnant fat one more time, then I'll hit you with the spatula, Kevin threatened from where he was making pancakes. I have to agree with him there, babe, Daniel had to laugh at Gia's pout. It was so damn cute. You're pregnant with my child, so I could never see you as anything more than beautiful. His words were honest. Gia had blessed him with the greatest gift of all, and Daniel could only love her more and more for that. I'll remember that when I'm nine months pregnant and making you wait on me hand and foot, she grinned and turned back to where she was previously standing, shoveling a couple of marshmallows into her mouth and adding a few more to her hot chocolate. Definitely Daniel's child. Sean noted as he watched Gia add another spoonful of sugar to her drink. You don't think you're overdoing the sweetness, babe? Daniel asked. Even he was feeling grossed out at Gia's sudden desire for heart attack-inducing food. Are you saying I'm fat? Gia gave him a you-better-fucking-not-be look, and Daniel backed down instantly. God, no, he answered as fast as he could. Just sweet enough already. Sap, Sean commented as Daniel helped himself to one of Sean's cookies handing an over-eager Gia another one. You're just jealous, Sean, he glared at his friend, but happily accepted a cookie from him. You're only a week pregnant. Should you even be having aversions to food yet, or cravings for that matter? I had cravings as soon as I conceived, Kevin answered for him, and they were for fish. I fucking hate fish. At least Gia is craving food that actually tastes nice. All three of them laughed at Kevin's complaint. He shrugged them off and continued cooking. The four newcomers were fitting in well with the pack that it was hard to remember that they hadn't always been there. Sure, Alex was about an anxiety attack away from a mental breakdown from Zane's antics. But hey, you can't have everything, and it was damn sure entertaining to watch them together. Thinking of Alex, the man himself stormed into the kitchen with a face like thunder and the words fat pussy written on his forehead in Sharpie. Daniel had to bite his lip very hard to refrain from laughing but Gia and Sean had no such luck, both bursting out into hysterical laughter the second they caught sight of him. Alex, you just went to the store, right? Sean asked between fits of laughter. Yes, I just fucking went to the store, Alex yelled, more pissed than Daniel had seen him in a long time. I got slapped by three different women before one of them kindly pointed out what the fuck was wrong with me. 
He didn't even spell it right. Well, you'd know, Kevin laughed. Oh, fuck you all. His face was getting red from anger. Zane, he practically screamed. You better run because you're a dead man. That was all the warning he gave before he stormed back out in search of the other man. Never a dull moment in this pack, Gia noted. She took her place at Daniel's side and wrapped her arms around his back while resting her head on Daniel's shoulder. Since she had gotten pregnant, she had been very clingy and cuddly. Daniel didn't mind one bit, but he couldn't help thinking it was strange how quickly his mate was being affected by these things. Tomorrow would be the full moon in exactly one week since she had conceived. Werewolf pregnancies were different from human ones, and Omega pregnancies were even more different. But Daniel couldn't help worrying for his mate and unborn child. Eating at the dinner table was always an extraordinary experience, and today was no different. Everyone was eating their pancakes while I was happily munching my way through a plate of cookies and my third hot chocolate. Tension coiled through the air as Alex and Zane sat opposite each other. Zane couldn't stop grinning, and I could practically see every muscle inside of Alex clench as he refrained from strangling the other man. So, is anybody going to tell me why my mate has an obscenity written on his forehead? It was Lane who finally broke the silence, glaring at Zane as she did so. He fell asleep on the couch last night, and I may have had a sharpie handy, Zane shrugged. He did to me last week, and it took three whole days for anyone to tell me. Yeah, but that was just a drawing on the back of your stupid bald head, Alex tried to defend. A picture of a cock, Alex, Zane countered. Think of this as payback. We are not even, Zane. Not even close to being even. You don't realize how humiliated I was to have everybody staring at me. Plus, I got slapped three times. Alex had slammed down his cutlery and was squinting at Zane. I focused intently on my plate of cookies and caught Daniel smirking out the corner of his eye. Your slappable Alex shouldn't come as a surprise. Zane grinned around a mouthful of pancake. I can't believe you haven't been slapped sooner at the store. You squinted everyone anyway, so it was only a matter of time before somebody got offended. They probably didn't even notice the writing. I'll kill you, Alex yelled as his body surged straight over the table and tackled Zane to the ground. Shit, Daniel sighed as he watched them get their frustrations out on each other. Are you going to do anything? Lane screeched at him. There's nothing I can do. They're getting their anger out one way or another. And while I'd rather it wasn't at my dinner table, if I split them up, they're just going to fight again. Daniel shrugged and continued eating. He made sense in a way. I know letting them release their anger was most likely going to have the best results. It made me understand the qualities of a good alpha. Daniel was a good alpha as he saw the logic in things. Even though I probably would have split them up by now, I understood why Daniel wasn't. I swear to God, if you had hair, I'd rip it out. Alex yelled as he wrestled with Zane. Resulting to hair pulling, Alex can't beat me as a man, Zane taunted, earning himself an elbow to the gut. Daniel, can you please at least move it from the dinner table? Sean asked. It's putting me off my breakfast. Part of me wants to eat and the other part of me wants to take bed, so if you could just remove the temptation, then that'd be great. Aw, oh, but it's funny, Nina whined as Daniel stood from his chair and virtually carried the fighting men from the dining room. Nina was silenced by Noelle's warning look, even though Noelle herself was clearly trying not to laugh, too. Seriously, James, how do you cope? I asked the older werewolf. I thought Alex was bad enough, but Zane's like Alex on steroids. James rolled his eyes at the thought of his mate. I learned to block him out and let him taunt everyone else instead. You ignore him long enough and he gets bored. Explains why he chose Alex. That man does not let things go, Steele added, speaking for the first time since they sat down to eat. Daniel returned a few moments later with an annoyed look on his face and a bag of marshmallows for me. I was sure my eyes lit up at the sight as Daniel gave me a private smile before handing me the bag. I didn't know why I had such a love for the fluffy, sugary things, but it meant a lot to me that Daniel would bring them to me. Not exactly a healthy breakfast, Lane noted, fixing me with a stern look. Just looking at what you guys are eating makes me feel sick. I shrugged and took a sip of my cooling hot chocolate. And so you thought you'd ingest your body weight in sugar. She laughed at my blush before letting the subject slip. I guess it's good you're eating instead of throwing up. Oh, God, I groaned. I hadn't thought about that. 
Will I have morning sickness soon? Probably, Freckles, Lane managed to give me a sympathetic half-smile. Normally, only for the first couple of months. Months? I did not like the sound of that. And then you'll have a beautiful child to show for it. Daniel took my hand in his and tried to distract me from the months of sickness awaiting. Our child. Yeah, that sounded better. I couldn't help matching Daniel's stupid grin at the words. Our child. Uh, Gia, you're getting cookie crumbs all over the bed. Daniel's words broke through my feast of cookies and candy. I was only a week pregnant and yet I was already being affected by all these sweet cravings. Luckily, I wasn't suffering nausea, but I still wasn't happy about the quantity of food I was eating. I fixed Daniel with a glare and he held his hands up in surrender, allowing me a smirk of satisfaction as I continued munching. It's the full moon tonight, Daniel stated, looking nervous. It was kind of cute, actually, the way he was tiptoeing around me as if I would blow my fuse at any minute. Nine months of that was going to get annoying, though. Well done, Dan. Was there anything relevant to go with that? It was Daniel's turn to glare at me, but I just smiled sweetly, knowing my mate could never stay angry at me. I was wondering if you'd shift with me. I know you don't have to, but I really liked being able to shift with you back at the lake house, and I know you liked it, too. Dan placed a hand on his arm to stop him. You're babbling. Right. Daniel bit his lip and looked into my eyes. In truth, I hadn't even thought about shifting. I didn't know exactly how good it would be for the baby. Beta shifted during their pregnancies, but Omegas could control their shifts for a reason. Maybe it was harmful? There was nothing in the universe that could get me to risk my child. I'll have to talk to Kevin, see if shifting is okay. I want to shift with my mate, but I really wasn't going to until I was absolutely certain it was okay to do so. Sure, Daniel nuzzled my nose in an Eskimo kiss. It always made me smile when he did that, and Daniel did that a lot. Maybe ask Lane too, just to be sure? Great. I closed the distance between us and softly captured Daniel's lips before rolling out of bed, taking my cookies with me. Shifting is actually really good for the baby, Kevin assured me when I found him once again in the kitchen with Sean. Even when they weren't cooking, they seemed to hang out there. You sure? I still wasn't convinced. Gia, Kevin bit his lip to stop laughing. You need to relax. I shifted with all my litters. It's really good for them. Helps them get used to shifting because they shift with your body. If they're not born in their shifted form, then how long will it be before they can shift? There was no way in hell I was giving birth to anything furry. Nuh-uh. Not happening. They always shift on the sixth full moon after they're born. Kevin handed me a mug of hot chocolate, which I accepted gratefully but I knew I wouldn't be grateful for long because apparently being pregnant and pack beta meant nobody wanted me to do anything for myself. It was fun when I was feeling lazy, but kind of annoying when I have looked after myself my whole life. And you're sure shifting is all right, just to make extra sure. Both Sean and Kevin laughed at me. It's really good for the baby to shift. The more you shift, the easier they'll find it to shift when they come of age. Trust me on this one. I breathed a sigh of relief. I could relax my mind for a while now before shifting with Daniel. I took a sip of my hot chocolate and felt a wave of warmth surge through me. My baby was happy. Or rather, my newly fertilized egg was happy, as it was nothing like a baby just yet. Hey, do you have any more of those cookies? I asked, hopefully. Sean nodded his head towards the oven where a fresh batch was cooking away. You're my hero, Sean. I lifted my nose slightly to scent the air. It was sugary and sweet and just smelled heavenly. You're hired to make them every day. Oh, God, Sean groaned. Do I have to? The baby likes it. I stuck out my pouty bottom lip. If Daniel could manage puppy eyes, then so could I. Sorry, Gia, but Daniel's made us all immune after the amount of times he's used those. He laughed and turned to check on his baked goods. Was a nice try, though. Damn it. Whoa, we're halfway there. Daniel sang as he rinsed the shampoo from his hair. Whoa, living on a prayer. He didn't feel the body slip in behind him until arms slipped around his waist and linked their fingers together. Take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. He could feel Gia's grin against the back of his neck as she sang along with Daniel. Whoa, living on a prayer. They both sang together. 
Since Daniel had found Gia singing with Kevin, she had been much more open to singing with Daniel. Even though she was an amazing singer and Daniel wasn't, Gia's love for music apparently overrode Daniel's ability to destroy what was once a good song. You know, you're kind of perfect. He turned around in Gia's arms and leaned forward for a kiss. Like, really perfect. He grinned as Gia's arms found their way around his neck. You bring out the fun side of me, Gia admitted, nuzzling into the base of Daniel's throat where his mating bite lay. A particular favorite spot of Gia's. Daniel was also pretty fond of Gia's mark on his skin. However, he liked his mark on Gia's skin much more. I'm glad. He shifted their positions so that Gia was under the shower spray and took his time running soap over her body, taking extra time to run his hands across her flat tummy that would soon soften with their child. It's amazing, huh? Gia's words brought him out of his trance. Yeah, he admitted. Yeah, it is. When they finally emerged from their bedroom, the entire pack was thrumming with energy. The pull of the moon was at its strongest, and the urge to shift was coursing through their veins. Daniel's, too. However, he knew how to hold it back for as long as possible and was therefore able to function without the excess energy of a puppy. Oh my god, Daniel, have you seen Alex? Sarah suddenly appeared in front of them and looked very concerned. No, Daniel's brows furrowed. Why? I think Zane may have gone too far this time. You gotta do something, cause Lane is out for blood. Daniel groaned. Ugh, oh god, what now? Maybe you should see for yourself. She led them into the kitchen, where a very pissed off Alex and Lane stood. It's highly possible that Daniel was the only one in the room that found it hilarious. They could tell Gia found it funny, too, but she was slightly better at hiding it than Daniel. Are you guys okay? Alex, you're looking a little blue. That drew a snort of laughter and an apology from Gia. Don't make me add you to my hit list, Daniel, because I am so damn close to murder right now. Alex looked up, ready to shift and tear someone apart, so Daniel reined in his laughter and put on his alpha persona. What happened? What the fuck do you think? Zane happened. Alex stood with his arms out wide. You kind of look like a smurf, Gia very unhelpfully supplied. It was true, Alex's skin was neon blue and he was wearing a white t-shirt and black jeans. His bleach blonde hair was also a pretty decent shade of bright blue and was covered by a white hat. If Alex wasn't so pissed, then he would have laughed at that comment. If you weren't pregnant, then you'd be on your ass right now, Gia. He grit his teeth, but Daniel doubted he would lash out at Gia. They were pretty good friends now. Sorry, dude. I know it must suck to be you right now, but you got to admit you look funny. Gia tried to defend herself. It could have been me in the shower, Lane screeched. I could have been blue. I'll get to the bottom of it, Daniel promised. Can't you team up your tormenting minds instead of turning them against each other? He regretted it as soon as he said it. Do not turn them on this pack, though. Daniel, this shit doesn't wash off. I'm fucking dyed blue. It was Alex's turn to scream. If I see his stupid face, then I might actually kill him. There's no way in hell I'm teaming up with that fucker. Daniel sighed in defeat. It was going to be a long day. True to Daniel's predictions, it had been a very long day trying to sort out Alex and Zane's issues. He hadn't gotten very far and his best pack member was still stained blue. But Alex wasn't ready to kill someone when he shifted, so that was always a plus. Gia stood at his side as they shifted. He would never get over how breathtaking Gia's woof was. Her emerald green eyes sparkled with delight at the freedom of being in her woof form. She was perfect in human form, but nobody could ever even attempt to compete with her woof form. They nuzzled each other affectionately, bearing their heads into the neck of each other's fur in a friendly greeting as they turned to watch over the rest of the pack as they shifted. Daniel couldn't help snorting as Alex shifted into a bright blue woof instead of his usual golden one. He watched as Zane quickly shifted and ran in the opposite direction. His woof was surprisingly not bald and instead was white in color as it disappeared into the tree line. The rest of the pack shifted and vacated the area pretty quickly. Daniel was still heavily amused at Alex's fur when Gia's nose nudged his shoulder. He turned to face his mate who was pouncing around him playfully. It was refreshing to see Gia so relaxed and able to let go in this form. Some humans never quite fit into their wolf skins properly, but Gia seemed to embrace it, and it made Daniel proud. He lowered the top half of his body to respond to Gia's playful movements. 
Before he knew it, he was overpowered by solid muscle as Gia jumped on top of him, wrestling him. Gia's soft laughter filled his head as his mate took control and managed to pin Daniel down. That didn't last long before Daniel had turned the tables and instead Gia pinned beneath him. He showered his mate's body in gentle nips, feeling his woof almost grin as Gia writhed from being too ticklish. Gia managed to wriggle her way from Daniel's grasp and bounded off into the woods. Daniel could do nothing but follow. His mate was releasing an intoxicating scent that practically fused Daniel to her. Considering she had only just learned she had control of her scent, she was pretty damn good at using it to get what she wanted. They chased each other for a long time, taking the time to wrestle whenever they could. He never thought he would find a mate with a nature like his own. His pack was pretty playful, but had never been able to keep Daniel entertained like Gia could. Only Alex had come close, and that was because he had limitless energy supply like Daniel's, and could keep up a chase all night. His thoughts were disrupted when Gia stopped running straight in front of him and caused him to collide straight into his mate's body. They both collapsed in a heap with soft yelps. Daniel had managed to land on top of a pretty pissed-off-looking Gia. Daniel licked a huge stripe across his mate's face in apology, and Gia rolled her eyes before returning the gesture. Daniel was about to rise to his feet again, but Gia curled her body underneath him. It was something Gia did even in human form when she wanted to feel safe, and Daniel could only grant her that safety as he protectively shielded his mate by blanketing her with his own body. They were comfortable and warm and stayed curled up together until long after sunrise. When did Daniel get this lucky? It took about a month for Alex's skin tone to return to normal. While hilarious, it was getting impossible to put up with Alex's bitchiness. The man walked around with a constant grimace and Zane walked around constantly watching his back. There had been no outbreaks of violence between the pair and that was always a good thing. Daniel was just waiting for the shoe to drop. The rest of the pack had managed to relax with the current war between the pair at bay and it helped Daniel immensely because the last thing he and his mate needed was World War III breaking out. Gia was now five weeks pregnant and had very quickly lost her cookie cravings phase in replacement for throwing up everything she even considered eating. Every morning, Daniel woke up to the sound of his mate heaving in the bathroom. He ached to help her, but he knew there was nothing he could really do. It was so stressful to see Gia look as pale as she did, losing weight instead of gaining it, and getting so stressed. She usually cried at least once a day from the sickness. You okay, babe? Daniel shouted from their bed. He had learned from experience to not approach Gia when she was busy throwing her guts up. He got a groan in response and couldn't fight the helpless feeling that washed over him. His mate was sick and she wasn't happy and there was nothing Daniel could do. While Lane said it was perfectly normal and Kevin had backed it up from experience, it didn't stop Daniel worrying. How was his baby getting nutrients if Gia couldn't get any for herself? After a good 15 minutes of worrying, Gia finally emerged from the bathroom. She gave Daniel a weak smile and padded over to the bed before curling her weak body into Daniel's. His mate was wearing nothing but sweatpants and her bra. While that would normally turn Daniel on, today it was doing nothing. It killed him to see Gia like this. Her hip bones were visible and her stomach was less defined and Daniel knew that it had nothing to do with the baby. I'm worried about you, Daniel confessed, placing a kiss on Gia's temple. I know, Gia whispered. I feel like shit, but I know it's normal. But is it normal, Gia? Daniel countered. Is it normal for you to be this malnourished? I'm fine, Dan. Lane said I'm doing good, and I just gotta ride out the morning sickness. Just seven more blissful weeks of it to go. Oh, she sighed heavily and trailed her fingers over Daniel's chest. It's for our baby, so it's worth it. Daniel couldn't help smiling at the thought of their baby. Even if Gia's suffering, it doesn't change the fact that she's carrying Daniel's child. He just wished it came at less of a price. You sure you don't want to cut this pregnancy shorter? Do it in your wolf form? It's not too late to change your mind, Daniel asked softly. I'm going to feel like shit no matter what I choose. I just really want to see our baby's face when they're born. I don't think I'd bond as much with them in their shifted form, Gia admitted. Does that make me sound like a horrible person? No, 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 Daniel was quick to reassure his mate. 
You haven't grown up with this as I have. I'd bond with our child no matter what their form, but I understand how much harder it is for you. It makes you responsible and committed to our child because you want to make sure you have that mother-child bond, and I'm proud of you for realizing that. He tightened his hold on Gia and frowned when he felt warm drops of liquid on his skin. Gia, are you crying? It's the damn hormones, Gia sobbed into Daniel's shoulder. Oh, babe. Daniel shifted his position to wrap both arms around his mate and hold her close. You sure it's the hormones? I cried yesterday when Nina's cake didn't rise properly, so yes, I'm pretty sure it's hormones. Daniel bit his lip around a smirk and decided to ignore the sarcasm in Gia's words. You sure that you just genuinely weren't upset you couldn't eat Nina's cake? I know how you love those. She sobbed even harder at the words. Gia? <laughs> I was reliving it, she cried. She put the right amount of baking soda in it and everything, but nothing happened. Oh, God, what am I going to do with you? Daniel sighed. He really couldn't wait until Gia's hormones balanced themselves out again. He hated seeing Gia upset, even if it is about something stupid and not actually that upsetting. After the frustration of puking up everything I came into contact with for the past two weeks, I decided to take it out on something. For the first time since I had moved to the pack house, I set up a canvas on my easel in the bedroom I had stayed in when I first turned and began to paint. It was therapeutic and helped me relax in ways that lying around doing nothing couldn't. In my human life, I had made my living from selling paintings. It was an escape from my real life and meant I didn't have to deal with people on a daily basis. Now I live in a house full of people with energy, of children, and I couldn't imagine it any other way. But today, I just needed to be in my own head. Just for a little while. I had set the easel upright by the huge window facing the woods. It would make a beautiful painting, and I could see Sarah sitting in her wolf form with Noelle at the edge of trees. They were my inspiration today. I checked over the ingredients on all of my paints to make sure that they weren't in any way toxic to my unborn child before filling the palette and getting to work. Several hours had passed when I felt Daniel's presence. I turned and flashed him a grin before turning back to my painting. I hadn't been sick since I had started, and it had boosted my happiness to all new levels. I was covered in paint and only halfway finished with the painting, but it didn't matter because I felt relatively normal again. Strong arms wrapped around me from behind and Daniel's chin rested on my right shoulder. I didn't have to turn my head to know that my mate was surveying my art. Pride surged through the bond and I couldn't help the giddy light feeling that rushed through me. My mate was proud of me. You're amazing, Daniel whispered. So damn talented. Yeah? I asked, suddenly self-conscious. Yes, Gia, it's incredible. Daniel pointed to the two wolves lying side by side at the bottom of the picture. I know you did those by memory because they have been inside for a while now. Why have you waited so long to paint something? I honestly didn't know. I guess this was a huge part of my human life. It never felt right painting here in my new life, but with the baby coming and the stress of losing everything I eat, I thought it would help, and it has. I linked my fingers through Daniel's where his arms were wrapped around my waist. I'm glad you're painting again, Daniel spoke honestly. You're clearly a natural. There's no way you could teach someone to paint like you do. My insides shone from the compliment. Could you paint me sometime? Daniel asked, still eyeing the painting. You want me to paint you? I asked with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, if anyone could make me look good in a painting, then it's you. I felt Daniel's grin against my neck and had to smile. You're already a work of art, Dan. I know, Daniel chuckled softly as I rolled my eyes. I was thinking we could turn this room into the baby's room. I surveyed the room. It was big and spacey, and they certainly weren't using it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's connected to our room through the bathroom, and it's spacious. I was thinking we could paint the walls cream so that it could maybe always be used as a nursery. And now that I've seen your painting, I'd really like it if you could paint a mural or something on one wall. You don't have to, but it'd be awesome. I really like that idea. I liked everything about it and said as much. 
There's nothing I'd rather do than help you make this room into a nursery. I spun in Daniel's arms and leaned up to cover Daniel's lips with my own. Daniel moaned softly into the kiss, clearly taken by surprise. My lips quirked as I took the kiss deeper, explored Daniel slowly like it was the first time before pulling back. Daniel looked dazed and I smirked at the power of our kiss. There was a little splatter of paint above Daniel's lips that I wiped away easily, smiling shyly as I did so. I think I need a shower. I bit my lip and wrapped my arms around Daniel's neck, but I don't think my legs can carry me. Daniel didn't need to be encouraged as he swooped me up in his arms and carried me into the bathroom. Both of us struggled to control our laughing as Daniel hit his head on the doorframe while maneuvering me from hitting my head on the same offending doorframe. I finally felt some form of normality again, and damn, it was good. Daniel sat back on the huge satin red armchair in the living room with Gia curled up in his lap. The rest of the pack were all gathered around the TV and watching a rerun of The Simpsons, except for Sean, who was nestled in another armchair reading a book. It was in times like this that Daniel was grateful for everything he had. He was surrounded by loving family, and he respected and loved each of them in return. He had his mate held safely in his arms and would soon be a father. To top it all off, Christmas was coming, around in just a few weeks. It would be his first Christmas with Gia, and he was so excited about it. Next year, they would have their child, and so it would be their only Christmas with just the two of them. Daniel was determined to make it special. He ran his fingers idly through Gia's dark hair and smiled softly as his mate sighed in contentment. The pack beta had been feeling better since she had taken the time to relax and paint. Daniel finally didn't feel so useless anymore knowing that at least something could help her a little. It's kind of perfect like this, isn't it? Gia's quiet voice broke through Daniel's thoughts. Yeah, he agreed. It's pretty damn perfect for me. His mate smiled softly and closed her eyes, bearing herself into Daniel's body. A car door slamming outside caused the whole pack to bolt upright. Daniel quickly surveyed the room and all of his pack members were present. He swiftly maneuvered himself from under Gia and headed to the window where a man and a woman were making their way up to the house. Oh, shit, Alex spoke from behind him. What? Daniel turned. You know these people? Alex's eyes widened as he took in the strangers. They are my parents. You told me your parents were dead. Now Daniel was confused. Well, they're dead to me. Alex tried to defend. Your parents worked with my parents to destroy Omegas, Alex. Daniel's eyes instantly locked with Gia's. His mate looked terrified at the prospect of having these people anywhere near her. Gia wasn't the only one. Zane, James, Ian, and Kevin had all visibly stiffened. Daniel would be joining them if he didn't have to look out for his pack. I know they did, Daniel. They aren't here for shits and giggles. They are here to cause trouble. Alex's eyes were pleading. They think I'm dead, Daniel. That was news to Daniel. What? They disowned me, and so I kind of faked my own death so I'd never have to face their disapproval again. I didn't tell anyone that because it was such a long time ago, and I didn't really want people to know I'd put that grief on my family. They're not good news, Daniel. You need to get rid of them. Alex looked genuinely scared at the prospect of seeing his parents again. Please. They're here because they want Gia dead, aren't they? Daniel's voice almost broke, but he fought hard to keep it together. Yeah, probably, Alex whispered, feeling ashamed on his parents' behalf. Well then, Daniel rubbed his hand over his temple. This should be fun. Daniel, I can't face them. Alex was virtually trembling next to him, but Daniel couldn't take the time to be concerned for his friend when he needed to be concerned for his mate. You don't have a choice. Time to rise from the dead, Ruiz. With that, Daniel turned and headed outside, followed closely by the rest of the pack. The Ruizes had been expecting their arrival and were waiting outside. They faltered slightly when they saw the size of the pack, but quickly regained their stance. They reminded Daniel of his parents. It was almost comical how their eyes widened when they caught sight of their son. Alex? His mother shrieked. Uh, hi? Alex waved awkwardly but made sure to stand behind Daniel. 
You're supposed to be dead. His father narrowed his eyes at him. How could you fake this? You never cared about me. You weren't that hard to convince. Daniel was proud of Alex. He was a douche, but this was obviously painful for him. He was aware of Gia's presence close behind him and managed to loop their fingers together, much to the disapproval of the newcomers. They seemed to ignore their own son's existence to zero in on Daniel and his mate. Your parents would be so disappointed in you, Daniel. Alex's father spoke, mated with an omega. It's disgusting. He felt Gia tense next to him and tightened his hold on her to reassure her. My parents would be proud of me no matter who I mated. My beautiful mate managed to change pack law by winning a fight with an alpha. There is nothing about her that is inferior to any other werewolf. They both regarded Gia curiously. Alex's mother seemed to be concerned for a few moments but quickly regained her composure. She looks sickly. Her brows furrowed. She's pale and scrawny. What the hell about her is a strong werewolf? Daniel stepped forward. A low warning growl built in the back of his throat. Daniel stepped forward. A low warning growl built in the back of his throat. She's carrying the air to this pack if you must know, Mrs. Ruiz. Omega should not be able to carry children, Alex's father spat. There is no person on this earth who I'd rather carry my children, Daniel defended. But it's wrong, Alex's mother pleaded. Says who? That was the real question. Who exactly do they think they are to disapprove of Omega so damn much? I... Uh, she didn't have an answer for that. Exactly. There isn't anybody who says that being an Omega is wrong. It's just some delusional theory my parents came up with and managed to fuck up the lives of so many of our kind. We have the council on our side, and if you have a problem, then go to them. If you take one step towards my mate, then I will rip you limb from limb. Get off my property and don't come back. I won't ask again. Daniel stood firm and felt relieved when his entire pack stood with him. The Ruezes were severely outnumbered here. We will leave, Greenwood, she spoke, her eyes on Alex. But I'd like to talk to my son in first in private. There are some things we need to discuss. Daniel turned to face Alex, silently asking him if it was okay. Alex took a deep breath and nodded, shakily. Daniel turned back towards his parents. We'll be right inside, and if you even think of touching him, then you'll be dead before you even register a danger. Daniel left his words as a warning and turned to head back into the house, looping his arm around Gia as he went. Daniel didn't pray, but damn, he prayed that the Ruezes weren't going to cause a lot of shit for his pack. That was easy. Too easy. Daniel couldn't help feeling on edge after the pack's confrontation with the Ruezes. Alex was still talking, well, shouting with his parents, but Daniel wouldn't interfere unless he had to. He wrapped his arms around his trembling mate, kissing her softly in reassurance. Is it just me, or is this just the beginning of disapproving werewolves showing up unannounced? Gia asked quietly. That was the real concern on Daniel's mind. What if this was just the beginning of trouble for them? His mate didn't need to be put under that kind of pressure. It doesn't matter what happens. We'll work it out. Everything will be okay, Daniel promised. I wish I could believe you. Gia sighed tiredly, burying her face in Daniel's neck. If you can't believe me, then trust me to make sure nothing bad happens. Daniel rubbed soothing circles on Gia's back. I'll always trust you, Dan. That's all I ask. He kissed his mate's temple and led her to bed. His mate needed him, and after the shockingly uneventful meeting with the Ruezes, Daniel, too, was exhausted. Alex would be okay. It'd take more than his parents to knock Alex off his feet. Plus, the pack were still awaiting the young man's return. Everything would be all right. Daniel made a silent vow to make sure of it. I curled my body as close into Daniel's as I could. Though there wasn't really much confrontation with Alex's parents, it had really shaken me up. People were sure to come looking for a fight. Could the pack really stand up to that? God, I hope so. Gia? Daniel's voice broke through my inner panic attack. Yeah? I winced at the sound of my own voice. Sickness had made my throat sore and my voice croaked at the effort to talk. You know I love you, right? I pulled back from Daniel's embrace to see golden, honest eyes staring back at me. 
I tentatively reached out and stroked my maid's soft, floppy hair, pushing it away from his gorgeous face. I know, I whispered, because I did know. I knew how much Daniel loved me. You know, I love you too, right? Daniel gave me a soft smile. Yeah, I know. He kissed my nose. So, I was thinking. Don't strain yourself, I teased. Daniel chuckled, his dimples cutting deeply as he smiled. I was thinking maybe I... Uh, oh, God, it's like the sex talk all over again, I grinned. My memory of the first and only time I'd heard my mate lost for words was when he was explaining everything to me, back when the craziness was nearly simple, when they all thought I was a beta. Marry me. My eyes widened comically at the question. Daniel was looking shyly at me, biting his lip in nervousness. I hadn't heard what I thought I just heard. Had I? Had Daniel just asked me to marry him? What? I squeaked. You heard me. Daniel's nervousness seemed to fizzle out into admiration. Marry me. Werewolves don't get married, do they? I wanted to say yes. All I wanted was to say yes. But something inside of me didn't want to get my hopes up. Not usually, no, Daniel admitted, suddenly looking nervous again. Mating is the marriage of our world, but it's not in yours. You were born a human, and you've grown up thinking you're going to get married and have kids. I want you to have that. Dan, I'm your mate. I'm carrying your child. That's more than I ever even considered. I don't need to get married to prove how much you mean to me. It was true, but I still really wanted to marry Daniel. I would love to. Gia, I am so thrilled to have you as my mate and carrying my pup. Maybe it's enough for some werewolves, but it's not enough for me because I know how much marriage means in your world. I want that with you, Gia. I want to be your husband. I want you in every way I can. I want to take you away for a while, get married, and spend some quality time with just me and you. Christmas is coming up, and when is more magical and romantic to get married than Christmas? Daniel had clearly thought this through, and those thoughts touched me deeply. You really want to marry me? I was the shy one this time. Daniel beamed. Of course I do. He climbed off the bed and stood in front of me, dropping down onto one knee. Gia Evander, my love, my mate, and the mother of my child, will you do me the incredible honor of becoming my wife? I couldn't breathe. This was happening so fast, and I couldn't wrap my head around it. The biggest smile I'd ever experienced manifested and caused my cheeks to ache as I threw myself at my mate, wrapping my arms and legs around the man I knew would catch me and never let me fall. Daniel didn't let me down. He caught me and held me up, bringing our lips together in a deep kiss. We fought for dominance of the kiss, but it wasn't hard for me to give up control and let Daniel take the lead. I moaned softly at the taste of my mate. No, fiancé. I grinned at the thought, smiling into the kiss as Daniel gently laid me out on our bed. Daniel quickly stripped us of our clothes and began showering my body with kisses, worshipping every part of skin he came into contact with. My brain turned to mush when Daniel's mouth moved even lower. My fiancé's gorgeous lips wrapped around every inch of my body. Huge hands gripped my hips and held me down as Daniel took to leaving wet kisses on my arousal. I felt impossibly close to the edge already and almost tipped over as two fingers slipped inside of me. Shit, I gasped. I needed Daniel inside me. Now. Need. You. I panted. Daniel smirked and showered more kisses over my body, sucking marks across my hip and up to nibble on the mating bite. Dan, I didn't care if it was needy because I really was desperate for my other half. I got you. Daniel promised. He quickly positioned himself over me and pushed inside agonizingly slow. I threw my head back in ecstasy when I finally bottomed out. I gripped at Daniel's shoulders and pulled him even closer. I got you, Daniel whispered again as he pressed dirty, open mouth kisses on my throat and along my collarbone. Move, I gasped as my mate began to thrust into me, slow, sweet, and hard. It was perfect. We continued moving together in sync, soaring through the pleasure and riding through the aftershocks when we finally reached our climax together. 
I winced slightly as Daniel's knot pushed inside me, but that short burning pain was instantly replaced with burning pleasure as it rubbed up against my spot. There were just some things werewolves can really do better than humans, and sex might just be one of them as far as I'm concerned. Humans really need knots. They do, huh? Daniel asked, amused. Oh, God, I groaned. Did I really say that out loud? Yeah, Daniel leaned forward and gave me a gentle kiss, my lips tingling deliciously from the contact. You really did. Oh, fuck. Buried my head in Daniel's shoulder. I totally want to run and hide in the shower right now, but I'm tied to you. I really hated embarrassment, even when it amused my mate. Oh, baby, I'll stay tied to you all night if I get to see that blush. My cheeks burned even harder at Daniel's words, and he chuckled softly. Don't make it worse, I punched Daniel affectionately in the chest. Don't worry about it, Daniel assured. Don't worry about anything. Never worry when you're around. I admitted. It was true. Daniel made me feel safe. Good, Daniel grinned, satisfied. Hey, you never answered my proposal. Daniel looked shy again. It was adorable. You think me jumping your bones was a no? I asked with a raised eyebrow. So you'll marry me? Daniel asked. Hope was making his smile that much brighter. Yes, Dan. Yes, I'll marry you. Alex spun in anger, his fist colliding with the brick wall of the pack house. He screamed out in pain as his knuckles broke easily under the pressure. His parents had once again managed to drive him to the edge and express their shame in him. Lane quickly came rushing out of the house, cradling Alex's head in her hands, and tentatively holding her palms over his crushed hand. He winced as his bones fused back together under the helpful healing powers his mate possessed. It's okay, baby, I'm here, Lean soothed, kissing along his bloody knuckles. Thank you, he whispered, feeling tears burn his eyes and sobs overpower him. I got you, I got you. Both of Lane's arms came around Alex's neck and pulled him in as close as she could. She smelled of sweet perfume, a dash of honey, and underneath it all she smelled like him. She was his mate and possibly the only person who would be able to calm him down from his parents' words. It still rang sharply in his ears. You disgust me. Faking your own death and mating with a human born. You're worse than those Omega bitches. I mourned your death. How could you? I wish you hadn't faked it. I wish you were dead. No need to wish. To us, you are dead. I'm ashamed to even allow you to have the Ruaz name. Shacked up with Omega's fags and human-borns, you really know how to make your parents proud, don't you, son? If I never see you again, it will be too soon. His sobs rattled his body, and his mate held him tighter. He knew he should have never let his parents mourn his loss, but if he hadn't, then he would have never gotten away from them. This is his life, and he has never been happier. And yet, why does he feel so damn guilty? Don't believe anything those assholes said to you. Lane took his head in her hands and forced him to look into her eyes. You hear me, Ruez? If I ever see you shed another tear over them, then I'll rip them apart myself. He couldn't help grinning at her. She was a feisty one, his mate. I love it when you get all protective. Lane rolled her eyes affectionately and allowed Alex to wrap her up in his arms. I love you. Just thought I should tell you. He felt her smile against his skin and couldn't help pressing a kiss to her throat where his claiming bite lay. I love you too. Her tone was teasing, but it was filled with love. Everything about the woman he loved made all the guilt fizzle away. He was where he belonged. Daniel had a killer headache, which was strange because werewolves rarely, if ever, got aches and pains. Their healing simply worked against it and allowed them to live a lovely, pain-free life. He had had it since Alex's parents had shown up last night. Maybe it was from stress. He checked his pockets for any silver that could be causing it, but came up with nothing. Strange. Gia was curled up underneath his arm and watching TV in their private living room. She regarded Daniel with concern. You okay? I'm fine, Daniel lied. No need to unsettle his mate in his condition. Gia hadn't yet been sick today. It was one of her rare good days, and Daniel was too busy basking in the happiness of his mate to care about the sharp pain in his temple. It will pass. How are you and my baby? He asked proudly. 
Gia gave him a small, genuine smile that meant more than it probably should. We're doing good. Baby boy hasn't rejected any food today, so that's always a plus. Gia absentmindedly ran her hands over her softening stomach. Boy? Gia blushed. I have a feeling it's a boy, she confessed. And what makes you say that? Daniel didn't care if they had a boy or a girl, but he was so excited to find out which they would be having. I don't know, she sighed, purposely running her hands over her abdomen. Call it mother's instinct. Daniel grinned. I like that. He leaned forward to press a soft kiss on Gia's stomach. I don't know about you, but I could kill for a sandwich. You coming down? Yeah, sure, Gia agreed. I'd kill for a bag of marshmallows. Oh, God, the sweet cravings are back, Daniel groaned, causing Gia to laugh. Yep. <laughs> I'm not feeding your sick habit, Daniel laughed along with his mate. He rose to his feet and regretted it instantly at the stabbing pain in his forehead. Hissing, he clasped his hand onto his head in an attempt to relieve the pressure. He felt faint. Very faint. Dan? Gia was at his side in a second, worried hands grasping at his shoulders as he yelled out in agony at the throbbing in his head. Daniel! Gia's voice was filled with terror. Daniel turned to face his mate. Scared bright green orbs were the last thing he remembered as everything faded to blackness. Daniel! I screamed as my mate's body hit the floor. I hadn't been prepared and wasn't anywhere near as fast in my vulnerable state. I felt like a failure at the realization I wasn't quick enough to catch my mate when he fell. Daniel would have caught me. Daniel! I slapped at my mate's cheeks but got nothing in return. Come on! I shook him hard and let out a broken sob as Daniel's body began convulsing underneath me. Daniel! I almost choked from the strain on my voice. Help! Somebody in the pack had to hear me. Help me! I felt like I was going to be sick as Daniel's body trembled violently. I sent a silent prayer to whoever the fuck was listening to thank them for Daniel being unconscious for this. My mate's eyes were slightly open, but I knew he wasn't coherent enough to feel anything. I had seen a kid have an epileptic seizure once. It was terrifying to watch, and I hadn't even known them. I tore my heart out to see something similar happen to Daniel. It felt like hours, but it was more like seconds before Alex came bursting into the room. He caught sight of Daniel's limp body writhing on the ground and screamed for Lane. I had never seen Alex so pale. My tears blurred my vision as I whispered soothing words to my mate, begging the attack to stop and letting Daniel know that I was there. You need to be strong, Dan, I whispered, tears streaming down my cheeks. Me and the baby need you so you can just get your ass off the floor and get back to singing like an idiot, you hear me? I ran my hands lovingly along my mate's body and hoped that it bought Daniel some kind of reassurance. I'd never felt so damn helpless. Gia, get out of my way! Lane came rushing into the room and crouching at Daniel's side. No! I cried I would never leave Daniel. Gia, move! Lane yelled. I didn't have time to reply before strong arms were wrapped around my waist, dragging me away from Daniel, where he was still convulsing on the ground. I openly sobbed at the sight of my mate being so helpless. Alex loosened his hold as I stopped fighting, but it didn't make it any easier to just watch and do nothing. What's wrong with him? I needed to know. Damn it, Lane, what's wrong with him? I don't know, she cried back. Her hands steadied themselves over Daniel's chest. What could it be? Alex's voice was calm, clearly trying to be the strong one. I have no idea, Silver? She shrugged, massaging along Daniel's stiff muscles. He hasn't touched any silver. I let my anger bleed through. Why didn't they know it was wrong with him? Then I don't know what else it could be, Gia. I can try relieving some of the tension, but there isn't exactly anything we can do here. This is his body's way of coping, and we gotta let it do its job. She massaged her hands along Daniel's chest and shoulders, ignoring my obvious pain at seeing my mate like this. The rest of the pack emerged to see what the commotion was, but were quickly turned away by Alex. Daniel needed space, and the heavy pack energy weren't going to give that to him. Daniel needed Lane to get him through it and for his mate to be at his side when he awoke, and I needed Alex to stop me from having a full-on breakdown. Forty-five minutes later, Daniel finally wasn't having what looked like a seizure anymore. I sagged into Alex's firm grasp from the relief as my mate blinked open, terrified hazel eyes. Wait, 
I froze. Hazel? Apparently, I wasn't the only one to freeze. All three of us stared open-mouthed as Daniel slowly sat up. He looked at them all in confusion, and I was pretty sure they all mirrored that confusion. Nobody moved for a long time, and I could sense my mate's tension through the bond. He was scared and confused, and I finally shook my head through the shock and kneeled in front of my mate. Daniel's golden eyes were replaced by the most gorgeous shade of color I had ever seen. They had always had a feline shape to them, and the colors made him almost look feline, too, or maybe more like a fox? It was entrancing. They were a collection of blue and green hues mixed together into browns and ambers. Small flecks of gold still remained, but there was something very human about his eyes. More disturbingly, there was something very omega in those eyes, too. Hey. Daniel's voice was soft. Hi. I gave him a watery smile and pressed my lips to my mates. You scared me. I'm sorry. Daniel's arms came up around and held me close. Just never do that to me again. I allowed myself to cry onto Daniel's shoulder for a few moments before pulling back and staring into my mate's eyes. That was still Hazel. What is it? Daniel asked. What happened? He reached out and brushed a stray tear from my cheek. What's wrong? You had a fit. Lane seemed to have shaken herself from the confusion and was playing doctor. It lasted around 45 minutes, but your vitals were good and there's no silver in your system, so we don't know what caused it. She paused, biting her lip and considering her next words. You also may want to find a mirror. A fit? Daniel's words trembled, and I knew without sensing his feelings that something was not right. Werewolves don't have fits, he stated. You're right, Lane agreed. But when you look in a mirror, I think you'll understand the possibility. Something is wrong, Daniel. Very wrong. Daniel's brows furrowed and he quickly rose to his feet. I followed behind him as Daniel strode into their bathroom, gasping when he caught sight of his reflection. His eyes were wide in shock and tears formed as Daniel took in the definite lack of gold in his eyes. Am I human? Daniel asked calmly. Can you shift? Lane appeared behind us and put a supportive hand on my shoulder. Daniel quickly stripped off and closed his eyes. I sighed with relief as his body shifted into the giant wolf with stupid floppy ears and chocolate brown fur that I loved so much. Daniel seemed to sense my worry and nudged my hand with his muzzle, allowing me to wrap my arms around his huge form. Daniel was still a wolf. He was still my mate. Anything else, we could make it through. The furry body soon turned into the smooth, naked skin of a man as Daniel shifted back. I kissed him deeply, and for once Daniel allowed me control, knowing how much I needed reassurance that he was okay. It was quiet for several long minutes before Alex voiced one of my concerns. Are you still an alpha? Daniel stiffened in my arms, clearly having not thought about it. Both Daniel and I quickly looked down to where Daniel's knot still remained. He was still an alpha. My knot's still alive and kicking, and if that's what you're asking, Daniel laughed through my relief. I wished I could join my mate, but I was still terrified of what had happened. There was no way that my mate was okay. Something was going on, and I didn't know what was causing it. I think I may know why this is happening, Lane said. I wanted to reach out and hug Lane for virtually reading my mind, but I couldn't let go of Daniel. Would never let go of him again. Why? I asked desperately. Lane turned her gaze to me. I think it's your blood. M my blood? I almost choked on the words. Yeah, we had to put your blood into his system in order to heal him when he had that sulfur poisoning. My guess is that your blood is starting to have some side effects. I'd really like to take some blood samples from both of you and see if I can pin down what the hell is going on. Lane sounded convincing, but it cut through me that I could be the reason my mate was in pain. It's not your fault. Daniel assured me, most likely sensing my unease over the bond. I bite Gia all the time. I take her blood into my system most nights, as I'm sure Alex takes yours. I saw Lane's cheeks flush with embarrassment, and I would have teased her if my own cheeks weren't burning from Daniel's words. Why would her blood start affecting me? Zane and Ian aren't affected by Kevin and James's blood. 
You had a transfusion, Daniel. Your blood was mixed with Gia's in order to heal you. When you bite your mate, there isn't a lot of blood that's ingested into your system. It may simply be the large quantity doing this. For all we know, this is temporary. She gestured to Daniel's eyes to point out exactly what she meant. That was over five weeks ago. Why is it affecting me now? Daniel looked lost, and all I could do was hold him tight. I wish I knew Daniel, but I really don't. I don't even know if this is Gia's blood. It's just a guess, and that's why I'd like to do some blood work. Maybe I can see exactly what's going on. Maybe nothing else will happen, and you'll go on looking more human than a werewolf. Or maybe other things will happen, too. I can't answer these questions because I don't have the answers. I've never seen or heard of anything like this before. Lane's smile was sympathetic as she left us both to console each other. You'll be okay, Dan. I will never leave your side no matter what, I assured. It's going to take a long time to get used to these eyes, Daniel confessed. Well, for what it's worth, I think they're beautiful. I kissed him softly and stared intently into the soft hazel eyes I'd always pictured my mate having. It's worth a lot. Daniel smiled warmly and held on to me for all I was worth. We were both scared and confused and quite clearly in for a long night. But together, we will get through this. Wow, Daniel, you have to see this. It's incredible. Lane giggled excitedly from her microscope. She was such a nerd. Daniel humored her and gazed into the microscope. Wow, he feigned enthusiasm. That's... what is that? It was no secret that Daniel knew nothing all about science. Oh, you're so useless, she sighed. It's your blood, Daniel. It's similar to Gia's, but it's different, too, in a way I've never seen before. She was practically bouncing with excitement. She held Daniel's arm, and before Daniel knew what was happening, she quickly grabbed a knife and slashed it across Daniel's exposed flesh. Ow! He yelled, retracting his arm from her grasp. What the fuck did you do that for? He inspected his arm and watched as the flesh slowly knitted itself back together. I knew it, she grinned. You're immune, too. Immune? Daniel asked in confusion. Wait. He snatched the knife out of Lane's grasp. This knife is silver. Are you fucking crazy? Relax, Alpha. I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't sure. She shrugged him off easily and began writing some medical jargon in her journal. It's incredible. She surveyed the healing wound and frowned. You don't heal as fast as Gia, but damn, that's faster than any of us would heal. Any headaches? Nausea? Pain? Um, Daniel stopped to actually think for a moment. No? Excellent! Lane, what are you saying? The girl had been studying both Daniel, Gia, and various other pack members for three days virtually nonstop, and was like a child at Christmas with all the results she had been getting. However, neither Daniel nor Gia were a step closer to finding out what the hell she was talking about half the time. It's all in the blood, Alpha! She took Daniel's arm in her hands once more and smiled in satisfaction that the wound was now fully healed. It's like something I've never seen before. I mixed your blood with some silver nitrate and it started creating antibodies instantly. I tried the same thing with Alex's blood and Noel's blood and their blood did nothing. You're immune, Daniel. The only way that is possible is from Gia's blood. That is the only thing I can think of. I'm not going to turn into an Omega, am I? Daniel loved his mate and her Omega status, but he knew that if he was an Omega too, then there would be no way he could be mated to Gia. Two Omegas can't be mates. You're already mated, but I kind of suspect that if you weren't, then it may be very possible. She jotted down some more notes, and Daniel breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, thank God. No, sweetie, thank science. You're such a geek, Daniel laughed as Lane shoved him playfully. So you think I'm going to be okay? You may have potentially helped me discover a better antidote or even a vaccination against silver poisoning. Daniel, with this information, I may be able to create immunity. Do you have any idea how incredible that would be? All from the blood of an Omega, too. She grinned. Let's see people discriminate against them if I can use their blood to protect us from silver. I have this strange image of you with wacky hair and a science coat. The phrase mad scientist comes to mind. If you don't get out of my lab, Greenwood, then I'll keep doing more tests, she warned. Oh, so it's your lab now. What happened to healing room? Daniel swiftly ducked as Lane threw a pen at him before slipping out as quickly as possible. 
He needed to find Gia and tell his mate the good news. Daniel was going to be fine. They were all going to be fine. So you're fine, Gia asked excitedly for about the seventh time since Daniel retold Lane's words. Yes, baby, he laughed softly. I'm fine. Awesome. Gia leaped into Daniel's arms and allowed Daniel to hold her up. Daniel let out a oomph at the impact, but caught her easily, swinging Gia around like she weighed nothing before claiming her lips in a deep kiss. Gia pulled back and cradled Daniel's head in her smaller hands as if she was checking that Daniel was really still there. You're going to be okay, she whispered confidently, leading forward to claim Daniel's lips in return. It's going to take a lot more than a seizure, crazy DNA, and sudden immunity to stop me, Gia. Daniel smirked at his mate before gently setting her down. I love you, Gia smiled brightly at him. I love you too, Daniel returned her smile. Both of you. You know, I'm halfway towards our first scan. Gia grinned and held Daniel's hands over her flat stomach where their child was growing. Six more weeks and we'll get our first glimpse of this little guy. Daniel brushed his thumbs over the softening muscle. He was so damn excited to meet their baby, and he was well aware that he had never been very good at waiting. Dearly beloved members of the greatest pack in the world, we are gathered here today because Daniel's a pushover who wants to make his human born happy. Alex grinned as he stood before the pack in his fancy dress priest costume. Daniel and I had decided to get married and head off by ourselves over Christmas, just like my mate had planned. Though he wouldn't let me in on exactly where we were going, I was counting down the seconds until we got there. The whole pack were gathered outside the pack house at sunset. Nina had practically thrown flowers over every surface while Noel trailed fairy lights over a rose archway in the garden where we stood before our family to take their vows. It probably wasn't the best idea to have Alex play minister, but it was just as crazy as their life, and I really wouldn't have had it any other way. The pack cheered as Daniel and I joined hands over one of Alex's magazines, which was apparently the closest thing to a Bible we had. Seriously, Alex, Daniel fixed him with a stern look. This is a skin mag. We don't have a Bible, Alex defended. How can none of you own a Bible? I asked. Do we look like the work of God to you? Alex asked pointedly in return. Guess not, <laughs> I sighed before laughing. What? Daniel looked confused as hell as to why I was laughing. This, I gestured towards the pack that were all dressed casually and to the porno that was blessing our marriage. So crazy and it's just perfect. It's us. I laughed softly, fingers clenching around Daniel's. Daniel laughed along then. You're right. It kind of is perfect. A loud cheer from the pack and wolf whistles prompted Alex to continue his ceremony. He dropped the magazine before allowing us to say our vows. Gia, Daniel started, his warm, soft, hazel eyes shone with love as he held both of my hands. I never thought I'd find my mate. I just adapted to a life of solitude so easily. Then you came along. I shifted my gaze to the floor to hide the flush on my cheeks, but Daniel's gentle finger tilted my chin back up so that our gaze is locked. You showed up out of nowhere in the middle of the night, scared, bitten, and alone. Then within a few short days, you've completely turned my world upside down. I knew you were my mate the second I saw you, but I never knew how deeply I could love you. Of how special you are. So special that you're blessing me with a child, our baby, Gia. Sometimes I still can't believe you're here with me, taking my hand for life, carrying my child, and declaring your love for me. I am honored to be standing here today and making you my wife. You saved my life in ways you can't even imagine. And a thank you will simply never be enough. I can only give you my love. I wiped at the dampness at my eyes, letting out a nervous laugh as Daniel softly swiped his thumb underneath them and wiped away my tears. It's the hormones, I swear. I knew as well as Daniel that it wasn't the hormones, but my mate seemed to be fine with letting it slip. Sure, it was the hormones, Daniel agreed. Shut up, I sniffled and couldn't help laughing along with Daniel's grin. Daniel Greenwood. That was a good place to start. Now I just had to think up some other words.
You think you saved my life, but you didn't. You gave me life. Before I was turned, I had nothing, and now here I stand with the love of my life, my mate, my alpha, and my best friend. You've given me so much without wanting anything in return. Trusted my instinct, and you always take my side. There aren't words to explain how happy I am that you're going to be my husband and we're having our first child together. First? Daniel's smile turned hopeful. Of many, I promised. I don't know what else I can say other than I love you and I'm looking forward to some relaxation with just the two of us. Our first Christmas together and then seeing our baby for the first time. I'm looking forward to it all, the good and the bad. Everything you give me because that's who you are and it's the man I fell in love with. No mating bond could ever compete with how crazy I am about you. I took a shaky breath as I finished speaking, not even having time to think as Daniel pulled me close into an embrace and effectively kissed the life out of me. Uh, I guess you may kiss the... A bride? Alex's startled tone broke us apart, and Noel stepped forward to offer us the rings. It was Noel who pulled Daniel's head out of his ass, so we only saw it fitting that she got to be the ring bearer. They were thin platinum bands with the words, Today, Tomorrow, Always, inscribed inside them. Daniel took my hand in his and gently slid it on, with me doing the same for him. They almost brought a fresh set of tears to my eyes at how amazing they looked. So I guess I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Greenwood. Sorry about the shitty name, Gia. I think even Rosenbaum is more attractive than Greenwood, Alex shrugged sympathetically. Nothing is more attractive than Greenwood. I grinned laughing when I heard Sarah's cheer of approval from my words. Ugh, you make me sick with sappiness. Alex made a retching sound. Ugh, make it obvious how stupidly in love you are, why don't you? Alex was silenced when Lane clamped a hand over his mouth and dragged him away to a stereo system they had moved outside for the occasion. She cranked up the music as loud as it would go for the real celebration to begin. I couldn't drink any alcohol and had therefore banned Daniel from doing the same. If I couldn't get drunk, then neither could my mate. Even though Daniel had argued, I would feel drunk over the bond. I had still refused. Not even the puppy dog eyes had worked that time. So, how does it feel to be Mrs. Greenwood? Nina asked with a grin. Pretty damn good, actually. I beamed, smiling even wider as Daniel's arms wrapped around me from behind. Feels pretty damn good hearing it, too. Daniel spoke into my neck and gently nipped on my earlobe. I'd appreciate it if you didn't hump her in public, Daniel. Nina fixed him a stern look before turning her attention back to me. How are you even married, anyway? You didn't sign anything, and I know for a fact that Alex isn't certified to wed you. We're still married, she grinned. It's just not legal. Oh, you law-breaking citizen, she scolded playfully. I like it. She headed off to dance with her mate while Daniel slowly swayed with me to the music, even if it was a lot faster than the speed we were moving at. I hope this was okay, Daniel spoke as he kissed my neck. Are you kidding, Dan? It's amazing. I couldn't have picked a better wedding. You mean you didn't want a horse-drawn carriage like the pretty princess you are? Daniel teased. Ass. I rolled my eyes affectionately and spun into Daniel's arms to loop my arms around my husband's neck. You know the best thing about weddings? I asked suggestively. The red-hot kinky sex? Daniel answered hopefully. I was going to say the cake, but yeah, that works too. I laughed and dragged Daniel in for another kiss. The lake house! The pregnant Omega practically leaped out of the passenger seat of Daniel's car when they arrived at their destination. Daniel smiled fondly at his mate, his new wife, gosh, they're a married couple, before taking in their surroundings. The lake house was covered in a thick layer of pure snow. The lake itself was frozen over and he sighed in relief when not a vile squirrel was in sight. Daniel had always wanted to spend Christmas here and had sent Alex and Lane over earlier in the week to put up a Christmas tree and make sure the kitchen was stuffed with food because Daniel didn't plan on leaving this place until at least New Year. The snow would be too thick to get through anyway. You said you wanted to come back here, so here we are. Daniel hadn't even managed to switch off the engine before he was getting pulled out of the car and had an armful full of happy Omega. You're the best, Dan. Thank you. 
His mate squeezed him harder before she reluctantly let go, stepping back to admire the view surrounding them. When they reached the inside of the lake house, the interior was decorated in every possible Christmas decoration you could imagine. There were figurines, dancing snowmen, and even a highly annoying but kind of cute singing Santa Claus. Then, in the middle of their little winter wonderland was the biggest tree Daniel had ever seen, decorated with every color of tinsel and bulbuls and twinkling lights. Oh, whoa! Gia breathed in awe. Right with you there, babe, Daniel agreed. The place looked magical. He thanked Alex and Lane mentally. Gia turned to him a huge, shit-eating grin on her face. Can we play in the snow? She was practically vibrating with energy, and Daniel really couldn't stop himself from laughing at his new wife. Yeah, Gia, we can play in the snow. Gia didn't even let Daniel finish the rest before she grabbed his hand and raced back to the cool outdoors. Thank God for werewolf body heat, Daniel grinned as he dropped himself in the snow, waving his arms like an idiot to make a snow angel. Daniel hadn't even had the chance to stand up and admire his angel before he was pelted with snowballs and blessed with the sound of soft giggling. Yep, giggling. He spun and dropped to the floor, quickly gathering up a handful of snow and molding it into a ball and firing it directly at his mate's head. It was a little cruel, but he couldn't stop laughing at Gia's bitch face as the icy flakes melted on her warm skin. Gia didn't seem to appreciate Daniel's good aim as much as Daniel did, and he quickly found himself being tackled into the snow, laughing as Gia tried and failed to get the upper hand. They were both soaked and feeling cold by the time Gia reluctantly gave in, but Daniel couldn't wipe the smile off his face for a million dollars. I hate you, Gia grumbled as they made their way inside quickly rushing to the bathroom to run a warm bath. Nope, you love me, Daniel grinned as he jumped in the tub that was only half filled with water. You're lucky I do. Gia glared at him before slipping her body in between Daniel's legs and smiling softly as Daniel's arms wrapped around her and pulled her back towards his chest. Times like this were what kept Daniel sane. Everything would be all right because he had his mate. Nothing else in the world mattered as long as Gia was happy. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Sex. The pack sang over the phone. Both Daniel and Gia laughed at their way of saying Merry Christmas. You guys are idiots, Daniel chuckled. Thanks, though, and we'll make sure to have extra Happy Holiday Sex. Start off the new year with a bang, Gia grinned. Yeah, you will, was the retort from Noel on the other line. Have a good one, guys, and we'll be home soon. Merry Christmas, Daniel shouted down the phone, a little sad it was on speaker and he couldn't deafen somebody, preferably Alex. Merry Christmas, the pack shouted back, hanging up before anyone else could say anything. Merry Christmas, Dan. Gia curled her body around Daniel's and nuzzled him softly. Merry Christmas, baby. Daniel placed a delicate kiss on the top of his mate's head. It was dark outside and the only light came from the open fire crackling away and the TV playing some Christmas movie Gia had chosen. It was just after midnight, so it was officially Christmas Day. Though they had agreed to wait until the morning to exchange Christmas gifts, Daniel was ready to admit to himself that he was a child and, quite frankly, had waiting issues. So, it's officially Christmas now, Daniel started. No, Daniel, you can't open anything until the morning, his mate replied without letting him finish. Fine, he sighed heavily. <laughs> Can we go to bed then? I'm tired and the presents under the tree have some sort of magnetic force pulling me in. You're made of metal then? Gia raised her head, smirking at Daniel. I, oh, God, do you not understand metaphors? He shrugged. His still laughing mate from his lap switched off the TV and headed to the bedroom. Gia, wake up, it's Christmas. Daniel's voice was way too perky for such an ungodly hour. What time is it? I grumbled, burying my head under the pillow. It's just gone 6.30. Then, can I suggest something? Sure. Fuck off until the clock is at least in double figures. I glared at my husband. No way would the puppy dog eyes get me out of bed at six in the morning. There's a zero in front of the six, if that makes you feel any better, Daniel tried reasoning. Funny enough, it doesn't. Now get your ass back to sleep or simply let me sleep for at least three and a half more hours. I could admit I was being a sour face. Damn, I hated mornings. But babe, it's Christmas. Daniel stuck out his bottom lip and full-on pouted. For a few moments, I actually felt guilty before getting pissed that Daniel had me wrapped around his fingers. 
My present better be fucking huge, I mumbled as I slid out of bed and into a very cold shower to attempt waking myself up. I love you, Daniel yelled after me. I must fucking worship you to get out of bed this early. Now make me some coffee. It then struck me that I could no longer drink coffee. Fuck, get me everything we have that contains sugar. If I couldn't have a caffeine rush, then I was going to opt for a sugar high. When I finally trudged downstairs, I was greeted by a mug of hot chocolate and three packs of sugary gummy bears. I accepted them with a mumbled, thanks, for dropping down onto the couch and shoving a handful of delicious sugary goodness into my waiting mouth. You gonna share that? Daniel asked a little hopefully. I studied the bag of gummy bears intently for a few moments before reluctantly handing my mate one. One? Seriously? I can take it back if you don't want it. Daniel quickly popped the gummy bear in his mouth, apparently scared of the pissed off expression I was probably sporting. I took a few moments to sit back and relax while Daniel gathered up the presents. He moved in front of me and started offering me various wrapped packages from the pack. I had received multiple gifts from the pack that ranged from expensive dresses to a pretty impressively sized dildo from Alex. I do not want to know what goes on in that guy's head. I shook my head exasperately before tossing it towards Daniel for inspection. Hmm, Daniel eyed the gift appreciatively. Well, they say Christmas is for toys. My mate waggled his eyebrows before flashing me a smirk. That means you're supposed to spend the rest of the day playing with them. Why, Daniel, I've never seen you so subtle. I laughed through the sarcasm that was laced in my voice. Shut up and open your best presents. My best presents? I raised an eyebrow suspiciously. Yeah, the presents from me, of course. Daniel raced back to the tree and returned with an armful of packages. I opened them smiling widely when I received a bunch of new paints to paint the nursery with. There were a few other small gifts such as a leather plated bracelet and some new cologne that smelt amazing. Daniel had also gotten me a guitar so that I could play along with Kevin. My tears almost welled up by how much the thought touched me. I couldn't stop laughing, however, when I unwrapped a homemade gift voucher. This gift voucher entitles you to one night of hot, steamy, greenwood sex. I continued to laugh for a long time after that, eventually silenced when Daniel wrapped me up in a bone-crushing hug. That thing has an expiry date, you know, Daniel gestured towards the voucher I was holding. I'd use it soon if I were you. You're unbelievable, I laughed softly before retrieving my own handful of gifts to give Daniel. I bit my lip around to smile with a genuine happiness in Daniel's eyes, and the one I felt through our bond as he opened his own gifts from the pack before opening the ones from me. I had gotten my husband some designer jeans he had been eyeing for months, along with a huge box of chocolates for my mate's sweet tooth. I had also gotten myself and Daniel an appointment at a tattoo parlor something we had discussed for a few weeks now and decided on getting a matching symbol. I'm really too chicken for this shit, Daniel laughed softly but thanked me anyway. <laughs> You'll have to hold my hand, okay? I'll never let go, Jack, I'll never let go. I held a dramatic pose at the words. I really hated that movie, but the quote just slipped out of me. I obviously had an uncontrollable need to joke around with my equally silly mate. Fuck off, Rose, Daniel grumbled. Then he opened one of the smaller presents, glaring at me as he did so. In his hand, he held a cute little squirrel keychain. I thought it was perfect. Seriously, he continued glaring. You love them, I retorted. Daniel then turned his attention to his final present, breaking into hysterical laughter as he did so. A karaoke machine? <laughs> He jumped to his feet and picked me up off the ground, spinning me around as he hugged the life out of me. You are so fucking amazing, you know that? You're awfully excited about a karaoke machine, I grinned, feeling dizzy. You do realize that you're probably about the only person who'd actually allow me to sing, right? Daniel was still laughing. He wasn't a very good singer, but I knew how much he loved it. It makes you happy, so I'm happy. I leaned forward to kiss my mate, but didn't get very far as Daniel surged closer and enveloped me in a deep kiss. Maybe we should test out Alex's gift, 
Daniel raised his eyebrows, hopefully. You could totally use your voucher. I laughed. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. I kind of have a surprise for you upstairs. I like the sound of that. Daniel smiled against my lips as he kissed me once more. I have one, too. He turned towards the tree and pulled out another soft package. I opened it quickly and almost burst into tears. In fact, I did. Fucking hormones! I sobbed as I held the tiny baby onesie in my hands alongside the cutest little boots I had ever seen. There was also the softest teddy bear I had ever touched. It's perfect, I whispered, wrapping my arms around my husband's neck and leaning into his embrace. Now take me to bed. Don't have to ask me twice, Daniel grinned and carried me as quickly as he could to our bedroom. When we got upstairs, I quickly disappeared into the ensuite bathroom before Daniel could even consider kissing me. I returned dressed in a mini red Santa dress that was decorated with a giant golden bow and had a Santa hat on my head. Babe, Daniel eyed my body appreciatively. Thought you could unwrap one last present. I positioned my hand on my waist seductively and leaned back against the doorframe. Come and get it, I grinned as Daniel raced forward, dragging me over to the bed and making quick work of the bow and dress. You can leave the Santa hat on. Daniel pulled on the bobble and laughed when it pinged me in the face. Ass, I grit out before throwing Daniel onto his back and straddling his hips. Gonna ride you, Dan, I promised, grinding my hips down onto my mates. Going to make you come again and again and again and again. You promise, Daniel said eagerly. Promise. Several hours and multiple orgasms later, we both lay curled together, happy and sated. It was by far the best Christmas I had ever had. Everything about it was perfect. Daniel was perfect. Daniel smiled sleepily. Thanks, you are too. My brows furrowed. I am what? You said I was perfect. You're perfect too. Now I was really confused. I hadn't said anything. Sure you did. I didn't fuck your brains out that much, did I? Daniel smirked and it made me even more confused if possible. No. I hadn't said anything. I was certain. Daniel? Baby? I waited until Daniel's eyes met mine before testing my theory. Can you hear me? The way Daniel flew out of the bed, arms flailing everywhere as he fell backward onto the floor with a loud thump told me that, yes, Daniel could hear me inside his head. What the fuck? Daniel's eyes widened and almost bulged out of his skull. So you can hear me then. What the fuck? Daniel clasped his hands over his ears. You're in my fucking head. Think something at me, I suggested. Maybe it works both ways. I think this is insane and there's no way in hell this is possible. Daniel folded his arms over his chest smugly, as if he knew I would be wrong. Sorry, Dan, it may be insane, but I'm thinking it's very possible indeed. The smirk was wiped off Daniel's face as I responded to his thoughts. So what? Now I have no privacy? Daniel's jaw hung open in disbelief. How the hell did this happen? I can only hear what you direct at me. Maybe it's like when we're in wolf form, only we can do it in human form. Perhaps you'll have the privacy you need after all. I threw the sheets off my body and stormed into the bathroom, slamming the door behind me. No, Gia, I didn't mean it like that, I heard Daniel on the other side of the door. Fuck, Gia, this is huge. Werewolves can't do this, and I freaked. You know I have nothing to hide from you. Daniel's fist pounded on the door, but I ignored it. I didn't want to hear it. Maybe I was overreacting. Actually, I knew I was overreacting. But the pregnancy and their sudden telepathic connection scared the shit out of me. Surely my reaction was understandable. Fucking hormones. Gia, open the fucking door. Daniel's fist slammed against the door once more. Just leave me alone. I sighed, heavily relieved. I didn't have to speak right now because I knew my voice wasn't strong enough and I would only end up crying. Get out of my head. Daniel's voice in my mind was cold and distant no doubt as scared as I was. Even though my mate was probably terrified of what was happening, it didn't stop the hurt that I felt from those words. I was scared too. My body ached all over, and my stomach was grumbling quite loudly. 
I didn't know what time it was. My guess was early morning, but I wasn't certain because the bathroom had no window or clock, and I wasn't quite ready to face Daniel yet. After around an hour of shouting at each other from the other side of the room, I had finally given in. My body slid down the closed bathroom door and I curled up in a ball on the bathroom floor. It wasn't the most comfortable spot in the world, and I could sense Daniel in the same position on the other side of the room. I could feel waves of emotions coming through our bond. I wasn't the only one suffering. Gia, please. Daniel's voice entered my head. We never asked for any of this, and yet here we are fighting about it. It's not like either of us can change it, and I sure as hell wasn't getting tests done on it. Open the door, baby. Daniel sounded desperate, pleading. I sighed heavily, slowly raised myself to my feet, and opened the door. Daniel had clearly been leaning all his weight on the door as he collapsed backward at my feet. My mate smiled sheepishly up at me, and it took a lot for me not to laugh at him. Instead, I stepped over him and curled myself up on our bed, chasing sleep from too long spent on a tiled floor. Gia, talk to me. Don't shut me out. Daniel lay on the opposite side of the bed, careful not to touch me. Funny, I thought the whole problem about this is that you can't shut me out. I muttered, arms curling around the pillow to stop myself from reaching out to my husband. That's not what I meant, and you know it, Daniel snapped. I'm sorry, Gia, but this is something that has never happened before. It's not possible, so yeah, I freaked out. Not possible, I scoffed. You know, you say that a lot. Well, I've had a lot of firsts with you. When it comes to relationships, I've had all my firsts with you. Then you turn out to be a supposedly extinct species, and suddenly I'm changing into who the fuck knows what. Daniel sighed, cuddling up to his own pillow. I'm just as scared as you are. All this stuff is new to me, and it's all way over my head. I'm sorry, I whispered. I know you're scared, too. Come here. Daniel opened out his arms, and I found myself drawn to the safety of my mate's warm body. I sighed in contentment when those strong arms held me tight and kissed me on the forehead. We need some sleep. Daniel spoke around a yawn. Good night. Night. I buried my head into Daniel's chest and finally fell asleep there. I would never be able to sleep without Daniel's arms around me again. The room was lit up from bright sunshine when I woke up. I felt like shit and guessed that I had only had a few hours sleep at the most. Daniel stirred next to me, blinking open sleepy eyes and offering up a lazy smile. It wasn't often I was awake first, but I loved it when I was. Daniel is too adorable for his own good when he wakes up. Morning, Daniel mumbled. I think it's afternoon, I corrected. Close enough, Daniel yawned, wrapping his arms tighter around me before relaxing his grip and allowing his eyes to slip closed again. Dan, mm, I have a really bad craving for lucky charms, I admitted. I'm sure there's some downstairs. You want some? I asked as I climbed out of the bed after untangling myself from Daniel's limbs. Sure. <sighs> Daniel yawned again and rolled onto his back, stretching his arms out above his head before slowly trailing behind me. I made quick work of breakfast and then moved on to a stash of Sean's cookies I had bought with me. Daniel eyed me curiously before shrugging and continuing to shovel food into his mouth. Ugh. You're so messy, I commented. You have cookie crumbs all over your face, Daniel retorted without even looking up. I blushed slightly and wiped at my face, slightly annoyed when I realized that I had even managed to get a cookie crumb on my eyebrow. Damn, maybe I was the messy one after all. So, what are we going to do with our sudden telepathic tendencies? I asked curiously. We're going to deal with it ourselves, Daniel replied easily. Ourselves? I raised a questionable eyebrow. Yes, we can't tell any of the pack about this. No way in hell are we letting them know we have random telepathic connections. Daniel fixed me a stern look. You must not mention this to anybody. We'll deal with it ourselves. As long as neither of us is in pain, then there's nothing wrong. How can you be sure? Do you really think I'd risk it if I wasn't sure we'd be okay? Daniel sighed heavily and folded his arms on top of the table leaning forward slightly. Gia, I'm not stupid enough to risk my own life, and I sure as hell would never risk yours. 
Trust me on this one, okay? We're going to be fine. I sighed in resignation. I trust you. I really do. Just promise me that if anything else starts happening, or if things get weird, then we'll ask for help. I promise, Daniel agreed. Now, let's enjoy the rest of our honeymoon. Twelve weeks, guys, Lane beamed excitedly. You ready to see your baby? Yes! Daniel was practically jumping out of his seat, trying to get Lane to speed up. I shook my head fondly at my husband, linking our hands together and allowing Lane to maneuver the ultrasound machine towards the bed. Things had been good since Christmas. Our telepathic conversations hadn't gone away, and while we were pretty good at controlling it, sometimes thoughts slipped through. If they were thought loud enough, it was very awkward the first time Daniel had an argument with Alex and made a snide comment in his head. Unaware, I heard it and randomly burst out laughing next to him. Maybe the pack thought they were a little insane. I guessed it beat the alternative of freaks. Now this gel is going to be a little cold, Gia, but you just gotta take it. Lane laughed as I let out a loud shriek at how cold the gel really was. I thought you said it was a little cold. That's more than a little. I glared at the woman, but only got a sweet smile in return. All right. Lane moved the scanner over the soft skin of my lower abdomen where the tiniest bump was forming. Let's have a peek at baby Greenwood. Lane and I both turned our attention to the screen, and I couldn't stop the prickle of emotion when I first saw the blurry splodge that was my baby flash up on the screen. My cheeks were hurting from smiling so widely, and in the corner of my eye, I caught Daniel's smile just as wide and felt a wash of pride over the bond. A soft beating sound entered the room and Lane grinned. What's that? I asked curiously. That's your baby's heartbeats. Lane's grin widened even more. Babies? My eyes widened. We were having more than one? Oh, God. Two to be exact, Lane announced. I can't tell you the sex just yet, but just know that they are both doing brilliantly. You're a great parent, Freckles. She pointed to the screen. Here we have baby number one, she shifted slightly to the left, and baby number two. Wow, two, I breathed, feeling a surge of protection rush through me. I had two children who depended on me now. Seeing them and hearing their heartbeats made it all real. Two babies, Gia? Daniel's excited tone and the tight pressure on my hand brought me back to reality. Two pups? Daniel's eyes were damp and his smile was dazzling. God, I love you. He leaned forward and captured my lips, kissing me deeply. Do you really need to taste his tonsils while I'm trying to give you a damn sonogram? Lane was clearly amused, but I flushed with embarrassment when I remembered that we weren't alone. Sorry, I grinned sheepishly. Seeing as I'm having two, I started. Does this mean my pregnancy will be shorter? I asked hopefully. Sorry, Freckles. Your body is made to carry a litter as opposed to a lone child. It can easily hold four babies for the full nine months. There better not be four babies in there, I protested. Now, don't you worry. You only got two this time. You normally always carry the same or less, so you shouldn't have to worry about it in the future, she assured me. Now, you want a picture? I take it. Lane asked, already printing off a few copies from different angles. I found my new screensaver. Daniel's lips quirked as he stared at the picture with pride. He took a snap of it with his cell phone and set it as his screensaver. I felt a spark inside me. Daniel's background was him and me, and while our babies were the most important thing right now, I felt loved to know I reserved the space on Daniel's wallpaper. God, I was such an emotional wreck. Yeah, you are an emotional omega sometimes. Daniel's voice entered my mind along with the soft laughter. Oh, fuck, you heard that? I tried my best not to groan and cover my face to hide my embarrassment. Only every word. Daniel sent me a private smirk and I couldn't help but glare at him. Damn it, I needed to figure out how to control the mind link. It always sparked up at the most inconvenient of times. Coincidentally, whenever I was thinking something embarrassing, it always seemed to reach Daniel's ears. Just my damn luck. The only good thing was that the pack had yet to discover that Daniel and I tended to have private conversations sometimes. I was seriously proud of how well we were hiding it. 
we were slowly working things out for ourselves, adapting to the changes, and were soon to become parents. I was about to start painting the mural, and Daniel had finally managed a breakthrough in calming Zane's antics. Turns out parents will actually pay for their children to be entertained by an idiot. Maybe we just found our perfect babysitter. Things can only get better from here, right? Come on! Gia jumped up and down a little as she sucked in a breath and pulled her stomach in as far as it would go. Damn it! She flopped down onto her back on their bed in defeat, her jeans unfastened and clutching tightly around her ass where it was obvious she had put on weight. His mate was fifteen weeks pregnant and her body was beginning to tell the world. Something wrong? Daniel popped his head out of the bathroom and eyed Gia's body appreciatively. I can't fasten my jeans! He felt Gia's emotions and thoughts through their bond. She was frustrated and hated herself at the reality of the situation. She knew it was her body swelling with their children, but it didn't stop her from feeling ugly. His poor mate, Daniel Wish, she could understand how beautiful she was regardless of her weight. Oh! Gia glared at him after the alpha threw his scrunched up wet towel at her. Daniel knew it didn't hurt, but he also knew that Gia wasn't exactly feeling like a happy camper. You're not fat, Daniel scolded. He stepped closer and pressed his hand over Gia's abdomen where her skin had softened and a small bump pushed from the confines of her jeans. Wow, he whispered in awe. When did you get so big? I knew I was fat. Shit, that was the wrong thing to say as Gia burst out into tears, twisting her body and curling up into a ball. She trailed her hands over the swell of her stomach and cried harder. Another wave of emotions and thoughts made their way through their bond, and Daniel understood why. His wife's body was changing, and there was nothing she could do about it. She felt disgusting, and she just didn't want this anymore. Daniel's heart squeezed painfully inside his chest. Daniel, I can't, Gia sobbed, not allowing Daniel to touch her. Can't what? He asked desperately, trying anything to get Gia to look at him. Gia, babe, I didn't mean it like that. I just didn't notice how much the bump had grown. I can't do this anymore. I don't want this. She choked on more sobs and ended up coughing from getting herself so worked up. Don't want what, Gia? Daniel's voice was shaking as he spoke. This. I don't want to be pregnant, Daniel. I don't want it. Any of it. She cried, slamming her fist into her stomach in order to take out her frustration. Gia, hey, baby, stop. Daniel quickly grabbed hold of her wrists and pinned them above her head, straddling her thighs and holding Gia down as she violently writhed underneath him. His mate tried to buck him off, but it wasn't working. She kicked her legs out and fought against the tight grip Daniel had on her wrists, but it was useless, so she resorted to the only thing that she could. She screamed. Gia! Daniel tried desperately to get Gia to respond, but it wasn't working. She kept on writhing and screaming underneath Daniel, tears streaming down her red cheeks and her breathing rapidly increasing. Hey, hey, babe! He managed to pin Gia's wrist with one hand and grabbed her chin with the other, forcing her head to stay still. Look at me, he ordered. Gia didn't respond. Look at me, he ordered again, letting his alpha voice come out. Gia went limp in his arms, taking shuddering breaths before finally blinking open scared green eyes. They were bloodshot from crying, and they broke Daniel's heart. Why are you being like this? Daniel asked softly in order to not scare his mate. Weren't you listening? Gia's voice was flat and empty of any emotion. I don't want to be pregnant, Daniel. I don't want these children. You don't mean that. Daniel felt tears well up in his own eyes at Gia's words. You were happy right up until you finally noticed your body was changing. All of an hour ago, you were so excited. What the hell is wrong with you? The question held more anger than Daniel had intended, causing Gia to stare at him stunned and hurt. He was about to apologize when there was a timid knock at their bedroom door. The person waited a few moments before opening it and taking in the sight of a very upset and distressed Gia being pinned down by her mate. Lane's eyes grew wide with concern. She quickly ushered Daniel out of the room and took Gia down to her healing room. When Daniel had asked to go with her, she had almost turned savage on him protecting Gia's shaking form. Fuck! Damn it! Daniel cursed. He slid down the wall and bracketed his arms on his knees. The healing room was soundproof, and he would give anything to hear the conversation behind those closed doors. Hey, man, 
Alex appeared next to him and dropped down to sit next to Daniel on the floor. But what's wrong with Gia? That was quite a screaming fit. His voice was soft and laced with concern. Daniel breathed a deep sigh, both his and his mate's emotions running heavily through him. I wish I knew. It seemed like hours later when Lane finally stepped out of the healing room. Alex offered him a warm smile before giving them some privacy. She stepped into Daniel's office that was also blessed with soundproofing so that they could talk away from the rest of the pack. What's going on, Lane? Daniel asked, a little afraid of the answer. I've sedated Gia. Her blood pressure was through the roof and she got herself so worked up she was exhausted, so I gave her something to help her relax and take the stress off the babies. They had a traumatic few minutes, but they stabilized really easily. She smiled sadly at him. She asked me something, Daniel, and I'm not sure I want to repeat it. I know you'd never give your consent. Daniel couldn't bear the thought of what Gia had asked for, knowing it without even having to ask but needing to know for sure. What did she ask? She asked me to terminate the pregnancy. Lane gave Daniel a look of pure sympathy. I told her I couldn't do it without your permission, and she freaked out again, which is why I sedated her. Daniel raked his hands through his hair. This was not happening. Why? His whole body was trembling, his voice broken as he spoke. Why would she want to get rid of our babies? He felt the prick of tears sting his eyes. She was so excited. Daniel, you have to understand that this is all very new to her, Lane put on her professional voice. Gia's rather young and she's pregnant. This pregnancy isn't planned and her body is rapidly changing. There are changes in her body that she was unprepared for. Saying you want a baby is all well and good, but it doesn't really hit home until things are physically changing. Her stomach is beginning to grow and it will continue to grow, but she is so, so scared about the thought of that. Put yourself in her position. You'd be scared too. I'm scared as it is. Daniel slammed his hand down on his desk, frustrated with how everything was upsetting his mate. I know you are, but your mate suffered an anxiety attack earlier and it's highly possible it might happen again. You need to be with her every single step of the way. Daniel's brows furrowed. An anxiety attack? It's very possible that Gia is suffering from some form of prenatal depression. I won't know for sure until she wakes up and I can assess her properly. She gave him a sad half smile. I'll do whatever it takes to make her better, Daniel, but you need to be with her in this tough time. I am there for her every second of every day, and you know that, Daniel defended. I know, Alpha, but your mate is very mentally unstable at the moment. It could have just been a rush of hormones, or it could have been something more serious. We just need to support her as best as we can. You can go sit with Gia until she wakes up if you'd like. Daniel didn't have any words, so he just nodded jerkily, finding himself moving without thinking, not even seeing any of his surroundings until he was at his wife's bedside. Gia looked so small. She was hooked up to various machines and looked paler than Daniel had ever seen her. The sheet clung to her body enough that the small swell of their children was visible. It killed Daniel to think Gia had asked for a termination. Did she really hate their children that much she wanted to harm them? Daniel wasn't sure how much later it was, but he was slowly falling asleep on the chair on Gia's bedside when his mate's hand twitched in his. He blinked rapidly to shake off the early clutches of sleep and shifted forward in his chair to hold on to Gia's hand tighter. Very slowly, his mate regained consciousness, vibrant green eyes scanning the room surrounding her and finally settling on Daniel. She looked sad and guilty. It cut through Daniel to see, but he knew he had to be strong for his mate. What happened? Gia croaked wincing at the sound of her voice and smiling gratefully as Daniel handed her a glass of water. You had a panic attack. Daniel took a deep breath. Said you didn't want to be pregnant anymore. Even asked Lane for a termination. Gia's eyes widened. I said that? She asked hopelessly. Daniel nodded. Is that what you want, Gia? You can't get a termination without the permission of your Alpha. I can't stand the thought of killing our children, but your well-being is important to me. You're my wife, and I love you. If a termination is really what you want, then... I will. 
I'll allow it. He paused to take a shaky breath, feeling tears welling up. But if I do that, then I'll be getting surgery to prevent me having children. It may sound like a rash decision, but I can't go through this again to have it taken away. I love you and I'll support your choice, but I can't go through the heartache again if this is what you want. Gia's eyes were damp. Daniel, baby, I don't. She shook her head in disbelief. I don't want to abort our children. I had a total hormonal overload and said a bunch of shit I didn't mean. I can't believe I said that. You really don't remember? Daniel asked, surprised. No. She looked a little stunned after Daniel's revelation. I don't want to get rid of our babies. I love them, Daniel. I have no idea why I reacted like that. I had to restrain you, Gia. You were crying because you couldn't get your jeans fastened, and you punched yourself in the stomach. Gia's eyes widened, and she curled her arms protectively around the bump. I had to hold you down, and you totally freaked out, screaming and fighting against me. Lane had to sedate you to stop the trauma on the babies. I can't believe I did that. Gia looked down to her stomach, rubbing her hands lovingly across the swell. Are they okay? She asked, suddenly worried. They're fine, Daniel assured. Are you okay? Lane said you could have prenatal depression. Depression? Gia eyed him in disbelief. No, Daniel, I'm not depressed. I can't wait to be a mother. You know that. So what the hell, Gia? None of this was making any sense as far as Daniel was concerned. I don't know, okay? Gia yelled. Why don't you fucking tell me instead and stop asking me questions? Given everything you've been going through, I've been lenient with you, Gia. But you will not speak to me in that manner again. I allow you to get away with a lot of things, but this stops now. I'm your alpha and you will respect that. Daniel's voice was firm and authoritative. In all honesty, he had never felt disrespected by Gia, but all his emotions were running high and caused him to snap. He sighed in resignation. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Why is this happening to me? Gia's voice was small and scared. Without thinking, Daniel leaned forward and wrapped his entire body around his mate, seeking her own comfort as well as giving it. We'll figure it out, Daniel promised. What if it's linked to all that stuff happening to you? Gia whispered. The eyes, the seizure, and the immunity. His wife quickly scanned the room, making sure there was nobody around over here. The mind thing. Daniel stiffened at the thought that whatever was going on with them could potentially harm his pups. What if this is another side effect? Daniel didn't know what to say to that. What could he say to that? Instead of trying to explain things, he linked his fingers through Gia's where they were settled across her stomach, smiling at being able to comfort his wife and children. He knew Gia was self-conscious about the changes in her body, so he leaned forward and placed a soft kiss on the bump. We'll figure it out, he assured, wrapping Gia up in his arms and allowing them both to drift off to sleep. It had been a long, exhausting day for the both of them. Well, Freckles, you'll be pleased to know that you're not suffering any form of prenatal depression, Lane announced as she flicked through her notes. Wow, Lane, it took you three weeks to come up with that one? I muttered, annoyed that I was still being used as a guinea pig. I told you that I wasn't depressed the second I woke up, but did you believe me? Nope. So I'm 18 weeks pregnant and totally healthy, yes? Lane sighed, dropping down into an armchair. Yes, you have a clean bill of health, but Gia, there has to be something going on. It was all just too weird. I had some crazy hormones for a minute. I'm a human born, remember? Guess I'm more hormonal than your average beta or omega. I shrugged, moving my hand over the bump that was getting bigger by the day. I smiled when I felt a little flutter inside me from the touch. It wasn't strong enough to be felt on the outside yet, but it was only a matter of time before my babies would play kickboxing with my stomach. I just don't get it, Lane yelled in frustration. I'm a natural healer, and yet I have no idea when it comes to you and Daniel. What the hell makes you so different? I don't know. I really had no idea and prayed more than anything to be a normal werewolf. Lane was silent for a few minutes before she finally spoke. 
Theo said you came from an Omega bloodline. That explains the Omega part of you, but there's just so much more in your bloodstream. What else is in your bloodline, Gia? Where did you come from? I stiffened. My family was the last thing I wanted to talk about. My parents died. I don't know anything about my family. Lane frowned. Nothing? I shook my head. I think I need to do a little digging. There has to be something for me to go on. Maybe find out which Omega bloodline you were linked with. Any siblings? Not that I know of. My parents weren't exactly up for playing happy families. I don't know why they kept me, if I'm honest. Your parents must have something to do with werewolves. That's the only way this makes any sense. Are you saying my parents were werewolves? I asked, pure disbelief in my tone. I came from a normal family with normal parents, and yet here was Lane trying to tell me otherwise. I'm saying there may be not human, she corrected. Have you ever entertained the possibility you're very different, Freckles, and I think you may not be the only Evander with supernatural tendencies? But my parents were humans, I tried to reason. There have been pups born to human families before. You're from an Omega bloodline, so it's in your heritage somewhere. Your parents may or may not be fully human. We just need to know what Theo knew, she sighed once more. Or you could just be special. I prefer the second hypothesis. I had heard way too much for one day. Can I go now? I need a burger or I'm going to die and Daniel is practically bouncing off the walls outside waiting for me. I smiled at Daniel's impatience over the bond. Fine, I'm done with you for now, but I'm telling you, Gia, something else is going on here and I'm going to find out what, Lane promised. I didn't wait for her to come up with more ideas about what was up with me. I jumped out of the chair and quickly raced to Daniel, who was armed with several bags of McDonald's. I love you. I spoke more to the bag of food than to Daniel, and I followed my mate like an obedient puppy to our bedroom where Daniel handed me a huge bag of food. Burgers, nuggets, and three fries. I raised a questionable eyebrow. How many people do you think I'm eating for? Three, Daniel smirked, taking a sip of his shake and taking out even more food than I had. What? He asked my open mouth stare. I'm hungry. Did you order a meal or simply take all their stock? Oh, shut up. Daniel threw a fry at my head and laughed as it bounced off my nose. I'll get you back, you know, I threatened. Promises, promises. Daniel teased, stealing one of my nuggets. So Lane is going all family tree on you? Daniel asked Gia after Gia had explained Lane's lack of diagnosis. Pretty much, his mate sighed. I wish I knew what was going on, but at the same time, I wish everyone would stop bothering me about it. I doubt she will find anything, and if she does, then we'll know what's up. I don't think it's anything to worry about. I mean, yeah, the side effects aren't really great right now, but it's not hurting us, Daniel tried reasoning. Daniel, I asked Lane to get rid of our children. If that isn't hurting us, then I don't know what is, Gia argued. Daniel paused, clearly not having thought about that. We'll just have to wait and see. What if something really bad comes from this? Gia curled her body around Daniel's. His wife needed to feel safe, and right now the safest place was in bed with him. Then we'll deal with it together, Daniel promised. What if we're not together? Daniel dreaded the thought, but it was a possibility. We'll find our way back to each other. I meant every word of my vows, Gia. I will never let you go. Daniel! Daniel! Gia shook his arms excitedly, bringing Daniel out of his peaceful sleep. You better be dying, Daniel groaned, rolling over to come face to face with his wife's beaming smile. Strange, considering the last thing she did was alertness before midday. Here, Gia grabbed his hand and pressed it onto the swell of her stomach. Daniel smoothed his thumbs across the tight skin, his heart exploding with love at the tiny nudge he felt against his palm. Is that... Our babies are kicking, Gia laughed warmly and maneuvered Daniel's hand to another spot on her stomach, feeling little prods against his palm. Wow, Daniel breathed in awe. He brought his other hand up to Gia's stomach, feeling happy tears welling up as his children kicked at his touch. Does it hurt? He asked tentatively, caressing the soft bump. Gia shook her head softly, a smile never leaving her face. No. It feels weird, but it doesn't hurt. Kind of like butterflies in my tummy. She grinned at 
brought her own hands up to entwine her fingers with Daniel's, moving them to wherever the kicks were next. They're very active, Daniel noted. Finally managed to kick me hard enough so they're enjoying it. Gia laughed. The Omega shifted her body to lie back down and underneath the warmth of Daniel's touch. Daniel allowed himself to run his hands over Gia's naked chest and stomach. Her bump was sticking out proudly, soft, milky, freckled skin stretched tight over their children. It set a parental urge to protect through Daniel. He needed to do everything in his power to defend and provide for his mate and their pups. Leaning forward, he pressed kisses across all the available skin, smiling widely when he felt little kicks against his lips. Hey, babies, he cooed, resting his cheek over Gia's abdomen and listening to the little heartbeats inside. You're really enjoying the home mommy's made for you, huh? He got a gentle prod in response, his smile matching Gia's as her hand threaded through his hair and lovingly stroked his thumb across his temple. I am so in love with you right now, Gia admitted. Yeah, I'm pretty fond of you too, Daniel winked as Gia affectionately slapped him. You know something? What? Daniel asked softly. I'm nearly halfway through my pregnancy and I am horny all the time, Gia raised her eyebrows suggestively. It was the middle of the night and Daniel had been half asleep after being woken up so abruptly, but suddenly he was wide awake. Oh, really? he asked in his most sleazy voice. Gia laughed, head thrown back into the pillow with a hearty laugh that shook through her whole body. God, you're such a geek. Daniel ignored that and crawled up his wife's body, straddling her hips and carefully leaning over the bump to lock his lips with Gia's. Tongues tangling in a heated kiss as Gia brought her arms up to link around Daniel's neck and pulling him deeper. They kissed lazily for a long time before Daniel finally managed to work a finger into his mate, ignoring his own painful erection and grinning at Gia's whine of distress as it turned into a groan of pleasure while Daniel fingered her. Neat, you, Gia panted, writhing underneath Daniel. I got you. Daniel could never refuse his mate like this. Need you on all fours, babe. Don't want to hurt you or babies. He kissed Gia once more as he helped her up onto her hands and knees, trailing kisses down her spine before swirling his tongue around his mate's wetness and bathing in the desperate moans that fell from her lips. Dan, she whined, pushing back into Daniel in order to get more friction. Daniel chuckled softly and lined up the head of his cock against Gia's entrance, pushing in achingly slow and watching as Gia's body swallowed him in a cavern of tight heat. He cursed as he finally bottomed out, unable to hold back from thrusting into the willing body beneath him. His arms found their way around Gia, one stroking across her stomach and the other holding her hips steady as he increased the pace. Harder! She had gasped as Daniel proceeded to pound into her harder with every thrust. The only sound in the room was their combined grunts and breathy moans as Daniel pushed them to completion, grinning as his knot slipped into Gia's body and his mate climaxed. Once he finally gained his breath, he moved them so that they were lying side by side, arms stroking over Gia's skin and trailing kisses as far as he could. Right at that moment, everything was stress-free and perfect. Do you reckon you just poked our kids? Right up until Gia broke the peace, causing them both to burst into laughter. Gia, he laughed, unable to stop himself. That's gross. This says the guy currently jizzing on them, Gia panted, an overly annoying smirk crossing her features. Gia, you're gross. It is gross, Gia tried to defend. I feel all dirty now, Daniel confessed, biting over Gia's mating scar and feeling warmth surge through him as Gia shivered at the touch. With the things you do to me, you have every right to feel dirty, Gia told him matter-of-factly. What can I say? You make me dirty, he grinned against the back of Gia's ear, rocking his hips slightly and pushing his knot right up against Gia's sweet spot. Oh, fuck, Gia gasped, throwing her head back into Daniel's shoulder as she came for the second time. You're the dirty one, Daniel told her wonder how many more orgasms I can force out of you. You think I'm dirty, huh? Gia asked. You want to know how dirty I can get? 
Her voice was husky, and Daniel knew that whatever his mate was about to say or do was going to kill him. Well, Gia started. I've seen your knot in your wolf form, Dan. Fuck, it's huge. Wonder what that would feel like inside of me. She pushed her hips back into Daniel's for extra emphasis. Fucking hell, Daniel cursed, tempted to clamp his hand over Gia's mouth to shut her up. It's no secret that every werewolf fantasizes about mating in their wolf form, but it puts way too much pressure on their mate to bear their weight. When did my lovely, innocent wife become so filthy? I think it was the day I met you, Gia grinned. Now hurry up and untie from me because the babies have changed their aim to my bladder and I'm really not dirty enough to piss on myself. Daniel stood back and watched as Gia painted the mural in their pup's bedroom. It was a cute cartoon with a wolf family painted on the walls. Daniel recognized those wolves. Gia had left space next to her and Daniel's wolf for their new arrivals, while the rest of the pack played in the background. His mate had been working on the drawings for nearly two weeks, and she was almost finished. Though Daniel was a little wary about Gia climbing on a ladder to paint the higher bits, it all seemed to come out great. Gia was unaware her mate was standing behind her, clearly too lost in her own thoughts to feel him through the bond. The radio was playing an Ariana Grande song, which Daniel can admit to knowing because he is indeed aware of how much of a geek he is. However, seeing Gia start shaking her ass and singing along to the song was something Daniel would never let her forget. He stood back, smirking for a long time, watching as his mate bobbed the music in time with brushstrokes. Finally, he decided to announce his presence, switching them positions for you, cooking in the kitchen and I'm in the bedroom. I'm in the Olympics way, I'm jumping through hoops. Gia jumped about a foot in the air and let out a very high-pitched shriek once she heard Daniel's voice. This made Daniel break down in laughter, clutching his stomach as Gia cut him a glare. You asshole! Daniel was suddenly struck in the chest by a paintbrush, leaving a pink splat behind. Hey! Daniel's jaw dropped. This is a brand new t-shirt! You can get a new one, Gia argued. My heart gives out and I'm fucked. I swear you'll send me into early labor one of these days. The Omega cut Daniel a stern look and poked him in the nose with a dirty paintbrush, laughing at the obvious mark it left behind. Oh, no, you didn't, Daniel drawled, complete with the finger shake. Gia's reply was to dunk her brush into the bright green paint and wipe it straight across Daniel's face. Oh, yes, I did. She grinned, but didn't have anywhere to move as Daniel quickly grabbed the back of her head and pushed Gia's face straight into the palette, laughing proudly as Gia brought gaze level with Daniel's, a pretty rainbow of colors covering her features. I must say, babe, the LGBT community would be so proud of you right now, he snorted a laugh just as Gia squeezed a paint bottle at his face, covering him in strips of blue. Oh, it's on, he declared, grabbing one of the bottles and chasing Gia with it. Luckily, they had already covered everything with a big sheet and hadn't yet painted the other walls, so they weren't at risk of ruining anything while they flinged paint at each other. Nobody won this fight as they both laughed in a painted-up heap on the floor. Gia sprawled on top of Daniel's body and using her baby weight to hold him there. I can't believe you two children are going to be parents! They turned to the doorway where Lane was standing, leaning her hip against the frame and crossing her arms over her chest. Daniel started it, Gia cut her a pouty look and stuck out her bottom lip. Gia started it, Daniel countered, cutting Lane the puppy eyes. I don't care who started it, just get showered because I'd like to have a civilized dinner for once. She scolded them, grinning as they tried to blame each other. Does this pack even do civilized dinners, Gia asked. There's a first for everything, she laughed softly. I really love the mural, by the way. You're very talented. Gia blushed slightly at the compliment as Daniel easily scooped her up in his arms and took her into the shower, managing to get paint all over the bathroom as he did so. I was excited to see my pups again, but did I really need stupid cold gel to do so? Don't be such a baby, Lane grinned at the glare I sent her. All right, let's see what we've got here. You want to know the sex, right? Both Daniel and I nodded eagerly as Lane maneuvered the ultrasound machine across the swell of my stomach. 
My husband and I turned to see our babies on the screen next to the bed, linking hands as the blurry figures kicked at each other. Aw, oh, guys, looks like you're having one of each, Lane grinned. This one is a baby girl, and this one is a baby boy, Lane pointed to them both. I couldn't help chuckling as our son kicked his sister. He has his daddy's bedside manner. Hey, Daniel pretended to be insulted. Dan, you sprawl right across the bed until I either have to sleep on top of you or on the very edge of the bed. He totally takes after you. I made an aren't I cute face at Daniel as he glared at me. I never hear you complaining, Daniel grumbled, turning his attention towards the screen. Why is the girl so small? He stroked his fingers across the tiny blur on the screen. She'll probably be a runt, Lane answered easily. There's only two of them, so it shouldn't cause any problems with feeding or getting attention. She'll probably end up bossing around her brother anyway. I sure hope she does, I defended my baby girl. She should kick his ass for the way he keeps kicking her. Just like you keep failing to kick my ass, Daniel teased. Oh, shut up, I glared at him, struggling to hold a stern face as Daniel pulled a goofy face at me. I do wonder if having children will make you both grow up, Lane laughed softly at us. Ow, Gia, it hurts, Daniel cried. My mate was officially the most dramatic man in the universe. Daniel, it's smaller than a dime, I noted. Stop being a baby. I'm not being a baby, he pouted, wincing as the needle touched his skin. Daniel, you really need to man up, I smirked. My husband was having the tattoo we had bought for Christmas, small J and D and fancy scripts on the jet of his hip. I had a matching one on the inside of my wrist. I had wanted it in the same place as Daniel, but it would be too dangerous for the babies. At least with it on my wrist, I could show it off to the world that I was Daniel's. I swear, yours is smaller than mine, Daniel accused, glaring at me. I couldn't help but laugh. We both had the same stencil, so the tattoos were both the same size. The only difference was that my husband was a big baby when it came to needles. I had gone first, so mine had already healed thanks to my awesome healing speed. Daniel was really just being dramatic. He hissed as the needle touched his skin again, hand reaching out and grabbing onto mine. It was my turn to hiss as Daniel squeezed my hand to an almost bone-crushing point. Had I known my husband would be such a damn baby, then I would have never agreed to this. You sure got yourself a wimp of a husband here, the tattooist grinned, trying to finish up the tattoo as quickly as possible. I'm not a wimp, Daniel argued. Honey, you ain't brave either right now, I added, grinning as Daniel glared back at me. Fuck you both, he grumbled, squeezing his eyes closed as the tattooist worked on a curled line. Both the tattooist and I shared a quick smirk as Daniel started muttering things to himself. I was a little unprepared for all the insults that came across our new telepathic link, and it took a lot of restraint to not burst out laughing at it. I knew my mate was doing it on purpose. I think we're all done here, the tattooist announced, wiping the small brand with an antibacterial wipe before leaving the room to sort out the payment. Oh, thank fuck, Daniel breathed, a sigh of relief, his hand relaxing around mine. You're a big baby, Dan, I teased, leaning forward to kiss away the glare. But you're my big baby. Next time you want to scar yourself for life, don't involve me. Daniel lifted his head to get a look at the tattoo. Though I have to admit, it doesn't look bad. I think I just want to run my tongue all over that. I spoke in my best seductive voice. Babe, you're killing me here, Daniel groaned, dropping his head back on the table. Or maybe I'll get my tongue pierced and run the ball over the edges, I considered. Gia, I swear to God, if you don't shut up, then I'm going to pop a boner right here, Daniel warned, covering his eyes with his arm. I chuckled at that, brushing my thumb over the tattoo that had already healed. It looked good for Daniel to wear my mark like that. Not as good as the mating bite looked, but it was definitely a second best. Maybe I would really consider a piercing in the future, just to work Daniel up more than anything else. I could quite happily admit that I was a tease. An ear-piercing scream woke us up in the middle of the night. I jolted upright and was quickly followed by Daniel. We both looked at each other with wide eyes, straining our hearing to pinpoint the location of the scream. My mate rolled out of bed and opened the bedroom window facing the woods, scenting the air and frowning. 
What is it? I asked, climbing out of bed, albeit a little struggling because of my huge stomach, to stand behind Daniel. Smells like blood, Daniel grimaced as he scented the air. The scream sounded again and we both froze. We knew that scream. Alex! Daniel yelled, ignoring the height of the window and jumping from it, landing easily on his feet and racing off into the woods. I wasn't really up to throwing my pregnant ass out of a second-story window, and so instead raced through the house past worried members of the pack and following my mate's scent out into the woods. I knew Daniel would probably kill me for putting myself and our babies in danger out in the woods at night, but a member of the pack was hurt, and it made my inner wolf angry as hell. Lane caught up with me, her dainty figure running gracefully alongside mine. She looked terrified, and it was clearly taking a lot of effort for her to not shift and go racing towards her mate. Neither of us knew what was wrong with him, and if it was humans, then the last thing they needed to see was a wolf the size of a bear barreling through the woods. Lane and I soon caught up with Daniel, hearing soft whimpers and finding Alex lying underneath the tree. He was panting heavily and clutching his leg where it was trapped in what looked like a bear trap. Blood was pulsing heavily from his thigh, and I was shocked that Alex had even managed to shift into his human form to cry out for help. Yeah, I'm going to kick your ass for coming out here, but you need to help me get this off. Daniel had his alpha tone on, and I found myself at Alex's side instantly. I'm going to pull the trap open, and you need to move Alex's leg out of the way. I nodded allowing Alex to wrap his arms around my neck as I took a soft grip on his thigh, just above where the trap clamped his flesh. Lane was sniveling behind us, and Daniel had probably decided she was too emotional to handle anything when Alex was in such a critical state. Okay, Daniel took a deep breath, gaining eye contact with me and nodding softly. Alex let out a blood-curdling scream as Daniel yanked the trap open and I lifted him out of it easily. Getting coated with blood as I did so, Alex began sobbing from the pain, burying his head in my shoulder and soaking my skin with warm tears. It's okay, baby, I'm here, Lane cooed, kissing Alex's sweaty forehead and stepping back as Daniel took Alex in his arms and began speeding towards the house. After a lot of screaming and a lot of blood loss, Lane had finally gotten Alex to rest and had him in a stable condition. The trap had torn his muscle from getting caught in his wolf form and having to shift, and therefore it would take longer to heal, but he would be just fine. The whole pack members were on edge from the news. According to Steele and Lane, Alex had been patrolling the area for any dangers before he headed to bed when he had stumbled onto the trap. Daniel was pacing in anger, and I was doing everything I could to try and calm him down, but it wasn't working. He's going to be all right, Dan. I tried for the millionth time. That's not the point, my mate argued. They're hunching traps on my territory, and whoever has left them didn't leave a scent behind, so I have no idea what we're up against. What if it was a trap left there from a long time ago, I attempted to reason. No, Daniel continued pacing. That route has been used for perimeter checks ever since we moved here. The trap is very new. Well, then who could have placed it there, and why? That's what I need to find out, Daniel sighed. My husband then turned towards me, using his alpha status to give me an order. Daniel had never needed to do so before, but I finally got a glimpse of the reality of my position in the pack as the second in command. It was my job to stand at my alpha's side and direct orders to the rest of the pack. The woods are to be used by alphas only, and in groups of at least two. You and the other betas and omegas are not to step foot in them until we've proved they're safe. I want the whole pack on alert. Someone is out to get us. This was a warning, and I plan on listening to that warning. It took two weeks of constant patrolling for Daniel to finally be satisfied that the woods were safe from any more traps. The pack was still on edge from the accident, and Alex had been confined to the house, much to his annoyance as the rest of the Alphas ensured the pack's safety. Gia had been growing increasingly anxious and had taken up pacing all through the house whenever Daniel left. It was putting heavy amounts of stress on her, and Daniel was glad he could finally relax with his mate. He was a little shocked at the size of his mate. Gia had gotten huge in the past few weeks and looked a lot more pregnant than she really was. Lane was going to give her a scan in the morning to make sure everything was going okay. Daniel wouldn't rest until Gia and their children were given the all clear. 
Daniel and most of the pack were relaxing in the den when the warning call went out. There was an intruder on their land. The call came from Steel, and it had the whole pack on their feet as they shifted into their wolf forms, Gia included, much to the annoyance of Daniel as his heavily pregnant mate stood next to him. He cut her a soft growl of warning, but was stunned when his mate snarled at him, snapping her jaws at Daniel. The whole pack turned their attention to his agitated mate, but quickly changed their attention when a figure emerged from the woods. They quickly rushed outside but stopped when the figure was human and held their hands up in an I-mean-no-harm gesture. Daniel was pissed that his mate would act like that around him, but he had greater concerns when the intruder stepped into the light. Daniel quickly shifted into his human form and stepped forward until he was face to face with Roseanne, the werewolf from Theo's pack who had turned Gia. Her heart was racing as she held her hands up, showing no danger, but it didn't stop Daniel from growling at the woman. Gia was at his side in an instant, holding Daniel back and looking at the woman in question. Wow, you're big. Her eyes widened as she took in Gia's pregnant form. Gia's hands curled around her stomach protectively. As she cut the other woman a glare, she stepped back to show she meant no harm, and the rest of the pack followed their alpha's lead by shifting into their human forms and grabbing a couple of items of clothing that they usually kept outside. Why are you here? I thought the council banished you and your half-blood pack, Daniel asked. The members of the pack are dead. The council issued no such banishment. They just told you that because they didn't want to be seen to be handing out death warrants. She spoke honestly. Daniel sensed no form of a lie leaving her lips. Her eyes surveyed the pack landing on Sean for a long time before Daniel's words cut her out of her trance. So how are you alive? He eyed her with disapproval. If your whole pack was killed, then why are you still here? Better yet, give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. Because if you kill me, then you kill her too. She shifted her gaze towards Gia. If I die, then so will Gia and vice versa. What the hell are you talking about? Daniel's voice was low and threatening. It was hard to think straight with the confusion of his mate and the pack overpowering his own thoughts. When I sired her, I also fused my life force to her. I came here in search of my mate, and so that I can shift my life to them and remove it from Gia. Roseanne explained, her eyes filtering through the pack. Her pregnancy is making me too damn nauseous to function. You have no mate here, Daniel told her sternly. I think I do, she replied, her eyes linked with Sean's. Oh, fuck no. Daniel couldn't put into words how angry this mating made him. Sean was a valuable member of his pack and Roseanne was the enemy. This couldn't happen. You and I both know it's out of my control, she looked as she spoke. I've been looking for my mate for a while now. I just never expected to end up here. I'm not asking you to accept me, Alpha, but you know as well as I do there's no way out of this. He was surprised by her submissive tone, even more surprised that she called him Alpha. How do I even know you're telling the truth? For all I know, you're lying about your bond. Daniel challenged her. When he got attacked by Theo, you were fine. I don't recall seeing you go down when he got shot. You and I both know a life bond takes at least a few months, she replied easily. Still no warning signs that she was lying. Prove it then. He could see Gia's eyes widening next to him. Daniel, she tried, but Daniel just held his hand up to silence her. I want you to prove to me why I should trust a word that comes out of your mouth, because right now I'm having a few trust issues with the woman who sired my mate against her will. He probably should have known it was a bad idea, but it didn't stop him from challenging the other werewolf. Roseanne sighed heavily, clearly anticipating this reaction. Fine. She didn't wait for anything else as she took her wrist in her hand and quickly snapped it back at an unnatural angle, breaking it easily and whimpering at the pain. Fuck! Gia screamed as she held her wrist close to her chest, tears threatening to overspill. His wife was panting harshly as Daniel gently took the limp wrist in his hands and held it firm while it healed. Sean wasn't an alpha, so he was able to restrain himself from rushing to Roseanne's side and snarling at anyone who came near her while she was hurt. He whined softly and she sent him a reassuring smile that she was okay. 
seemingly calming him down. Gia, however, was far from okay. You jerk! Gia cried, eyes never leaving Daniel's. How the hell could you do that to me? Let me have my fucking wrist broken just to prove something? We could all tell she was telling the truth, but you fucking let her anyway. Daniel's heart clenched. He had known she was most likely telling the truth because the council wouldn't have let her go otherwise, and yet he had still allowed her to hurt herself and potentially his mate, just to satisfy his stupid inner alpha. Gia, I'm so sorry, he tried but was cut off by his mate. Don't, Gia warned. Don't say you're fucking sorry because I don't forgive you. She pulled out of Daniel's grasp and stumbled over to Lane, who checked over her injury and pulled her into a tight hug, glaring at Daniel as she did so before stepping forward to assess Roseanne, her healing instinct forcing her to help any werewolf in need. Noelle then held out her arms for Gia, and she wrapped herself up in them willingly. She was one of the more affectionate pack members, a trait that had allowed her to work so closely with Omegas. She held the Omega close to her body while she let out soft sobs, that were partly from pain and partly from the betrayal Daniel felt through the bond. Are you happy now, Alpha? Roseanne glared at him while Lane checked her wrist had healed properly. You put your mate in pain because of some stupid grudge. You must be so proud. Some grudge? If I'm not mistaken, the last time you two were near each other, you had her forced on her knees in front of fucking Theo, Daniel argued. He was my fucking Alpha, Roseanne argued back. You know as well as I do that if you told your pack to do that, then they do it without question. I was pissed off when G insulted me, but I'll admit I overreacted. Fine, say all of this is true, and really you're not that evil, she rolled her eyes at the comment. Why did you fuse your life to Gia's? More importantly, how did you fuse your life to Gia's? I'm a lot older than you, little Alpha. I can do things you couldn't even dream of. When I heard Theo Morgan wanted a strong mate, a potential Omega, I knew he'd ask me to do it. I also know that a human always bonds to the werewolf that turns them. As I'm sure you'll notice how safe Gia feels through the bond with me here. I share a similar bond with her, and I knew Theo would want me out of the picture when he mated her. So I forced my life to Gia's. I knew he wouldn't kill me if it would kill her too. Then, when he died, I thought I'd try to seek out my mate so I could break the bond. It sounds selfish, but there are a few werewolves out there that would mean your mate harm, and I didn't like my odds if anyone got to her. Daniel stiffened at the last part, but she quickly tried to reassure him. I know it's selfish, and believe me when I say that I wouldn't hurt her. The bond I have from sighing her is more like a parental one. I'd protect her just as much as you would from harm, but I can't do that if we're linked. We may as well be the same person. My age gives me heightened senses that overpower even yours, and it led me to my mate. Now I can fuse my life with him and break my attachment to Gia. With your permission, however, I'd like to still offer my protection. You've done nothing to protect her, Daniel growled. Wrong. Roseanne countered. She would have died that day she got shot if she wasn't attached to my life force. You went down from silver poisoning, so I know for a fact that your life force didn't keep her alive. It didn't affect me physically at the time, as it does now, but I could still help her. Then, her enhanced strength helped you. Her immunity had nothing to do with keeping you alive, Daniel. I did. Daniel was stunned to silence. When did his life turn into a fucking soap opera? He half expected somebody's ex-wife to run in with a gun and have a nervous breakdown right in front of him. It would probably be the most normal thing to happen to them lately. He really didn't know how to respond to all the new information, but it turned out he didn't need to. Gia answered for him. I believe you, Gia whispered, her voice strained from crying as she stepped forward. She ignored Daniel's warning growl and cut him a deathly glare as she stepped in front of Roseanne, assessing her. I believe you, his mate repeated firmer and with certainty this time. You can feel it, can't you? Roseanne asked softly. The bond? Yes, 
Georgia admitted, stunning the pack. I'm not mated to both of you, am I? She asked, a little startled at the thought. The older werewolf chuckled at that. No, Gia, it's just a bond that seals us together. You're not mated to me. Gia nodded in understanding before turning and addressing the pack. She's telling the truth. Daniel wouldn't believe it if he hadn't seen first-hand proof of the close connection they shared, physically as well as mentally. It didn't mean he was happy about it. I mean you and your pack no harm, Alpha. She spoke to him, addressing him correctly and baring her throat in submission. I just want to meet my mate and look after the young woman I sired. I don't trust you, Daniel admitted. I know that, she nodded sadly. But my mate does. Daniel was torn. He really had no idea. I guess I can't stop a mating from happening, and I wouldn't turn away anybody who wanted to protect my mate. But I still don't like you. For what it's worth, I'm not really fond of you either, Alpha. But I'm not here for you. I just need your approval. Roseanne stood shyly while Daniel made up his mind making sure to avoid Gia's pleading eyes while he did so. Fine, he sighed, trying to ignore his own betrayal at his mate's happiness. But I'm watching you, he warned. One mistake and you're gone. Understood, she grinned happily, her eyes seeking out Sean's and smiling warmly at him. Daniel tried not to skin her alive when Gia hugged her, welcoming her and allowing her to hug the other woman back. He wasn't sure if it was jealousy or if it was just for not trusting her. Either way, he wasn't happy. The pack seemed to settle now that the tension was relieved. Their alpha's mate had accepted the newcomer, and their alpha had allowed it. Some were clearly still concerned, especially Alex, who had been with Daniel on the night he had found Gia, but mostly, they were all accepting. Sean made his way to Roseanne's side pretty quickly wrapping her up in his own hug before taking her hand and leading them to a more private location to get to know each other a little better before their mating. He was happy for Sean. The guy was a family man, and he really deserved a mate. Even if he couldn't have children because of his beta status, it still gave him somebody to love, and Daniel could never refuse him that. It just took a hell of a lot of effort to allow Roseanne into their lives like that made even worse by the fact that Gia wouldn't look at him. Gia, he reached out for her, but she flinched away as if Daniel's touch would burn. If you need me, I'll be in one of the guest bedrooms. Without waiting for Daniel's response, she disappeared into the house. Alex was at his side before he could race off after his wife, putting a hand on his shoulder and holding him back. You fucked up bad this time, Daniel. You might as well have broken a wrist yourself, so... If I were you, then I'd be on my knees at her feet when she wakes up. You're going to have to beg for her forgiveness for this one. Daniel sank down on the floor, ignoring how cold it was as it was covered in nighttime dew. He knew Alex was right, but he just couldn't see Gia forgiving him for this. Daniel didn't blame her. If he couldn't forgive himself, then how the hell could he ever expect Gia to forgive him? I hurt. My whole body was physically aching and my mind was working overtime. Rationally, I knew that Daniel couldn't be certain that Roseanne would hurt me like that, but he did know that the only way to prove it would be to hurt me in some way, and I was having a hard time looking past how easily my mate allowed me to potentially get hurt. The bedroom I was currently in felt cold and empty without my husband. I unconsciously rubbed my hands over my rounded stomach and smiled when I felt the little prods against my fingertips. I wasn't truly alone. I had my babies to keep me company. While I would much prefer Daniel to be here with me, I was going to take what I could get. A soft knock on the door brought me out of my thoughts. I didn't sense Daniel anywhere near and so hesitated when opening it. I was a little surprised to see Roseanne standing on the other side of the door, offering me a sheepish smile. Shouldn't you be getting to know your mate? I asked with a raised eyebrow. She offered me a one-shouldered shrug. We're both betas, so we can hold up longer than an alpha. I thought it would be best to talk to you while the rest of the pack seemed to be keeping their distance. Kind of the best time to talk to you privately. I nodded slowly, accepting her answer, and stepped back to allow her to enter the room. I couldn't explain the sense of calm and trust I had around her, but I really didn't want to take the time to think about it either. 
I have had enough surprises lately. This room isn't soundproofed, I added, figuring I might as well throw it into the open, seeing as Roseanne wanted privacy. That won't be an issue. Roseanne's voice sounded in my head and my eyes went wide with shock. Surely all these surprises were bad for a pregnant lady. You can hear me? I asked, already knowing the answer, even before she gave a soft nod. You're taking this pretty well, she noted, sitting down on the bed next to me and keeping eye contact. I tried to avoid exposing my secret, but I needn't have bothered. I know you and Daniel can talk like this, too. He didn't just get those hazel eyes for no reason. How'd he get so much of your blood? She inquired. I sighed heavily. I could deny it, but she would know I was lying. Blood transfusion. She considered this for a few moments before nodding and understanding. Omega blood heals silver poisoning, but my guess is you didn't know that a small amount of blood would work, and so went for the transfusion. The whole eye-changing color must be the omega gene doing something to his DNA from the large quantity of it. The transfusion explains why you two can communicate like this, too. I guess. It's pretty interesting. Omega blood heals silver poisoning? I did not know that. I thought I was just immune. That the immunity in my blood helped heal Daniel? The older woman sighed sympathetically. Sweetie, we need to get you more educated. Omega blood is amazing. It heals silver poisoning thanks to your immunity, can enhance fertility to the point that beta pairs can conceive, and can heal a bunch of other stuff from your fast healing. I would say I'm shocked you didn't know this, but it's a tight-lipped secret that only a few Omegas were aware of, and as far as I know, they were all killed. I wondered if maybe I could go a whole day without a bombshell being dropped on me, because all this new information lately was getting ridiculous. Why can we communicate like this? Why didn't any Omegas let other werewolves know their blood can heal? Can my blood really help a beta couple conceive? How do you know all this anyway? Her lips quirked at my questions, clearly amused. Hold on there, tiger. One question at a time. Okay, why can we communicate like this? Was my first question. And why can me and Daniel communicate like this? Honest answer, I really don't know, she frowned. It's just something I've always been able to do. If I want to talk to somebody like this outside of my wolf form, then I can. It's even worked on humans before. I can only guess that you have the same ability because I sired you, and then passed on this ability to Daniel. It takes practice, but you will be able to contact other members of your pack like this if you choose to embrace it, instead of shutting it out. I took some time to consider what Roseanne was saying. The confirmation that my ability was natural and not some sort of side effect made me feel relieved, but at the same time, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I shifted my position on the bed, trying to get my pregnant body comfortable. How many? Roseanne asked, her real voice this time as her gaze fixed on my bump. Two, I replied proudly, rubbing my palm over the bump. May I? Roseanne held her hand out and waited for my hesitant nod before placing her hand over my bump and grinning. They're happy. How do you know? I asked curiously. You can't hear them, she asked, confused. You can, I retorted. Roseanne took hold of both of my hands and placed them over my stomach, instructing me to breathe deeply and focus on the lives growing inside of me. Can you feel their energy? She asked, and I nodded. Good, she praised. Now build on that energy. Use your instincts to let it tell you how they're doing. I tried to do what she asked, but all I got was a blur of emotions running through me. Underneath it all, I could feel happiness, but it was overwhelming, and it took a lot of energy for me to focus on that. It's blurry, I admitted. It will be if you've never tried it before, Roseanne smiled warmly. You're doing great. Can other werewolves do this? I asked, unsure. I don't know, she confessed, her hand still holding mine in place. I've always been able to, so I figured you could too. Maybe other werewolves can't, but I haven't really been in contact with that many pregnant werewolves to find out the details. We haven't had much trouble since Omegas won their rights back. I changed the subject, allowing my mind to rest before I got myself a headache. Alex's parents backed off pretty quickly, but apart from a bear trap that Alex got caught in a couple weeks ago, it's been pretty smooth sailing. You're pregnant, she replied, as if that answered everything. 
I must have shot her a confused look because she quickly added more. Daniel's alpha scent is running wild with protectiveness right now. You and the pack might not notice because you're around all the time. But trust me, I almost ran with my tail tucked between my legs as soon as I caught a sniff of it. Any others would have considered coming here would have thought twice the second they got to the boundary line of Daniel's land. The pack is always protective of you right now as you're a valued pack member to them. The fact that you're their alpha's mate only increases that protectiveness. A werewolf would be an idiot to come in here right now. You did, I argued. Someone else did too because they got a bear trap set up here. My best guess is that it was human. They can't scent as we can, and the only reason I stepped foot in this territory is because I knew my mate was here and it'd be the only way to break my bond with you. I knew Daniel would allow me on his land if it meant extra protection. Why would a human do it? I really didn't want to think badly of humans, but I couldn't help being angry at them for doing something like this. Well, I haven't been into town lately, but you guys are big wolves, especially you and Daniel. All it takes is one person to see one of you to think the town is in danger and that they need to hunt you. Roseanne shrugged. Humans can hunt werewolves all they like. We don't have to worry unless the traps are suddenly laced with silver. It made sense. All of the wolves in the pack were huge, much bigger than a normal wolf, and so it really would take only one glance at them to convince hunters that there's something worth hunting. Just what they needed. Humans as well as werewolves on their territory looking for trouble. I could really go for a beer right now, I confessed. Roseanne giggled at my admission. Trust me, I know the feeling. You have no idea how much I was shitting in when Daniel was up in my face like that. We both laughed then. I knew Daniel was scary when he wanted to be. But really, the man was just a huge puppy. After a while of comfortable silence, I decided there were still a few questions I wanted to be answered. Why are you like this with all these abilities and knowledge, I mean? Roseanne bit her lips, seemingly lost in thought before she answered. I don't know. I was born a werewolf and born with these abilities. Like you, I had no control over them. But I never questioned them either before my parents died, so now we'll never know. As for the knowledge, well, I've just known a lot of werewolves over the years. Got in close with the Omega protection and learned as much as I could. I've been a lone wolf my whole life, except for a few packs I mingled with. And so for me to survive as long as I have, it means I have to know all these things. She smiled sadly, and I didn't want to pry. I couldn't imagine how lonely she must have been and felt a twinge of sympathy for the woman. What about the Omega blood? You have a lot of questions, don't you? Roseanne had small dimples when she smiled but answered my question anyway. It can heal silver poisoning and speed up the healing of various other things. I don't know if it's been tried with humans, but I know Omegas kept it secret because they didn't want to be tested on or have people after their blood. You also know that beta males are infertile, at my nod she continued. Well, your blood can make them fertile long enough to conceive with their beta mate. I don't know how. Maybe it's to do with all the hormones in you? to allow you to get pregnant? But I don't know for sure. All I can do is guess. You do a lot of guessing, I noted. Sometimes you have to, she sighed, returning to normal speech once more. Anyway, I don't want your head to explode with information. I actually only really came by to apologize for breaking your wrist. I broke mine too, you know, so don't get pissy with me for the pain. She grinned, and I couldn't help but grin back. Don't get pissy with Daniel either. He couldn't have known I'd hurt you that badly to prove a point. He knew you'd have to hurt me in some form to prove the point, though, I sighed. It just hurts to know he'd willingly put me through that. But he had to be sure, Roseanne tried to defend him. I know a lot of werewolves would do the same thing. An outsider was standing in front of his pack and claiming to have their life tied with his mates? And with my reputation at our last meeting... I can honestly say I understand the way he reacted. Please try to understand, too. I wanted to forgive Daniel, run and hug him and tell him that everything would be fine, but I wouldn't. I was too stubborn, and while Roseanne was right in every way, I just couldn't bring myself to be the one apologizing. I wanted Daniel back in my arms so badly, but Daniel would have to make the first move. Until then, I would wait. 
Daniel was running. He was in his wolf form and running as fast as his furry legs would carry him. This was what he did when he was upset or angry or confused or all of the above. He needed headspace and his wolf gave it to him. He was going to apologize to Gia when he got back, knew he shouldn't have pushed Rosanne as far as he did, but it was so hard to trust the woman. Everything she said was just too much to take in. He really didn't expect her, of all people, to show up, and he certainly didn't even consider her being a destined mate for a member of his pack. He was happy for Sean, he really was. But damn, did that guy have shitty timing with finding his mate. He wasn't really concentrating on where he was going, just running through his territory and not taking anything in. He didn't notice how eerily quiet it was or the strange scent coming from upwind. And he really didn't notice the gun that was focused on him. Not until a shot sounded. And it was too late. Daniel hadn't heard the humans, the snap of twigs, or the cocking of the gun. He had heard it, however, when the man had pulled the trigger. The shot echoed through the woods as a sharp burning pain erupted in his shoulder. Daniel yelped and went down hard. He was tempted to shift to get back to his human form and try to get out of sight. But the risk was too high. In the distance, he heard howls and knew his pack had recognized the danger. He wanted to howl back, to warn them of the danger and to keep Gia safe, but he couldn't. The bullet must have pierced his lung or something because he was struggling to breathe, his vision blurring around the edges as footsteps sounded closer. Shit, it's huge, a voice said. Daniel tried to growl at the hunter but failed miserably and ended up whining softly instead. Well, that's not a normal wolf, another noted. He stood on shaky feet and took a weak swipe at one of them, but didn't get very far and managed to stumble backward into a bush. He could hear the pack closing in, could feel Gia getting closer and willing his pregnant mate to stay away and keep safe. Daniel would recover from this. The bullet wasn't silver and his pack could take out the humans and withstand a couple of bullet wounds easily. Gia, on the other hand, was heavily pregnant and her coming out here would put four lives in danger, his own, their two children, and Roseanne. Though Daniel wasn't too upset about Roseanne being in danger, but with her life tied to Gia and destined to be made it to Sean, he didn't want any harm to come to her either. The humans detected the danger and instantly backed off the huge injured wolf, seeming to conclude he wouldn't make it. Daniel would have smirked if he had been in his human form, if only they knew. He would be up on his feet and bounding around like a puppy within a couple of days. It would take more than a gunshot wound to slow Daniel down. He could smell Gia. The other wolf was getting closer and was backed up by the pack. The shouts of the hunters filled the air and Daniel finally let go of his consciousness when he felt Gia near him, knowing he was safe to rest for a while with his mate so close. My whole body froze at the gunshot sounding in the distance. My mind went into overdrive. My instinct telling me exactly who was on the receiving end of that shot. Daniel, my mate, my alpha, my husband. Without waiting for the rest of the pack, I jumped from the bed and raced outside, quickly stripping out of my clothes so that I could shift without getting tangled in straight clothing. Gia, you don't know it's him and you're heavily pregnant. Please stay here where it's safe. Noelle tried to reason, but I shrugged her off. He's my mate, so I know it's him. There's no way in hell you're convincing me otherwise. I yelled, shifting easily and racing off into the woods. Five wolves were instantly at my side, racing with me to our fallen pack member. I recognized them as Alex, Lane, Steele, Sarah, and Roseanne. I scented the air and pinpointed Daniel's location. I was pretty damn far away, and my muscles burnt as I pushed myself. It was a stupid idea to run so far and put myself at the risk of danger when I was so heavily pregnant and had a responsibility to protect my unborn children. But I had to do it for my mate. Daniel needed me. I'm the pack's second in command. Roseanne stayed close to my side as the other wolves spaced out, nearing the danger and using our instincts to turn the hunter into the hunted. She butted me to the side slightly and shifted our direction as the heavy scent of blood filled the air. We were nearing Daniel. I didn't know how Roseanne's senses were sharper than mine when it was my mate in danger, but I didn't take the time to question them. It seemed like hours before we made any real progress. 
My muscles were burning and my breath was coming in short pants, but it didn't matter. All that mattered was that I got to Daniel and that I got there safely. Roseanne kept by my side, though. I was certain she could have raced ahead if she wanted to, but instead knew I wouldn't be able to fight if it came to that, and so plastered herself along my side and scanned for danger. Humans, Roseanne's voice sneered in my head as shouts rang out in the distance, followed by growls and stray shots. I didn't have time to think about that, as a furry, blooded up peep came into view. Daniel was still in his wolf form and was half lying underneath a bush that was almost shielding him from view. I raced to my maid's side, whining and nudging him with my muzzle, but not getting much response. I knew I couldn't shift with humans around, but I needed Lane here and I needed her now. I pawed at my mate's emotionless body, nosing his muzzle and licking over it in an attempt to wake him up before seeking out the bullet wound. When I found it, I saw that it had penetrated Daniel's left shoulder, and there was a heavy flow of blood seeping from the wound. I lapped it up gently and continued whining softly and urging Daniel to just show some sign of life other than the, his shallow breathing. There wasn't any silver in my husband's bloodstream, and I sighed in relief at that, but it didn't matter to me because Daniel was still unconscious. While I was sure he would recover in no time, it still hurt me to see my mate like this. The man I loved was bleeding and lifeless on the ground, and there wasn't anything I could do about it. I felt a twinge in my stomach and cried softly from the pain, but ignored it in order to tend to my mate. I finished cleaning Daniel up under Roseanne's watchful eye as she surveyed the area for danger before curling myself around my mate's body. Roseanne hadn't yet been accepted as a pack member, and so she didn't need to offer her help, but I was grateful as Daniel and I were in no fit state to protect ourselves. I wagged my tail softly as Daniel's eyes peeked open, locking with my worried ones. I licked at Daniel's muzzle once more and received a content but weak sigh in return. I brushed my nose underneath Daniel's chin and nuzzled as close as I could to my mate, trying to protect him as best as I could. I'm going to kick your ass once we get back, Daniel's voice rang in my head, and if I were human then, I would laugh at the tone. My mate was disapproving of me coming here, but at the same time, he was glad that I was here. I'll kick it too for getting mad at you, I replied. If it wasn't for me taking out all the stress on you, then you wouldn't have been out in the woods tonight, wouldn't have been shot. I felt so damn guilty right then, but Daniel was having none of it. He licked at my muzzle and butted noses with me to show he held no grudge. It had only been around an hour since our fight, but all things were forgotten, showing just how meaningless our argument was. Don't you ever be sorry, Daniel told me was my fault and I'll kick your ass even harder if you blame yourself. I should have sensed them, but my head was just so damn messed up. I whined softly, a high-pitched cry in sympathy for my mate. I won't blame myself if you promise not to blame yourself. I tried for a compromise and stiffened as my stomach clenched again. I promise, Daniel agreed before nosing at my neck, noticing I was in pain. Gia, are you all right? My husband's breathing was coming in pants and I could sense that it wouldn't be long before Daniel dropped into unconsciousness again, but I tried to smile and convince my mate that all was fine. Just tired from dragging my fat ass out all this way, I joked, feeling a jab in my side from a tiny paw from the lie. I wondered what my pups were like in their wolf form, their tiny furry little bodies curled up inside me with all four paws and little wagging tails. I felt a huge surge of love for my babies at the thought. There were two werewolves growing inside of me, four separate bodies if you included their wolf forms. I reached inside of me to try and feel their energy and was unnerved to find that they were distressed and I was clearly too far into my pregnancy to shift for an extended period of time. The added stress was clearly making my pups unhappy and I urged myself to shift back to my human form consequences of being seen by humans be damned. But I couldn't. My body wouldn't shift. With my internal panic attack, I hadn't noticed Daniel slip into unconsciousness once more. Everything was becoming too much for me right now, and another twinge in my stomach reminded me of just how much I needed to be safe and calm right now. For my babies. For Daniel. The sound of snarls got closer and my ears perked up as my body went stiff. A human wielding a shotgun ran into the clearing, freezing when he caught sight of the two wolves surrounding their packed alpha. 
I growled a warning, stepping in front of my mate as Roseanne progressed towards the human. Her body was low to the ground and her teeth were bared as she prowled closer to the stunned human who was now holding up his weapon and aiming it at the wolf. We both knew it was risky. Her life was linked to mine, and one false move can end up with us both hurt, or even dead, if the hunter managed to get her in the heart. Each move was critical, and I tensed, trusting my life in the other wolf's hands. I didn't have to, though, as a huge wolf bounded into the clearing and took the human down. Our pack didn't hurt humans if we could avoid it, but these men had hurt our alpha, so if any were in the woods right now, then I was certain they wouldn't be leaving. I breathed a sigh of relief. I owed Alex massively for his good timing and felt myself relaxing again next to Daniel as Alex took tentative steps forward to inspect the alpha. His muzzle was covered with a sticky coating of blood and he whimpered at the sight of Daniel. He was still unconscious, but I was confident that my mate would be fine with some rest and care. Alex threw his head back and let out a howl that was quickly answered by his mate, leading her to our location, and she quickly shifted into her human form. Lane placed both hands onto Daniel's shoulder, moving the heavy limb to check nothing was broken or dislocated. I found myself growling low in my throat, feeling protective over my injured mate. Lane held her hands up to show me she meant no harm and fixed me with a pointed glare for stopping her assessment. Steel appeared out of nowhere and made the mistake of stepping too close as I snapped at him, catching his foreleg in my jaws. He yelped and backed off, licking at the injury and snarling at me. I was agitated and stressed, and I just wanted everyone to back the fuck off. Lane cut a stern look at me, but I ignored her, whining in pain as my stomach clenched again. I stood and paced in a few circles, panting heavily and letting out soft cries. Damn. My stomach hurt. I'm worried for my pups, but right now I needed to focus on getting Daniel back on his feet. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Lane's jaw dropped in disbelief as she watched me try to get comfortable despite the pain I was in. There is no way in hell you are going into labor right now, Gia. There is no way in hell you are going into labor right now, Gia. But I couldn't. I'm in my wolf form. The babies couldn't come out now. Labor? My eyes widened to a point that must be comical in my wolf form. There was no way in hell I was going into labor. My nine months wasn't up just quite yet, and I did not want furry babies as much as I love being a werewolf. I would also wish for my husband to be conscious and be by my side for the birth, and so labor right now just wasn't happening. I prayed to whatever god out there, please don't let this happen. Gia, if you don't want these babies now, then you need to shift, Lane instructed. If you shift, then the contractions should stop. Your wolf is ready to give birth, but, but your human isn't. So if you shift, then it will all be okay. Do you understand me? I really didn't. My mind was going a mile per minute and my babies had chosen now to make their appearance. Well, I wasn't about to let that happen. I willed myself to change, reaching the human part of me and getting frustrated when nothing happened. I could feel my wolf was ready for the birth, and she was not letting me get out of this easily. Why can't she shift? Roseanne was in her human form now, asking Lane questions that I would really like answered. She's been locked in her wolf form in order to give birth. Lane ran her fingers through her tangled hair and huffed a breath, trying desperately to come up with any ideas. Is there any way that the change can be forced? Alex asked. His hand was brushing softly over Daniel's fur and that reminded me all too much of how my mate was currently unable to help me through this. I whined painfully, feeling another contraction as I nudged Daniel, willing my mate to get up, but his eyes remained closed as his body healed. I was panting heavily now. My bulging stomach was suddenly too heavy, and I had to lay down. My instincts were telling me to growl at anyone who wasn't the pup's father, but I held it down as much as I could. Lane sighed looking at me with sympathy. Pain will force her to shift. I was already in pain, and I would gladly take some further pain if it meant shifting back and not having to go through this right now. I needed Daniel at my side when I did this. My gaze caught with Roseanne's, and I gave her permission to do whatever it took, hoping she would be able to follow through. Roseanne took a few moments to consider her options, and I panted through another contraction, she seemed to take that as her answer, and before my contraction was over, I was howling from the pain of my broken wrist. 
my second broken wrist in the past hour. I really couldn't catch a break, could I? Relief coursed through my system when my howl turned into a very human scream as I writhed on the ground, clutching my wrist to my body and breathing heavily. The tightness I'd felt in my stomach was suddenly gone, and I would be relieved, except I couldn't feel my babies at all. Suddenly, the pain was no match for the worry I was feeling as I pressed my uninjured hand to my stomach, feeling for any little kicks and coming up empty. My babies! My voice was frantic as I locked eyes with Lane. I can't feel them! Why can't I feel them? Roseanne stepped forward before Lane could reply, her hands on my bump and her eyes closed. I knew what she was doing, and I let her do her job. I really hoped she could find out what was happening. What if the shifting back had hurt them? What if I had lost them? I can feel them, but they're weak. Roseanne's voice drew me out of my thoughts, but my heart stopped beating so fast at her words. They're very distressed, and they need you to stay calm, Gia. If you're not stabilized, then it's going to be too much. What do you mean, stabilized? I asked desperately. We may need to sedate you until your vitals are all normal and the babies are okay, Lane answered. Hirano is bringing the truck out here so that we can get Daniel back safely. We'll load you up with him and get you into my healing room so I can check you out properly. I was about to answer when a rustling in the bushes caught my attention. I froze for a moment before Sarah broke into the clearing. She rushed over to Daniel's side and was lucky I was no longer in my wolf form because she would have probably lost an arm for doing so. How is he? she asked, tears forming in her watery eyes. How is my brother? He's fine, Sarah, Lane answered. I just need to get him back and get the bullet out, and then he can sleep it off. It's Gia I'm worried about. Sarah assessed me and frowned. What's wrong with her? She went into labor in her wolf form, and we had to force her to change back. The babies weren't too happy about that. Lane's words scared me, even though I already knew it. My babies were weak, and it was all my fault. I'm so sorry. Mummy is so sorry, I sent to them, wondering if they could hear me. My hands curled protectively around my stomach. As the sound of an engine broke through the air, I knew it was only Hirano driving the truck, but it didn't stop me from tensing. I sent a silent prayer for Daniel, my babies, and me. We all had to be okay. The first thing Daniel became aware of was the splitting headache he was currently sporting. He groaned and dragged his palm up to his forehead, wincing at the effort it took. It felt like he had been run over by a bus. He blinked open, bleary eyes and scanned the room, almost jumping back when Lane's face hovered over him. You trying to give me a heart attack? Daniel grumbled, squeezing his eyes shut and breathing through the pain as he forced himself into a sitting position. You got shot, Daniel, she frowned, shining a fucking flashlight in his eyes and nearly blinding him. I need to check you're okay. I was until you gave me heart palpitations and blindness. He fixed her with a glare and she rolled her eyes fondly. He never had made a very fun sick patient. Where's Gia? he asked. Lay nodded to the bed behind her to where a very pale-looking Gia was hooked up to multiple machines and monitors. Daniel's heart stopped to see his mate like this. What the hell happened? He snarled, climbing out of bed despite the ache in his shoulder and the screaming protest of various machines. Daniel, calm down. Lane put her hand on his arm, but he shrugged her off, standing over Gia's form and feeling his eyes water at how small she looked. She went into labor while in her wolf form and we forced her to shift back because she wanted you to be there and she's been having a bit of trouble ever since. What do you mean trouble? He dragged a chair up to Gia's bedside and curled his fingers around his mates. The babies were very distressed and so we had to sedate her in order to try to calm her enough to stabilize them, she frowned. At the moment, it's not looking so good. What's your prognosis? Daniel asked, not even sure he wanted to know. Gia will make a full recovery, Lane replied confidently. And the babies? He held his breath, waiting for Lane to answer. There's a chance they might not survive, she admitted sadly. Are they old enough to be born now and survive? Daniel wasn't letting anything happen to his children. They'll be premature, but yes, babies usually survive when born this early. Gia won't be able to shift again and give birth safely. I'm not going to risk that. She checked over Gia's vitals while she spoke. 
I want you to wake her up, Daniel ordered. If I wake her up, then there's no telling how the babies will be. Then, if there's trouble, you can induce labor or perform a cesarean. Understood? He used his alpha authority to make sure she obeyed his words. He knew there was a risk no matter what he decided, and he would rather Gia be conscious enough to make her own decision regarding their children. Yes, Alpha. Lane tilted her head submissively and retrieved the reversal of the sedative, injecting it into the drip in Gia's arm. How long was I out for anyway? Daniel asked once the reversal was in Gia's system. About a day and a half, Lane answered. I miss anything? We took out all the hunters that were on our land, but that move will probably bring more. We'll have to be careful. She flipped through her notes, constantly making assessments. Great, Daniel sighed. Just what they needed. Anything else? Sean and Roseanne sealed their mating. She paused, taking the time to look Daniel in the eye. She protected Gia while we were out in the woods. She'd have probably gotten shot without her. She only did it because it would hurt her too, Daniel muttered. Still not trusting the woman. She hurt herself on purpose so that Gia could shift, Lane added, smiling down at Gia as she began making drowsy movements. You might not like her, and she may have been a bitch in the past, but she's doing all she can to prove herself. Well, she can keep on proving herself, Daniel decided, still not very fond of the woman. Lane gave him a look, but didn't say anything else in regards to the situation. Instead, she focused on Gia, who was slowly blinking open her eyes. His mate's head was drooping to one side, and she blinked at Daniel multiple times before grinning sleepily. You really do get dopey on this stuff, don't you? Daniel grinned back at her, finding it impossible not to. I'm not dopey, Gia slurred, her eyelids heavy as she fought off the sedative. How you feeling? Daniel asked, tentatively, running his fingers through his mate's dark hair and kissing her knuckles on the hand Daniel was still holding. Drunk. Gia admitted, grinning again. How are you, Dan? You got shot. Gia suddenly looked concerned, though she still couldn't focus properly. Daniel was impressed she was holding a conversation. I'm fine, babe. Takes a lot more than a bullet to bring me down, he assured her. Gia giggled. <laughs> I think I'd like a bullet to bring me down. Daniel's brows furrowed. Huh? Why? Gia continued giggling happily as her body burnt off the drug in his system. They vibrate. We've never had anything that vibrates. Elaine clamped her hand over Gia's mouth before she could say anything more. Okay, Gia. That's much more than I ever want to learn about your sex life. She withdrew her hand with a squeal as Gia licked her palm, giggling again at her clear disgust. I'm never sedating her again. Daniel had to chuckle softly at his mate's antics. What am I going to do with you, huh, Gia? Love me, feed me, cuddle me, you know, all that jazz. Daniel had decided he would really like to see his wife drunk. He made a mental note to take her for a night out once their pups were born. I'm sure I can do all that, he laughed at Gia's cheesy grin. It was about an hour later that his wife finally sobered. She was much more aware of her surroundings and conscious of the situation she was in as well as heavily embarrassed from her semi-sedated loudmouth. Gia had her hand curled protectively around her stomach as Lane closely monitored their babies. She ran the ultrasound scanner over the bump to check they were still okay and kept a heart monitor hooked up to Gia's stomach. How long will Gia have to stay on these things? Daniel asked, indicating to the strapping around his omega stomach. It's monitoring their heartbeats and I'll be able to tell their stress levels from them. If they stay as stable as they are now and we keep Gia stress-free, then it should be able to come off in 24 to 48 hours. But I'm afraid my prescription is bed rest or relaxing in the den. She cut them both a stern look. I'll prescribe it to you too, Daniel, if that's what it takes to get her damn stress levels down. No shifting, no excess movements, no midnight runs that lead to injury, nothing. I want you fused to your mate's side so that she isn't worrying about you, if that's what it takes. No sex? Daniel asked, feigning disappointment. No sex, Lane confirmed. So, no bullets either, Daniel teased, laughing as Gia groaned, blushing fiercely as she buried her head in her hands. Lane laughed too at that. Nope, no bullets.
I lasted a whole 33 hours and 27 minutes before I had managed to annoy Lane enough to be let out of the hospital bed. The babies were doing fine and it would still be closely monitored, but I was actually allowed to choose which item of furniture I was sentenced to. To say that I wasn't pleased with the whole relax and do nothing was an understatement. My main concern was that the nursery hadn't been painted other than the mural and had no furniture. Daniel had assured me that the other girls were taking care of it and put me at some form of ease, but I still wished I could have been some assistance. Since the attack on our pack Alpha, the pack had been monitoring the local news to see if anything emerged about the hunters who had mysteriously disappeared. Strangely, though, there was nothing about them anywhere. It was as if they'd never existed. While it was great in regards to the pack's safety, it was a pain in the ass for the tents waiting and wondering if anything else would happen. I was lying sprawled on the couch, bracketed in Daniel's limbs, and talking animatedly to Alex and Zane, who had surprisingly managed not to inflict pain on each other and instead took their energy out on a game they were playing. We had begun talking about the recent attacks, but Daniel had quickly gotten bored of no news and had declared a monopoly war instead something I was beginning to resent. Why, Gia? Welcome to the Ruiz Hotel. You'd like to stay here? Well, that'll be two thousand dollars, please. Alex flashed me a shit-eating grin and held his hand out for what was very nearly the last of my fake money. I hate you, I grumbled as I handed it over, glaring at the stupid Scotty dog that had gotten me into this mess. Alex just continued grinning as he sorted the money out into his own ridiculously large piles of it. There was no doubt that he had already won, but for some reason we were still playing. I was tempted to just declare bankruptcy and go back to being an invalid. Aw, baby, I'll bail you out if you run out of money, Daniel cooed at my pouty face. My mate was in second place and owned most properties, but Alex had managed to buy out one of each set to stop him from building. Most of your money is mine anyway, I glared at my mate, but Daniel distracted me with a kiss. Damn, he had good tactics. Zane had happily declared bankruptcy a while ago, but had continued playing, writing out IOUs whenever he landed on an owned property. I had no idea why he was even bothering when he was given the freedom to run from this stupid fucking game, but yet he was still here. How long have we been playing this for anyway, I asked, knowing it couldn't be too long until dinner time and I could escape from this evil game. Alex checked his watch and did some quick math. About five hours, give or take. Seriously? I groaned and dropped back into Daniel's embrace. When had my life become so crappy that I could spend five hours playing Monopoly with no distractions? Grabs up, Nina poked her head into the living room, eyeing them all. You played Monopoly without me? You cheat, Alex accused. Winning isn't cheating, she shot back. It is when you play, he retorted, moving his top hat past go and collecting his payment. Shut up and come get your food, Nina glared at him, but headed back into the dining room without causing much of a fuss. Thank God for that, I sighed in relief as I climbed to my feet with Daniel's assistance. If I see that game again, I think I'll scream. Babe, we're playing until there's a winner, Daniel told me. Alex has won, I answered easily. He hasn't won until I'm bankrupt, Daniel replied casually, and I groaned at the mere thought. I was tortured with a further three hours of monopoly watching Daniel and Alex argue and try to make dodgy deals. I had given up pretty soon after I had started playing again being a hell of a lot more interested in the TV show Noel and Nina were watching. It was some dramatic modeling show, but it was heaven compared to enduring more Monopoly. It ended at last when Daniel had to sell Alex's properties in order to pay off his debt for landing on one of Alex's many hotels. The board then got to enjoy a nice vacation as Daniel flung it across the room, little houses and hotels flying in all directions. My mate was one sore loser. I stumbled slightly as Daniel led me into the nursery with his hands over my eyes, trying to make the reveal more of a surprise. I could feel my mate's soft chuckle as I nearly tripped over my own two feet. Yeah, you laugh, Dan. I just fall over and break my leg or something, I grumbled, trying to see through Daniel's stupid big hands. 
You won't break your leg, you big baby, Daniel replied, easily, finally coming to a stop. Okay, babe. I didn't say anything else as my husband pulled back his hands to reveal the now-completed nursery. I was speechless. It was beautiful. The walls were painted cream around the mural, and above the gorgeous cribs, there were the names and handprints from every pack member in all different colors, with the title, Your Family. There was also space for Daniel and me to do the same with the words Daddy and Mummy written next to them. It was a simple little touch, but it meant the world to me, and tears welled up in my eyes. Stupid damn hormones. The cribs were a light wood with an old-fashioned look about them. One had pink sheets and the other had blue. Both had wolf teddy bears in them and the cutest baby PJs I had ever seen, all ready to be used. I ran my hands lovingly over the edge and checked out the rest of the room. There was a diaper-changing table with the same wood and a cream base, and I never thought I would have love a table designed for poop, but I couldn't help it. I walked over to a huge closet and pulled it open to reveal all the baby clothes I could ever need along with an endless supply of diapers and toys for the babies. I had to suck in a breath when my eyes caught sight of an antique-looking rocking chair next to the huge window. It was perfect. Everything was perfect. What do you think? Daniel asked nervously. You've been quiet for a long time, and I'm getting kind of worried. My mate didn't have the chance to say anything else as I shushed him with a deep kiss wrapping my arms around his neck and snuggling in close. I nuzzled Daniel's throat as my mate pressed a kiss on my forehead, content to be so close to my husband and reluctant to ever let go. I love it, I told him honestly, taking one last look around before knowing I would have to sit down soon to stop too much stress from getting to my stomach. I really love it. Good, Daniel grinned. The wall still needs our handprints. You got paint? I asked, grinning at the memory of the last time we were in this room with paint. Yep. Daniel quickly left the room and returned with two trays of paint. One held a light green and the other held a hot pink. Please tell me I get the green one, I eyed the pink one disapprovingly. As if I'd let you touch the sexy pink. Daniel held the pink close to him protectively and I had to laugh at my mate's antics as I took the green from him. Daniel smiled warmly, complete adoration shining in his eyes as I dipped my palm in the paint and pressed it to the wall. I gently pulled off and revealed the green handprint left behind. Your turn, Dada. I kissed Daniel and lifted my hand to caress my husband's cheek. It took him much longer than it should have to realize I had pressed my painted hand on his face. You idiot. Daniel glared, green coating half of his face in my handprint, and I giggled at how ridiculous he looked. Oh, honey, are you okay? You look a little green. I snorted, fully prepared for when Daniel rubbed his paint-covered hand right across my own face. Thanks, I matched Daniel's glare. At least the paint on your face is green. The one on mine is fucking pink. It's hot pink, Gia, he tried to defend. Makes you look hot, he winked comically before covering his hand in the paint once more and placing it next to where Daddy was painted, on the wall in Sarah's fancy script. I can't believe the manly pack alpha has a pink handprint next to his name. By choice, I shook my head fondly at how proud Daniel was of this fact. You're a rare breed, you know that? You're just jealous because you wanted to be the only rare one around here. Daniel wrapped his arms around me, lifting my shirt to place a pink handprint onto my stomach. I then placed my own green handprint on the other side of my bump and was rewarded with a loving kiss. The nursery is perfect. Daniel hummed in agreement as we both took in the wall of handprints two new ones placed proudly above everyone else's. It really was perfect. After another month of being confined to sitting on my ass, I was becoming restless and therefore so were my babies. I was only a couple of weeks away from my due date and Lane had suggested inducing labor, which I had reluctantly agreed to. I wasn't looking forward to giving birth, but I was looking forward to meeting my babies for the first time. 
We were in Lane's healing room and I was dressing into a gown so that I would be able to give birth without worrying about clothing, and Daniel was pacing nervously. And they'll be healthy now, right? Daniel asked as Lane prepped the hormone injection. Yes, she sighed heavily. It could take a while for the labor to start, but there are only a few weeks from their due date, and most human twins are born earlier than this. They will be fine, and Gia should do great, Lane assured my mate. Does my butt look big in this? I asked, gesturing to the hospital gown covering my body. You have a peachy butt, Daniel grinned, thankful that I was able to take my mind off things for a few moments. Why do you guys have to subject me to your sex lives? Lane asked us once she got me settled. You love it, Daniel told her. The healer rolled her eyes affectionately before turning to me once more. Once I inject this, there's no going back. You won't be able to leave this room until you have your babies because I'll have to keep you monitored. What if I have to pee? I teased. Hold it in, she glared at me, but her smile showed she was anything but angry. You don't have a very good bedside manner, you know? I noted. Gia, stop changing the subject. Are you ready for this? Lane held up the needle and I gave a shaky nod as she made quick work of injecting the hormone into my body. Wow. Daniel took a deep, shaky breath and slowly blew it out. <sighs> Pretty soon, we're going to become parents. Yeah, Dan, you ready to be a daddy? I grinned up at Daniel, but he was looking kind of pale. Dan? Really, Daniel? Lane asked in disbelief as Daniel's huge form crashed to the floor. Lane sighed in defeat. <sighs> How the hell did we get stuck with an alpha who was a fucking fainter? Alex! Lane yelled, ignoring Daniel in favor of settling me. When Alex appeared moments later, Lane instructed him to help lift Daniel onto the bed next to mine. He okay? I asked. I really hadn't pegged Daniel for a fainter, but I actually found this surprise kind of amusing. Daniel was never living this down. The big baby is fine. Lane rolled her eyes. Just wants some extra attention. I can't wait to tell everyone about this, Alex laughed, clapping his hands together in glee. Tell anyone and I'll have your balls, Daniel grumbled from the bed, slowly getting a grasp on consciousness once more. As he gingerly rose into a sitting position, he glared at Alex and sent an apologetic look at me. Sorry. As long as you don't leave me hanging in labor, then we'll be just fine, I told my husband. I wiggled down into the sheets to get myself comfortable for the wait, knowing it could take a while. Unfortunately for me, it didn't take long at all for the hormones to kickstart my labor, and I was woken from a nap by a rather painful contraction. I groaned through the pain, squeezing my eyes shut and panting while Daniel took hold of my hands. Daniel hissed out in his own pain when I nearly crushed his hand during his next contraction. Wow, I've never had someone come so far into labor so fast, Lane stated in amazement, calling Alex Noel in to help her when it came to delivery. It would probably be a while before I did deliver, but they were all there waiting patiently. Well, gee, don't I feel so fucking lucky, I snarled, shifting positions in an attempt to get comfortable, but failing miserably. Gee, uh, try to stay calm. Daniel rubbed his warm hand along my back as I leaned forward through my next contraction. Don't tell me to stay calm, I yelled. You did this to me! I screamed, panted, taking shaky breaths as my stomach tightened up in another contraction. I could admit that I maybe wasn't taking it so well, but I was in terrible pain, damn it. Daniel climbed onto the bed behind me to allow me to lean back onto him, the position easing some pressure and helping me relax as Daniel's body heat soothed some of the pain. Thank God for the extreme body temperatures of werewolves. You okay, babe? Daniel asked softly, his breath warm against my ear. No. I whined, shifting in an attempt to find some sort of comfort. Daniel's arms wrapped around my stomach, and he rested his forehead on my shoulder. I didn't get what Daniel was doing, but it helped to listen to my mate's deep, calm breaths. It helped right until Lane began prodding around inside of me and declaring me only six centimeters dilated. The same as the last time she checked. Sorry, Freckles, but this takes time, she shrugged a shoulder. They don't call it labor for nothing. I will do anything if you can drug me through this. I would have sold my soul to get rid of the pain. It was unbearable, and I wonder how other women could get through this. 
Sorry, honey, but your werewolf blood will just burn it straight off. She hugged me in sympathy, ignoring the warning growl she got from Daniel. Oh, great. Instinct's finally kicking in. That means you're close. What do you mean instinct is kicking in? I asked, rubbing the back of my hand across my temple where I was sweating heavily. I mean, Daniel right here might have to be physically removed in order for me to get close enough to you to help you give birth if he doesn't get a hold of himself. Right now, he's pretty much controlled by the wolf, Lane explained, eyeing up Daniel's harsh glare. I turned in my mate's arms. Daniel was still human, but his eyes had a wolfish glow to them, and his features were stern and protective. Nobody with half a brain would get closer than necessary. I didn't doubt for one moment that Daniel would tear anybody apart who came close right now, regardless of their position in the pack and how close he was to them. I then understood that Daniel had been trying to get control over himself when he had buried his head in my shoulder, trying to stay human. Dan, I placed a finger under Daniel's chin and turned his gaze to meet mine. Dan, calm down. I need you right now, and I need you human. Something in Daniel's eyes softened at the words, and he pressed a kiss to my nose before rubbing his own nose against it. Something we always did to show our affection. It confirmed that at least for a little while I had my Daniel back. Ah! I gasped, my body jolting forward as a contraction struck me hard. Fucking hell! I had completely curled in on myself, appreciating Daniel's tight grasp as he molded his body around me through instinct. It should have been uncomfortable, but it was comforting. Shh, Daniel whispered into my ear, soothing me. Breathe, Gia. I'm right here. I'm all here. It hurts. I sobbed, my body finally giving in to the pain and streaming warm tears down my cheeks. It really fucking hurts. I cried. I know, babe. Daniel's voice sounded strained, as if it hurt him too. But I'm right here. I got you, he promised. I'm not letting you go. My body shook from the sobs I was choking out, my eyes burning from the tears and my stomach clenching painfully. I was so aware of everything else I hadn't even noticed Lane checking me over and deeming me fit to start pushing. You're ready, Gia. It's all down to you. Lane helped me pull my knees back and instructed Daniel to hold on to them, keeping them out and apart. Alex is here to intervene if Daniel's instincts kick in and Noelle is here to monitor the babies once they are born because I'll be too busy helping you. Do you understand? I nodded shakily, sniffling and blinking damp eyes at her. It was about the only conversation she was getting, and I just couldn't help it. I screamed. The contraction was so intense it shook through me, and I felt myself bear down, my body urging me to push and fighting against my mind that was urging me to close my legs and avoid the pain. That's great, Gia. You're doing so great, Lane praised. Keep on like this and push the next time you feel a contraction. We're all right here. Okay? You're not alone in this. Daniel's hands were busy holding my legs, and I looked around desperately for something to hold on to while Noel pressed a cold towel to my forehead. Alex must have noticed my distress as he offered me his own hand. I didn't have to think before clasping my palm around Alex's, squeezing hard through the next contraction. Jesus, you've caught a grip on you. Alex winced, squeezing my hand back to give me something to put pressure on. I ignored him in favor of panting through a break in my contractions. Drawing in air desperately, I felt Daniel's reassuring kiss against the back of my neck, but he spoke no words, clearly fighting his instincts in order to be supportive. I was unashamed to admit I cried through the next contraction, pushing as hard as I could before collapsing against Daniel. Gia, I can see the head of baby number one, but you're going to have to push harder because nothing's happening, Lane told me firmly. I can't, I managed to choke out. My head was rested on Daniel's shoulder, and I turned my face to rest in the crook of my mate's neck and let tears soak Daniel's skin. It hurts, Lane. I can't. You can, baby, Daniel whispered, his thumbs moving in soft, reassuring circles against my thighs. Gia, you are so strong. If anybody can do this, then you can. I groaned as I found myself pushing once more, trembling from the effort. Okay, Gia, just like that. Lane's attention was suddenly snapped into focus. Your first baby is crowning. I know, I gritted out, straining from the pushing. I imagine this is exactly what it feels like to crap out a basketball. I earned myself some laughs from that, but I paid them no mind, 
in favor of pushing, relaxing back against Daniel and pushing once more. I shouted in agony when the baby's head finally pushed out and drew in deep breaths. Daniel pulled back on my legs and held me wider to try and ease some of the pain of being stretched. It's just like a knot, Daniel tried to tell me, but I could see between my legs, and that was a hell of a lot fucking bigger than a knot. I know you're pretty impressive in the size department, Dan, but your ego really needs a reality check if you think that's like you're not. I appreciate Daniel's attempt, but he wasn't the one pushing a human out of his vagina. All right, Gia, just keep pushing those shoulders out and we'll have them. Lane was holding the baby's head gently as I pushed as hard as I could, my whole body dropping back against Daniel's in exhaustion as our first baby slipped free and Daniel's grip on my legs loosened. We have a girl, Lane declared happily, making quick work of the umbilical cord and nestling the crying bundle on my chest. My hormones were going overload right then and there. I found my tears turning into ones of joy as a very wrinkly little baby cried against me. Hey, I found a smile splitting my features as my arms wrapped protectively around my daughter. You owe me the biggest batch of cookies in the world for this labor, little miss, I told her. Daniel pressed a firm kiss against my temple, grinning ear to ear and reaching out to run a finger over his daughter's flat, messy hair. Gia, she's perfect, Daniel whispered in awe, his fingers trailing over her tiny features. Hey, you, he said to her, chuckling softly as her crying softened. I'm your daddy, and this sassy girl here is your mummy. He was rewarded with a glare for the comment, but Daniel took it in his stride. She's bitchy all the time, but you'll learn to love it. And your daddy has the worst singing voice ever. I apologize in advance for the lullabies you'll have to endure. My laugh was cut off by sharp pain, and before I could curl my arms around my stomach, our daughter was carefully lifted off my stomach by Noelle and wrapped in a pink blanket, as Noelle gave her a quick check over. I felt Daniel tense behind me as someone dared touch his newborn, but I gripped my husband's denim-covered thigh hard, prompting him to pay attention to me. Looks like your son is on his way. Lane helped Daniel hold me open once more, and Alex instinctively offered his hand back for me to hold on to. This should be easier after the first one stretched you a bit, hopefully a lot quicker too. What do you know? I snapped. You're not the one giving birth here. You're right. What do I know? I only have a doctor's degree and a natural ability for healing. No real experience, clearly. Lane's voice was laced with sarcasm as she cut me a glare. I've delivered many babies in my time, Gia. You just got to trust me here. I didn't really have much choice in the matter, as a contraction caught me off guard, and I found myself pushing without any real conscious thought. Pushing out the second baby turned into a thick haze. My attention caught on the little bundle in the arms of the woman standing next to me and the man behind me holding me steady. And we have a boy, Lane declared, placing our son on my chest just as she did with our daughter. Hey, little guy, I cooed. I was totally limp in my mate's arms, but I still managed to caress the cheek of the crying baby on my chest, though it took a lot of effort. Happy birthday. I'm so fucking proud of you. Daniel had tears in his own eyes as he wrapped his arms around both me and our son, tilting my head back to kiss me deeply. You've blessed me with two gorgeous children, and I can't tell you how much I love you right now. I expect you to shower me with presents, I spoke weakly, feeling my eyes shutting from exhaustion, as Lane checked over our daughter before checking over our son too, and placing them both into a hospital crib. Congratulations, guys, they're beautiful, Lane grinned as she wheeled the crib to my bedside. I just need to check you over, Gia, and then I'll leave you guys to bond. I pretty much just let Lane do what she wanted as she checked all my vitals and made sure the afterbirth was taken care of. All my attention was focused on the precious bundles wrapped in pink and blue blankets and gurgling happily to themselves as Noelle and Alex cooed over them. I found my eyes slipping closed at the scene. I had my family, and now I just needed to sleep in the safety of my husband's arms. I love you, I breathed, feeling exhaustion creeping up on me. I love you too. Daniel kissed me once more before settling behind me and allowing his eyes to slip close too. We really ought to think of some names, huh? Oh my god, 
baby, you're so beautiful, so damn amazing and sexy and ugh, you taste so fucking good, she moaned heavily in ultimate pleasure. Would you like a room with that cup of coffee? Daniel asked, smirking from where he was busy bottle feeding their baby boy in the chair next to Gia's bed. I haven't had a coffee in nearly nine months. You're lucky I'm not ordering a divorce so I can marry coffee instead. She has shot him a glare from over the top of her mug. I'm much more satisfying than coffee, Daniel grinned. If you say so, Dia didn't appear convinced as she savored every last drop of the steamy liquid. Daniel rolled his eyes and turned his attention back towards his son. Tiny eyes lined with thick lashes blinked up at him as he held on tighter to the teat he was heartily suckling on. It would be a few days before their baby's eyes changed color from newborn blue and they would finally get a glimpse of their identities. As far as Daniel knew, Gia's blood didn't affect the babies in the womb, and therefore, they should have golden eyes like the rest of the pack. He knew the son he held in his arms was an alpha. It was his instinct that told him this little baby would one day be the leader of this pack. It gave him great pride and excitement to have an heir, something he never thought he would have. You're almost as handsome as me, he told him, grinning as his baby ignored him and continued guzzling milk from the bottle. You have my appetite, for sure. His sibling was fast asleep in the crib they were currently sharing. Daniel had put her down after a feed, and she had not even acknowledged him before falling asleep. They weren't the lovey kind of kids just yet, but Daniel was fiercely protective of them and loved them deeply. He really prayed for the life of any person who ever hurt the feelings of his little girl in the future, because she had such a strong mummy, and not to mention her strong aunt and uncle, in her life who would tear apart that person in a heartbeat. Your ego is still intact then, she had laughed as she set down her empty coffee mug, lifting their daughter into her arms and nuzzling close to her without even waking her up. My ego will never die, Daniel joked, watching Gia interact with their daughter. She's as lazy as you, he noted. And he's as greedy as you, Gia shot back. Touché, Daniel laughed. Taking the empty bottle away from the pouty baby and holding him forward so that he could burp him. You know, we really ought to think of names, Daniel noted. Can't call them baby boy and baby girl forever. But nobody else has a name like that, Gia stuck out her bottom lip. They're unique. Oh, what about... Thing one and thing two. You're such a dork, Daniel laughed. I was thinking maybe Alec for our boy. He looked up at Gia hopefully. It means to defend and he is going to be pack alpha one day. I think it's fitting, but if you want something else, that's fine too. He babbled and winced as his mouth wouldn't cooperate with his brain. A slow smirk appeared on his wife's face. You've been reading a baby names book, haven't you? Daniel flushed guiltily, embarrassed at being caught out. Maybe one jumped on me at the store and clung on to me until I got home, so I took pity on it and read it. I thought I was the dork, she laughed, placing a kiss on their little girl's forehead as she stirred from the movement. I kind of like Alec, she seemed to consider the name for a few moments. Looking at their son as he settled in Daniel's arms. I'm glad, Daniel smiled warmly at her, before offering his pinky finger for Alec to suck on after totally rejecting his basil bun. I was thinking maybe you could name her. Gia watched their daughter sleep for a few moments, taking in all her features before finally settling on a decision. I like Grace. Daniel knew that Gia hadn't only just come up with that name. He flashed his dimples in a knowing smirk. And what does Grace mean? He prompted. Gia blushed at being caught out. Effortless beauty, she admitted. It's perfect, Daniel agreed. The pack had all taken it in turns to come and meet their new pack members. Gia wasn't too thrilled about everyone picking up her babies, but Daniel assured her it was important for them to all know the scent of the babies and for the babies to know the scent of their family. He explained it would put them at ease to know all the scents in the house, and so Gia reluctantly sat back and allowed the introductions. Alex and Lane were the last to come into the room, Lane using it as an excuse to check over them all while Alex admitted he just wanted to check out the babies. Turns out Alex was freakily good with children. Who would have known? Gia found herself relaxing as Alex held Alec for the first time. 
holding him properly and talking to him in soft, hushed tones that put Gia at ease just as much as their son. Lane was busying herself with checking over Grace before simply indulging in the opportunity for snuggles. They looked good with children, and Gia took the time to curl herself around Daniel, relaxed enough to seek out the comfort Daniel's body always provided. So, basically, you will never have another uncle who will compare to the awesomeness of your Uncle Alex, he told Alec with certainty, right before Alec decided to show Alex his last lunch. Ew! Daniel, your baby puked on me, he whined, pulling a disgusted face. Daniel, Gia, and Lane all burst out into fits of laughter at Alex's horrified expression before Lane took pity on him and cleaned up Alex's face and made an attempt at wiping Alex's shirt. He still looked scared of the tiny bundle, but continued holding on to him protectively before offering a finger for Alex's little fist to curl around. You name them yet? he asked without looking up, entranced by the future Alpha. Well, you're holding Alec, Daniel told him proudly, and your mate is holding Grace. Oh, Grace is such a beautiful name, Lane exclaimed excitedly. A gorgeous name for a gorgeous girl. She really is, Alex agreed. What's got you two so invested, Daniel asked with a raised eyebrow. Gia was just as curious, but hadn't voiced it. Well... Alex started, looking at his mate for permission before speaking. These won't be the only babies in the pack for long, Alex grinned then, looking proudly at Lane. Are you serious? Gia almost fell off the bed at how quickly Daniel jumped off to hug his friends. That's so great! He beamed at them both before realizing Gia's pissy face. Oops, sorry, babe, he flushed when he realized he had almost thrown his mate off the bed but Gia forgave him easily enough. So, what you're saying is our babies will have a partner in crime or two? Gia asked. Yes, Lane's smile was huge and genuine. I came into heat last night and haven't been on birth control for a while. Your stupid pregnant belly made me broody, she admitted, laughing softly. Well, I'm glad my tubbiness bought you some joy, Gia joined in laughing before offering her own congratulations. Does the rest of the pack know? Well, we thought we'd tell our Alpha first and get his blessing before the rest of the pack, Lane answered. Of course you have my blessing, Daniel was furiously hugging his friends and laughing happily before finally joining Gia back on the bed. I'm so happy for you guys. It was still dark outside when I was woken up by soft, whiny noises coming from the crib next to my bed. Daniel was still deeply asleep next to me so I gently untangled myself from my mate's limbs and padded across to where my babies should be sleeping. Grace stopped whining once she caught sight of me, and I had to smile at that, my heart swelling with love as the little baby already recognized her mummy. I reached down and lifted her from the crib, careful not to wake her brother or Daniel, and started feeding her. I was still sore from giving birth, but I left the healing room I was currently residing in to go to the kitchen and make up an extra bottle for Grace and Alec. I was surprised to enter a fully lit kitchen with Sean busy baking and Roseanne enjoying a coffee with Noel at the breakfast bar. What are you guys doing up? I asked, checking the clock to find out it was after three. Couldn't sleep, Sean answered, so I'm baking your favorite. Then I couldn't sleep because he couldn't sleep, Roseanne added. And Nina's snoring was giving me a headache. Noelle rose to her feet and helped me make the bottle for the newborns. I was shocked when instead of doing it for me like the pack usually did everything, Noelle showed me exactly what to do and let me do it myself, not even offering to hold the baby. It was the first bottle I had made up given my body was still drained from being in labor and Daniel had always offered to take care of making them. Why aren't you all fussing over me and telling me not to do anything? I asked curiously. Because it's your baby, Gia, Noel answered easily. No matter how much the pack does for the Alpha and his mate, they will never touch his pups without permission, nor will they interfere if you're trying to do something with them. The pack will always look out for the pups and play with them because we're social creatures. But we'll never interfere with them. It's important that the parents bond with their pups and we understand. The only way to do that 
is for you to actively be doing something all the time. Just when I was finally seeing the advantages of not doing anything for myself, I grinned sleepily. You still do everything for me, though, right? I asked as I settled onto a chair and brought the bottle up to Grace's lips. Of course, Noelle replied. Good, because I'd kill for a coffee. I offered her my best winning smile and she rolled her eyes before grabbing a mug from the cupboard and setting the coffee machine to brew. I'm stunned you survived so long without it, Sean laughed as I eyed up the coffee as eagerly as Grace was drinking down the bottle. It was your cookies, Sean. I inhaled deeply and almost drooled all over myself at the smell of the cookies that were baking. Speaking of cookies, when are those going to be ready? Sean laughed heartily as I watched his every move while he was making another batch. Should be done in about three minutes. I groaned. Oh, that's too long. Think of it this way, Roseanne chimed in. By the time you've finished feeding Grace, they will be cool enough to eat. She had a point, but I couldn't help pouting. But I want one now. You're actually worse than Daniel when it comes to my cookies since these babies came along. Sean offered me a spoonful of cookie dough as a substitute while I painted patiently for them to cook. I moaned around the spoon Sean held in my mouth as both my hands were occupied feeding my daughter. Mmm, that is so good. I think you have a problem. You turned me into a cookie junkie. This is all your fault. I want cookies. Daniel stumbled into the kitchen, yawning and cradling Alec to his chest. And coffee if Alec doesn't want me to fall asleep feeding him. You two are so alike, it scares me, Noelle joked, handing me my coffee and preparing Daniel one too. That's why I love her, Daniel grinned sleepily, because she's awesome, like me. And any time you feel the pain, hey Jude, refrain. I sang to the crying baby in my arms, rocking Grace gently to the soft melody. Her bright green eyes filled with tears, and I continued singing. Don't carry the world upon your shoulders. Grace wasn't very impressed with my attempts, though, and instead opted to cry even harder, causing Daniel to sleepily appear at my side. He kissed us both and took Grace from my arms, instructing me to go back to bed and keep my strength up. It had been a month since I had given birth to my beautiful babies, and every day presented a new challenge, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I had even come to love changing dirty diapers. I was a little annoyed that Grace had instantly settled in Daniel's arms when I had been trying for over half an hour. But I couldn't help smiling at the pair. Our little girl had Daniel wrapped around her tiny fingers. I guess Grace just wanted her daddy and quickly checked on Alec, who was sleeping soundly, before crawling back into bed. Daniel and I hadn't had many sleepless nights over the month, and I was truly glad, but the early mornings were something I was yet to get used to, and doubted I would ever get used to. One of the good things, though, was that I was almost able to fit in my old clothes again, my baby weight dropping off me at a rate that would be alarming if it wasn't for my werewolf jeans, working hard to get my body into fit shape again. The best thing, though, was learning the personalities of our children. Alec was quiet and peaceful, but heavily observant. Whereas Grace was loud and enjoyed people playing with her and cuddling her, a real little attention seeker, Alec had a mop of light brown hair, a pouty bottom lip, and warm honey-toned eyes to support Daniel's alpha suspicions. Whereas Grace had blonde hair, chubby cheeks, and bright green eyes that were even brighter than mine. Nobody knew why her eyes weren't golden because there was very little possibility that she could be an Omega, and so the pack had put it down to my blood. Seems a lot of issues could be resolved by blaming my blood. I tried to sleep but didn't manage it until Daniel's warm body slid under the covers behind me and wrapped me up in his arms. I doubted I could ever fall asleep without Daniel again, even if he was only in the next room. She's asleep, Daniel whispered kissing the base of my neck and snuggling closer. She clearly favors you, so next time you're hauling your ass out of bed to comfort her, I told him grinning as I felt Daniel's pout against my neck. Same goes for you and Alec then. That boy would jump up and try walking now if you asked him to. It was true. Daniel had told me that sometimes alpha babies preferred their non-alpha parents, and while Alec still happily curled up against Daniel's chest to fall asleep, he clearly preferred my presence. 
Daniel had assured me that once he was a little bit older, it wouldn't be a problem because he would be able to think with logic as opposed to instinct. But it didn't stop me from worrying about my mate. Nah, Gia, stop worrying, Daniel scolded, almost as if he was reading my thoughts. Can't help it, I admitted. We're a family and we all love each other. End of argument. You could always convince me. I turned in Daniel's arms and pressed my body tight against my husband's. Gia, Daniel asked, question clear in his face and tone. It's been a month since I've had the babies, Dan. Who knows how long since we last had sex? I pressed my hips flushed against Daniel's, grinning when I felt him hardening under the pressure. I need to feel you again. Are you sure you're ready? Daniel's voice was laced with concern, and I wiped away his fear with a kiss. I'm ready to feel my husband again, I told him fervently. My mate and the father of my gorgeous children. We are never going so long without sex ever again, I gasped once my brain was finally working again. What if we have more kids? Daniel asked, trying to mask the worry of me not allowing him that, even though he knew I wanted more children someday. My brows furrowed, though, when I realized we were tied. Ugh, I can't get pregnant when I'm not in heat, right? Daniel laughed softly, kissing me deeply and grinning against my lips. You waited until I was tied to you to ask that? If I'm honest, I was thinking more about the awesome sex on offer, I admitted, my lips quirking. I've never felt so loved. Daniel held a hand to his chest and feigned flattery before laughing and finally giving me my answer. Don't worry, you're safe. Good. I couldn't help kissing Daniel once more. Why did we wait so long to do this again? A cry from the nursery interrupted our post-orgasmic haze. Oh yeah, that's why. I went to roll Daniel off but winced when I felt my mate inside of me. He gave me a wide-eyed glance and a sheepish grin. Think you want to attempt to stumble out there? He asked. Funny enough, I don't fancy scarring our children, I argued. Well, then we'll have to let them cry until my knot goes down enough, Daniel answered with a helpless shrug. Fancy hurrying it up then? I glared at Daniel's eye roll. I can't, and you know it. You are never nodding me again unless we have a babysitter, I told him, trying really hard not to snuggle against Daniel. But the lovable freak was all arms and pulled me as close as possible. They'll be fine, Daniel assured me. We were just in there, so you know they are fine. It was as if whoever was crying knew they weren't going to be getting any attention soon, and the cry slowly turned into silence once more. I found myself relaxing again, but I would in no way acknowledge Daniel's smug grin for being right, and I would slap the man if I heard one, I told you so. I couldn't help being overly protective of my babies. After Daniel, they were my world. The first full moon was the worst. The babies were constantly crying. Apparently, the pull of the moon affects babies until it causes them to shift. To top it off, I had to stay with them alone as the moon forced Daniel to shift. My mate always tried to shift back straight away, but sometimes it wasn't possible and I was left alone to deal with two screaming babies. Daniel got Alex's first smile. He was being a goofball, as per usual, and I was pretty sure the eight-week-old was humoring him by smiling, but I wouldn't voice that to Daniel. The look of pride and happiness on his face was something I just couldn't shoot down. I understood that joy when Grace blessed me with a cheeky little grin when I was singing to her a few days later. By four months, both babies had won over the hearts of the pack and had willing servants to cater for their every need. Both could sit up with some help, and while Alec prefers to focus his attention on the pack or a television, Grace enjoyed playing with any object she could get her grabby little hands on. I frowned when the focus of her attention was on a foil condom wrapper that she was eagerly smacking against her thigh, grinning at the crinkly noise it made. How the hell did my four-month-old get her hands on a condom wrapper? Daniel! When in doubt, blame Daniel, Alex, or possibly Sane. Yeah, he popped his head into the living room and grinned when he saw the baby sitting on the couch in a bundle of blankets, brows furrowing when he noticed the object in question. Alex, he yelled. What? Alex glared at Daniel as he appeared in the doorway. I have a pregnant mate who spent last night telling me how hormonal she is and how it's all my fault. 
and I would kind of like some sleep. Lane was heavily pregnant at four months. The gestation for a beta wolf being only around six meant that she would soon shift for the last couple of weeks of her pregnancy. It would put a strain on the pack to not have a healer, but they'd manage. Did you give my child a condom wrapper to play with? Daniel gritted out. Ew, Alex winced. That's gross. I never touch a condom. All class, Alex. I grumbled, taking the wrapper off my child, replacing it with a teddy bear. Grace's bright eyes filled with disgust at the normal toy and sent a squinty pout in my direction. Alec, on the other hand, was just content to just watch the adults and grinned as I pulled a face at him, his golden eyes shining with glee. The babies had grown a lot in four months and developed distinguishing features. Alec had a light dusting of freckles over his nose and cheeks, while Grace's freckles were a little more prominent and covered some parts of her body. Grace had eyes that were almost feline and still much brighter than mine without an ounce of gold in them. Both had inherited Daniel's dimples, and Alec also had crow's feet around his eyes when he laughed like I did. It was clear who their parents were. Look, it wasn't me, Alex defended. I'm going to be a father myself, and apart from the fact I don't own any condoms, I wouldn't leave any lying around. Fine, Daniel sighed. Sorry I stopped you getting to sleep. Ah, it's fine. Alex shrugged it off, coming to crouch in front of the couch and say hi to the babies. You going to smile for your Uncle Alex? He asked, eyeing Grace in particular. She offered him a huge grin and grabbed onto her feet to sway a little while Alec made grabby hands towards his uncle. Alex briefly glanced at me for permission before he picked the boy up, cradling him close and tickling him. I knew Alex would make a great father, especially once his pup shifted for the first time into their human form. You got good taste, Alec, Alex praised as the baby held on tight to him. Clearly, you don't think your Uncle Alex is some sex fiend who just hand out condoms to babies. I rolled my eyes at the comment but still couldn't help grinning as the man interacted with my children. I couldn't believe that when I had met Alex, I had practically attacked him, and yet here he was as one of my closest friends and cradling my child protectively. It's amazing how much can change in a year. Daniel didn't understand babies. There was no way in hell that a cardboard box was more exciting than the superbly awesome walker Daniel had just bought. The walker had everything possible to stimulate a little mind while learning to walk, and there his children were, sitting on the floor and playing with the box. Quit pouting, Dan, Gia laughed from her watchful position on the couch. Babies tend to like things they aren't supposed to play with. But it has flashing lights and everything, Daniel pouted, sticking out his bottom lip for the full effect. Daniel, Dia's eyes grew even wider. Do you want to play with the walker? Yeah, I'd love to. He slapped on a massive smile and tried to show the kids just how much fun it was. But all he got was a quick glance from Alec. Fine, he frowned as he rose to his feet and dropped down next to G on the couch, swinging an arm around his wife and pulling her close. They're kids, Dan. They want everything except their toys. Gia tried to reassure him, but it didn't work. Daniel knew it was an awesome walker. But they're five months old, babe. They'll need to use the walker a little bit before they shift so they'll be able to walk in their shifted forms. He had a month to try and get his children interested, but he was still pouting. Daniel, calm down. Gia rolled her eyes and placed a chaste kiss on his cheek. They have a month and those boxes are going in the trash the second their backs are turned. Suck it up. I could suck something. Daniel waggled his eyebrows and Gia snorted a laugh. <laughs> so charming. You betcha. He pulled her closer and squeezed her extra hard. Quit the mushy stuff. Alex made a puking face as he entered the room. Lane was now spending most of her time in her shifted form and was busy looking for a den to give birth to her pups, which left Alex on edge with nothing to do. So he resulted in either annoying everyone or playing with the babies. Daniel preferred he took his energy out on the babies. Hey, little goofballs, Alex grinned as he plopped himself down on the floor. What you playing with? The babies made gurgling, happy noises and blew bubbles before returning to smacking their hands on the box and trying to pick pieces up. That's a cool box, Alex noted. Can I play too? My God, there's three of them. Daniel could understand babies playing them with the box, but did Alex really need to? Stop being a grouch. Gia slapped her hand on Daniel's thigh gently. See if you can use your kooky uncle skills to get them interested in the walker, she told Alex. Alex raised his eyes to look at them before seeking out the walker. Oh, wow, 
Look at this cool walker, guys. He pulled it over and began shaking the rattle, spinning the shapes and pushing buttons to play various tunes and flashing lights. Wow, it has lights and everything. Alex's enthusiasm was contagious. The baby seemed to notice the flashing lights and stared at them in awe. Grace was the first one brave enough to lean forward and try to touch them. A quick glance from Alex to confirm it was all right had him lifting the youngsters into the seat, her tiny feet scraping the ground as she smacked her hands on the lights in glee. Unbelievable, Daniel grumbled. Alex can convince our children into a walker and I couldn't. Let it go, you sour face, Gia smiled softly at him. The main thing is they are interested. After Grace had a quick turn in the walker, Alex swapped her with Alec, holding Grace on his knee so that she wouldn't feel left out. Alec wasn't as impressed with the flashing lights on the walker, but did enjoy pressing his feet against the floor and trying to push himself along. He didn't really move anywhere, but it was the attempt that made Daniel smile. Hey, Alex, if you ever want to stop your night rounds with steel in exchange for full-time babysitting, then you're hired, Daniel told him, watching as Grace started tugging at the buttons on Alex's shirt. Tempting, Alex grinned, blowing raspberries at Grace as she continued to tug on Alex's buttons. What is it with women and trying to undress me? Alex quickly shifted her attention towards a stuffed bear nearby. Our daughter is not trying to undress you, Gia glared at him. She's telling you that you're wearing a shitty shirt. Hey, Lane bought me this shirt. Doesn't make it a nice shirt, Gia grinned as Alec threw some cardboard at her. Your kids are awesome, Alex laughed as Grace clapped her hands together. Yeah, they kind of are, he finished. Babies are boring, Daniel huffed as he climbed into bed. You'll pray for them to be babies again once they're running around everywhere, I told him. I run around everywhere, Daniel argued. They'll start breaking things. I break things. They'll write on the walls. Uh, babe, you and I both did that. They'll drive you crazy, I finally settled on. You already drive me crazy, Daniel countered, grinning as he nipped at my ear. I had to laugh at my husband. No matter what, he always had the ability to make me laugh or smile. It was one of the many things I loved about him along with the way he laughed, how he was with the pack, and just how loving and caring in general he was. You drive me just as crazy, I grinned as Daniel's arms tightened around me. Maybe we should find out just how crazy I can make you. I felt Daniel's grin against the back of my neck as his hand skimmed lower. Feel free, I laughed softly as I pushed myself firmly back against Daniel. Bet I can make you come first. You're on. I was hunched over, my fingers gripped tightly by Grace as she stumbled across the living room towards Daniel on two legs. She wasn't so much walking as having me virtually carry her, but she looked too proud for me to loosen my hold. Come on, Gracie, come to Daddy. Daniel's dimples were out in full beam as he held his arms out for his daughter. She's coming! I almost stumbled as she crashed into my leg, falling heavily on her butt and pouting up at me. Aw, don't blame me, my jaw dropped down in mock outrage. You're the one who fell into me, Grace. She continued pouting, but was happy to stand again with my hands lifting her up as she made uncoordinated steps towards Daniel's open arms. Once she got there, Daniel was quick to whisk her into the air and spin her around, causing Grace to let out a happy squeal and a fit of giggles. That's just too cute, Noelle grinned from where she was busy playing with Alec. Alec wasn't really as impressed with Grace's achievement and instead cuddled up against Noel, tugging at her necklace. She tickled him when he wouldn't let go and managed to draw a delighted squeal from the small child. He sent me a gummy grin as he looked to his mummy for approval. Don't look at him for praise and trying to choke me, Noel grinned, pressing a kiss to Alec's head before passing him off to me. Go to the mother you think is so evil if that's what you really want. She laughed as she waved Alec goodbye and disappeared into the kitchen. I'm not evil, am I? I asked Alec, but only got a gurgle in response. I think that was a yes, Daniel decided to add from where he was busy, swinging Grace around. Be careful, I scolded, but Daniel shrugged me off. She can take a lot more than a normal baby, he assured me. Doesn't mean I'm going to go bouncing her off the walls, though. Well, that fills me with confidence, 
I rolled my eyes at my mate before noticing a distinct smell coming from my son. So that's why she gave you back. I laughed before handing him to Daniel. Your son needs changing. Why can't you do it? He looked in disgust at the heavy diaper. Grace wants to go for a walk to see Uncle Kevin, was my only reply before leading the toddler baby out of the living room in search of Kevin. So, Sarah rubbed her hands together to get warmth as the whole pack stood outside for the change. Tonight's the night. You excited? Nervous, I corrected as I looked down at the six-month-old girl in my arms. It will be fine, babe, Daniel assured while he was trying to console a crying Alex who was apparently already feeling the pull of the moon and was not very happy about it. The whole pack was gathered for their shift, except for Alex and Lane. Lane had gone into labor the night before the full moon and given birth to two baby boys who were doing just fine, and Alex had opted to stay with her until the pups were big enough to come out of the den in a couple of weeks. That's all I had managed to get from Alex's excited babbling when he called Daniel from the den site, where he had taken a bunch of blankets and supplies for him to spend time in either human or wolf form. All of the pack tried to hold on until their newest members had shifted, but it was hard for most of them. A few hours passed with no change and everyone couldn't hold on much longer. So eventually the only ones left human were Daniel and me. We were both sitting on the grass outside the house playing with our babies and waiting for them to turn. It was getting cold out and I really hoped they would shift soon because there's only so much warmth a blanket can provide. It'll happen soon, Daniel assured me. I can feel their energies changing. You can? I knew I wasn't quite as skilled as Daniel, but I hadn't noticed any change. Yeah, it's not prominent, but it's there. That made me feel a little better, at least. It was Alec who shifted first. He was sprawled across Daniel's legs and trying to roll over. He shifted mid-roll and a furry bundle fell against Daniel's knee. He stumbled slightly as he rose to shaky feet before blinking big golden eyes up at us both. Hey, buddy. Daniel's eyes lit up in excitement as he cradled the pup. Look at you, little guy. Oh, are you adorable? He ran his fingers over the puppy's head and got a tiny tail wag in return. I have to admit, we made a pretty damn cute pup. I laughed, offering my own hand for pup Alec to sniff. His sister stared in wonder at the furry creature in Daniel's arms, and Daniel lifted Alec to place in Grace's lap. She squealed in delight at the puppy and was surprisingly gentle when she put her hands on his fur and attempted to stroke him. Playing with the puppy seemed to have brought on Grace's shift too, as she rocked forward and shifted flawlessly, her little body tangling with Alex. Both Daniel and I froze as bright green eyes blinked up at us. I had always suspected those eyes meant more than a bit of omega blood, and I suddenly had the proof that I was right. God, I wished I was wrong. Uh, Dan? I couldn't take my eyes off my children, one of them in particular. Yeah, Gia? It seemed Daniel was having the same problem, but I couldn't take my eyes off Grace, to be sure. She's... She's not a wolf, I stated, even though it was stupid because Daniel, of course, knew that. I can see that. Then what the hell is she? Daniel, what is she? I asked, panicked. The little bundle of fur and claws was nothing like her brother, who was clearly a wolf. I think, Daniel picked her up and assessed her more closely. I think she's a cougar. A what? How is that even possible? Are there even were cougars out there? I was struggling to think straight as my son gnawed on my fingers to try and get me to play. They're rarer than rare, but there's some out there, Daniel confirmed. How the hell have I had one? Can wolves even give birth to cougars? That's not possible. I was still coming to terms with the fact I could give birth to anything. No, Daniel's answer was soft but sure. If I hadn't spent every day with you, then I'd be convinced you'd cheated because a wolf can't give birth to a cougar. It's not possible. I continued to stare wide-eyed at the pup. No, cub, that was wrestling to escape Daniel's hands. Her ears were circular and she had a short nose and a bulky build with huge paws and a long curling tail. Her coat was tanned and covered in black spots with a white muzzle. Belly and paws, whereas Alec had gray fur with tawny streaks and a white belly. There was a distinct difference between the two and I was having a very hard time to come to terms with it. 
what are we going to do? I whispered, indulging my pup in a belly rub. Nothing we can do, Daniel replied, brushing his fingers through Grace's fur. She was born like this, and she's our child, so we'll love her no matter what. What about the pack? I dreaded to think how the pack would accept this after only just gaining their first Omega. We'll deal with it, Daniel told me. She's our daughter, the same baby she has been for the past six months. She just looks different in her fur than us, so what? You're right. I hissed as Alec bit at my finger, seemingly comfortable on his feet now and not happy with being ignored. She's still our baby, and this isn't anyone's fault. That's just how she was born. Exactly, Daniel grinned. She does look kind of adorable. He curled his fingers around her tail and laughed as she purred softly. And there is nothing cuter than purring. Very true, I laughed softly. It would take time to come to terms with it, but we would manage. Nothing would make me turn back on my own child. I just didn't know how some parents could do it. You ready to shift yet? I'm about to tear my skin off. I need to shift that bad, Daniel confessed, laughing softly as he placed Grace on the floor and effortlessly shifted. I quickly followed the shift, my senses filling with the scent of my babies. Alex smelt warm and earthy like Daniel, but Grace smelt like morning rain. And it was refreshing, but still strange. My wolf nudged her nose against Alec's belly and licked at his face. The little pup wagged his tail happily and rolled on his back, framing his paws on my muzzle. Seeing you two is the cutest thing ever. Daniel's voice filled my mind, and I couldn't help turning my attention to where Daniel was lying on the ground, and Grace was climbing over his nose and head, pouncing on his ears and chewing on them. Likewise. I knew I would be grinning if I was in my human form as I watched the tiny body crawl all over her father. All too soon, the sun began to rise and the children became drowsy, curling up against my wolf's stomach to sleep as Daniel curled himself around all three of them. The pack began to filter in, all coming to check out the pups and all leaving with rather stunned expressions, but none of them caused a fuss. Even when something was so clearly wrong, they chose to respect their alpha and allow him to handle it. They're all confused, I sent to Daniel, curling as close to my mate as I could without dislodging our children. They'll get over it, Daniel assured me. We are in for one hell of an earful tomorrow. Daniel nuzzled at my neck and licked over my muzzle. Better get some sleep then. The pack was tense in the afternoon after the full moon. Nobody quite knew how to approach the subject, and neither Daniel or I offered to talk about it. I missed Alex's presence. He would have broached the subject by now, and all the awkwardness would have been over with. It was Noel who finally broke the awkward silence. So, what is she? Cougar, Daniel replied easily, as if it was normal. How is that even possible? Her brows furrowed, and she looked between us both with confusion before turning her attention to the sleeping babies in her arms. Don't know, Daniel shrugged. Don't care. You should, Noel eyed Grace curiously. She just didn't happen to be born a cougar. Something made her that way. Okay then, let me correct that. I do care, it just doesn't matter, Daniel told her sternly. She is my daughter and I love her. I expect the same of the pack. She's the same person she was born as. So you really don't know. Noelle turned her attention to me that time. No idea, I shrugged helplessly. I just really hope Lane will have some answers when she's able to shift back. You've got to admit it's weird, Sarah interrupted. After Omegas were supposed to be extinct, you appear and cause several more Omegas to show up. And then the whole blood transfusion thing with Daniel. And now you give birth to a cougar? Sarah shook her head as if she wasn't quite ready to believe that. Something isn't right with you, Gia. Hey, don't you dare talk to my mate like that, Daniel snapped at her. There is nothing wrong with her. She's an Omega and she happens to be my mate, and if you question that for one second, then I'll ask you to leave. Daniel, I'm your sister. I'm allowed to care about you, Sarah defended. By saying there's something wrong with my mate, that's not care. Daniel's eyes were deadly as he stared down his sister. She gave birth to a fucking cougar. There's like a hundred of them left, and suddenly a wolf gives birth to one? It's not possible, and you know it, 
She glared at us both, her eyes glowing with anger. But it happened, and I love my mate, and I love my children. Nothing else matters to me, Daniel snarled. I was so glad that Daniel was holding on to our son and therefore couldn't cause Sarah any physical harm, because it looked like he was just about ready to leap out of the chair. I placed a hand on his elbow to try and ground him, and it worked for a while, at least until Sarah started talking again anyway. It matters to your pack. You think they can all just accept a cougar? Sarah stared at him in disbelief. I can, Noelle's voice broke through the argument. She was instantly backed up by Nina, Roseanne, and Sean. Me too, Alex added as he appeared in the doorway, empty duffel in hand, indicating he was on another supply run. So can Lane and our pups. A chorus of me too filled through the room. After that, and the only one left who didn't seem so eager was Sarah. Grace is still your niece, Daniel told her. She is the same little girl you've been cuddling at night and playing with in the day. The same one who puked up on you after you gave her a bottle, and the same one who I've heard you singing to when you've tried to get her to sleep. What the hell does her shifted form have to do with anything? Because cougars are scum, we've been brought up to know that, Daniel. Sarah tried to argue, but at that comment, not even a baby could hold Daniel back as he sprang to his feet and handed Alec to the nearest pack member that happened to be Alex before pinning his sister against the wall. Say that again, Sarah. I dare you, Daniel snarled, his arm pinning his sister to the wall by her throat easily. It's just how we were raised, Daniel. I can't make myself think differently, she sighed in resignation. I did, Daniel replied, his eyes burning into his sister. We were raised to hate Omegas, but I mated one, and I love that Omega. She is my entire world, and she blessed me with two beautiful children who I love unconditionally. My daughter may have been born a cougar, but she's still my daughter, and I will not turn my back on her because she's different. She has a different form to us, but so what? She's the same child she has been for the past six months. Alex was raised like us, but look at him. Daniel indicated to where Alex was lovingly cradling Alec at my side. I just don't think I can see past this, Daniel, she replied sadly. I love you, and I think Gia's a great mate for you, even if she is an Omega. Whoa, Daniel stopped her and looked at her in disbelief. Even if she is an Omega, he quoted, outraged. I kept quiet because you're my brother and you were happy. I overlooked that, but I can't overlook this, Daniel. I just can't. Sarah looked apologetically at me, but I couldn't meet her eye. I had thought I had her support. I had no idea. I know the cougar thing is a shock, so I could have forgiven you for speaking out of term. But I will never forgive you for speaking against my mate. Daniel's voice was laced with venom as he spoke. Daniel? No, Daniel cut her off. You have an hour to pack your things and say goodbye, but then you're gone. I don't want somebody in my pack who doesn't respect my family. Daniel, I... I am your family, she pleaded. You were, he corrected. The pack were all gathered outside for Sarah's leaving when they all heard it. Loud growls were coming from somewhere very close by, growls that weren't made by any woof. The whole pack froze and Sarah offered Daniel an I told you so glare before standing with the pack one last time. Daniel, Alex looked around desperately. Lane and the pups are unprotected. I need to go to them. Of course, Daniel dismissed him easily. Take Sean and Nina with you. All three wolves quickly shifted and raced off into the woods towards Lane's den. I wasn't aware of where it was, but I hoped it was safe and that no harm would come to the little family. Rustling in the bushes snapped their attention back into focus as a figure prowled into view. Not a human or a wolf, but a cougar. Its eyes were bright green and burning straight into me. The pack emitted low warning growls as the cougar dared to step closer, soon joined by another two who stood at its side. My mate snarled in a way that wasn't human at the cougar who seemed to be in control, ignoring the other two in favor of the clear alpha. The cougar seemed unfazed by Daniel's warning growl and stood its ground, letting out a chuff and greeting in a way that was almost harmless. Oh look, another danger that Gia prompted, Sarah spoke with clear distaste, and Daniel sent her a warning snarl. Well, it is, she yelled. Before anyone else could say anything, the leader of the three cougars shifted into its human form. A tall, blonde bombshell stood in front of them, 
She had bright green eyes, caramel freckles, and natural blonde locks that curled around her face in loose waves. She smiled warmly at them, and I found myself holding on tighter to the bundle in my arms. Thankful Noel was holding on to my son so that Daniel could intervene if he needed to. Who are you? The pack alpha asked, his voice firm and authoritative. She ignored Daniel and instead turned to face me before speaking. My name is Isabella, she smiled warmly once more, and I'm your sister. Zia? Daniel stood in front of me, his eyes filled with concern. You haven't said anything for a really long time. I hadn't said anything because I simply couldn't. I was struggling to construct thoughts, and so actual words were beyond me. My mate kept standing in front of me with a worried gaze until I met his eyes, trying really hard to force words out. I think I need to sit down. Before I could say anything else, Daniel was helping me into the house and meandering me through the hall and into the living room. I sat down on the couch holding Grace close to my body as the pack filtered in alongside the woman who claimed to be my sister. Except, I didn't have a sister. I would have known if I had a sister, wouldn't I? You can feel free to do a DNA test if you don't believe me, Isabella interrupted the silence and I stood up handing my youngest Grace to her father and walked up to Isabella. She wasn't as tall as me, but still quite tall for a girl. Her hair was a similar dark shade to mine, and her eyes were the same green as Grace's. She had a scattering of freckles that were all too familiar, and I knew she was telling the truth without a DNA test. There would be no need. How? Was all I could get out. Me and Luke shifted when we were six months old. You didn't, she stated. Mom and Dad didn't want anything to do with were creatures, and so they kept you and handed us over to a local cougar pride for them to raise us. Luke? My brows furrowed. I had never heard the name before. Our brother, she supplied easily, shooting me a sympathetic smile as I took the information in. Any other blood relatives you want to throw in? I asked her, and took a steadying breath as I looked up at the other woman again, my sister. I have a daughter, but no more siblings, she told me. Luke is outside along with my friend Zoe. They won't attack, and Luke didn't show himself because his mouth is too big. She shared a smile with me, and it was so bright I couldn't help smiling back a little. I had a sister, brother, and a niece. What wasn't there to be happy about? Isabella, why now? I needed to know. You never shifted, and then when you did, it was into a wolf. A wolf and a cougar will never live together, and so there wasn't much reason to come find you. Until you had grace. Her eyes caught on the bundle Daniel was protectively cradling to his chest. How did you know about grace? My eyes narrowed and she held her hands up to try and calm me. We've been watching over you for a long time, Gia. We also have eyes everywhere. She turned her attention towards Roseanne. It's good to see you again. You knew? I spun on Roseanne and she actually looked apologetic. She made me promise not to tell, and then when Grace turned into a cougar, I had to tell her. Roseanne looked sheepishly towards Daniel, who was wearing a pretty pissed-off glare. What about me? I hit my hands against my chest for emphasis. Didn't I deserve to know I had a family? Yes, Gia, you do deserve that, she told me honestly. But they couldn't exactly come and said, hey, while you were still human. They'd have been a danger to you. And they're not a danger now? No, Isabella told me firmly. We'd never hurt you. But you would if I was human? I raised a skeptical eyebrow. Yes, she replied earnestly. It's in our nature to dislike humans. We aren't particularly fond of wolves either, but we're no threat to them. I wanted to let you settle in before I approached you. And then you made it and had babies so fast, I decided to stay away until I knew if you were a carrier. Carrier? I was only taking in half of the information and picking out main words, but it was still too much. Way too much. You can bear a wolf or a cougar. That means you were supposed to turn like me and Luke, but I have no idea why you didn't. The bite by a wolf made you one of them and caused your shifts, but your genetics were cougar first. So theoretically, she paused, trying to find the words, you should be able to shift into both. Daniel's quiet, disbelieving words answered what I couldn't. What? Several pack members, including me, said in unison, you're an omega wolf, Gia, but an alpha cougar, she told me, not showing one hint of a lie. We have different dynamics, and I can tell you that your cougar form is alpha. Alphas can't give birth, though, right? I tried reasoning. They can in our world. 
my sister smiled sadly. You're a little bit of both, honey. I have no idea what that makes you overall, but you're something special. So I'm a werewolf and a were-cougar? I asked disbelievingly. I'd call you a were. She bit her lip as she waited for me to filter through the information and try taking it in. You haven't really answered why you're here. I probably didn't want to know, but I asked anyway. For Grace, she stated simply. You are not taking her, I snarled. I didn't care if this was my sister. I would kill her before she got a chance. I, I don't want to, she assured me. But she's an alpha and her hormones are going to react very badly with the pack when she grows up. I want a chance to be in her life and then allow her a place in the pride when she's old enough and can't stay here anymore. How old would that be? Daniel asked and I turned to flash a hurt look at my mate. Somewhere between 18 and 25. Isabella replied softly. Dan, you can't be serious. She's right, babe, he sighed. Alpha wolves can live together because we're a pack, but an alpha cougar would get aggressive with alphas of another species around them all the time. You knew? I accused. You said this would all be fine. It will, Daniel argued. I knew that about alphas, but I had no idea Grace was one. I wasn't even aware girls could even be alphas. Normally, they can't, Isabella added. But you two clearly have kick-ass genes. Have there been female alphas before, I asked. I'm one if that helps, she shrugged nonchalantly. Luke is an alpha, too. Can I meet him? I wasn't sure I wanted to, but it was easier than the thought of one day parting with my daughter. Of course, she smiled warmly, and without a word, Luke appeared at her side in his human form. My brows must have furrowed in confusion because she laughed softly. That telepathic thingy you have works all the time with cougars. Well, that solved my telepathic weird shit. Did that mean Roseanne had cougar in her too? No, was the answer that filtered into my mind as Roseanne shot me a grin. Cats are smelly. I couldn't help laughing at that and got some strange looks from the pack for doing so, but Isabella and Luke seemed to understand. Hi, sis. Luke had dimples when he smiled. Nothing like Daniel's, but they were definitely there. Hey. I smiled nervously back, and Luke offered his hand for me to take. Luke was basically an older version of me, but I had softer features, and Luke's hair was darker with less freckles. It was clear we were all related, and that just made everything more real. I thought I came from an Omega bloodline, I asked, curious as to what the fuck was going on. You do. Mom's from an Omega wolf bloodline, and Dad's from an Alpha Cougar one. But mom wasn't a carrier of the gene, which is why we turned into cougars and not wolves, Luke answered. How do you know all this? I didn't know jack shit about my family when I lived with them, and as far as I knew, Luke and Isabella hadn't seen our parents for a long time before they died. Growing up in a were family lets you know these things, Luke replied. Sometimes I wish I didn't know half the stuff that was told to me when I was growing up. I can't believe mom and dad kept this from me. I'm sorry was pretty much all Isabella or Luke could have said at that moment. We're here to hopefully make it better now. Isabella offered me a hopeful smile, showing that this was all down to me. I don't know how happy I am with your plans to take my daughter away, but I do want to know my brother and sister. I must admit I was weary of the two, but I really did want to know the family I was denied my whole life. Gia, we live like a half-hour drive away. She wouldn't come with us until living here became unbearable for her. Aren't you happy with the security that she has somewhere to go? Somewhere with family, all who will hopefully get the chance to be trusted and loved by then? When Isabella put it like that, then yes, I was happy, but I still couldn't get past the whole Grace leaving one day thing. I'd like for you to all get to know each other, Daniel's voice disrupted my thoughts, and I turned to face the supporting gaze of my mate. You deserve to know your family. They deserve to know their niece and nephew too. And brother-in-law. Isabella added. I hear you got married. Yeah, I found myself smiling at the memory. Congratulations. Thank you. It was all up to me. I knew the pack had my back after everything and it took some pressure off the decision, but it didn't really make it any easier. We will support any decision you have. Daniel's voice filled my mind and I felt the warmth of my mate's love through the bond at the words, calming me down. It's all too much to take in, I admitted. I know, but the plus side, it will be security for Grace when she's older. She can grow up knowing she has family just like her, 
and they can teach her everything about being a cougar. Were you a sales executive in a previous life or something? Wow. Telepathic connection and you can still use sarcasm. I snorted a laugh at Daniel's reply. I looked around to concerned faces and realized I had just burst out laughing in a silent room. Awkward. Nice one, babe. Daniel's laughter filled my mind, and I really had no idea how Daniel could control his laughter to the link and not just come out with it like I did. It wasn't fair. Ass. I shot back. Daniel's success at making me laugh made my decision easier. It lifted a weight off my shoulders, and I found myself agreeing to my sister's request. It was crazy that I even had a brother and sister to begin with, but I was excited to get to know them. I had always wanted a brother and sister growing up, and while I had the pack as a surrogate family, they weren't the same as having real siblings. I received a huge hug from Isabella for agreeing, which was beyond awkward with her lack of clothing. Luke seemed to agree with me about the awkwardness, and instead offered his hand once more as Isabella asked if she could officially meet her niece and nephew. I was a little reluctant to hand over my children to strangers and so instead held Alec while Daniel held Grace so that Isabella and Luke could coo over them and get their chance to say hi. I had to admit, this surprise was one I could deal with for now. It was just the whole Grace leaving someday and my potential to shift into multiple creatures that left me worried. But I wouldn't worry about that unless I needed to. All I needed to think about right then was the fact I had a brother and sister to get to know. Everything else could wait a while. I stood by the window watching out on Grace's first ever tea party. Though I was a little disturbed that Alex and Daniel had worn pink aprons and fairy wings for the occasion, I couldn't help but admit it was very lovely of them. It was also adorable to watch Isabella pour out fake cups of tea for Grace and her teddy bears. Alec wriggled in my arms, totally uninterested in their antics, and made grabby hands for Luke, who was quickly becoming his favorite person. Luke grinned at the little boy and held out his arms, hopeful for me to place the squirming youngster in them. Alec instantly started making happy gurgling noises as Luke began talking animatedly to him about the importance of not spewing up all over his new favorite uncle. They both knew Alec didn't understand a word, but it didn't stop Luke from his monologue. I'll leave you two to it, I laughed softly, as Luke drew out diagrams on a sketch pad on the floor to explain his theory, while Alex slapped his hands enthusiastically on the paper. Have fun with the girls, he teased, and I rolled my eyes affectionately. I had only known my brother and sister for a week, and it already felt like I had known them my whole life. I stepped out into the garden and instantly burst out laughing as Alex and Daniel waltzed around the picnic blanket to some old-fashioned music, while Grace clapped her hands happily. Isabella was turning red from laughing so badly, and I soon joined her. My husband, I announced to an imaginary audience, the alpha of this pack, my beloved mate, and the father of my children, in all his manly goodness. You love my manliness. Daniel retorted, spinning Alex around and lifting him into some sort of pose. Oh, you're a real lumberjack, I laughed. Pink is definitely your color, babe. I know, right? Daniel grinned before parting with Alex and lifting Grace into the air, dancing around with her like he did with Alex. My poor children. I shook my head fondly and dropped down onto the blanket next to Isabella. I would offer you some tea, but Mr. Snuggles drank it all, she said apologetically, nodding towards a stuffed rabbit. Okay, I drew out the word and looked at my sister as if she had a couple of screws loose in her brain. Don't look at me like that, she held her hand to her chest as she faked being shocked. It was Daniel who named them all. I sighed heavily, shooting a loving smile towards my mate. Of course he did. It was another three weeks before Lane shifted back into her human form and moved the pups to the pack house. The day was filled with excitement of meeting the two boys who Alex and Lane had named Oscar and Elijah. Daniel and I were the first to meet the two little balls of fur as they clambered over each other while chewing on Alex's ears as he sat protectively around them in his wolf form, while Lane seemed to be thoroughly enjoying her human form once more. They are so adorable, I grinned as I held my hand out for the two pups to sniff at. Elijah took a curious nip at my finger, and he laughed as Alex scolded the youngster. Both of them had sandy-colored furs like Alex and big floppy ears that I guessed they would probably never grow into, 
They were painfully cute, and I couldn't wait to see them in their human form. Got yourself some handsome betas there, Alex, Daniel grinned as he ran his fingers over Oscar's head and neck. Actually, that one's Omega, I added, making my own introduction to the tiny puppy. How can you tell? Daniel asked, eyebrow raised curiously. I shrugged. I just can. The same way you can tell between alphas and betas, I guess. Is it even possible for betas to give birth to omegas? Lane asked curiously. I thought only omegas could bear omegas. Trust me, Lane. The rules of nature no longer apply. I laughed softly, still struggling to come to terms that I could possibly shift into another supernatural form. Yeah, Alex did tell me about Grace. She sighed and frowned softly. It's good that you found your brother and sister, though. Yeah, I found myself smiling at that. Yeah, it is. Isabella and Luke were staying in the pack house for a few more days and had offered to babysit so Daniel and I could have some time together to reconnect, and they had been all too eager to accept that offer. Feels like coming home, Daniel panted as he curled around my sweaty form. Glad you agree, I breathed, snuggling close to my mate. We lay like that for a long time, basking in each other's warmth and finally being able to enjoy each other's presence once more. I was almost drifting off to sleep when Daniel's voice disturbed me. Uh, babe? Hmm? I hummed my response, unwilling to lift my head. You're purring, Daniel told me, and my eyes shot open. I listened to the soft, rumbling noise coming from the base of my throat and felt the little vibrations against my skin as a gentle purring sound filled the room. It was true. I was fucking purring. Oh, God, I groaned, still purring because I had no idea I was doing it, never mind how to stop it. At least I know you're content, Daniel added, sounding too damn smug for my liking. How the hell do I stop? I asked, trying desperately to gain some sort of control over my body. Don't stop, it's cute. I will skin you alive, I threatened. Okay, maybe not so cute, Daniel corrected. It's no big deal, Gia. Cats purr when they're happy. I'm not a cat. Apparently, you are, Daniel replied, and I love you no matter what your form. The purring lets me know you're happy. I still don't like it, I pouted. I was relieved that the purring had quietened, but still hadn't stopped. Stop pouting, Daniel scolded, kissing the back of my neck. I'm not pouting. Would you like to borrow my fairy wings for your hissy fit? I could feel Daniel's grin against my skin, and if I wasn't tied to him, then I would have shown Daniel just what it felt like to be on the receiving end of a hissy fit. Cats are scrappy little bitches, and if I had to be one, then I intended to embrace that. I didn't dignify Daniel with an answer. The pack house had finally settled in for a quiet evening after the departure of Luke and Isabella. While they were all happy I got to meet my family, there was no denying the wolves were tense with cats around. If anything, it proved to me just how much I needed to bond with my siblings to enable Grace the best chance in later life. I just really hoped that the pack wouldn't start feeling tense around me when I could shift into a cougar form. I knew I would eventually shift into that form. I didn't know if it was because I knew about it or because of the presence of cougars in my life, but it didn't matter. Daniel had told me that I was loved no matter what, and that was enough for me. I didn't believe Daniel at first, but when I had woken up the next morning with a long, heavy tail wrapped around my mate that was really not a wolf tail, Daniel had just smiled and begun playing with it while I had a mini freak out. I finally came to terms with the tail and managed to shift fully into my human form, and things were going well until I stepped out of the shower and caught my reflection in the mirror. Ears. Big, spherical, cougar ears were sitting quite happily where my usual human ears were. Daniel! I shrieked. My mate came rushing into the bathroom, eyes widening when he caught sight of his mate before bursting out into hysterical laughter. This isn't funny! I glared at my husband. I'm sorry, baby, but it's hilarious, he managed between giggles. You look so funny. I hate you. Maybe you should just try and shift into your cougar form. It might stop all this semi-shifting stuff. 
Daniel suggested as he brushed a finger over my ears, grinning as they twitched. You're right, I admitted at last, focusing hard on human ears because, damn, I just look too weird in the mirror. Thought you were going cougar on me, Daniel asked as he watched the ears shift back into little pink human ones. One thing at a time, Dan, was my reply as I chucked out of my towel and closed my eyes, focusing on the previously dormant feline side of myself. My bones shifted and moved effortlessly into position as I dropped down onto all fours. It was much easier than shifting into a wolf. It was natural. I stretched out my body and noted my huge paws and sharp claws that poked out as I flexed my muscles. Retractable claws. Something that would probably take a while to get used to. I looked up at my mate and saw nothing but awe in the man's eyes. You're beautiful, Daniel told me. And if I wasn't in my shifted form, then I would definitely be blushing. I went to growl at my mate, but was stunned when it was more of a whiny yowl. My brows furrowed in confusion, and Daniel burst out laughing once more. I'm sorry, but you have no idea how cute you look when you're confused. He wiped a tear from his eyes as I hissed at him. Cute. Now, shift back before I really do get you fairy wings. Ass, I sent him before focusing on my human form, bones shifting easily as I stood up on two legs. So, I guess Isabella was right then. Daniel eyed my naked body appreciatively. You really are both. Just don't go coughing up fur balls in our bed, babe. Yeah, my husband was an ass. Knock, knock, Roseanne appeared in the doorway of the nursery and offered me a soft smile and gave Alec a little wave. Hey, I smiled back at her and handed Alec into her arms when he made grabby hands at her. He's such a user, always leaves me when someone better comes along, I joked. Well, yeah, she replied easily. I doubt you have a chocolate button. Roseanne reached into her pocket and offered Alec the small chocolate treat. He was probably too young to have them, but his eyes lit up whenever he saw them, and as long as he wasn't pigging out, I let it slide. If my baby gets fat, then I'm blaming you, I told her, and she just laughed. Daniel is downstairs trying to get Grace to moonwalk. I don't think it's me you have to worry about, she said with confidence. Moonwalk? I didn't like the sound of my baby learning to walk backward before she even moved forwards. Alex and Zane were during the thriller dance, and Daniel obviously thinks it's something Grace needs to know. She shrugged helplessly. My kids don't stand a chance, do they? I laughed and dropped a kiss on Alex's forehead. You have great kids, Gia, she told me before pausing for a long time, as if searching for the words. I'm sorry, I never told you about your family. Your sister did swear me to secrecy. Not even Sarah knew about the cougar part of your family. Your sister told me to keep you safe, and I guess... That's the real reason I bonded to you. Why would you do that, though? How did you get in with the cougars? I wasn't mad, just curious. My mom was a cougar, the older woman admitted. I can't shift into one because my dad was a wolf and I took his genes, but he died and I grew up in a pride. Because of my genes, I had to leave like Grace will, but I always kept in touch with that part of my life. It's how I met your sister and how I know so much being from both sides allows you to get information from both sides, I guess. I really am sorry. I'm not, I replied. You're not? She frowned as I left the room, quickly returning with a bottle of red liquid. What's that? A thank you, I told her as I handed it over. Okay. She eyed the bottle curiously. What is it, though? My blood. I took Alec back into my arms to change him into his pajamas. Why are you giving me your blood? She held on a little tighter to the bottle, but still watched me curiously. Because you told me it can help a beta couple conceive. I know for a fact that you guys would love a family, and I just want to say thanks. This is the only way I know how. I shrugged like it was nothing and saw Roseanne's curiosity turn into confusion. Could you possibly have to thank me for? This might sound nuts, but everything really. I told her honestly. I have a family, a husband, two beautiful children, and have been reunited with my brother and sister who I didn't even know existed. I'd have never had any of that if you hadn't bitten me. Wow. Her eyes widened in surprise. You really don't hate me for all that? I used to, but not anymore. Apart from Daniel and my kids, you're probably my most favorite person right now. I'd be sitting in some shitty apartment painting right now if you hadn't bit me. So thank you. 
I wrapped an arm around her in a hug that Alec was all too happy to join. He cuddled in close between us and clapped his hands happily. I guess you're welcome then, she finally spoke, still looking confused but happy at the same time. I can't believe you'd give me such a gift, though. Don't mention it. I grinned as Roseanne clutched tightly onto the bottle. How do you think the council is going to react to all this? She blushed slightly and smiled sheepishly. I handled them after the whole Sarah fight, told them everything, and they pretty much gave up. Gave up? Yeah. <laughs> she laughed softly. They're the council, but they're lazy fuckers. The only reason they addressed the whole Omega thing was because of how much shit happened last time Omegas were around. As long as you don't cause them problems, they can care less what you are. You could have told me this, I laughed in relief. I enjoy being mysterious, she grinned and turned to leave. Thank you, Gia. You're welcome. New beginning. All in all, I was lucky. I had a life people only dream of, and there was nothing else I would ever want. I had everything I had ever needed. I had Daniel, I had Alec, and Grace. I had a pack, a family. It wasn't easy to get where I was, but I had done it anyway, and I wouldn't change that for the world. You get all cute when you get philosophical on me, Daniel grinned as he pressed a firm kiss onto my lips. Fuck you, Dan. Any time, Daniel waggled his eyebrows suggestively, and yep, I really love this cheesy fucker. As long as I had Daniel by my side, I could face the world, and that was worth more than anything. We were enjoying our lion of around eight in the morning when two small bodies jumped on top of me and my sleeping mate. I groaned as I received a little elbow in the ribs but quickly found a burst of energy to grab onto the offender and tickle them. Grace's giggles filled the air as Alec took care of jumping on my head. Daddy, stop! Grace laughed as Daniel tickled her before I grabbed hold of Alec and dragged him in to be tickled too. Ah, uh, mommy, help me! He shot pleading eyes towards me, but they all knew there wasn't a chance in hell I would be making any fast movements before another half hour sleep and at least a full pot of coffee. Stop, Dan, I grumbled in a sleepy voice but made no real attempt to help my squirming children. At least until I received a foot in the face and was suddenly wide awake and glaring at the giggling children before I grabbed a hold of their feet and tickled them in earnest. Nobody gets away with waking mummy up in the morning. Stop! Stop! Grace giggled as I blew a raspberry on her belly. Think they've learned their lesson? Daniel asked, knowing that I would quite happily tickle torture the children for at least another hour or so in payback. Yes! They both cried through their laughter. I guess I'll give them a chance. I finally gave up tickling them and instantly had a lap full of Alec while Grace settled happily on Daniel's knee. Daddy, do you know what today is? She asked flashing him a toothy grin and showing off the gap from losing her first tooth. Tuesday, he replied, grinning as she flashed him a look of disgust. No, Daddy, it's our birthday, she beamed and wrapped her arms around Daniel's neck to snuggle in close. It's your birthday, huh? Daniel considered this. No, it can't be. You both had a birthday last year. We have a birthday every year, Daddy, she told him. No, Daniel's brows furrowed. Gia, is it their birthday? Well, I could swear they had one last year, I agreed with Daniel. Mommy, don't be mean, Alec curled in tightly to my body and nestled against my chest, a position both of our children had never grown out of and always took comfort in. Daniel guessed it was because they always fell asleep that way as babies against body heat and the soothing sound of a beating heartbeat. I'm not mean, I replied. I just swear it's not your birthday. It is, Mommy, Grace intervened her bright green eyes shining truthfully as she brushed her long blonde hair out of her face. We're five today. Five? Daniel's jaw dropped open as he turned to me. I thought they were six. Guess I'll have to take away some of the presents I wanted to give you when you were six. No! Both children protested and clambered over each other to switch laps. Daniel stood up, arms holding tightly onto Alec, and our son wrapped his legs around Daniel's waist as he sat on his hip. I followed him with Grace in a similar position. Daniel was dressed in only sweatpants and me in my old ratty t-shirts and shorts and both of our children were dressed in their little pajamas, but we climbed down the stairs and into the living room where the whole pack was waiting in a room packed full with presents and balloons. Happy birthday to you, we all sang. Alex and Lane were expecting their next baby, 
who they had discovered was a girl. Oscar was clutching onto his mother protectively, a typical Omega trait, but Elijah rushed over to wish Alec and Grace happy birthday. Lillian, Roseanne, and Sean's daughter also rushed over to give Grace and Alec a hug. She had been conceived shortly after I had given Roseanne my blood and Sean had turned the kitchen into a bakery from his nerves. Daniel and I hadn't complained about that and had, in fact, spent most of our time in the kitchen munching on sweet treats. Kevin and Ian were also expecting a pup after about a year of trying, but the rest of the pack had remained the same, all loving the energy that children brought into the house and embracing their roles as babysitters. Presents were exchanged and Daniel and I were blessed with hyperactive children as they played with their new toys and enjoyed their party. They had a huge cake to share and everybody fought over the biggest piece. Daniel had settled this argument by eating the big piece himself and rubbing some cake straight onto my face. The birthday was a complete success. Daniel and Gia both dropped into bed exhausted that night after running around after their very active children all day. They had an awesome birthday and so Daniel didn't mind the aching muscles, but he really wished he had more energy so that he and Gia could maybe have a little fun of their own. But honestly, he was just too tired. Hey, Dan, Gia's quiet voice brought Daniel back to consciousness as he had just started to drift off. Hmm, I think I'm in heat. Daniel sat up and immediately a wall of scent hit him like he had been plowed over by a truck. At times like this, Daniel really hated the fact that Gia could mask her scent. You're trying to kill me, he groaned as he found himself moving instinctively to bury his head in Gia's neck and breathe deeply, finding himself blindingly hard from the smell. Gia didn't reply, just sent him a smirk and pushed Daniel backward and straddled his hips. Daniel let out a groan as he felt his mate's wetness seep through her pants, and really, he just wanted to sleep, but he knew he had at least a few rounds before that would happen. Gia's heat really had shitty timing. In the past few years, Gia had embraced both of her shifted creatures, and while Daniel was impressed with her, it was just plain old mean when your wife goes down on you and suddenly starts fucking purring. His head flew back onto the pillow as the vibrations turned his brain to jelly. He really loved the feline part of his mate, but the purring was just evil. Daniel could have taken the time to be romantic, but he was tired and really needed to be inside his mate, and so he quickly reversed their positions and made quick work of opening Gia up and positioning himself at her entrance. He pushed inside slowly, knowing his mate could take it, but being careful anyway before building up a rhythm and driving them towards completion. Gia moaned in contentment, and Daniel felt the sharp feline nails scraping lightly down his back in a sensation that no wolf claws could ever match. He really hated Gia when she only allowed parts of herself to shift to torture him. It really was pleasure like no other. God, I love you, Daniel groaned as he picked up the pace and all too soon felt his knot slip inside of his mate as they both reached their orgasm. Love me or love my cougar self, Gia grinned, fully sated and pulling Daniel's body tight against her. Both, Daniel returned the grin. Love your wolf, too. They nestled together and Daniel nuzzled against the base of Gia's throat, picking up a change in scent. His brows furrowed at the scent he had smelt that before. Babe. Yeah, Gia seemed to be drifting off in a sea of pleasure and she yawned before turning to face her mate. What is it? I, uh, Daniel bit his lip, unsure what to tell his mate. You were pregnant. All the color drained from Gia's face at the words. I'm on birth control. Well, it looks like it won't be winning birth control of the year anytime soon, Daniel shrugged helplessly. Gia groaned and buried her head in the pillow. I don't know if I'm ready to go through all that again so soon. I'm right here every step of the way, Daniel told me. We'll figure this out together. Promise? Gia asked. I promise. Daniel sealed his promise with a kiss. Everything would be all right as long as they had each other. Guess I better break out the fat clothes again then. Gia shot Daniel a grin, assuring him that she was really okay with it. Just shocked and scared. You mean maternity clothes, Daniel corrected. How many do you think we'll have? Gia curled her hands around her now flat stomach and smiled warmly. You were scared all of 30 seconds ago and now you're excited? Daniel's brows furrowed in confusion. 
I'll always be excited to have a family with you, Gia told him, honestly. Then can we get a dog? Daniel asked excitedly. Sure, go downstairs and strap a leash on Alex, Gia told him easily, and Daniel couldn't help but laugh. He was nervous about being a father again, but he couldn't help being happy because he knew deep down that everything was going to work out just fine. He and Gia would make it through. They always did, and they always will. I can't believe it's been seven years, Gia whispered as her hands interlocked with Daniel's. I know. His eyes welled with tears and he wiped at them uselessly. It still hurts so much. I think it always will, Dan. His eyes settled hard upon the little tombstone at the bottom of the garden. It was surrounded by jasmine bushes and various other flower beds, along with ribbons and teddy bears from the pack's own memorial service that had been held a few hours earlier. It was a beautiful stone selected with great care and consideration. It held the memory of William Greenwood, their third child. He was born too soon and under so much stress and trauma that he hadn't survived. There was nothing that could have been done. Gia was hemorrhaging and Daniel had a decision to make. He had chosen Gia as his priority and their son had paid the price. Daniel felt immensely guilty about it until today, but they both knew he had made the right decision. If Gia had died, then Daniel would have died of a broken heart shortly after and left his two children as orphans. And he just couldn't allow that to happen. He loved his unborn child, but his mate had been his priority. And without her, they wouldn't have been blessed with their little accident they named Dakota. They were a happy family of five and managed to move on from the death of their son. But each year, the pack showed their respect with the memorial service at the gravesite before allowing them some time alone with their boy. It got easier each year, but the pain never dulled. I bet he'd have had your eyes. Gia's voice was so quiet even in the silence. And your smile. He pressed a kiss to Gia's temple and pulled her in tight. Your dimples for sure. And my scruffy hair. No, babe, that's just cruel. Gia managed a watery smile before her attention turned to footsteps behind them. Lane looked nervous and hesitant about interrupting their moment but the squirming three-year-old she held in her arms seemed to explain the need for disturbing them. Dakota's arms flailed wildly as she made grabby hands at Gia, her little blonde ringlets causing Lane to choke on a mouthful of hair as she reached out excitedly. Mama! She squealed as she was lifted into Gia's arms and cradled close. Gia rubbed her nose against hers in an Eskimo kiss that was a standard greeting in their small family and caused her bright green eyes to light up with glee. And where is my hello? Daniel asked and pretended to glare at his youngest daughter. Hi, Dada. She flashed him a toothy grin before nuzzling into Gia's neck. Auntie Lane says I have to sleep, but I can't sleep without cuddles from Mama and Dada. Ah, well, we'll have to fix that. Gia held her tight and blew a raspberry on her cheek, causing her to giggle and try to pull away. Dada, save me! She practically leaped out of Gia's arms and straight into Daniel's where she put all her effort into hiding from Gia, who was threatening to tickle her. I'll save you from your naughty mama. Daniel laughed as Gia clipped him around the back of the head for his choice of words before carrying his youngest daughter into the house. Coming, babe? He held his hand out behind him as Gia gave the stone one last long look before wiping at her eyes and taking Daniel's hand. It had hit his wife much harder than Daniel, and he could understand why. She had carried the baby for five months and had survived, while their son died before he even had the chance to live. It was heartbreaking to see Gia blame herself, but their children had helped her through. Gia leaned into Daniel's side while Dakota snuggled up against his chest as she sat against his opposite hip. Lane had allowed them their privacy and disappeared in search of her own boys and daughter who were no doubt causing trouble with Grace and Alex somewhere. You okay? He asked tentatively as his lips brushed up against Gia's. I will be, she promised, leaning more of her weight on Daniel and allowing Dakota to grab hold of her finger. It was amazing how close Gia was to their youngest daughter. She was her rock once she was born after all the upset she had been through and it was obvious she returned the affection. Their other children were both 12, and while they still enjoyed family time, they weren't up for the constant cuddles Dakota provided. 
and instead favored playing with Oscar, Elijah, and Lillian, while trying to corrupt Nate, who was only six, and Jasmine, who was seven. Nate was Kevin and Ian's son, and he worshipped Grace. The little boy was constantly following her around and trying to copy her. He saw the boys as heroes and always tried to impress them, which usually led to Daniel having to lecture them on the importance of things such as why mud pies were bad ideas and how bad it would be if they were to really attempt to fly out of a second-story window. Jasmine was much calmer and clung to Alex like a life force. There was nothing the guy wouldn't do for his little girl, and Jasmine seemed to know exactly how to work things in her favor. She made solid proof that it's the quiet ones you should watch out for. Sometimes the pack house got crazy with all the kids around, but it brought life into the house that just couldn't compare to anything else. Everybody loved the pups and had even accepted Gia and Grace's cougar forms after a brief period of uncertainty. Things were perfect. Mom! Alec came bounding over to them with the extra energy only a young alpha could have. Uncle Alex wants to go into town and get takeout tonight. Can I go with him? Please? You voluntarily want to sit in a car Alex is driving? Daniel could tell that his mate was having a hard time understanding why anyone would allow Alex to drive them anywhere. The guy made stunt driving look like a calm Sunday drive. Daniel had to laugh at his mate's hesitance, but she eventually allowed Alec to go with his uncle. She knew Alec was Alex's favorite, even if he wouldn't admit it. So, he knew the boy would come to no harm. They were partners in crime and were no doubt planning some sort of epic prank at Zane's expense. Even after all the years they have been living together, the prank wars have never died. But Daniel also had never had another blue wolf to deal with again. So maybe it wasn't all bad. They finally reached the nursery and dressed Dakota into her cute pink pajamas before gently placing her into the tiny princess bed. The nursery hadn't changed over the years and neither of them could face decorating it for anything other than a nursery for their children. Even if they never had children again, they wouldn't change it. The only thing that had changed was the handprints on the wall, as a few extra ones were added which had resulted in a paint fight which Daniel obviously lost as everybody ganged up on him. Mama, can you sing me a bedtime song? Dakota asked as she stretched her body out and buried under the covers, her arms wrapped tightly around a teddy bear that Gia had so horribly named Dan Bear. Of course we aren't. Gia brushed her fingers over Dakota's forehead and tucked her hair behind her ears as she started singing a soft melody. Daniel sensed it was a mother and daughter moment, so he kissed her cheek and said goodnight before squeezing Gia's shoulder reassuringly and retreating to their bedroom to take a shower before Alex got back with food. You going to go to sleep now, Trouble? I asked once I finished singing. I'm not sleepy, Dakota replied around a yawn. Of course not, I chuckled as her eyelids got heavy before kissing her and giving her a big cuddle. Good night, Angel. Night, Mama. She hugged back as much as her small arms allowed her before pouting sweetly. You have to say night to Dan Bear, too. She held up the scruffy teddy and reluctantly pressed a kiss to the bear's nose and decided I really needed to wash the damn thing. Good night, Dan Bear. She seemed satisfied with that and quickly sank underneath the covers until there was just enough of an opening for her to breathe through. It was overly adorable how she always buried herself in places she thought were snugly. The funniest place had been when she fell asleep under Alex and Lane's bed underneath an upturned box. It had scared the life out of me when I couldn't find her, but I couldn't stop laughing at the snoring plastic box hiding beneath Alex and Lane's bed. I let out a yawn of my own and stretched my arms over my head as I shut the door from Dakota's nursery and stepped into the adjoining bathroom. The shower was running and I stripped off my clothes to slip in behind my husband, dropping kisses across his shoulders and biting gently at his pulse point. Daniel let out a soft moan as my hands skimmed over his abs and rubbed soap into his tanned skin. It was more intimate than our usual showers and left me crazy for my mate. I could feel my heat creeping up on me, and I had been having Lane inject me with strong birth control after my pills fucked up so badly and resulted in two pregnancies. So I was raring to go with no interruptions or worries. I pressed open mouth kisses across Daniel's throat and felt my body getting warmer as my mate turned his neck and submitted to me. His hand came back and his fingers threaded through my shoulder-length hair to pull me forward for a real kiss. 
I need you on your back, on our bed, like now. I tugged on Daniel's bottom lip as he blindly flicked off the shower. I love it when you get all bossy. He grinned and grabbed my hands, dragging me towards the bedroom and jumping down onto the bed with impressive energy after such a long day. I straddled him and kissed my way down Daniel's body before wrapping my lips around my husband's cock and truly devouring him. Daniel's head thumped back against the pillows with a strangled moan, and I blindly reached underneath the bed for my latest bedroom surprise for my mate. Daniel was so lost in my mouth he didn't realize when his hands were moved over his head and were suddenly stuck there when he tried to move them back. He turned his gaze up to them and frowned at the handcuffs that held his hands to the headboard. I could sense him saying to me, Damn, you're a sneaky motherfucker. You know I'd have let you done that if you'd asked. Daniel laughed softly and leaned up for a kiss, but I pulled out of his reach slightly. Now, where's the fun in that? I flashed him a dirty grin as Daniel's eyes widened and his nose flared. Oh, fuck, he groaned and tried to let himself focus on anything other than his dick and the fact that he couldn't just pin his mate down and fuck the life out of her. You're in heat? Yep. She has seemed so damn proud of herself that she had actually managed to restrain him. And you, Alpha, are going to just sit back and let me ride you at a nice, leisurely pace. Are you trying to kill me? Daniel whined as he flashed Gia a kicked puppy look. Not really, but damn, what a way to go. Gia teased as she took Daniel's hard cock in her hand and simply sank down onto it with no prep and hardly any foreplay on Daniel's part. He was going to kill Gia. Fuck her and then kill her. I hate you, he panted as his mate set up the slowest pace they had ever had sex to. I love you too, babe, Gia was all too happy to reply as she pushed herself down even harder and almost took in Daniel's knot already from the force. Fuck, babe, he whimpered as Gia proceeded to fuck herself hard but slow, teasing the hell out of his knot in the process. It was fucking unfair is what it was. A knock on the door startled them both and Gia paused on top of him, leaving Daniel to uselessly try and rut up into her, but he failed miserably when Gia pulled off altogether and stumbled across the room. She pulled on a robe and flashed Daniel an apologetic smile before slipping out of the room. Daniel made a disbelieving noise as he was left tied to their damn bed with his aching cock desperate for attention. He tried to twist and turn himself in an attempt to get some friction to take the edge off, but it was useless. He stared down helplessly at his straining dick that was slicked up with Gia's clear slick and driving his senses fucking crazy. He totally was going to kill her. Babe, Gia stuck her head through the door and Daniel cut her with a harsh glare. Alex just got back and Grace and Alec are a little upset after today and only want me, so can you just stay there while I go and see to them? Are you fucking kidding me? Daniel shrieked and internally cursed himself for being heartless, but his dick was the one doing the thinking. I'll be like 15 minutes tops, Gia reasoned, and Daniel really didn't like the sound of that. Then unhand cuff me until you get back. It'll be fine, Dan. Just wait for me. The Omega grinned and took a long, lingering look at Daniel's body. Yeah, you wait just like that. I'm so damn tempted to just keep you like that forever. Don't make me order you to take these damn handcuffs off, Daniel threatened, and Gia disappeared before he had the chance, leaving him once again alone, naked, handcuffed, and rock hard. Fucking pheromones, Daniel muttered to himself. After about an hour, maybe only a few minutes as the clock on their bedside table was telling him there was a quiet knock on the door. Daniel obviously couldn't get up and answer it, and their bedroom was soundproof, meaning that whoever it was had the right to walk inside if the door went unanswered. He really had to check over the pack rules when he was untied because he was never going through the mortification again. A few more knocks sounded out before the door swung open and Alex waltzed inside. Hey, Dan, I thought you and Gia would want food in bed, so I brought it up here. Alex paused to take in Daniel before his eyes widened comically, shutting the door and placing the takeout boxes on the nearest dresser. Alex folded his arms over his chest and leaned back against the door with a massive shit-eating grin on his face. Oh my my, what do we have here? Alex? Daniel squealed. Yep, 
squealed. How's it hanging, big guy? Alex snickered while Daniel flailed uselessly to try and cover his raging hard on. This isn't funny, he yelled as he twisted his body away from Alex's. What could be more funny than your naked ass? Your homeless ass? Daniel threatened. Alex chuckled to himself before stepping forward and tossing the sheet over Daniel's hips. It didn't really do much to hide the fact his dick was standing to full attention, but it made Daniel feel a hell of a lot better. Alex was trying to hide a smirk, but Daniel glared at the other man while pulling on his restraints. A little help here? He asked, but Alex stepped back with his hands held up. No way am I risking the wrath of a horny, kinky, and angry Gia. How about a horny, kinky, and angry Daniel? His gaze narrowed, but Alex didn't waver. You ain't going to do much handcuffs, so I think I'm good for now. He laughed once more before turning around and slipping out through the door without a second glance. Daniel was still tightly handcuffed, so he didn't manage to gain anything from his embarrassing ordeal. But he was thankful for the sheet Alex had covered him with. Fuck my life, he groaned as he allowed himself to sink into the thick mattress. He found himself drifting off to sleep from his total lack of entertainment, but was jarred awake again when Gia practically jumped on top of him once more. Alex said he had an interesting encounter. Gia was grinning like an idiot, and it made Daniel want to punch her stupid, beautiful face. He was handcuffed, though, so he settled on groaning and trying to bury his face in the pillows. Gia laughed softly before peeling back the sheet and kissing her way hungrily down Daniel's body, savoring the taste as she went and letting out a possessive growl when her lips wrapped around Daniel's cock. His hips bucked out without his consent, but Gia took it like a pro and fused her hands around his waist to hold him steady, while she promptly sucked Daniel's brain out. Daniel whined as Gia pulled off. His wife's eyes were glowing a bright green, her inner feline coming out to play as she scraped her elongated nails down Daniel's chest. He virtually whimpered at the sensations, but Gia seemed content to torture him. You're so gorgeous, she observed as she trailed lazy hands over his oversensitive body. Gotta admit, Dan, when Alex told me he'd seen you like this, I was so a little mad. His mate was practically purring as she nipped at any available skin. You're mine, she emphasized her words with dirty, open-mouthed kisses. Every inch of your body is mine. I grew up without my brother and sister, Dan. I've never learned to share my things. All yours, Daniel agreed as he rides against his restraints, desperate for anything Gia would give him. Maybe I should make you wait a little longer, Gia mused as she trailed a finger down Daniel's chest, slowly swirling around a nipple before biting at the hardened nub. Make you prove you really do know who you belong to. Belong to you, Daniel groaned, just like you belong to me. I like the way you think, babe. Gia rewarded him with a deep kiss before gripping Daniel and guiding him to her slick entrance, slowly pushing down until she was sitting in her mate's lap. Fuck, Daniel gasped at the overwhelming sensations. Thirteen years and he still couldn't get over how amazing it felt between them when it came to sex. That's the idea, Gia grinned as she ground her hips down without really moving anywhere. It was as torturous as it was blissful. Oh God, you're going to regret this when I get out of these, Daniel panted as Gia started a slow and lazy rhythm. I'm going to hold you down and fuck you straight through the rest of your heat, he promised, hating the way Gia's grin widened and she slowed her pace. Better make this last then, she stopped moving entirely and just sat patiently on Daniel's hips. Daniel's jaw dropped and he gave his mate an, are you fucking kidding me, look? But Gia's grin just increased. Problem? Gia, I swear to God, if you don't move, then I'll break out of these restraints and you'll regret this, you fucker. He was far too gone to give a shit about his bed frame. If Gia didn't move her ass, then Daniel would easily pay for a new bed in the morning. Jeez, babe, that sounds almost like a promise, his wife teased and wiggled her ass in a way that really wasn't fucking fair. Fuck this, Daniel growled and put all his strength into yanking his arms from their restraints snapping the handcuff chains and bending the metal bed frame in the process. He wrapped his arms around Gia and flipped their positions so he was pinning Gia to the bed with all his strength. There's my sexy alpha, Gia beamed and allowed Daniel to pin her arms above her head 
while Daniel pounded into her harder than ever before. His knot was already swelling, but he didn't care and proceeded to bring himself quickly to his orgasm. Gia's smirk was quickly wiped off her face as she began moaning while desperately trying to pull her arms from Daniel's hold so that she could clutch at Daniel's sweaty body. It was Daniel's turn to smirk as his knot finally slipped inside his mate and tied them together, causing them both to reach their peak at last. Shit. Gia let out a breathy gasp as their movements slowed into a leisurely pace. Her heat had finally subsided for the time being and Gia took that time to relax as much as possible while Daniel showered her with needy kisses. You fucker, he chuckled softly as he moved them into a more comfortable position. You totally want me to break free, didn't you? We needed a new bed frame anyway, Gia shrugged and burst into a fit of giggles as Daniel tickled her. Stop, Dan, she laughed and rods against Daniel, tugging deliciously on his knot. You're an evil little shit sometimes, babe, Daniel laughed and searched around blindly for the key to unclasp the handcuffs still attached to his wrists. I swear it was the heat making me crazy, Gia was grinning as she spoke, which made her excuse completely unbelievable. But after that amazing sex, Daniel was prepared to let it slide. Mama! I let out an oomph as my three-year-old daughter jumped on my chest to wake me up. She squealed with glee when I finally forced myself to open an eye and glare at my youngest child. This better be important trouble, I grumbled, my one open eye slowly slipping closed. It's daytime, she beamed and climbed off my chest to curl up underneath my arm. It was then that I noticed that the other side of the bed was empty and that the shower was running. I made a mental note to hit Daniel in the chest with something as payback for my wake-up call. No, I think you're mistaken, I yawned and pulled Dakota in tight to my body, nuzzling her golden curls. I don't see any coffee, so it's not time for me to get up yet. My mind was changed, however, when Dakota leaned forward and blew a sloppy raspberry on my cheek. I scrunched up my face and wiped the spit off my cheek before mumbling to myself and putting all my effort into standing. My daughter was reduced to a fit of giggles at her mother's displeasure, and I decided I might as well add to that list of things I needed to get revenge for. The sound of awful singing coming from the bathroom symbolized Daniel's happy mood, and so I thought it would be best to wait and get my payback, because a happy Daniel is an insufferable Daniel, if you're trying to prove a point. Mama, why can you sing in Dada Sucks? Dakota asked as she covered her ears in an attempt to drown out her father's awful rendition of Britney Spears. I chuckled at her question while I slipped on a t-shirt and sweatpants. I don't know, sweetie. Some people are just gifted. Others are just special, Daniel added when he emerged in a fluffy pink towel. Very special, I agreed as I eyed the towel with distaste. Daniel stuck out his tongue in retaliation before dancing over to their closet and choosing some clothes with a very questionable color combination. I was no fashion guru, but I knew for a fact that yellow and pink definitely didn't go together. Just, no. You're not going out in public today, right? I asked a little nervously. No, why? Daniel asked with genuine confusion. Because you look silly, Dada. Dakota answered for him, causing me to laugh and Daniel to glare at me. So do you, Daniel retaliated as he threw on some skinny green scarf. What's wrong with my dress? Dakota pouted and her eyes glistened slightly. Mom got me this dress. It's my favorite. Her words became more indecipherable as a tear trailed down her cheek. Oh, great. Now I'm an asshole, Daniel huffed in disbelief. You are an asshole, I agreed as I picked up my daughter and cradled her close. You're a beautiful baby, no matter what Dada seems to think about this dress. I can promise you everyone else will love it. Promise? She sniffled. Promise. But why doesn't Dada like it? She asked softly while playing with the hem of her little pink dress. He does like it. He was just teasing you, I assured her. And even if he didn't like your dress, then it wouldn't matter because look at the monstrosity he's wearing. I received a giggle for that as Dakota turned to lift her arms up for Daniel to grab onto and hoist her into his arms snuggling her close in apology. I knew she was her dada's girl, but nothing could match seeing the look of pure adoration on my mate's face whenever he was deemed fun enough to receive attention from their youngest daughter. Mama needs to teach you how to dress properly, she told Daniel firmly, causing both of us to chuckle. Mom's been trying to teach me for 13 years, princess, 
but I've still had no luck, I told her sadly. Maybe you should let Mama pick you out a dress. Somehow I think your dad will actually wear that. I shook my head fondly at them both before heading out from our private quarters to find the pack and my other children. Alec came bounding up to me with a panicked expression and one green eye while the other was gold and looked quite sore. I bit my lip to stop from laughing how ridiculous he looked. While his sister Grace simply rolled her eyes at him. Mom, I can't get the other lens in. He flailed his arms around before dragging me into the bathroom. If I don't get this in now, then we're going to be late for school. I sighed heavily as I picked up the delicate lens from the solution and tried to hold the damn thing on my fingertip. While I was human, I had needed to wear glasses and so was used to putting contact lenses in. But it was a lot different trying to put them in somebody else's eye. Hold still, I instructed as I tilted my son's head back slightly and managed to gently place the colored lens into his eye, causing him to look slightly more human. Why can't I have normal eyes like everyone else? Alex asked with a hint of sadness in his voice. You do have normal eyes, I told him firmly. It's just me, your father, and your sisters who have the strange ones. But you can go out in the human world and look normal, he argued. Your uncle Alex goes out with his eyes the same color as you all the time, I answered back softly. Nobody would think you were a freak if you went to school without your lenses, Alex. You're right, they wouldn't think I was a freak, Alec agreed. They'd tell me, and then I'd end up the school freak and target for bullies. Alec, you could kick the ass of seniors in college, for God's sake. Why are you letting this get to you? It just sucks that I have to hide to be accepted. He looked away from me and wiped angrily at his eyes that were both looking red, but I was having none of it and quickly pulled my son close into a tight hug. You can be whoever you want to be, I whispered into his ear as I held him tight. You have a huge family that worships you, and in a hundred years, you'll still be making me proud running your own pack. So what's a couple of years in school, huh? You're right, Alec agreed softly as he checked out his appearance once more in the mirror. You look totally handsome, I assured him as I shoved him out of the bathroom. Now hurry up before Grace starts crying on me too. Alec laughed, but let the playful dig slide. You think Dad will drive us in today, he asked hopefully. Sure. On second thoughts, Alec's eyes widened as he caught sight of Daniel in the living room where he was busy wrestling with Alex. I think Uncle Sean will do just fine. Hey, I'll take you, Daniel offered. Not dressed like that, Grace and Alex said in unison before running out to join Oscar and Elijah in the car. All four of them were being schooled in the human world while all of the younger children were being taught at the pack house by Roseanne who had studied to get her teaching degree shortly after becoming a PAC member in order to keep the children safe and homeschooled. Admit it, Dan. Your taste in fashion sucks. I couldn't help the smug grin on my face. Maybe, Daniel agreed, but it doesn't stop you from wanting me on a regular basis. He winked at me before continuing his wrestling match with Alex. Damn, I love that idiot with a crappy taste in fashion. I was trying really hard to juggle my heat, my clingy child, and a horny Daniel, and it was really fucking hard. My heat was hitting me hard this time, and a horny Daniel didn't help much, and Dakota demanding my constant attention helped even less. All I needed was a quick release, and then I would actually be able to function until dinner time. Fate was a heartless bitch, though, and I practically growled at my cell phone when it began ringing after Lane finally dislodged Dakota to give her parents some much-needed grown-ups time. Hello? I virtually snarled into the phone, doing my damn best to ignore Daniel's wandering hands as my mate maneuvered us to the bed. Um, is this Mrs. Greenwood? A timid female voice asked, obviously startled at my snappy answer. Yes? Who is this? I didn't have the patience for a phone call when Daniel was pretty much humping my leg while high on the pheromones that I just couldn't control anymore. This is Mrs. Riley. I'm calling about your son, Alec. What happened? Is he all right? I sat up and managed to knock Daniel off the bed in the process. He's fine, Mrs. Greenwood. He put another child in hospital, though, and I really think you and your partner should come down here so we can sort it out. Shit. I couldn't help cursing. Just because I had told Alec he could kick the crap out of someone didn't give him permission to do it, for God's sake. Didn't he understand the concepts of a heat and the absolute need to get laid? Definitely Daniel's child. Boy had shitty timing. We'll be right there. No, 
we're not going anywhere, my whiny mate told me as I grabbed the phone out of my hand and threw it somewhere behind him. We have to go to the school. Alex in trouble. I managed through a groan as Daniel's body covered mine. Daniel stilled for a moment to pull back with questioning eyes. I was quick to reassure him that Alec was actually the one in trouble and not the one hurt. I refrained from the ego boost I may or may not have given him earlier in the bathroom, but I was pretty sure Daniel wouldn't care that I told our son to stick up for himself. Hell no! Daniel punched the pillow closest to him as he rolled out of bed and pulled on his shirt. He's so grounded for disturbing our beautiful moment. You were going to pound me through the mattress on some euphoric pheromone-induced high. That's hardly beautiful, babe. It would have been fucking majestic. Shut up, Daniel. When we finally made it to the principal's office, we were confronted with a very bloody Alec. But a quick scent of the air confirmed that none of the blood was actually Alex. Judging by the amount of blood, however, it would suggest the other kid took one hell of a beating. I guessed it was probably a good time to teach my son about how fragile humans were compared to werewolves. You are so lucky they're not pressing charges, Daniel yelled when we got into the car after the principal had finished talking us through the situation and dismissed us with only a few days suspension. Do you have any idea what that could have meant? The way Alec flinched showed that he knew exactly what could have meant. He could have gotten into some major problems that could have outed their entire species. My husband's anger was fully acceptable. I had already fought for the Omega gender against the entire werewolf species, and I didn't fancy being hated again. I'm sorry, Dad. Alec didn't really look sorry. Maybe he was sorry for almost exposing them, but he definitely wasn't sorry about kicking the kid's ass. I know when you're lying, Daniel snarled, his knuckles going white from gripping the steering wheel so hard. And I know you're proud of me. Alec retaliated. Apart from the obvious, I know you're not mad for what I did because I'm an alpha and so are you, Dad. Whether you admit it or not, I still know you're proud that I stuck up for my family. He's lucky I didn't kill him. Just what exactly did this kid do that warranted him a death sentence? I inquired, giving Daniel a few moments to calm himself. He called my parents a pair of freaks, so I just told him that if he said it again, I'd kick the shit out of him. He said it again, and so I kicked the shit out of him. He shrugged like it was okay to just beat somebody up, and with the situation, I kind of agreed with him. I would have kicked the kid's ass, too. The way the car swerved into a parking lot suggested that Daniel might not be so easy to convince. A kid has a nasty mouth, and that's an excuse to hospitalize him? Daniel spun in his seat to face his son. You're going to get that everywhere you go, whether you like it or not, Alec. You have to ignore it and not hurt people. And I'm not even going to comment on your swearing. You're 12 years old, young man. At least one of you is proud of me. Alec folded his arms across his chest smugly. Your mom isn't proud of you, Daniel argued. Oh my God, I intervened. There's too much damn testosterone in this car. I'm going into the store. When I get back, I expect you to both be calm or have sent Alex to pick me up because I'm not dealing with either of you like this. I really hated Alpha sometimes. I shoved open the door and slammed it behind me before walking towards the pavement that led to the front of the store. I really wasn't in the mood for the egotistical guy leaning against his flashy, fast car outside the doors. The guy gave me a slow look up and down, offering me a slow and somewhat sexy grin. While I physically was only in my early 20s, my mind was well into my late 30s. But thanks to the werewolf gene, I was always gaining attention for my looks. I knew I was attractive. Hell, I wasn't blind, but damn it, I had well outgrown being hit on everywhere I went. I was married with kids, for God's sake. Hello, sexy, the guy drawled and raised his eyebrows approvingly. I am so not in the mood for the bullshit, I glared at him, but he didn't seem put off as he grabbed my wrist and pulled me closer. Come on, baby, don't be like that. It would be a shame to break this guy's face because he really was attractive. We can be good together. If you don't take your hand off me, then I'm going to smash up your overpriced flashy car with your pretty face, I told him with a bittersweet smile. Ooh, you're feisty, the guy grinned. I like a challenge. I'm happily married and have three children, so good luck with that, I replied and enjoyed seeing the guy falter for a moment. But... 
you're like 21, 22 tops? He looked genuinely confused that such a thing would be possible. I was pissed at Alec for nearly outing them, yet here I was revealing how impossible my age was to a human who would have known. I think you should let go of me now before I break your wrist. I had had enough of games. And I think a wolf like you shouldn't be out of your bedroom while you're in heat. He replied easily, and I literally felt the color drain from my face and the force around my wrist tightened. I had been so caught up in my own anger, I hadn't noticed the guy's scent. Alpha. If you're smart, then you'll run like hell before my pack finds out there's another werewolf in the area. If you want to live, then I suggest you let go of me before my mate comes looking for me. I was an alpha cougar, so could easily take care of the guy myself, but I was also supposed to be a wolf omega, and so drawing attention really wouldn't be my best idea. If your mate gave a shit about you, then you'd be getting knotted right now, omega. And if you don't take your filthy hand off my mate, they'll be scrubbing your blood out of the pavement for weeks. Daniel's voice was lethal, and I relaxed instantly at my husband's presence as he pressed his body against mine protectively. This time, the guy had the decency to look terrified as he released his grasp instantly. You're a Greenwood? His eyes widened as he took in this information. You know about us. I really wanted to go home, but I figured it was probably important to know why an unknown werewolf knew about our family. Who doesn't know about you two? He replied easily. I can't believe I've met the famous Gia, the Omega to unite Omegas to their rightful place alongside Alphas again. You claim to think highly of Omegas, yet you'd move in so quickly on a mated one? Daniel's hands were tight on my shoulders as he held me close. An Omega wandering around in public without an Alpha while in heat is a dangerous thing, Alpha. It can make even the sanest wolf go a little crazy. He shrugged helplessly and turned to glare at me. Now, I know you can control the pheromones you're assaulting me with. Rein it in a little, would you? I blushed slightly at the realization that I was, in fact, letting my hormones run wild. I'd clearly lost control with all the stress caused from the afternoon's events. My mate chuckled softly against the back of my neck, and his arms came down around my waist to loosely hug me from behind, as I finally gained control over myself. Though Daniel's big, alpha body pressed against mine wasn't exactly helping. So why are you here? My mate asked casually, as if the past few minutes hadn't even happened. Where's your pack? Actually, I was kind of looking for you guys. Didn't think I'd accidentally end up harassing one of you, though, he confessed sheepishly. The name's Gail. He reached his hand out for both of us to shake. Why were you looking for us? I asked warily as I let go of Gail's hand. Isn't it obvious? He asked. I'm a lone wolf in need of a pack, and this one happens to be the strongest one around here with rumored peace with cougars. There's no place safer than under the watchful eye of the Greenwood pack. What makes you think I wouldn't kill you for touching my mate the second you stepped foot on pack land? Daniel raised a questionable eyebrow, and I rolled my eyes at the pointless question because he damn well knew that he was already looking at their new pack member. I think it would be in your rights as her alpha. I also think that you know how uncontrollable it gets when your omega is in heat, so I think you can sympathize with an unmated alpha who doesn't stand a chance against those pheromones. Even though I was really having a shitty day and was pissed that the guy came across so strong, I couldn't help agreeing with Gail because I damn well know how unbearable Daniel could be when I unleashed my heat on the poor Alpha. Just get in your flashy car and follow us back to the house, I sighed. You both know Daniel will welcome you with this big open arms and I can't be bothered to stand here while you pussyfoot around it because I'm angry and horny and I have a pissed off and very bloody preteen in the car, so I just want to go home. Wow, Gail let out a low whistle at the list. Guess we know who wears the knot in this family. I like you, I grinned. You're smart. Don't encourage her, Daniel told Gail as he seared me back towards the car, where Alec wasn't looking any happier. But he had the decency to not cause an argument on the way back home. When we arrived back home, however, we found ourselves in the heat of another argument over another pack member. It was tense waiting for the pack to test out compatibility with the new member, but it mostly went off without a hitch, and Gail was already unlucky enough to be taken under Zane and Alex's wing. 
Things were almost looking good when Sean pulled up into the driveway with a very proud-looking Grace in the back seat. What happened? Why aren't you in school? I asked, dreading the answer. She looked at Alec and grinned. When you beat up the idiot, his friend decided he'd continue talking smack about our family. So I punched him. I groaned and buried my head in Daniel's shoulder. Can we just go to bed and forget about this sucky day? Mama, I'm bored. Dakota prodded my leg and demanded my attention. Can't you go play with Aunt Lane Trouble? I asked weakly. No, Mama, I want you. She wailed, raising her arms for me to pick her up. <sighs> I sighed in defeat as I lifted my daughter into my arms. Daniel and I weren't getting laid any time soon. I practically purred with contentment once I had finally gotten my time alone with Daniel. Our bodies were sweaty and entwined together with Daniel softly snoring away. Me, on the other hand, couldn't sleep. Too many thoughts were going through my mind. I was worried about Alec and Grace and even more worried at what Gail would learn from spending so much time with Alex and Zane. I heaved a deep sigh and climbed out of Daniel's limbs, padding over to the shower and dressing in some sweats before venturing into the house in search of somebody to keep me entertained. I'd expected to find Roseanne or Kevin still up or even Sean baking away, but instead I found Gail reading a big dusty book in the living room. He was curled up on an armchair with a single lamp as a light source. Gail looked up when I entered the room and smiled warmly at me, his bright blue eyes sparking with genuine happiness to see me. I didn't know how the other werewolf could look so awake at four in the morning, but I didn't question it. I took the seat closest to him and offered my own smile, picking up the book Gail had discarded as I had entered. Romeo and Juliet? I arched an eyebrow as I read the title. Really? Gail laughed softly. His untamed, cropped black locks fell onto his face and he brushed them behind his ears only to have them fall forward again, for being too short to hold back. He didn't look like a werewolf, and he looked even less like a guy who would read Shakespeare. It's a classic, Gail defended. I'll take your word for it, I laughed as I put the book down onto the side table next to us. How come you're still up? First night nerves, Gail shrugged, but I knew that wasn't the real reason. And judging by the sigh Gail let out, he knew it too. Scary being the new guy in a house full of werewolves, he admitted. Your pack is legendary, Gia. Hell, you killed Theo Morgan. I know I stand no chance if you take a dislike towards me. I did that because it was my life or his. My blood can sustain silver. It's the only way I got an advantage. I yawned widely. It was no longer a secret that my blood was compatible with silver. You could have done it without the silver, had you not recently been turned, Gail told me with sincere belief. I'd hate to have you on my bad side. You almost did. Yeah. Gail looked at the floor sheepishly as he ran a hand through his hair a little guiltily. Sorry about that, but damn, you smelt like sin. It's fine, I assured him. I normally have better control than that, but I just wasn't having a good day. Alex's a great kid, Gail chuckled and reached to take a sip out of the coffee mug on the table next to him. He has sucky timing, though. Very, I agreed. Silence fell upon us for a few moments, and I took my time to study the new pack member. He was young even in his werewolf years, and definitely unmated. His hair was even wilder than Daniel's, but slightly shorter and darker. And his eyes were startlingly bright and not at all yellow. You wear contacts? I asked and motioned to Gail's eyes. Nope, he grinned proudly. My genetics fucked up slightly when my dad knocked up a human. You're half human? I inquired with interest. I thought werewolves only had sex with their mates. I thought they could only get it up for their mates. Now, you can't tell me you believe those fairy tales. He laughed as if he was humoring a small child. I came on to you today, didn't I? Last I checked, you belonged to Daniel. I frowned at the realization of how true that was. My pack abstained until they found their mates, but did others? I really thought I had enough surprises in my lifetime. Surely I didn't need any new information to go along with it. You're saying that a werewolf will just go out and have sex with anybody? Even humans? Well, that's how I'm here. I'm going through a slight dry spell right now, but I fully intend to pick right back up again. Once I get settled, you can switch mates too if you want to. It's hard to tell between fact and fiction with us wolves. 
But werewolves can die without their mate. I didn't understand how that was possible. Why would they leave their mate to die for someone new? A werewolf will die of a broken heart, not of some total body malfunction. We're born to survive, so the lack of a mate isn't going to destroy us. Once mated, your genetics change to match each other, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes a mating isn't compatible. It's biology that makes you mate, but your personalities may not match. The council made up the whole death thing to preserve mated pairs so that our alphas remain strong with a beta or omega at their side. How do you know so much? My mate left me. He smiled sadly in memory, and it shocked me to think that he had lost his mating bond to somebody. I couldn't imagine not being linked to Daniel like that and found myself pulling Gale into a hug without even thinking about it. I'm so sorry, I whispered. You're so young for that. Yeah, he wiped at his eyes angrily. I found my mate when I was 18 and finally reached maturity. I thought he was my entire reason for existence, but he thought some other alpha was his. How old are you? I inquired as I offered Gale a reassuring smile. Twenty-five. He left me over five years ago now. I really loved him. He was Omega too, so I thought we'd grow up and have a family. Maybe make a pack of our own. But he was too busy looking for a way out. Another mate is the only way out of a mating bond, so he mated to this other guy and it felt like our bond was literally torn apart. I could actually feel him being ripped away from me. I'd never wish that feeling on another werewolf. It's so fucking lonely and terrifying to suddenly be without your mate. I've been searching for a new one, but for now I think I just need a pack to help me get on my feet again. Gail took a shuddering breath, seemingly relieved to let it all out, and my heart bled for the younger werewolf. We'll help you, I promised. Your family now. Thank you. He gave a shaky smile before taking a deep breath and laughing softly. Now we got the depressing shit out of the way, what do you say we raid Sean's cookie jar and I kick your ass at Mario Kart? Sean has a cookie jar? I perked up at the mere thought of Sean's cookies. You didn't know? Gail looked at me in disbelief. That was the first thing Zane told me in his little initiation speech. The sneaky bastards. I couldn't believe I'd been living in the pack house for 13 years and was yet to discover Sean's hidden cookie jar. I was even more annoyed that Zane clearly had. Gail laughed openly as he dragged me towards the back of the house. Oh, there's lots of things Zane told me about this place. Stick with me, Gia, and you'll learn them all. I really like the sound of that. My eyes widening at the sheer size of the previously hidden cookie jar Sean had hidden. Gail and I were going to be great friends. Gia, Daniel prodded his mate's shoulder, holding back a sleeping grin when he saw Gia drooling onto the arm of the couch. Daniel had woken up when it was nearly dawn with Gia nowhere to be found. He had searched the kids' rooms before searching the rest of the house, and he had found her sprawled out on the couch with a blanket thrown over her and a steering wheel controller placed on the nearest coffee table. Gail was asleep, curled up on an armchair with another blanket looking slightly more composed. It was clear that Gia was the one to fall asleep first. Gia, he poked her again slightly harder, but didn't raise his voice in case he woke Gail. What? Gia grumbled a pissy response and curled tighter into the blanket. Come to bed, babe, Daniel spoke softly and allowed his fingers to brush over Gia's temple. His wife groaned in response and made no attempt to move. Fine. Daniel rolled his eyes before bundling Gia up in his arms and lifting her off the couch. If you're going to be a baby, then I'll carry you to bed like one. Mm, love you. Gia slurred as she nuzzled into the crook of Daniel's neck and slipped back into unconsciousness once more. Daniel couldn't hold back his laugh as Gia allowed him to carry her to bed. Normally, such an action would result in Gia throwing a bitch fit about how she was perfectly capable of walking and not a fucking damsel in distress. But clearly, his mate was way too tired to complain as Daniel gently set her down on her side of the bed and curled up next to him. Gia shifted in her sleep to snuggle up against Daniel and he let out a contented sigh as he held his mate in his arms again and allowed Gia's deep breathing to pull him back into a deep sleep. I hate the world and everyone in it, I grumbled as I cuddled up close to my mug of coffee. Babe, you're a tad melodramatic in the mornings, Daniel laughed as he struggled to feed Dakota her breakfast. You're melodramatic, I retorted. What? Daniel's brows furrowed in confusion. 
I don't know. I glared at him before sipping my coffee and turning my attention to Alec and Grace, who had to continue studying at home until they were allowed back to school. Why are you so happy? No reason. Grace had a dreamy, vacant expression going on, and I really didn't want to know why. Grace is in love with Gail, Alec chimed in, and I suddenly decided it was way too early for that conversation. Alec, she squealed and punched his arm hard enough to probably break a human bone. Ow, he glared at his sister but showed no remorse. Sweetie, you're twelve, I reminded her. So, he's not. Daniel fixed her with a stern look and it made me really feel sorry for any future mate of hers because damn, that guy would have to be one brave werewolf to mate Daniel's baby princess. Well, Alec's in love with Oscar, Grace retaliated, and I almost choked on my coffee. It's bad enough that I had to live with Alex, never mind becoming mother-in-law to his offspring. And not Alec threw his spoon at her for extra emphasis. He's my best friend, you idiot. Alec? Grace? Daniel warned, but it fell flat as usual. You're an alpha and he's an omega, Grace stated. I'd bet my entire allowance that you two end up mated the second you're 18. My head hurts. I groaned as I buried my head in my hands. If my son did end up mated to Oscar, then so be it. But I really didn't have to know about the possibility because I now had to spend the next six years in fear that I might end up actually related to Alex. Drink your coffee, Daniel advised, as he topped up my mug straight from the coffee pot. My hero. I brought the coffee to my lips and made extra sure to ignore the conversation going on around me. It's going to happen, Grace told the table confidently, and I was grateful that it was only mine and Daniel's brood currently occupying the dining room, because I did not need the pack taunting me until my kids turned 18. You'll end up made it to Elijah, Alec grinned as Grace's face fell. That's gross. I'd laugh so hard if that happened. Alec laughed and received a bowl of porridge shoved in his face for that comment. I quit. I let out a sigh of resignation as I pushed back from the table. I'm going back to bed until this house is sane again. I second that, Daniel agreed as he lifted Dakota out of her booster chair and placed her down on the floor. She instantly ran out into the living room to join the pack, which was a shock considering she usually clung to me. I really second that idea, Daniel whispered in my ear and enjoyed the way my body shuddered at the words. Going back to bed was a brilliant idea. It had been a month since Gail had joined the pack, and things were going surprisingly well. The place was usually crazy with so many kids around, but it had been much calmer to the point where Alec and Grace were even excelling in school. It was almost as if the world was settling them up for their downfall, and that is proven to be true. Something bad is going on out there. Alex looked pale and even a little scared when he appeared in Daniel's office. What do you mean, bad? I asked as I perched on the arm of Daniel's chair. Werewolves are dying, Alex answered gravely, and I felt Daniel stiffen next to me. How? Daniel's hand found my smaller one and I held on tight. Cougars. Why are they killing werewolves? I didn't understand. I was part cougar and Grace was a full cougar and we both lived quite happily with a pack of wolves. Yes, and I don't know why. Alex held out his hands helplessly. I've called Isabella and she's coming over right now, but I don't know what's happening. I thought cougars were almost extinct. Daniel was clearly unhappy with the potential threat and I did my best to soothe my mate as much as possible. Their numbers have been steadily rising over the years, but over the past weeks, they've skyrocketed. Alex looked as if he was even paler if possible. They're turning humans, Daniel. Fuckers! Daniel's fist slammed onto the top of his desk. A knock on the door silenced our conversation, as Steele poked his head through the small gap and informed me that my sister had arrived. I was up off the chair before Steele had even finished speaking and running out into the garden where my brother and sister were waiting for me both looking terrified. Isabella! Luke? I eyed them both cautiously. What's going on? They know about Grace and Dakota. Luke was even paler than Alex, if that was possible. A couple pack members followed us out here about a year back and saw them shift. 
They kept their mission very quiet until I overheard some asshole cougars talking about the plans. Is that why they're turning people? I didn't understand. Cougars can't just take on a pack of this size, Luke paused to search for his next words. They. They're turning as many as they can so that they can get the cougars out of this pack. I don't understand. I didn't want any of this, and I feared the safety of my daughters. It was Isabella who spoke up. The cougars are coming, and they're coming for your family, Gia. They're not on the brink of extinction anymore, and they want to be the top species and make sure all the cougars are in the same huge pride so that they can be the top predator out there. Somehow, they seem to think they're elite compared to wolves. They know about your family, Gia. They know that a wolf gave birth to a cougar and another who can shift into both forms. Do they know that I can shift into both forms, too? It was the pack's most precious secret, and my life depended on it not getting out. No, but that doesn't matter. You and your family are in danger. They see you as an abomination, and they're on their way right now. What am I supposed to do, Bella? I knew the pack might not be able to take on that many cougars with all the children around, and I hated the thought of losing my own children even more. Run, Gia. Grab Daniel and the kids and run as far and as fast as you can. Mask your sense and never look back. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. What about the pack? I couldn't just leave them for the cougars. There were children here. They'll be safer without you, she told me truthfully. If they have no idea where you and your family are, then they'll be safe. No time for goodbyes, Gia. You grab Daniel and Dakota and then go get Alec and Grace from school. We'll tell the pack the situation and then face the cougars. I'll call you to tell you they're all safe. There's someone I have to say goodbye to first. I turned and made my way towards the other side of their garden. Gia, there's no time, Isabella argued as she grabbed my wrist, but I wrenched it out of her hold. I don't care, I snarled. Go get Daniel. They seemed to sense how serious I was and rushed off into the house while I made my way to my son's tiny gravestone. I wasn't leaving without saying goodbye to my baby, and I knew Daniel wasn't either. By the time I had reached the grave, Daniel was already at my side and holding me tight as I finally lost it and cried in my mate's arms. Gia, what's happening? Daniel asked desperately, cradling me close as I sobbed into his shoulder. We have to run, Dan. The cougars are coming for Grace and Dakota, and if we're here, then they'll take them and probably fight the pack to death, and I can't let that happen, Daniel. They'll be safe without us, and we can keep the kids safe if we run. I wiped angrily at my tears. I had to say goodbye to Will first. You want to spend our life on the run? Daniel asked, disbelieving. It's not forever, Dan, I lied. Just until it's safe. And when will that be? Daniel asked, trying to contain his anger. I wish I knew. I really wished I knew. Right now, the most important thing is getting us and the kids safe. We don't have any time to waste. We were both silent for a few short minutes while we composed ourselves and made our goodbyes with our son. I promised myself that we would come back. I wasn't leaving my son here without his parents. It didn't matter what it took. I was coming back someday. Ready? Isabella appeared behind us with two big duffel bags that she had quickly packed. Ditch the car at the school, you'll get away faster in your shifted forms. This is all you'll be able to carry and get away with if you don't want to cause a disturbance. There's a shitload of money and some clothes to change into when you get to wherever you're going. I have your cell phone in here too, Gia. And you have to destroy it the second I call you to tell you everyone's all right. Nobody can know where you've gone. Okay, I nodded quickly. I couldn't believe we were actually doing this. It was cowardly to run, but I didn't care if it meant my family would be safe. Luke is getting Dakota into the car. You have to hurry. The cougars may know where the school is, and they may try there first. She shoved the bags into my hand and pushed me in the direction of the car. Luke will drive you there and hold off any cougars that come snooping. Thank you, I whispered, not knowing what I would have done if I hadn't been somewhat prepared. What would I have done if the cougars had just attacked the pack, kidnapped Grace and little Dakota? I shuddered at the mere thought. The drive over to the school seemed to have taken hours but really it was just minutes. There were woodlands behind the school, so it would be easy to slip into them and shift without unwanted attention. Daniel jumped out of the car and raced inside to collect Alec and Grace with a family emergency. I waited anxiously on the outskirts of the woods with Luke standing patiently at my side. You'll be okay, you know, my brother told me, but I wasn't really listening until I knew my babies were safe. I cradled Dakota close as she whimpered at the fear I was feeling. 
You need to head south. Everyone you've had connections with are all situated up north. So your safest bet is to go south. Head down all the back roads you can and just disappear. Mask your sense as much as you can. I know you haven't had much experience in masking other people's sense, but they're your family and it's life and death, so I'm sure you can do it until you at least get out of immediate danger. South. Masking. Danger. Got it. I spoke distractedly, breathing a sigh of relief when Dana and the kids came running towards the woods. Mom, what's happening? Grace asked, worriedly, as she and Alec instantly began stripping off their clothes and shifting into their forms. We'll be okay, I promised, watching as Daniel shifted with them, and Luke strapped the duffels to his back. I turned to the squirming child in my arms. Dakota, baby, I need you to shift for Mama, okay? Why? she cried. What's happening? You need to be strong for me, okay? I need you to shift so we can all go somewhere, all right? My youngest daughter stuck out her bottom lip, and I almost thought she was going to refuse, but she allowed me to set her down before she tumbled forwards in a bundle of fur. I smiled down at the gray wolf pup looking up at me with scared eyes. She was much stronger in this form and would easily be able to keep up with us. I took a deep breath and shifted into my own wolf form, my bones cracking into place flawlessly from years of practice. I opened my eyes to stunning clear vision and breathed through the slight head rush I got from everything going on around me. Take care, guys, Luke told us, and this time I managed to smile and nudged my brothers. Daniel scented the air before deeming it safe for them to continue. Let's go.